Baller Alert, calling out Baller Alert. Got no problems with Baller Alert, but everybody on Baller Alert and anybody else out there talking shit about me, here we go. It's, it's disappointing uh, to me, and it's sad, but at the same time, you know, just, once again, all the detractors, they said this was going to happen, and they were right. Look at Bob. Holy shit, Phil. The detractors. You're milking They were right. Holy shit, Phil. The you the detractors. They were right. Holy shit, Phil. Do you hear yourself right now? They were right. Fuck all you hoes! Like we totally fucked up. No, 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 get you a bottle of Jan from Total Wine. Fire up your TV. Drink your, drink your Jan. Drink your, drink your Jan. Consequences have actions, Pep. Here's what you gotta do. Drink your, drink your Jan. Drink with Pepsi later on. Yeah, yeah. Play you fucking WB champions. Consequences have actions, Follow Phil. Her. Holy shit, Phil. The detractors. They were right. Yeah. Holy shit, Phil. Your detractors. They were right. Yeah. Holy shit, Phil. Do you hear yourself right now? They were right. Yeah. Like we totally fucked up. Stop being a fucking victim. You fucking bitch. Talk about my wife. You fucking asshole. The chap. Own your shit. You're milking. Own your shit. Oh! Own it. Holy shit, Phil. The Milk detractors. They were right. Bitch. Holy shit, Phil. Yo. Your detractors. They were right. Bitch. Holy shit, Phil. Do you hear yourself, bitch? They were right. Like we totally fucked up. You're still on mission one. No, I'm not gonna let you lie. I know you're lying. You're milking. I'm gonna pick on you. I know you're lying. Being dishonest and begging for money. And people wanting justice. He is not a real person. He is not genuine. He is not honest. He's a scammer. I just see a scammer. They were right. Holy shit, Phil. The detractors. That's right. They were right. Mirkhead Mall. Holy shit, Phil. Your detractors. They were right. Holy shit, Phil. I just see a scammer. <laughs> Bagging. Like we totally fucked him. Alright, I'm done. I, I, I'm done. I understand everything now. I know why there's this hate wave on him, and it's been on him for years. It's because of this bullshit. American Mall. X-Ray, this is the United States of Phil. I am the supreme being. I make the rules, and when I say go, uh, this is not a place for you to... All right, all right. We're going to get started after this one. ...freedom of speech, because the bottom line is you don't have freedom of speech. This is my land. Control is desire. I got everything ready, and I'll tell you all about it. Mirror 
him up. What? You're milking a human. What? This desire. Why, why, why might this desire? Why might Why might Why, why, why? Oh my god, this one is long. This one is almost like four minutes long. Damn. Okay, I'm gonna cut it short. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Introducing the chocolate starfish! Mirkin Mall. Yeah. Yeah, I even got the right layout today. There we go. Welcome everybody. This is part one of the side scrollers interview trilogy recap, where we're gonna recap as much as humanly fucking possible uh, about the interview. Now, if you don't even know what this is, first of all, how the fuck did you end up here? And what are you doing here still after these songs? Uh, but, well, Dark Side Phil, disgraced, infamous gamer who is uh, world-renowned for jerking his dick off on YouTube, had a, a very significant, meaningful interview that was also kind of the turning point in his career where, well, he ended up ended up looking super guilty of everything that everybody's ever been accusing him of because he provided no proof. Uh, it was like five hours long and it was super interesting. Everybody loved it. So today in this one, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from the very beginning because it all started with a dream and we're going to see what that dream was about. We're going to see what happened when that dream started becoming reality. And maybe we're even going to start with um, a little bit of the actual interview if we can get there by then. Um, keep in mind, there is a lot of the podcasts where DSP talked about the interview that have been privated or deleted because he was fighting, um, copyright strike or something. So, uh, those we can't watch, which is actually kind of a good thing. Uh, why is that a good thing? Because, uh, he just ended up repeating himself over and over again in all of them. So, yeah, you probably don't, don't really want to sit through all that. But let's start with the initial incident, I guess you can say. The fateful dream that made this all a reality. So on the 23rd of October at 1.44 p.m. my time, uh, which I don't know which what time it was for him. I think it was in the middle of the night because he woke up. Uh, Mr. Darkside Phil says on Twitter. Hey, welcome everybody who just joined from the Viga stream. Welcome, you guys. Now, um, I had an idea in my sleep so good that I woke up and I'm going to announce it later today. I will make a separate video before my podcast, but I will discuss it in depth on the show. It will be very interesting for everyone, whether you like me or hate me. See you then. Uh, here we got no, no comments on this. It's just some known DSP fans being excited for it. So without further ado, let's dive into um, the actual announcement. I remember I was live at the time, so I got to see it live. Uh, and now I think for the first time since, I'm going to watch the clip of it. And this, uh, as you can see, is half an hour long. Uh, and now, of course, we have the benefit of hindsight so we can look back and, and discuss how things went and retrospectively, well, comment on it and see what's what's going on. So let's, uh, let's dive into it. This is Mr. Burnell, 23rd of October, 2022 hey, is when it happened. Like the, uh... Stupid view bots are back, huh? Certainly looks that way. Because I'm pretty sure that there's not 900 legitimate people here this early. It sounds like a bunch of bullshit. Oh, hold on one second. When I try to put a filter onto the camera, oh, that looks half decent. Because Of course, you can see he, he got almost like a thousand, right a thousand viewers right? because he was teasing <clears throat> some big drama. If I'm going to do a special video. And um, yeah, this is the old level like one podcast look. layout. You can see in the back, there's just a bunch of this is the, the Halloween theme because this happens a week before Halloween when he showed up cross dressing as um, Ken from Street Fighter or was it Ryu? It doesn't matter. Anyways, um, yeah, this is it. We're about to start. This is back when he was wearing the fancy gaming T-shirts that look much better than anything that he's wearing nowadays because, well, it just does. Semi-human, you know, would be a good thing. Well, let's see here. Uh, saturation. So in this video, we're going to see his intention and motivation behind why he wanted to be interviewed and what he thought he would accomplish by being interviewed. And, of course, we're going to talk about whether or not that happened. That's not bad. That's at least 
semi, I look semi-human. <laughs> yeah, I at least look half human. So I'm going to make a video, right? Okay. What is it? Every time now that I film, it's a different lighting situation. Right now, I have my window wide open. And you can see he's fucking around the, the lamp in on, maximum capacity a, a fucking open. around. To waste everybody's time. He loves doing this, by the way. This is what he loves to do. He teases some kind of a drama, some kind of announcement, and you need to wait at least 40 minutes on his show before he gets to it because he wants everybody to show up and stay there so he can waste their time and enjoy the attention that he wouldn't usually get. If I do notice that it just keeps happening, like I said, I will. This is literal three minutes of this. Okay, which is why I'm kind of splitting this apart from my normal content. Um, You know what I mean? I'm not going to be doing the same kind of thing as usual where I would just talk on my podcast. I actually want to purposefully separate this video from my other content so that hopefully people will, you know, watch it and not have to sit and watch a whole podcast or whatever. I want it to be right on topic of what I'm going to talk about. Yes, this is the dream okay. speech that I have a dream. This, what I'm about to do is something that actually came to me last night in a dream. I'm not kidding. I was in bed sleeping and I actually had a dream about it in my subconscious. And actually, and uh, if you look up, because I did a little bit of research today, if you look up the term dream on his Twitter, he shares a lot of his dreams. Some of them are super random. Some of them are like whatever. But he, he used to post up about his dreams a lot. Back when his Twitter was something more than, well, whatever it is now, which is basically his community page on YouTube, which is just reposts of his own streams and talking about what he's going to be playing and his schedule. I woke up and I said, all right, I, I think it's time for this. I really feel like it's time for this. To the point where I didn't even want to forget about it. Because sometimes what happens is you have a dream or you have a thought or an idea and if you don't immediately take action on that thought or idea, you f you forget about it, you lose track of it. Why don't you write it down? You just don't think it's very pertinent anymore, and you let it go. I didn't want to do that because I... How can I explain it? I, I kind of don't want to explain it because it'll spoil. <laughs> so what I'll just say is, yes, this literally, this idea came from out of a dream last night. Um, And so I want to record the video, all right? And I will upload it later today separately to my channel... Uh, as its own standalone video for people to watch for a while, okay? Um, and then on the podcast, which is going to immediately follow me making this announcement, we will go into detail about it. I'll allow you guys to field questions about so it. What, kind, like, what, what kind of like attention whore fucking stupid idea is this? I cannot believe this. So first, the first video, the separate video that he made is basically for everybody's attention. So he could put out basically, well, let's say a bounty on himself and everybody else could be like, oh man, I, I want to do an interview with Phil. I want to do an interview with Phil. And we're going to see later how that goes because there's a couple of people that were interested. But how did it come to be? What was the dream all and all of that? His dreams are a detractor, dude. His precognition dreams are ruining his business. He did nothing wrong, dude. Well, it, was, it wasn't the dreams that ended up detracting on him. It was... Well, his whole state when he was awake, basically. It's everything but his dreams. It's everything but his subconsciousness yeah. that ended up detracting on him. And uh, it's 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 something, man. Uh, but I haven't seen this in a long time, so I'm very curious about what he's going to say. Big up Synonymous for the dollar. Um, okay, so that's what we're going to do. Um, so, whenever you guys are ready... By the way, I turned off everything. There's no no pop-ups right now. So if anyone contributes, no pop-ups right now. There's no leaderboard. I literally turned off everything so it could just be me talking directly to people with no distractions. Pretty pretty interesting because I almost never do that, but I want to make sure there's no distractions here. Okay. Okay, can we actually get to that? Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. He thought... Oh, well, he kind of thought correct, right? He thought... Well, okay. Let's let's talk about it when it happens. No, once I start the real podcast, then everything will come back. It's not that it's going away for today's stuff. Just for this one video, this one segment, I want to get this recorded and serious and out of the way, and then I want to move on to my normal day. Okay. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> As you guys can see, there is a uh, a troll with probably a hundred bots. It's probably going to be saying the same thing over and over. So what? I'm just going to have to ban them when I can. Um. 
I'm going to oh. see if I can get any what? moderators. How, how did he figure this out? Because I'm looking at the chat and nothing really crazy is happening. There's no... Because his chat is on the screen. This is his chat that you get to see. Here. Because, of course, you got Kevin Bernstein. Okay, can we actually get to the thing? Oh, he's, uh, okay, so is he, is he on his phone on Discord asking for people to show up to moderate for him? Because that's exactly what it seems like he's doing. And now, of course, we, we have absolute confirmation that he does have a Discord where he's talking about trolls and how lonely he is and shit like that. So, yeah. Mm. Okay. Sounds very <laughs> plausible. Ooh, itchy. Okay, Brunel, let's go, man. Let's yeah, go. So just, we got just stuff to do. Moderators on here. I'll give him a minute to see if anyone. <laughs> he's, he's waiting for the mods to, to show up. Once this video goes live as a separate video, then I will tweet out the link and post it up as well. Okay. <clears throat> so there you go. By the way, Caroline. Used to be robust back then. Nowadays, like, you can't even look at them. But then, look at this. Sharpness. Everything. No, there's it's, not a thousand people it's here. Like a, it's like video game hair. Every single follicle is in place. We were only at, like, 200. And then all of a sudden, a bunch of U-Bots rolled in. Yeah, yeah. U-Bots. This is bullshit. Mm. <laughs> Does he really think people okay. view-botted him? On his big announcement that came to him in a dream, is uh, this shocks me? Okay, let's 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 actually start. You know what's gonna happen? It's gonna do this stupid color adjustment right in the middle. It's gonna look so. Oh my god, this guy cares so much about the color adjustment, dude. Look behind you; it's just a bunch of toys and garbage. It doesn't matter all that much. There, I don't even care. I'm just gonna start now. I don't even care. I've had enough. Okay, ready? <clears throat> Lurking. We're not ready, I guess. Uh, big ups to who was lurking. I don't know. It didn't pop up. But thank you for the subscription, dude. Follow lurk. Mia cat looking like a chocolate truffle Sunday. <laughs> Phil's ideal interview goes like this. Phil, you had an amazing career. Everyone loves you. What's next for the most talented and amazing person in the world? How do you do it? Mia cat well, who? I, I would even say Mia that the... Cat looking like a chocolate Yeah, truffle. thanks. Um, I would even say that the, the quartering comes close to the perfect interview for him. Because he just let him speak on about everything. And there was some, like, performative... Uh, pushback, we could say, where uh, the quartering was like, so, Phil, what do you think about, like, you begging too much? And then he waffles on for, like, 10 minutes, and then the quartering is like, yeah, okay, but, so, do you like video games? Yeah. So that, I guess that came as close as you can come to the perfect interview for him. He just got to do whatever he wants. Uh, he just didn't get any benefit, because everybody on the quartering channel watched him like a lol cow, not to, like, to, to to have some interest in this genuine content. So yeah, big ups uh, Swaggy Davis Jr. for the five, dude. And for the compliment, obviously. All right. You're my, my top ego booster. Hello, everyone out there. My name is Phil Brunell, but I'm greater known. Oh, an unexpected <laughs> error occurred. Oh, no. Recording. <laughs> no. Look, even even the the universe didn't want him recording this video. Everybody knew this was a bad idea, except him and his, I guess, subconsciousness. Okay. Can we... Okay. Let's 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 try it again. All right, let's try again. <clears throat> Here we go. Thank you, uh, Alexandra, for the membership. Hello, everyone out there. My name is Phil Brunell, but I'm greater known to the major part of the internet. As Dark Side Phil, or you may know me from my YouTube channel DSP Gaming, which has been in operation since April of 2010. Yeah, and you can you can see he intended this for outside audience. That's why it's getting uploaded as its own separate video. He thought about this whole scam as it was going. And for the past, he thought about everything. Every angle that. was covered outside of how he's going to perform on the interview, and it all fell apart. Channel or 14 years, uh, in general on YouTube. I've been an internet content creator that has made gameplay, mostly raw, unedited gameplay with live commentary over it. But over the years, I've made a wide variety of other content, including game reviews, podcasts, and other things. I 
am infamous. And what I mean by that is, even though there's a lot of people who like my content and they watch it at face value for what it is, there's probably equal or more people on the internet who watch my content for negative purposes. You call them almost like hate watchers. All right? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. I've had a very unique situation where over the years people have found a way to tether themselves onto me in a very negative and toxic fashion. When I first started as a content creator 14 years ago, the internet was a very different place. You basically could say or do whatever the heck you wanted with no repercussions and no one really was ever offended at anything you said or did. And so the person Yeah, this is this is bullshit by the way. This is not true. People were offended by many of the things he said and did before even he was a YouTube personality. When he was just a DSP on the SRK and other forums. This is some complete bullshit right now. I was. Yeah, dude, I, I could do whatever I want and everybody loved me. Nobody said a thing. Yeah, actually they did. Many times. And it's recorded. Many years ago. Was very rude, crude, constantly doing very irreverent, over-the-top commentary purposefully to try to get a rise out of my viewership. The more ridiculous thing I said, the more attention I would get. And this mentality earned me a, a, one of the top spots as a video game commentator on YouTube back in the day. I was known as one of the top Let's Players, even though I always called them video game playthroughs. And so, infamously through the years, you know, being partnered with Machinima back in the day when they existed, uh, I made a living doing this for quite some time, just doing this kind of improv-style commentary over videos. However, very famously... Back in around, I would say, maybe 2010, 2011, I started to get a backlash from my viewer base. Basically, people had had enough of that style of commentary. They felt that perhaps I needed to evolve and change. Yeah, look at this. I was look at this spin. God damn. Around 2012, uh, 2010, 2011, that's when he got kicked off of Blip for the, the whole uh, Jewish incident. And it's like, he's acting like people just wanted him to change for the better for because of his like content is going to get better or something. But no, he was just too toxic. And they started calling him out. Hey, Phil, I think you're, uh, you're very toxic. And nowadays, there's more competition. So people get to compare him to everybody else and be like, whoa, this, this dark side Phil guy is way more toxic than everybody else. What is, what's up with him? Saying and doing in my videos is pretty irresponsible. In particular, the quality of the gameplay that I was putting out maybe was not worthy of the amount of views, attention, and quite frankly money that I was getting result. And so a negative movement started against me called This Is How You Don't Play. Now this has been well documented. A there negative movement. It was it was just a, a format of video. It was never a movement. It was never a like a hashtag change the channel or whatever the, the thing that happened to channel awesome. No, it was just one guy that made one type of video that is a very simple straightforward video. Here is this guy who is terrible at a video game in very unique and innovative ways that very few people are terrible at. And then it took off because it was a good idea and was a fun video. And other people made similar videos because he kept being terrible in other games in new and innovative ways that other people are rarely terrible at. Hundreds of videos that have gotten millions of views over the years making fun of me as a video game content creator rightfully pointing out my flaws, my shortcomings, the things that I was doing wrong, even though a lot of the time that was kind of the joke of the content that I was putting out and the reason why people actually watched said content, these videos highlighted that content in a very negative one-sided light, essentially making me out to be a buffoon. But first of all, you are. And second of all, uh, 10 to 15 seconds ago, he said that they were rightfully criticizing him in those videos, in that movement. But now it's like, it's not rightful. It's actually misrepresenting me. Which in some cases was very accurate. Um, in some cases. Videos grew in such viral popularity over the course of about a five year period that they basically eclipsed anything that I was doing on the internet. People had a lot more fun laughing at me than laughing with me. Now, for the record, I have gone down memory lane this year. I have become a lot more self- His camera was more crispy back then and his lighting was better. It says a lot that his quality has dropped with more and better equipment. You know what? I'm, uh, I don't know if I'm, I'm willing to argue that. Let's just have a quick comparison. Um, and, and see how it looks. Uh, or where, where do we go? Where do we go? DSP Gaming. Let's watch his latest podcast. Cause I think like the actual, how do I say that? The actual quality 
we're, we're talking like on a technical level of the lighting and everything is better. It just looks worse because like his presentation is generally worse. But I mean, this is this is much worse than what we got nowadays. Good evening, everyone. Phil here. Like this is on a technical level better, but it's more obnoxious because the, the better the lighting is, the more you see his face and the, the melting snort sacks and everything. Where? I have decided to do a lot of react. Some people would even say it was the best when he didn't even show his face on camera during these. And all you get to hear was dashboard music on the PlayStation 4. Style events where I actually directly responded to the criticisms and the things that people have said about me in the past. About how my commentary was so bad and over the top. How basically, uh, you know, those This Is How You Don't Plays were pretty accurate criticisms of me and my work at that time. And how basically it led to my decline as an internet content creator. You probably know Dark Side Phil as, oh, that guy who's a terrible player on the internet and everyone hates. And this is the origins of where it came from. But I feel that I have changed. But this is like, this is madness, man. Because uh, obviously we've been in on this video for like five minutes now. And the entire thing that's happening is that he's weaving a narrative for the outsiders that are watching this. So they could be more inclined to just naturally believe the bullshit that he says and not question everything. And it's like, dude, we, we get it. You're not, like, he's not even being objective at all in any of this. All of everything that he's just saying is to make himself look good. Over the years, I've actively tried to make myself a better person, to change my content, to not be anything like what it used to be. And if you were to watch a live gaming stream of mine today in 2022 and compare that, with the kind of content that I was doing a decade or more ago, I think you would find a distinct change, improvement, and contrast because I don't want to be that guy anymore. In 2017, YouTube had an adpocalypse, meaning everyone who was trying to make a living on YouTube based on ad revenue essentially couldn't do it anymore when they lost a lot of their major advertisers. At that point, I changed who I was as a content creator and I became an interactive streamer. For the last five and a half years, this has been my focus. And... People now who attend my content say, man, it is very different. You know, it, it's interactive. It's fun. It's meaningful. We feel like we're getting something out of your content that previously you didn't have back in the day. Back in the day, it was about cheap jokes, risque uh, commentary. Now this setup looks just like a love streamer. Well, it, it's uh, yeah, a titty streamer. It's, it's not just well, that, but it, also his gimmicks are like a titty streamer. Oh, pay me this amount of money. I'm going to put on this hat. I'm going to put on this. I'm going to do this. Uh, and it's for somebody who hates them as much as he does, surely adopts a lot of gimmicks from them. Today, it's more about actually reviewing a game fairly, meaningfully playing through it and giving meaningfully a playing review. through it, actually having meaningful conversations with my audience. And for this, I think it would have been to the benefit of the video that he was recording at the time if he just instead of going through this entire thing that's going to lose everybody's attention and they're just going to click away. He could have just said, I used to be trash, but I'm 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 up right now. I'm really cool right now. So somebody interview me. And that's it. That could have been a 45 second video. The most part, it does feel like it's very different when I do content today. And I've said this many times to my audience that. I feel like my content today is way more meaningful than it ever was previously. That doesn't mean okay. anything. <clears throat> so why am I telling you all this right now? And what is the purpose of this video? Here's the thing. At one point, I was infamous on the internet for this is how you don't play. Fair enough. Then I became infamous on the internet in 2016 for accidentally beating off on camera. Now, luckily, nothing was shown. There was absolutely nothing exposed to the internet. It was just me doing my O-face. I went viral for it. I very rightfully went viral for it because it was insanely stupid, embarrassing, and it was a low time of my life where I was actually quite depressed, and it was a really stupid thing that happened. <laughs> okay, no. This, like, just just say you jerked off. We don't need the context that you were depressed and your depression makes you jerk off because that's just makes it funnier. I Stop giving us context. It's just like, hey, man, I felt like jerking off, and so it happened that the camera was on and my stream was on. I wanted to rub one out before stream, but I couldn't do it because the camera was on recovered from that i'm not that's all you gotta say you, you don't have to like you, you don't have to go in detail about your masturbation incident i it anymore people make the joke i'm like it's like it kind of speaks for itself 
here I am six years later. I'm still able to make content. I still have a viewer base that cares about what I do. We've all moved on from that. But again, when something like that happens, guess what? You got to live it down forever. And I don't think I ever will live it that down. It's always going to be a stigma that's attached to me. Okay? But now to the subject matter of what this video is really about. This is like five minutes into the video. Maybe even more. What I have found is that Maybe even 10. in the last several years, there has been a major shift of attention and a major shift of attitude towards me. While some people are willing to see that I have changed as a content creator and a person and are willing to actually check out my content at face value and give it a shot. And I've actually had so many people over the last several years who say, hey, meaningful stops meaning anything and loses all value when you constantly repeat and every single you do is meaningful. Yes. And to begin with, it's not it's 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 a really weird subjective word that ironically doesn't mean much because meaning is is subjective for everybody. For somebody is meaningful to watch a certain TV show that someone else might think is fucking stupid. For somebody, it's meaningful watching Dark Side Phil and his awesome gameplay, while for somebody else, it isn't. So it's not really like meaningful shouldn't really be your, um, your your motto or something like that. I used to be a major critic. I used to be a major person who hated on you on the internet, but now that I've actually given you a shot and I realize how different you are, that you have matured and grown and changed over the years, and that your content is very different. I actually will give it a shot and, and, and watch some of it. And some people actually become fans, which I very much appreciate. Yeah, but that, that happens for everything. Um, if we got to look at the statistics, and I'm about to make up some statistics, I would assume out of all the people that watch him, let's say 5% give him an honest shot and perhaps less than 1% actually become fans. That just sounds like a reasonable figure to me. I just made it up. But it, it just uh, to give you a sense of some kind of perspective. Here's the difference between all of those things from my past and what I've noticed in the last few years. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, the major focus of the negativity towards me on the Internet seems to be absolutely nothing to do with my content. There you go. This is a narrative that continues uh, up until nowadays as well of, well, people hate on me, but it they don't really hate on me. It's not really valid. They hate on all these other stuff because I'm a meme, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. People have taken it upon themselves because apparently there's just not that much dramatic stuff going on on my streams or my content anymore to try. Oh, he's about to change, to change that. My personal life. And in the last few years, I've been down on my luck in a lot of different ways. Okay. Bad financial decisions over the 14 year course that I've been a content creator forced me to take some actions to protect myself and my family and my future. You know, notably a few years ago, I, I uh, declared bankruptcy and I had to. There was no way that I was ever going to get out of the financial problems that I was in unless I did so. And when that happened, a lot of information went public because bankruptcy is a public thing. Records get posted, etc. And ever since that happened, people took it upon themselves to try to intrude. It actually, uh, I, I have no idea how people managed to find the bankruptcy call, that specific bankruptcy call that he was in, and and live stream it. This shit was incredible. Like, it, uh, it's, it's such a strange and thoroughly entertaining piece of lore. It's like, it's entertaining the whole time, man. Up until the last second of that stream. Life. You guys have no idea how bad this has gotten. People trying to impersonate me all over the internet, committing identity theft and fraud. Um, people trying to slander me in ways that I never fathomed just because they have a little bit of information. The way I like to put it is this. People take a little nugget of truth and then they basically post on so much bullshit, so much conspiracy, so much negative twist and toxicity. Oh, it was public information, the actual call. Mm, that's, that's interesting. Then becomes a giant <laughs> ball a ball. There is a little nugget of truth in the middle of it, but so many people on the internet have found it a memeable thing to just hate on a memeable Phil offense. Or Dark Side Phil that they don't care if only that nugget is true or the giant ball of crap is true to them. As long as they can say something negative about me, they're in on the joke. And what's happened is in the last few years, you have such an insanely large amount of people saying negative things about me on the internet that are not factually true but possibly based on a tiny 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 
nugget of truth, that there are now a large group of people out there who just believe the bullshit. I would love, and I think I've watched enough DSP content, and I don't remember when he's actually expanded on this whole idea of the nugget of truth. What is, let's say, let's talk about champions. What is the nugget of truth? Is it that he's still playing the game? Sure, it's a nugget of truth. What do people... Um, what do people blow this up into? Is it that he spent a million dollars or a hundred thousand? Because at some point, when you spend so much money on these games, it actually doesn't even matter if you spent 40,000 or a hundred thousand. You're still like crazy deep into that shit. So I, I, I don't know. I don't know what the example is of a nugget of truth. This has been incredibly hard for me. Because I'm trying to manage... And, like, for somebody who is being accused of all these things that are, of course, based on a nugget of truth, he doesn't really feel like defending himself in any kind of appropriate way to explain and, and break down why people think this way. Like, where does the idea of a 100,000 come from? Like, how much approximately he thinks he spent on the game, etc., etc. In a business... I'm and again, this is a huge pattern in this entire saga. This is the biggest pattern is that he claims he's completely innocent and avoids every opportunity of providing any kind of proof. And I'm talking about any kind of proof. Not even like some fabricated shit. I love that the nugget of truth is simply that he's spent $100,000 on champions and lied on his bankruptcy about it. Such a tiny nugget. I, I, I still can't even figure out what is supposed to be the nugget of truth. I assume is because he admitted it during the interview, is that he still plays the game. Sure, that is truth, which is also what we've pretty much uh, come down to, the, that same conclusion. So sure, but what is what is the wrong thing about it? What do people lie about? A positive atmosphere for the people who do like my content and don't care. Because at some this. point, the, the whole figure of how much he spent on champions kind of became irrelevant to everybody once... You know, once we saw the bank leaks and it was all basically kind of confirmed to be true, people were like, yeah, well, uh, 40,000, 50, 60, 70, does it matter? He lied the whole time. He turned off all the tips goal. Member goal, it's almost like he's trying to hide something and make Craig think he isn't all about money. Um, he is, uh, well, uh, seeing how this video in particular is aimed at the general YouTube audience and people that perhaps could be interested at in interviewing him uh he wanted to present himself in the best light possible which of course it means you, you turn off everything you turn off all the gimmick stuff that should very well be left behind the scenes and has nothing to do with anything that i put out on the internet but yet every day i get told did you hear that this person oh said yeah and jasper that's a that's a good point steve jasper also showed us the the champions before even the interview happened i think i think it was before so yeah, we, we knew that he was playing it. That was... Did you hear that this person made a video about you? It's not a secret. You? And now the real reason <clears throat> that I'm making this video today is because in recent weeks and or months, in particular for some reason this year of 2022, there have been major YouTubers as well as journalistic sites that seem to have covered... Wow, this was the... <laughs> And <laughs> this was uh, the biggest air quotes I've ever seen. Journalistic site. Imagine somebody calls DSP a quote-unquote podcaster, and he finds out he's gonna be so pissed off. No, I have a real fucking podcast. YouTubers? I have over 200 and million episodes of this, you fucking idiots. As well as journalistic sites <laughs> that seem to have covered slanderous and defamatory material about me as fact okay either sue somebody or debunk it that's your two choices or well you got the option three which is well just let them talk whatever they talk and you just look guilty which i guess we're going with option three i'm here to tell you not only is all of the things that they say about me mostly wrong okay no one wants <laughs> what the, what Instead of saying most of the things they say about me are wrong, he says all of the things are mostly wrong. That's uh, okay. Has ever reached out to me and said, hey, Phil, can we get your side of the story? Can we get a rebuttal to the negativity? That all of it is mostly wrong. No one. These people would rather roll with the memes 
get clickbait views and popularity and attention for themselves on the internet and they think that they are just immune to any kind of repercussions for it. Now, for the most part, we'll sue right. them because I'm just one guy. I don't own a giant team of businesses. I don't make a lot of money where I can lawyer up and try to protect my he doesn't own a a, a giant team of businesses self against all of this really negative toxic that stuff was stuff. like a, a word salad right there about me on the internet in fact there's so many people saying this about me at once i would have to have a team of lawyers suing everyone at once it would be insane it would never work okay why don't you just how about this you sue one person who has slandered you the most, just most and you win about me are wrong yeah, just, well, uh, what did he even say? All of the things are mostly wrong. This is like, okay, sure, just sure. Just testing to see if this method works for me. Disregard. Yeah, why wouldn't it work? It works, dude. We're all back. Super back. For the most part, I... So, yeah, uh, as I was saying, sue one guy, completely annihilate him in court, and then everybody else going to... Put down their videos because they they realize that that guy got destroyed so they don't don't want to get destroyed you see keep my mouth shut i just stay here in my lane on my channel dsp gaming and i just make content for myself and then people watch it and enjoy it and it's just made for i i like to call it a curated fan base this is content very much for people who want to see the style of content that i make and for no one else i have no aspirations to grow humongous I have no aspirations to be rich and famous. I just like doing what I do because it was my hobby before it ever was my job. And that's all I ever wanted to do is be able to love what I do for a living. And I do. <clears throat> but when daily, at this point, there's another major YouTube channel coming out and putting me into one of their toxic countdowns of negative YouTubers and things like that. And that was, uh, he was talking about, I think, Sunny V2. And when I see what they said, who of course got the name of the game wrong. He said it was WWE, what was it, Superstars or something. All right. It's so therefore, he is completely wrong because it's based on a nugget of truth, but the everything else is not. One thing if they're saying, oh, this is how you don't play. You're right. That's well-documented. Oh, did he say Supercard? Yeah, it's I remember public. it was something like that. There you that. have it. Oh, his, his accident, his embarrassing moment from 2016. Fair enough. That is absolutely positively true. It's on the internet. It happened. I fessed up to it. But then when you start to get into this stuff from the last few years, it's bullshit. And <laughs> you see how we don't even talk about this stuff. We just immediately, it's bullshit. I don't really know how to defend myself against it because I'm not rich. Um, show some proof. Bro Jared got canceled and then came back with receipts to debunk claims made about him. Yeah. He's one guy like Phil and yet Phil can't be bothered to. Yeah. And he's still not gonna, uh, you know... He's never going to get over the the whole thing with the Sailor Moon outfit and having his dick sticking out and all that stuff. Like, that that shit is permanently a stain on his reputation, but he kind of rebounded from that. He rebounded as, you know, as about as good as you could. Uh, unlike Phil, who just re refused to debunk anything and pull out any kind of receipts. Maybe if I was, like I said, I could lawyer up and I could have defense against it. But I'm just not. And so... What's happened is I've struggled to maintain a business and a livelihood on the internet while I have a large group of people crapping on me on a daily basis and essentially just getting away with saying whatever they want without ever corroborating any evidence whatsoever of what they're saying, which technically is illegal. Technically? What? What? You have to corroborate statements that you make on the internet. because. But what about you? Where, where's your corroboration, no, no, Bill? <laughs> Yeah, my defense is that is bullshit. Your honor. Your honor, this is... This guy... Why are you listening to this guy? He's a Hello, mouth sir. drooler. We've been trying to contact you on your vehicle's extended warranty. Snort, sound good? Hey, is this some kind of a social engineering strategy? You're just trying to... You're trying to steal my identity? Oh, it's not happening. Consider I can see all your bullshit. defamation, however you want to say it. And yeah, you should be legally held accountable when you are passing something by as a fact without actually vetting it, okay? There's been people who've gotten into a lot of trouble on the internet for doing these kind of things. Okay, what if I say allegedly? That makes it perfectly legal, right? So allegedly, Phil lied on his bankruptcy because he, he was hiding his expenses. Allegedly, he spent tens of thousands of dollars on a mobile game. And allegedly, his head is very weirdly shaped. 
because he didn't get enough tummy time as a baby, allegedly. All right. So you might be saying, and allegedly this T-shirt is too small. And what do I? What is he talking about? Was he going to lawyer up or something? No, I just said I can't. But here's what I want to propose. Okay, something I have literally never proposed before, and I think that maybe it's time. Okay. The, the actual announcement, man, it's like he's announcing that he's going to start copyright striking people or something. I, which I think at some point he might get crazy enough to start doing it and be like, no, you, you're fucking slandering me. I'm taking that shit down. I'm willing to do a transparent interview with someone. All right. If there is legitimately someone out there who actually wants to ask me questions about this bullshit that has been said about me. Over the last several years, I will talk to them, okay? And I will give you my side of the story. Now, the thing is, I've spoken to lawyers, and I know what I should and shouldn't be talking about. I was actually advised during the bankruptcy proceeding, do not give any kind of personal information out because it could affect the proceeding. Um, So I know exactly... Uh, Phil can't sue because his bank accounts would come out during discovery. And then he'll have to show his phone and the iPhone transactions were for. Yeah, this is, uh, uh, it, it's going to be crazy. If we get to discover, it's going to be amazing. And I know, I know for a fact he can't afford to sue somebody because he's dark side Phil. DSP was innocent, her joyful by evil detractors. He'd have an internet defense force. Yes. He did that for so many actual innocent. Yes, people. that's a very good point. That's a very, very good point. If he was truly innocent, he would have more than than Kevin Stiles defending him on Twitter. He would have people actually standing up and defending him, like actual reasonably sized channels. Because there's people that do that. When they see somebody is innocent based on whatever shit is being talked about them, they defend them. It's a very good point. Big ups, uh, Rodrigo and ES before that. What I can and cannot say, last year, I was a victim of identity theft as a result of these toxic people messing with me. And yes, I talked to a lawyer and I was told this is what you can and cannot say. And the truth is, for the most part, I have defended myself very logically and reasonably here on no. DSP Gaming. No. The problem is, it's only for my audience. The funny part is, all these things that I've said and done to defend myself have never been publicly broadcast anywhere else. It's as if I never said them because I only said them here and no one else actually got that information, right? So, well, again, going back to the previous point from Rodrigo, if people believed you were innocent, they would spread the word. They would spread it out. So somebody like Keemstar would see it and he would talk about it and be like, oh my God, the fucking DSP trolls are fucking idiots. They're lying about them. People just constantly regurgitate the same negative slanderous memes, the same nasty things about me that are negative slanderous memes. This is a fantastic term are not true but no one ever asks me what's the truth of the matter what's really going on all right so what i am proposing to everyone on the internet right now if you want to make fun of me fine why don't you talk to me and actually ask the man in the situation the man really the on? guy okay i feel like maybe there would be people out there who'd be interested in this all right the true story even if you believe it or not but no one ever has no one comes out to me and says, Phil, will you tell us what's really going on? Can you? It's actually crazy because when you watch the actual interview, this does not happen. You, you basically get a pre-stream. That's, that's all you get. That's the real truth of the matter. The reality is him complaining about oh, the trolls mess with me. They talk shit about me and I don't have time a day and all my social connections are with chat. Like, bro, we already knew all that answer this or this or this th is not the the real un unchained unhinged truth now please understand there'll be limitations oh it's unhinged enough be talking about things that are very personal to my family members or my wife it's got to be things about me okay but for the most part i want yes also that is that is a good point we don't talk to him because we are not invited well yeah we don't get to do that because we're biased he is looking for somebody unbiased even though I'm sure if he did uh, an interview with detractors, they would be under enough pressure to be as unbiased as possible. Because otherwise, it just makes them look bad. It takes away from your credibility. If you manage to have DSP talk to you on a fucking podcast or his own stream, and you just say, gout, gout, gout for 10 minutes. Uh, so yeah, this is a good point. Um, 
the argument that he's explained anything on his channel is terrible because if you really wanted to hear those segments, you would have to sift through actual hours of bullshit. So it's really hard to find. He's making that hard for everybody to find the truth of the matter, apparently. Apparently. Allegedly, actually. We're going to be using that word a lot so we can avoid slander allegations. To set the record straight on this stuff publicly, whether or not people believe it is their own prerogative. But at least it would be on public record that I'm telling you what really is going on in these situations that people are, for the most part, fabricating about me. Um, I really don't think it's fair that all the negative memes and the slander gets a voice box, a soap box, that all these voice YouTubers box? are making videos about me constantly. A beatbox? Them into, putting me into their negative countdowns or whatever. And I literally don't get a chance to respond because I don't have the view count. I don't have the exposure that these guys have. All right? So... As of right now, I'm... Yeah, we should, we should rename the podcast to allegedly that being said. I want to talk to someone publicly about this. All right? Now, here's how it's going to work. I'm sure what's going to end up happening is I'm going to have people contacting me about this. And it's not just going to be one or two people. It'll probably be a few. I don't want to just jump on the first opportunity. I want to vet the people who maybe are willing to do this because I want to make sure I'm doing it in the right way with the right person. Someone who's going to give me yeah, a that, that being alleged. Going to talk about these <laughs> softball questions? Absolutely not. Yeah, so he doesn't want softball questions. By the way, keep keep that in mind. But I want to do it with someone who's going to actually not be completely so uh, dismissive of anything that I'm going to say, and also a situation where this isn't just a shooting gallery for people who already hate me. You understand? Random I question. How do you know so much about American governed legal matters and just little things I hear you talk about like- Dude, what are you talking about? I don't know shit. You sound 100% <laughs> I don't know anything. Please don't tell me you learned from Phil. No, I don't know anything. Thank God we got smart D. Tractor S. <laughs> I don't know anything about the American government, dude. I don't know why you got this impression that I do. Alert. He has read con the truth so often. What is true? What is true is uh, whatever he says, basically, or allegedly. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, I, I don't know anything about the American government or bankruptcy. That's why I was super confused during the whole bankruptcy thing. When people were talking about like pet expenses and he wrote down he didn't have a pet, but then he, he did, but he didn't. I don't know. Want us to be an but yes, the truth is basically whatever he says he is because he lives in his own. It's his, you know, uh, it's it's like on Twitter. It's his truth. That's that's what everybody has their own truth. It is just very weird how many people have the same idea of the truth that directly contradicts his idea of the truth. It's very interesting, allegedly. Where I can at least give my side in a fair way. And again, it'll be your prerogative to judge whether or not you believe me or not. And that's fine. But at least I'll have my side out there as opposed to now where I talk about stuff on my streams and no one ever cares or hears about it besides my fan base who are already on my side. So what's the point, right? So here's what's going to happen. If you have the ability to and you want to reach out to me to have me on your show or have an interview with me, you could DM me on, on Twitter at they call me DSP. I know some people have the ability to do that and some people don't. I really don't understand how that's possible because some people just send me DMs and some don't. Or you could email me, darksidephil at hotmail.com. It's a public email address I've had for many years. It is my business email address where you can contact me, all right? Now, I just want to say something and make it very clear. This is not about money or me trying to make the bag. It has nothing to do with that. This is about me clearing the air. It's about exposure, about really. He, he wants to get paid in exposure, basically. It's about me in so many, so many words in the last few years, and basically everyone dogpiling on me very, very unfairly. Okay, I need to be able to defend myself. There's been situations over the years where outright defamation and slavery. Oh, he could have like, he has plenty of opportunities to defend himself. He has a platform and he has the ability to absolutely eradicate everybody and all these quote unquote conspiracy theories by just showing the proof. Has been disproven. In this case, after that happened, everyone else just decided to create more. And Wait, what has like, been disproven? The the catfish? Is that the thing we're jumping on? Over the years, we're dogpiling on me very, very unfairly, okay? I need to be able to defend myself. There's been situations over the years where outright defamation and slander against me has been disproven. Oh, uh, yeah, they're, they're just talking about the escort, yep. In this case, 
after that happened, everyone else just decided to create more. And then it's like, well, but so yeah, are we going to forget that the trolls, those people that constantly try and, and look for the, the actual truth, they debunk the whole thing. They destroyed the whole catfish situation, that whole catfish business much out there. What are you supposed to do? Right? It's literally yeah. the people that hate him. Also, I want to make this clear. Because, like, if they hated him so much, they wouldn't be looking if this is right or wrong. They he would just be like taking it. Pleading for you to find his truth, but he's been online pleading for Unicorn. For assets. So that's Phil in a nutshell thinking face. Well, he's, uh, uh, you know, he's got that filibustering politician type of vibe to him where he says a bunch of stuff without really saying anything. But most, most politicians have a way of saying it where at least you kind of tend to believe them. While this guy is like, he's the only guy who believes himself, really. Into the and of course, his fans, but, my you know, there's a they're his fans. games coming out that I have to cover, and they're all high profile, all right? So, I'm definitely not saying I'm going to be doing this immediately. In fact, like I said, what I like to do is kind of take my time and vet my options. Big up Jay for the super chat. To me of who wants to do what, and once I get offers, then I can judge for myself what's the best one. I'm not even saying I'm going to accept one. I'm just saying I want someone to give me a fair chance. Because all that's happening right now is everyone's taking pot shots at me constantly, and I have absolutely no defense against it, and that's just not you fair. You do. <laughs> you're going to make fun of me if you're going to say negative things about me. <laughs> that's the whole thing, man. He does have a defense. He just uses to, to have his defense be yelling at people. At the very least. And saying bullshit a bunch. Myself. And I just have never had that. Okay? So, thank you for watching this video. The opportunity is now open. Reach out to me. DM me on Twitter or email me. Let's start discussions. Let's see what happens. Uh, I'm not going to be publicly talking about this regularly only because I don't think that really benefits anyone. Um, when, if, and when I've gotten a determination on what I want to do, I will then make that public to my, my viewers and everyone else. And we'll go from there. But I'm not saying that that's even going to happen because, quite frankly, the way that the internet has treated me over the last five plus years has been so bad that I don't even know if anyone's going to give me a fair shake. Oh my god, we got we obviously going to end that video on a sad note, on a victim about? note. He did disprove everything. He told everyone in the debunk stream didn't happen, bro. Case closed. But wait, the debunk stream was a long time ago. It was basically a million years ago. I'm I'm even I even don't know if that was old Phil or new Phil during the debunk stream. Cuz that was just so old and he was debunking stuff like uh, grooming cat in and Liana and what else did he debunk even? I don't even know. None of the interesting stuff. But yes, he did okay. say it did not happen. And ever since then, the trolls been awfully quiet about it. Hmm, they got no clap back. Can't say anything. Thank you all for listening, and I look forward to hearing from someone, hopefully shortly. Thanks very much, and uh, let's see what happens. Thanks. All right. So there were a couple of people that were interested in doing it right off the bat. Uh, I heard, uh, or at least I saw a clip. I couldn't find it to show you guys, so I guess you gotta believe me. Or I could just say it, I could just say, allegedly, Ethan Ralph had uh, expressed interest in entertaining the idea of interviewing Phil. Of course, it didn't happen because it's Ethan Ralph. Um, we had the gamer from Mars, that guy. I think he got over a million subs. He was also interested. I guess there was some kind of a back and forth. I think uh, Mudahar was also interested in this. But one of the most interesting people who were interested in this is this fellow, this gentleman, uh, by the name of Mr. Mitoker, I believe. So this is from October 30th. This is like a week after the initial announcement. Uh, shout out to GTG for this clip. One, one quick little thing. One quick little thing. DSP related news. Now I know you think, oh God, am I going to talk about his car dealership thing where he got suckered into paying like $8,000 for spark plugs because he doesn't know how machines operate? No. I understand. I understand his garage bill got leaked and everybody found out that DSP doesn't understand how automobiles work and then went in on a begathon. But what I want to talk about is DSP. Oh my God. This, this image, this image is so iconic. I cannot even fathom <laughs> asking people to come the sonic hat man DSP. <clears throat> oh my god ah cancer man alert. ralph vs dsp is loco on lolka violence oh yeah that wouldn't be fair at all 
And I, I wouldn't even think for a split second the DSV was interested in in even considering Ethan Ralph as an option. DSP is out. But but you can see what kind of people were interested in doing something with them. Like people like Mr. Medicare, people like Ethan Ralph, people that constantly have something to do with lol cows. And of course, Ralph being a lol cow himself. Out there. Asking for a sit down interview. But there was, of course, some normal people. Uh, it's just very fascinating to me that Craig ended up being the guy. But we're going to get to that. There's something interesting about that. There's an asterisk to the whole side scrollers thing. It's interested. Even said he's open to having him email him. And chat, what I'm thinking is there's nobody better for this job than me. But I'm going to need your help. <laughs> I'm going to need your help, chat. Because DSP, he's not my biggest fan. Now, I, I used to make fun of him on Brightside Bob. Did streams making fun of him. And they're still funny to me. But I did do a catfishing video where I exonerated him by showing it was complete bullshit. So that should kind of like, that should equal out. But I want to interview DSP. I have so many burning questions for him. About Sons of Kojima. About just everything that's gone on. He wants a fair interview. I am all for that shit, DSP. I will give you a fair interview. I definitely think he would. Like, no joke. I, I think he would be fair. As fair as, as he could be. But of course, yeah, we're, we're going to get to that a little bit later. The hard questions, but they'll be fair. All right, everybody likes tough but fair questions. And I'll give you an opportunity to give your answers in full, uninterrupted. It will be very professional. I won't use mean words. I won't swear at you. Uh, we can stay away from topics that you think are too personal. I don't care about your... Your, your relationships. I want to talk about the trolling and the internet legacy. So, chat, if you get a chance <laughs> to email DSP, I want you to tell him. Jim wants to interview you. Jim wants to sit down. He wants to sit down and interview you, DSP, and get your side of the story. All right, because I'm, I got to admit, you know, you've done a lot of goofy shit, Phil, but... You've outlived so much stuff. All your haters have fallen by the wayside. You are the detractor destroyer, Phil. <laughs> and we all have to respect that on some level. Sure, you may have spent a hundred thousand bajillion dollars on wrestling phone games. And you had a very, you know, public bankruptcy and all of that. And yet you're still standing. Still collecting those super berries. Still got a show, <laughs> still got an audience. I don't I mean the sons of Kojima, they're not around. They built a water well and disappeared. But you are, Phil. I want that interview. I want to sit down and talk that talk. That's right. That's right, Chad. He felted the haters. He bodied all of them. So if we can, if we can make And he, he keeps outliving people. He can't just keep getting away with it. Happened we need to stop him. Right. I would love to clear, uh, like, to end the year. How fun would it be if on uh, the year of the Chud, the very last stream, the December stream for Year of the Chut. If that very last stream was the DSP interview, where we get down to talk about the real issues, that would be, I think, the absolute perfect capstone on the craziness that this entire year has been. We would have started with Jack Murphy, worked our way through all the craziness with America First and Ethan Ralph, got up to Wings, and uh, Acer Thorn, and then finally closed it out by getting Phil to open up and answer questions and talk about all the things that he wants to talk <laughs> getting about. Getting Phil to open I'm up. I'm my hat in that ring. And if you know anything about me, I've got plenty of hats, which, by the way, are on sale right now on the Medicare Selfie store. Link in the description. Don't forget the Halloween merchandise as well. Get yourself an attractive boo shirt or a coffee mug. Hey, there so we go. We managed to sneak in a, a product placement, too. Room. That's a that's a really good segment, and it's only five minutes long. Let's see if it works, chat. So clearly, it did not work. Spoiler alert. Uh, but we got DSP to respond and actually find out who Mr. Mr. Metoker actually is. Oh, and by the way. Uh, and this is this is Mr. Metoker's response to Darkseid Phil's response. It's memberships now. So pay me money. So we got response on top of response on top of response. And soon, 
uh, within the next hour, we're going to be into the actual interview itself. Oh, and by the way, Odyssey does memberships now. Apparently, DSP requires requires funding to talk to him. Oh, see, here I am trying to be a good guy because I am a good guy, chat. Try to get DSP to to sit down and have a talk with me. Give me the real story, the uh, the important details of what's going on and what happens. <laughs> what happens with DSP? Well, we're about to find out. Uh, now, th this I've compiled together. His response and the initial video he put up. Or a little bit of it. Giving the idea of the situation going on with Dark Side Phil. Let's, uh, let's take a look. I am willing to do a transparent interview with someone. <laughs> All right? If there is legitimately... Man, the way he was announcing it is like... He you're gonna say it's somebody with millions of subs that is super controversial out there who actually wants to ask me questions about this bullshit that has been said no i said his name right over the last you'll see phil agrees with several me years i will talk to them okay see he put that out there so here i am doing my monthly roundup stream after hearing that dsp wants to sit down and give his side of the story and well, we'll get to it. What I am proposing to everyone on the internet right now, if you want to make fun of me, fine. Why don't you talk to me and actually ask me? All right, let's get to the part where he, he addresses this. Because we just watched the source clip. Okay. So Phil puts out the initial offer to do an interview. And other people have contacted him and he said no to literally everyone. But I thought, hey, you know what would be fun? Let's have a December stream where I interview Phil. Sit down. Let him let him speak his truth, speak his speech, respectful, all right, hard but fair questions. I was ready for it. This is the response I get. This is the fucking response this guy gave me. I haven't watched it yet, but I hear it's not flattering. As you guys know, I am seeking to get an interview on the internet by someone prominent and someone with an audience to get my word out about my side of the story when it comes to all the very slanderous negative things said about me on the internet on a daily basis okay so i'm still fielding offers i still have some offers coming in but i'm talking with several people as well at this point i'm very busy with all these releases so i probably can't do it right now anyway but i i've told people who i'm interested in you know this is i i'll get back to you you know this is i'm interested in doing it with you or whatever and we got, i've got a few candidates right now well all of a sudden in the last two days all right i started getting emails I started getting people super chatting in my chat saying, Phil, you should do your interview with Mr. M Mito Kerr. <laughs> uh, first off, thank you, my fellow Moon Crickets and Chut Butts. <laughs> so just over the last two days, all these people started messaging me. They're just screaming total nigger death and they're signing it Michael Alberto. I don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> I'm completely confused. Or Meta Kerr. All right. Mito Kerr. Now, I don't know who this guy is. All I know is the name rings a bell because people used to tell me years ago he was an asshole. He, he got his name wrong in like four different ways, which all of which I've never heard before. So it's like super innovative. Little scumbag really being nasty to me. He, wanted, he was basically being like a detractor. <laughs> I mean, that is true. I can't deny it. I did laugh at him quite a bit. All right. Now, not that he particularly focused only on me, but apparently I was one of the running mean things that he did in his content and shows. And basically... He was really nasty, all right? Now, I haven't heard from this guy in a million years. I don't know anything about him, and I don't listen to his content, but I haven't heard about this guy in a long time. All of a sudden, in the last 24 to 48 hours, I get tons of people who are either emailing me about it or who are, like, actually super chatting on the stream saying things like, oh, you should do your interview with him. He's really interested, uh, he's really interested in interviewing you, right? I mean, that is true. I really legitimately am. I really want to sit down with Phil and hear his side of the story. Now, my, my answer has been very simple. If he's interested in interviewing me, he should contact me. He hasn't. You know, if he wants to interview me, reach out, email me, or, or you know, DM me on Twitter if he can. Cause I don't yeah, the, during this time, this is what he wanted a lot as well. He wanted a bunch of people that he had no intention of having an actual interview with reach out to him so he could say no. He wanted to dunk on everybody and then pick one guy that he thinks is going to make him look the best. And what happened was kind of nothing like that. Very interesting. Years ago, if he was a scumbag to me, um, <laughs> you know, reach out, contact me. Let me know 
you're interested, let's talk it out, right? That hasn't happened. It's been probably over 48 hours since people started telling me this guy supposedly is interested in emailing or uh, uh, interviewing me. Nothing. No no contact, nothing, all right? So, as you know, that's it. that's where I leave it. If I ever hear from the guy, then maybe I'll consider it. So, our see Oh, we got, we got a possibility chat. <laughs> or we did. We had a possibility until what he's about to say. I do know this part coming up. <laughs> I, I just like to imagine how many emails did he get, do you think? How many emails went and you should do an interview with Mr. Mitokur? I hear that Mr. Mitokur guy is a, a really great interviewer, Phil. Uh, a, a detailed message overnight from someone. I'm not going to give their name. I'm not going to give details about it. I'm just going to read you what the message says, all right? I'm just going to read you the message. That's and there it. we go. We got a rat again. We got a snitch. We go. So, <laughs> So Phil's considering doing the interview. He's a little befuddled. He's a little befuddled. Lots of emails coming in. A former detractor. Maybe he'll do it. And then a mysterious message comes in. I wonder who sent the mysterious message. Hmm. Who who could have sent a mysterious message to Phil? There's a guy named Mr. Metaker. He's also known as Jim. He was also known as Brightside Bob in the past. Uh-oh. I didn't even know that. I knew that there were people who were like Brightside Bill, Brightside Bob, and they all made fun of me back in the day. But I didn't know that this particular guy was one of them. Apparently, he was one of the bigger ones. Uh-oh, it's okay. over. He made fun of me in 2011. It's over. I'm not doing anything with him. Okay. <laughs> he said on one of his streams that he wants to interview you about, about your trolls, your online legacy, and drama. His gimmick is that he puts the spotlight on lol cows, and then his audience, like people on Kiwi Farms, 4chan, and 8chan, destroy those people. He's done it to countless people, even to the point of suicide with Randy Greer. Now, keep in mind... <laughs> With, with Randy Greer? <laughs> he's, he's, <laughs> whoa, fucking what? <sighs> oh, that Mr. Mitoker, he, he sets up the interviews and then drives them to suicide. Phil, you can't talk to this man. <laughs> Words that kill, <laughs> Phil. Once, once oh. he begins to speak, <laughs> death is imminent. <laughs> he's going to curse him like it's the ring, man. Seven days after the Mediker interview, he just drops dead. That's it. It's over. Uh, big ups, Mr. Pika fan for 11 months, who says close to a year being a member. Meerkats. I don't know what exclamation. About. Thank you, dude. I'm not big confirming ups. or denying this is real. I'm just reading a message from someone that sent me a message overnight. Don't take this as me saying this is true. I know nothing about the situation. But why then? Why are we reading it publicly then? Why didn't you just read it to yourself and then say, well, I'm not interested in doing an interview with this guy, which is uh, obviously the case. Why did we need to make like a, a public song and dance about it? I don't know who this person is or anything, okay? This is what I'm being told, okay? Let's continue. He has to always delete his YouTube stream afterward because of the multiple severe terms of service violations on every stream that he has, an extremely racist chat that spams the N-word. A racist chat that spams the N-word? Chat, I'm looking at you right now. You would never do that. Well, that sounds like a slanderous well, accusation. An inclusive platform. I'm sure, I'm sure none of you would start spamming total nigger death just hey. repeatedly. And hey. I know that that's not something you'd do. That's that's not how we roll over here. <laughs> We're fucking uh, rainbows and sunshine and happiness over here. I don't know. I don't know what this guy's talking about. Oh, chat. Oh, no, that's no. these are the wrong things to type. What if Phil sees this, chat? He'll think I'm on my way to suicide somebody else like I did Randy Green. <laughs> Is he drinking white vinegar? What the fuck was that? At this point, he's been banned off of Twitter for the time being, and his main hub now is on the website Odyssey. Anyway, enough of his backstory, he's basically trying to either ambush you with all the drama questions or sneak on other detractors to surprise you. <laughs> I wouldn't get lured in with this idea that he's king of the trolls and wants to give you a fair shake, plus point the barrel towards the trolls instead. He knows the crowd wants your blood, and he's been keen on... <laughs> the crowd wants your blood. Phil is a gladiator now. Amazing. Uh, during his interview... The crowd wants uh, your let me blood. Just, let me just... <laughs> this is so dramatic. This is so dramatic. Old chat here. Chat, do you want Phil's blood? Uh, chat, 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 do you want I, Phil's can blood? If you want to drink Phil's blood, can I get a two <laughs> if it's just total nigger death? Hey! And can I get a three if you want to drink his blood and... No. Internet vampire, Phil. <laughs> There's a lot, of, a lot of calls for blood going on here, Phil. It's not looking good. 
<laughs> it's not looking good, Phil. Bitch. He actually treated the mobile game rumor about you as if it were pure facts. He's also made fun of your wife in the past. Oh, no. This is not a good faith, not a good faith offer. Your usual trolls will just keep trying to convince you to do it, so keep an eye out. All right, so here's the thing, all right? After I got this email. Hey, big ups to Kevin I for the vibes sticker, dude. Out. I'm feeling and the vibes right now. In regards to him. <laughs> all I'm vibed as fuck. I just happened to be there. After this guy told me this suicidal murderous troll that wants to drink my blood is coming for me, I hopped on YouTube to see what's the real story. And me was the most toxic shit I've ever seen. This guy as far back as eight years ago. <laughs> yes, as far back as when I moved across the country from Connecticut to Washington, was making toxic ass to content about me. Benefiting from slandering me. <laughs> Uh, you know, saying really nasty <laughs> Slandering me. You know, all I remember him doing is watching DSP play GTA and just laughing his ass off at how terrible DSP was. He was restreaming DSP. It's some of the, the like, fantastic content that has come out of this. We want that goat blood. No, we don't want... It's gonna happen like, uh, like Bloodborne. We're gonna start drinking the dirty blood and then we're gonna get all fucked up. We're gonna turn into literal trolls. Other people who I associate with... Um, basically, we cannot afford to do this. I know nothing Heartful. about this guy's personal situation Heartful. at all. All I'm judging on is based on what I saw with a five minute search on YouTube and what I saw was some of the most toxic, worthless content I've ever seen in my life. I can't believe that anyone would watch that kind of shit. But then again, that's the vast majority of shit. That's a lot of popular stuff. I'm feeling hurt over here, Phil. That's that's hurtful. I just I want to get the real story. That was a real offer. I was really going to sit down with you and talk to you on YouTube, right? So I'm looking at it and I'm just shaking my head like, what would possess someone like this to want to interview me? It's obvious. It's because they want to basically do a setup where they're going to just attack me, you know? Um, so no, I'm not doing an interview with this guy. By the way, he never asked me anyway. <laughs> so I, mean, I, I love I love that he throws that in too. Like after this buildup. So yeah, so there's this guy, uh, this murderous troll with a body count behind him that uh, feasts on the blood and souls of children. But he never asked me to sit down. That's my real issue with him. Super toxic content out there. But if he had just asked. Complete waste of my time um, to even bother with this guy. So I would not consider interviewing with him. Only on the sole focus that if you look back, you can see so much hateful content he made about me. This isn't like, okay, let me give you some perspective here. Please you do. Look at Let's get some perspective. Like Destiny. All right. Destiny is a guy who, over the years, he listened to all the detractor memes about me, and he's talked about them every once in a while. Yeah, it's hurtful when he does. Oh, there was also this whole thing where Destiny and his co-host at the time... Destiny, by the way, right now, some crazy shit happening with him on Kiwi Farm. Some really funny stuff. Uh, I just didn't get to read all of it. Anyways, uh, he wanted to have DSP do an interview, but in person. So they wanted to fly the guy out to their office, their studio, and basically set up a trap where they would, I, I'm not exactly sure what their whole idea was. They would play champions or something like that. But yes, it was it was basically a trap. But does he fucking sit there and make a series of hateful videos? Does he every moment keep making fun of me? Does he really harp? No, he's the kind of guy who casually hear about something, talk about it, and he moves on. All right, that's called normal human behavior. That's not obsessive behavior. That's not slanderous behavior. You know what I'm saying? And by the way, that's slanderous just one behavior example. Um. There's other people out there as well who are kind of the same, and those are the kind of people who I may be interested in talking with in my interview. Um, not someone who literally campaigned to slander me to get personal benefit. <laughs> he should have done, you know what? He should have done a documentary with iDubs. Like when iDubs did that whole thing with um, the, the fat guy, Airsoft Fatty. It should have done the same thing with Phil. That would have been the best. You know, like Rich from Review Tech USA. Or, you know, like Keemstar this year. Like, these people are out of their fucking minds if they think that I would do an interview with them. They're, they're nuts, you know? Well, you you kind of ended up doing an interview with Keemstar, though. That That's kind of what happened. Anyway, so that's that's the deal with that. No, I'm not doing it. And Rich, of course. Of course, it's not happening. And Rich was really horny for having an interview with Phil for years before the, the actual interview happened. And it's never going to happen. Interview with this guy, Mr. Mitoker. Mr. Matoker. Uh, so there you go, chat. Apparently no interview. I went I went to I went to YouTube. I went to YouTube to see like what what shows up when you look up DSP and Medicare. And here's like just an example. 
I want you to look at the date. Yep. <laughs> Five, six years ago. There's nothing recent. <laughs> There's nothing recent at all. It's Jim makes fun of uh, GTA commentary, uh, uh, GTA gameplay, uh, Star Wars Battlefront, Medicare Edition, and then the SoCast. When I went on Sons of Kojima's uh, little uh, uh, podcast, and then asked them, asked them uncomfortable questions for like an hour. That was the entire thing. Most hateful, vile content. Oh, so ever. Destiny wanted to do a uh, to use cameo and have a bunch of WWE people ask the questions for the interview. Well, I mean, okay, that's not a bad idea, but I, I don't think, I don't think he would have uh, got Never a good seen. job. Maybe he didn't like the picture in the second one. This is how you don't play Battlefront. <laughs> Phil dressed up as a gay, a gay Ghostbuster at a gay bar. Maybe that's what. <laughs> I yeah, I think that was it. I think that was the breaking point when know. Phil saw I don't that think one. It's happening, chat. I don't think Phil is uh, very interested in uh, sitting down and uh, having a heart to heart with me. He it's, indeed it's little... was not. So <laughs> it it trouble. didn't happen. But what did happen was a couple of months after that, and a couple of weeks before the interview, on March fourteenth, which is basically a month before the interview, roughly. Uh, this podcast that few people had heard before, uh, called the Side Scrollers Podcast, just kind of casually announces that they're doing uh, a, a stream with Phil, and Phil was supposed to appear as a regular guest. This was not supposed to be the interview. He just happened to like the podcast and wanted to be on it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But where Side Scroller Mr. Craig went wrong is he announced it and he wasn't supposed to announce this because DSP wanted to be a secret guest because if, of course, if people knew that he was showing up, they would mm, make a lot of noise about it. They would say a lot of things about it and they would pressure Craig into having a more serious interview, which is exactly what happened. So this is uh, Craig announcing it. And I'm going to link all of these things that I'm watching now in the description. I already have them put down, so all I need to do is copy-paste them. Speaking of things coming up as well, uh, this Friday we have our Mario Kart 8 Deluxe uh, Friday Fun Day, where we are actually going to be playing games uh, during the stream and with uh, patrons afterwards, which is really, really fun. And, uh, oh, we have a couple guests coming up. I want to make sure that we promote. Uh, we have a group of guests. Hey, look, look, look at this. Look at these great guests we have coming up. And this is where things go strange. Because you see, whoa, upcoming guest Dark Side Phil. But I watch Phil every day, dude. I'm a big fan. And he hasn't talked about it at all. Huh? Uh, coming up on Thursday, we're going to be doing the... the uh... I don't know. I don't know what what to think of this. I, some people think it's. And you could tell by the way that Craig is about to describe Phil. You could tell that Craig doesn't know anything about the guy outside of that. You know, he does YouTube content and he jerked off, and people make memes about him jerking off. It's gonna be the best. Some people think it's gonna be the worst. Some people just aren't gonna watch, and some people I can't wait to watch. It's Dark Side Phil on Thursday. Uh, also, we have uh, Mark the Cyborg and just booked yesterday. Rebooked after uh, after. He, he got sick, but uh, James Rolfe will be coming up uh, on Side Scrollers once again every Wednesday at 11 o'clock. So, so that picture of DSP just makes me laugh. Uh, but the conversation behind the picture on Twitter, that was just – how do you know people hate him too much? They, <laughs> they, they say, well, that's not the right picture. You need to use this other one where he's doing I that. I saw that. <laughs> sure. There's so know? many photos. There was like 65 <laughs> comments on like one thread. And I was like, right. yeah. If, if well, you guys are go that hard on like you better use a worse picture of my god you hate this guy. Well there's a there's a it's it's kind of a meme behind it because he got caught yeah. on stream, so they they want to use that picture. <laughs> AJ, right. do you know a whole lot about Dark Side Phil? Unfortunately, I, I know a, a lot about Dark Side <laughs> Phil, so yeah. <laughs> so, I watched right. a thirty minute video the other day. It's like, oh, <laughs> There are, are there a lot of 30-minute videos about You gotta keep going. <laughs> are there any questions you'd like me to ask them on, on, uh, on Thursday? Uh, no, but I got one. I want you to ask uh, James Rolf, Rolf when he comes on. Okay, uh, sure. Fire. What, what do you want but, me to ask him? Uh, you know, it's going to relate back to when we get to the whole collection thing. So okay. I'll, I'll, I'll hold it off there, but it's connected. I promise. Sounds good. It's all, it's all coming Sounds together. Good. All right. Well, I guess that was it. Even though there was a different clip with them actually announcing it. And basically, Craig breaks it down as, we're having this 
this guy DSP, you know, he's a gamer. He's like old school and, you know, he's kind of a little bit of a meme lord. Um, and yeah, we're going to have him on. We're going to talk about video games and stuff. And then immediately after that, Craig gets bombarded with information because nobody knew this was going to happen because Phil certainly doesn't talk about it because he wanted to be a secret stealthy guest. He wanted to be a sneaky Italian man. And uh, he probably, when he, sh it, when he showed up, probably would have put on a fake mustache and fake glasses. So this is now uh, the official unveiling of the side scrollers interview according to phil this is from his perspective his pov everyone phil here and in case you've been living under a rock for the last several days i wanted to make a small formal video announcing that i am going to be appearing on the side scrollers podcast here on youtube this coming thursday because i'm appearing on this podcast this absolutely is going to affect my own daily schedule oh he looks so rough on here man like the least he can do is just shave his sides because when he grows that, I don't even know, call it, the beard on the sides, he looks actually homeless. Normally, I would be streaming around 10.45 a.m. Pacific time to start my own little pre-stream. Usually, I have my own level one podcast at 11.15-ish a.m. Pacific time, and it usually runs to like 12.30. Then after that, we usually switch over and we do gameplay for an extended stream until like 4 p.m. Well, as you can see, the Side Scrollers podcast starts at 11 a.m. Central Time, which equals well, I can't see, but thank you. 9 a.m. My local time here in the Pacific Time Zone. What that means is that I'm going to be over there at least an hour and a half to two hours, if not longer. Since that's the case, okay, uh, I'm definitely going to be late to my own content. In fact, I was talking with Craig about it, and he advised me if you could leave your schedule open because we have no idea how long your interview is going to be. Oh, it it's going to be long. Um. It would be great. So that's what I'm doing, all right? So I want to let everyone know, first of all, I'm going to be late to my own stuff. When will I be here? I don't know. I'm going to be late to my own how stuff. How this show goes, and once it's done, what we're going to do is come over here. I'm going to post up on Twitter, at they call me DSP, as well as in the community tab here on the channel to let everyone know, hey, guess what, guys? I'm done on the podcast. Let's come over and let's start my content for the day. Now, what I'm planning to do... So like I said earlier on, there was a lot of episodes of the Level 1 podcast from around this time and before that, uh, like late... 2022 and uh, early 2023 that got deleted because he was having some copyright stuff and he had to delete a bunch of stuff. So there might be a lot of clips that we are not able to find. Uh, but I think this is enough for the for as much context as possible. It's what I'd like to call a decompression stream. After having been on their show for a bit, I want to talk here about what exactly we did on the show, how it went. Uh, hear your opinions on it because i'm going to be talking to them not to anyone else just to them and i'd love to hear what people thought of my appearance on the show and uh if we have time after that decompression if people want to do gameplay or whatever i'm down for that maybe you want to do some hogwarts legacy or something if not we could just chill for that mainstream and then do gameplay that night and then get back to the regular schedule on friday now you might say now wait a minute what is side scrollers why is phil appearing on it what is this appearance okay so to give you some backstory I used to be a fan of a website called ScrewAttack.com in the mid-2000s. This is actually how I was introduced to the Angry Video Game Nerd because he used to put his videos up on their website. But their website was a gamer's website before YouTube was a thing. They were doing daily gameplay videos of countdowns, news stories, and a podcast called Side Scrollers. At the time, it was actually audio only, but it was quite popular. Now, over the years, ScrewAttack shut down. They got bought out by Rooster Teeth. Then they got liquidated. There's been other businesses that have started and stopped. Finally, last month, after like a decade, they decided, well, I should say Stuttering Craig decided, he wanted to reboot this podcast from scratch. And it's been running for about a month now. I can tell you right now, I've really enjoyed the show. I've been watching every single episode. I've enjoyed it a lot. I think it's a great variety show where each of the members of the show bring a little bit of a different perspective on life. They've been talking about all kinds of stuff. Gaming, news, collectibles, just fun stuff. It's a really great show. Yep, we're going to talk like, about right. all the fun stuff. I recommend that you give the show a look over on their YouTube channel, which is called Side Scrollers. And he loves the show now, by the way. And that's uh, something that's going to continue until after the interview. Okay. He loves the show. He's a big fan. He's watched all the episodes. He listens to them in the background with YouTube Premium. It's amazing. It's the best. You should go check him out. Um, so how did it come about that I'm going to be on the show? Well, basically, Craig contacted me. It was a little before their show had been rebooted back in February. He emailed me out of the blue. I hadn't heard from him in 10 years. You know, I had some interactions with Craig. Back so this is happening. 
This happened on March 15th, and he appeared on the on the side scrollers April 16th, somewhere around that, those those days. Um, so Craig contacted him in February of that year. Day, maybe it's like out of nowhere. We'll talk about those on the show. But not having talked to Craig in a decade, he emails me and says, "Hey, we're rebooting the show. We'd like to have you on as a guest." And I said, sure, sounds good. Now, in the meantime, <clears throat> I've been watching the show, and it's a variety show. The guests basically come on, just introduce themselves briefly, and then they jump right into the normal daily schedule of things like gaming news, topical stuff. Like, for example, the past couple days, they've been talking about personal collectibles that they all have, and they show them off on the stream. It's been a great discussion. So I was under the impression this is going to be a normal show where I'm just a guest on it. It was good for variety because people have been saying to me, you know, why did you want to do that? Well... Listen, to all, all oh, was it March 16th? Oh, right, 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 right. March 16th. I don't know why I think it was April. Setup is different, right? I have an alternate new YouTube My channel bad. called DSP Reacts. I'm branching out to react content. I'm trying to do new things this year. Yes, that is correct. He was on show, um, right? hey, 16th of March. Like this, where most of the okay. viewers of this show have absolutely no idea who I am, or they've only heard negative things about me on the internet. Maybe having me as a guest would actually have me branch out and be known a little better. Maybe I get a couple new viewers or whatever checking out my content as a result of being on the show. That would be sweet. So that was the whole premise. But I don't think that Stuttering Craig knew what he was biting off of. Yep. This is correct. He bit off more than he could chew having me on the show because I warned him ahead of time. I said, and this is it. This is where he wanted to be a sneaky Italian man. Craig, I'd love to be on the show, but I strongly recommend you don't really talk about it. I'm yep. not going to tell my viewers until maybe the day before as like a surprise. Oh, yeah. He wanted it to be a surprise and not def definitely not hiding it. Definitely not. This dude that talks about everything that mildly excites him for months. He talks about his birthday that is in April. He, he starts talking about it in, like, February. But, yes, I'm, I'm going to keep it quiet for my fans so they can be super surprised. Um, He decided to announce it on the show on March 1st, and it backfired. And what I mean by that is all of my detractors... March 1st, so he had basically two weeks to prepare. ...flooded this guy on social media, in the comments of his show. You got to ask Phil all these questions about all the toxic things that everyone says about him on the internet. You've got, you all understand you're the only person to have Phil on an interview in years. The quartering was the last one and that was three plus years ago. You got to ask him this question, this question, this question. And basically it blindsided Craig. He had no idea. That I think he was glad that this happened because uh, the alternative is having Phil on super sneaky and then of course, the detractors being like, hey, we didn't know this was happening. Craig, what the fuck is with that? You're not going to tell anybody you're having DSP on? And then it would be, the, you know, all the shit would be on Craig, of course. And that's what Phil would have wanted, ideally. Anything like Because Phil knows. And he only wanted to keep it a secret to protect himself. So he can go there, talk about video games and Street Fighter for an hour, and then just come back and everybody would shit on Craig. This was going to happen. He didn't know I had this many haters. He just wanted to have me as a normal guest on the show, but because of this... And also, Craig had very, very, very many, many, many people reach out to him with extensive documented um, information about Dark Side Phil. So, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure he was happy to have that happen. It's now evolved from, I'm a guest on Side Scrollers, to I'm going to get interviewed on Side Scrollers about all this stupid shit, okay? Okay. And it sucks, because I should be able to do things like everyone else on this planet. I should be able to just go on this show and be a normal person and have fun as a guest. I'm not allowed to do that because of my haters, because of the detractors that follow me around in their own toxic clouds and try to ruin everything for me. I'm just trying to stay in my lane and make content for my own viewers. And I say, oh, this will be an opportunity maybe to branch out a little bit. Oh, but they don't want that. They want me to look bad in the eyes of everyone. So, well, thank you for making that possible, Phil. It was all up to you and you excelled. Now, to when I show up on Thursday, this has to now be kind of a two-hour plus interrogation rather than me just uh, chilling with them, which is what I wanted, all right? It sucks, but it's life. This is what happens. It sucks. Again, it sucks, but he accepts it. He likes the situation. Well, he doesn't like it, but he's content with it. All right? A lot of people said, well, if it's changed, why are you still going to be on the show? Well, I don't, first of all, these guys have been, no, no lie, bombarded with crap from my detractors for two weeks. That wasn't fair. They weren't expecting that. They didn't even know. That is also true. They got a lot of shit as well. That anything like that was going to happen, okay? So now, after two weeks of being bombarded, is it fair to cancel? No, it's not. In addition, um, if anything, I feel these guys are going to be very objective. Here's why. They knew absolutely nothing 
<laughs> the 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 weird the weird blabs just shots uh, frames of blabs appearing in the top left corner it's killing me now i've been bombarded with it for two weeks and they have honest <laughs> questions they just want to hear my side of it they want to hear my answers to all the crap that's said about me all over the internet every single day but that's what you wanted to do right that's the whole concept of the interview is like okay here's the answers this is why i get so much crap this is why it's bullshit and this is it i've told my truth now and it's over and this is the opportunity for me to actually answer those kind of things to an objective audience not an audience that's going to come in with preconceived notions misconceptions and an agenda uh but they also did because most of that audience was detractors instead they're just and most of the top comments on the videos are detractors most of which i've i've i'm familiar with their usernames and they're the top comments so it's it's kind of impossible it's impossible to have an objective audience on the internet the way he wants it to be there to get the answers because they're interested to hear what my side of the story is so i feel like this is a great opportunity to actually get a fair interview out of people rather than someone coming in with an agenda to a gacha interview you see what i'm saying and um yeah remember this remember this for later um and in addition most or all of the things that have been thrown my way the criticisms and the hate and the nonsense the conspiracy theories the nasty toxic things said about me on a daily basis I've addressed them all. If you're a fan of my channel here, you've probably seen me address these things so many different times before, but this is going to give me an opportunity to put it all in one place. There you go. I've this is exactly what he wanted all along. Boom, boom, boom. Here's all these questions. Let me answer them all, right? Never. It's always been, oh, something came up today, new that they made up. Okay, let me address it. And then the next thing, the next week, let me address it. So, But that's now, not, that's also not what he does. That's not what he does. Oh, this thing came out. Let me address it. Let me prove that it's bullshit and move on. That's not what he does. He just says, oh, well, they lied about me. They're fucking idiots. They're dunces. Uh, stop talking about him in chat. That, that's what he does. That's him addressing stuff. It's all together. And if anything, this should be a cumulative answer. Anyone want, oh, what about all that drama about Phil? He already answered all that. Go check it out. You don't have to believe him, but he did answer all of it. If you want to go watch it, go watch that episode of Side Scrolling. There you go. All right. I'm hoping for the best. I'm hoping that this ends up being a good show. I'm hoping that if are, are all parties involved, it's entertaining, it's fun, but also. Oh, it was. Not. Well, not for all parties involved. And hopefully they give me a fair shake. I think they will. Um, and it'll be good to get it out of the way. Because once it's done, I actually said this on my podcast this morning. I'll say it again in this video. Once this is done, it's done. And what I mean by that is if I'm addressing all these things and these are my answers, I don't have to talk about them again. It's over. That's my side of it. If you believe me or not, that's it. It's not going to change. The story's not going to mystically change, okay? So once the podcast with them asking me all these questions is done, that's it. And that's my side and that's all. You can believe me or not. You watch don't my have content. to believe him. Odd what changed. Yeah. Wow. That's interesting. And now, now what he wants to do is have like a documentary or something that is his point of view. He wants this same thing, but for it to go well this time. And he's looking for the safest option. And he sees June the King as being the safest option. But I do think June is more fair than DSP is giving him credit for. And when you're fair like him, then you just can't make DSP look good. You just you just can't. Or not, that's your it's impossible. Your choice. But at least it's there. And then I can move on and say, no more lingering unanswered bullshit questions about conspiracies. They're all answered. Check it out. Okay? So It'll how much like time I got, let's say approximately four hours until the level one podcast starts, which I might end up watching, but uh, we'll see. The weight off my back, I we'll think, see. to get this out of the way, and then we can just move forward with everything constructively, you know, for the future, okay? So if you're interested, 11 a.m. Central, 9 a.m. Pacific. Yeah, thank you, Thursday, Boat Knight, for the March super 16th, chat. March 16th, on the Side Scrollers channel, podcast with me on it, asking me all the tough questions, I guess. Um, after that show is done... I'll be starting up content here on my own channel. I don't know when that'll be. I can't promise you because I don't know exactly how long the show will be. But hopefully, fingers crossed, it goes well. And uh, we can have a good streaming day. All right, guys? Thank you so much. I'll see you all Thursday, maybe on the show. If not, I'll see you in my own content here. Thanks for watching. Young out. Hope for the best. See you then. Yeah. So now we're going to take a quick trip to the Twitter machine. And this is what he posted the day before the actual interview started existing, right? A genuine open question. 
What kinds of questions would you like me to answer on tomorrow's side scroller podcast? Try do try to be descriptive and intelligent. I'm going to do my best to answer everything on the show. So this could actually help prepare if you keep insults out of it. And then, of course, what do you guys think was going to happen? Because here the replies are open. This only got 16 likes and it got 78 replies. So let's read some of the top ones. Why was WWE Champions on your phone when you said you didn't play it anymore? This is not doctored and is still on your YouTube account. And here we link the direct, direct clip, the direct daily rap where Jasper, eh, there we go, where Jasper exposes him. You see here in the corner, this has been confirmed to be, I believe, the, the faction screen, the faction warfare, whatever they call it, when you fight with each other factions. So this question was answered. Uh, here I don't think, uh, yeah, DSP did not reply to this, but yes. Uh, then we got Meth Bear. You said you have evidence from contacts that you were wrongfully departnered on Twitch and terminated on Teespring, but refused to show it. In the same video, you said those who believe without evidence are sheep who are meant to be led. Will you show that evidence? That's a very good question. Uh, he did not end up showing that evidence or any other evidence. I guess the, the closest we came to a piece of evidence was him showing a piece of paper that apparently had his bills written on them. And it took him like two minutes to go and get the piece of paper. So it wasn't, he didn't even have it prepared. Anyways, uh, if he asks about your fighting game skill, can I also get a follow back? And, and then Phil replies, this is one of the few, if not the only one that he actually replied to. Everybody else asking about champions. Uh, considering your feed is full of advertisements, no thanks. So there we go. And they actually did not ask about his fighting game skills. So this guy wouldn't be followed regardless. And yeah, very positive. I want him to ask about your WWE Champions account down from the rafters. I want to know how much you had spent on microtransactions to get the developers to give you a username that is over 15 characters, which is what everyone else is limited to. That is also a, an interesting point. And the whole renaming your account, that will always be very interesting to me in how it works. And I would like more insight on this. I'm curious about your thoughts on the future of gaming. Do you think virtual reality will become the norm? Or will traditional gaming always have a place in the industry? Well, this did not get answered because we didn't talk about video games on that podcast. Uh, they should keep the questions unknown until the actual interview. So you have to answer on the spot and no lies would be prepared in advance. That is true. Because the few questions that he had a, a canned response to, you could tell is a canned response. It's kind of like when, when a rapper shows up to a freestyle and he just spits a bunch of bars that he had written beforehand. You can tell. You can tell that's not, you know, on the spot. It's not really a freestyle. Um, Duty asks, Phil, at what age did you slide into Pandalee's DMs? Was she 17 or 18? That's also a good question. Even though I think he's answered many times, she was always 18 since they started talking. Do you think you owe an apology to the 11-year-old you threatened to pimp slap? That is also a good question. And then we got an Eddie Kingston I clip. I hate you! I hate the air that you breathe! Oh, uh, this is not much of a question, but more of an exclamation. How much of the vest streak money got spent on Gotcha, Booze, and DoorDash? That is also a very good one. As you can see, a lot of very quality questions. Um, then we go. Then we got DSP Reacts lawyer, Daryl Mulberry. So there we go. We, we got one channel that got an actual dedicated lawyer. Why do you feel inclined to treat viewers of your stream with such disgust? Good question. Is it wrong for you to feign financial distress on stream while ordering hundreds of dollars a week in DoorDash? Good question. Why do you lie about what you spent when the bank leaks have shown otherwise? Good question. And that one kind of gets asked. Kind of. There is one spot in the interview that I wish could have got expanded, but unfortunately it didn't happen. And it has to do with the bank leaks because apparently DSP um, implied that there's multiple ones and the ones that the actual... Well, he implied there's multiple... Ugh, what, what the fuck? Uh, identity thefts. It's 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 a clusterfuck. We're gonna get to it eventually. Why do you op openly mock souls likes whenever you play them? This is well, because uh, they're not made by FromSoft, unless it's Lies of P, which is great. Uh, why do you staunchly defend Derek? That's a good question. If anyone else spammed the chat like that, 
does uh, would they be instantly instantly banned? And the Derek question almost got asked, but Craig knew not to go into specifics because when you go into specifics with that and you ask him specifically about Derek, you get a canned response. And we almost got a canned response. Uh, why did your answer to playing mobile games change over time? Can you admit that was WWE Champions on your phone during the time you were playing with Jasper and your phone was on camera? Well, the answer is yes, he does admit. I don't really keep up with all the DSP lore, but have you ever explained the video from last year? And yeah, well, this is basically the champions one. Again. Question, is DSP still into horses or just land whales? Um, I don't know. He might have various different interests in... I don't know. It depends. There's still the conversation. He might be into dudes as well. Because he's into bears, according to Baldur's Gate 3. So many things. All the animals. All the animals. Um, oh, this is a this is a good one. This got nine likes. Um, oh, and, and this is even better because he started responding here to to two of them. Okay, first this one. Why do you advertise your streams as a positive place when your attitude towards most things is so negative? Very good question. If a friend asked me for a chill positive streamer and I recommended you, why would you? Uh, what would you think his reaction would be? He'd probably think I'm insane. Which yeah. Probably would. He's not very positive. So here we have Kyle Denson, who says, Do you actually play WWE Champions? And no, I don't want to see any personal bank information. If yes, who honestly cares? It's your money. Right? And then Phil responds, You know I answered this honest, honestly. You know I answered this honestly tons of times, right? You know the times he said he doesn't play any mobile games? Or the times he said he doesn't play any mobile games in a major way? Because that's exactly what he said. I don't play any mobile games in a major way since, like, 2018. In a major way. But that's that's some nice honesty, Pigler. Uh, the sad fact is, those that want to create drama have hidden the answers under the piles of crap. So it's everybody else's fault that he can't answer the question. Why don't you just make a tweet that says yes, and you just reply with yes? And then, of course, there's a bunch of replies to this. Yep. There we go. And here we got immediately getting fact-checked. He's immediately getting fact-checked. Except for all those times you said you didn't before you said you did, and then you never denied playing mobile games. The quote is, I've said a million times I don't play mobile games. Immediately bodied under his own response. Do you consider yourself to be your own worst enemy in some situations? Why did you say that you never wanted to do reacts, but now you're doing it? Why do you feel the need to call some people idiots? If they ask some genuine questions. And Phil, of course, believes that these are actually three really good questions I would love to answer. And we got the answer to one of them. Why did you, why are you doing reacts when you shit on him for a decade? And it's because he changed and people asked for them. So there we go. I'm going to stop here. Uh, but there's one more tweet. This is the one right before the bombs drop. And it goes as thus. Uh, yeah, you get to see it. I have thought about this all day, and now I'm excited to be on the podcast in the morning. This will be the end of all the nonsense from my perspective. All the nonsense from my perspective? And I'm ready to move on. I'll get it all out there, and then never bother addressing any further drama again. See you then. Oh, very interesting. Very interesting. So now we get into the actual raw situation the actual raw deal we get to the side scrollers podcast with mr bernelski and this is gonna be something else because i'm gonna watch the whole thing uh i'm probably not gonna end up doing it now because it's five hours and it's probably gonna take me eight hours to get through the whole thing but i will leave the chat replay on the screen as well so you guys can see and you can basically experience it as close to the reality that it was because this chat goes, wow, it goes nuclear. All right. We don't even have. Oh, so we get the intro. Patreon.com slash But let's, uh, before we get right into it, let's first take a, take a quick look at the, the side scrollers channel. 12 hour stream. Um, I don't know. This could be it, but I don't know. Maybe not. 
Imagine if I get through this whole thing in one sitting. That would be crazy. Because today I actually have to, the time for it. Scrollers on YouTube.com. You never know, dude. Hey. So the Side Scrollers channel, um, I guess, let's go to their oldest videos, see when they started. So this is uh, Craig wanted to have something, call it Craig Skits. I have a podcast. Then he had a, a an interview with uh, AVGN three years ago, and then they kept doing their stuff. And then at some point they decided to reboot the the podcast itself. Um, DSP was the first. I mean, as you can see from the view count on this, this got two hundred seven thousand views. So it's pretty significant for a channel of that size. Because around that time, I think the channel had I don't know maybe. 2000 uh, not 2000 10000 blames the detractors but if his content was acutely good the true fans wouldn't care about the wouldn't care yes it shows that he doesn't have real fans uh, yeah well that is true if he did have real fans that they would also like i said earlier like somebody else said in chat they will also stand up for him and support him so he would feel like he has some kind of a a base of people that support him and believe in him and believe that all that shit is garbage and apparently they just don't show up so I don't, I don't know, man. Big ups, uh, Farfik Nugan. I, I totally killed, uh, butcher this name. So yes, uh, side scrollers. They were doing, you know, uh, gaming pop culture podcast. I guess they still do it. They just went into the the anti woke direction, which I can't blame them for. There's a lot of stuff to talk about in that in that field in that community nowadays. Uh, but they did have a huge show off of Phil, of course, because it was. It was super hype. And then they kind of stuck with it for about a week. And Craig was uh, dabbling in some, in, you know, the monetize the haters stuff, etc., etc. Um, and eventually they just dropped it and moved on. Because uh, when you're a channel like this, you're just starting to, to stand up and, you know, move forward and build up your channel. You don't want to pigeonhole yourself into doing, like, stuff like this. And for them to talk about Dark Side Phil for, like, weeks. So they talked about it, I think, as as well as possible in the shortest amount of time, and then just moved on. I'm stuttering, Craig. Welcome to the number one gaming and entertainment podcast on planet Earth. Side scrollers. Big show today. Big show today, huh? Oh, Everybody you don't even see. know. Joining us, as always, not Travis Keys. Travis is going to be manning up on the uh, chat today because we know the chat is going to be super busy. Blabs will also be hailing up on social media. So big ups to Blabs and big ups to Travis for doing that. But joining us as always, uh, Mr. Freeze, the greatest gamer in the room. It's Adam Krigler. Hello, Adam. I I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna live that Mr. Freeze down. But I, I kind of like it actually. I gotta, I gotta learn all of Arnold's really cheesy puns from from that movie, so I can drop those periodically throughout the episodes. I think that um, that would really endear you to all those who who love the freezing aspect of you for sure. So I, I can't see believe a, I'm still freezing. Anyway, we have, an, we have an additional guest too. It looks like in your in your lap. Uh, yeah, this is Osiris. He's hanging out. Uh, say hi, buddy. Uh, he's like, no, no, I'm I'm trying to chill. Yeah. All right, and he's chilling. Excellent. He well, wants look, a treat. Yeah, he's hanging. <laughs> Before we get to our, our guest today, uh, I want to let you guys know some things we have coming up on the show that I think are, are actually really, really important that hopefully you guys will uh, will want to come back for. I know we got a lot of folks coming in today. Hopefully you guys uh, want to hit the subscribe button and uh, join us because we are a uh, show we go every Monday through Friday. Yeah, yeah, uh, so yeah. joining us and if community watching over on YouTube, we have today's show on the internet. But okay, so here here's when we... We kick into Usually the we, game. We uh, kind of talk news and we talk about fun stuff. Today we are uh, diving in deep with, uh, I, I guess some would say, the most hated man on the internet. Uh, we are doing an interview format, and this is something that was not meant to happen when initially asked. Okay, let's actually run a quick poll in chat, since it's, this is going to go a long time. Is DSP the most hated man or, on the internet? Alert. I was there on Meerkat's chat watching this live on the edge of my seat. Unforgettable experience. Five it was crazy. Entertainment, big ups. It was it was crazy. I was lucky to come home from work at the, the right time and set up everything on time and, and be able to witness this with everybody else involved. It was so much fucking fun. I cannot even describe. Uh, to bring Oh, he is not. But I'm gonna I'm I'm not gonna just give you a binary option. I'm gonna give you the let's say some ranges in percentages, okay? Bear with me. Phil on the show, but uh, it is quickly morphed into that. Um, you know, I, I've talked about how 
Um, I, I have this degree in journalism that I got 20 years ago and I haven't used it. And I, there's a reason why I didn't go into that field. It's because it sucks. And uh, journalism is, is just, just trash bag of an industry. It's, it's just a huge business. And we can talk about that all day long. But um, okay, okay. It, ha it has nothing to do with with your abilities as a journalist. Okay, <laughs> well, I, but I would like to point out that I am no, I am no journalist. Okay, I think I, I think I'm being fair in this poll. I gave you four options, so you got top five percent, top ten, top twenty, and top fifty percent. So this means like if he is in the top five percent of most hated people on the internet, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I am no journalist. Okay. And, uh, he's not the most hated. He's the most toxic. Uh, I wouldn't even say he's the most toxic. I think uh, the gun, Ethan Ralph, is way more toxic than Phil. And he's not even, like, holding it back. He's just letting it go. I think that's that's the biggest thing. Just letting it wild out. But he is one of the hated people on the internet. You can say that. <laughs> I, I have a degree, but I am not a journalist by any, by any uh, way, shape, and form. But with that said, we are going to do our best today. We know there's a lot of questions. Uh, and uh, comments and concerns, and we're going to touch them all uh, because we have been we've been assured that there nothing is off the table today, and we're going to go for as long as we need to go for everyone to uh, feel as good as you can possibly feel, which is next to impossible because we can solve cancer, we can cure cancer today, and find out who shot JFK, and it still won't be good enough for some people. And you know <laughs> what? <the> CIA. <laughs> Actually, I, I would I would say that they pleased the overwhelming majority of people with this i think they did an outstanding job easy sorry. <laughs> i sorry <clears throat> i'm good established I'm good. established I'm good. um but with all that said we're going to go today and i'm looking forward to uh diving in deep and uh so i guess with all that said let's get into this I i'm excited to bring on uh dark side phil phil how are you holy crap there we go. Camera. And instantly, instantly, his fucking audio is too low. Because of course it is. It always is. It's on now. You guys, you guys actually did it. I'm on we the did show. what? I'm on the you show. You did it. I mean, wait. You guys, listen, here? listen, listen. You guys, you I can't hear you. Run. I can't hear you. Hello? I'm just joking. I can hear you. Uh, oh. you guys, okay. <laughs> dude, you guys, they're just razzing him, dude. For a month, I've watched every episode. It's a great show. However, you made the big mistake of having me on your show. As of today, March 16th, you guys are officially canceled. I'm sorry. It's it's over. Nah. You can't cancel something no, no. that doesn't oh, care to be canceled. And we don't really care to be canceled. You can't, you know. Oh, so. man. He, like, right like right off the bat, right out of the entrance, we're just dr dropping terrible jokes. And, and doing, like, look at the fucking face he made. The little, like, droopy goatee face. We're sponsored, <laughs> we're sponsored by the, the people out there, so we're good. <laughs> exactly exactly when you when you're not worrying about what sponsor you're gonna freak out today because you accidentally said something in the wrong way it's a lot of relief you can just be honest with your audience and that's something that i love about what i do on the internet yeah 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 whatever dude. well let's get into this man um I, i'm excited to have you on i i think this is going to be a, a really telling um you know hour two hours whatever it may be three yeah, hours try five six six days whoever however long it may be um so I, I was told pretty much after we after we announced this uh, that you were coming on the show, I was told that you should not come on. I was told not to interview you. Why do you think that is? Well, I mean, considering the yeah. So I know I know a thing or two about this. I think I've seen the email itself that was sent to Craig, and it's obviously a DSP fan that sent it that was very, very scared of DSP making himself look absolutely pathetic and embarrassing himself to the degree that he actually ended up embarrassing himself to. So that guy, well, he tried, but, well, it didn't work out. The show is, you know, possibly the, the most hated guy on the internet. Uh, I don't think it's, it's it's rocket science. You know, people don't like me for various different reasons. And, you know, they, they come at me with so many accusations, so many crazy conspiracy theories. And I'm just a small time guy trying to make content on the internet and, and, and make a living doing it and loving the interaction I have with my little audience. Um, and every time that I address it, any of the stuff that they say about me, it's it's completely counterproductive. It doesn't help anything. It just exacerbates worse. Um, so why have me on a show when people feel like all I'm gonna do is not answer the questions you're gonna ask me, not provide any additional information to things I've already said. You know, people think I'm just going to be here for a fluff piece or something. Like, you guys are going to... Super interesting. Super interesting. 
Um, let's get a replay of that, and I'll tell you what what kind of uh, made an impression on me. Is not answer the questions you're going to ask me. Okay, so not answer the questions. And then the, the next thing you might think he's going to say is not provide any evidence. Not provide any additional information to things. Not any additional information. By which, obviously, as we're about to see, he just means useless context that doesn't really help his case and doesn't change anything. He said, you know, people think I'm just going to be here for a fluff piece or something. Like, you guys are going to kiss my butt for two hours or so. I don't think so. I think this is an opportunity for me to come on a show and be honest, transparent as much as I can. Again, I've already said this up front. I got to protect my family. I got to protect my business. I can't be showing ridiculous personal information about any of that. But at the same time, uh, the reason that I feel this interview will be different from what they're expecting is because I am going to be an open book. On my streams, I try to curtail the nonsense. My viewers are not there to hear me talk about my bankruptcy. They're not there to hear talk about... Then why you talk about it so much? $100,000 on a mobile game or how I... <laughs> my viewers are not there to talk about the bankruptcy. And he got like dedicated alert streams, emergency streams about not having money, having to go bankrupt and how that affects them and so on and so forth. Groomed someone in the past. This is ridiculous nonsense. They're just there to listen to gameplay. They want to see me play a video game or talk about news or something. And every time it brings up, oh God, he's doing it again. He's, he's entertaining the trolls. Why is he doing it? So now, this interview will be an opportunity for me to finally open up about all these topics. Nothing is off the table. I've said this to the guys here. Ask me anything. I will address every single thing anyone wants to ask me. I don't know how much I can talk about it. Again, there's some legal things going on and everything, but we'll talk. And uh, this will be the focal point from now on. You want answers to all the drama? Watch Side Scrollers from March 16, 2023. Phil addressed it. And if you don't believe him, that's okay. <laughs> outstanding plug outstanding shout out this has aged as well as a glass of iced coffee it's everyone's subjective ability to judge whether or not someone's being truthful or not right so you can't make someone believe you but at least we'll have one situation where i sat down i answered every question that you threw at me and even if you don't ask certain questions I'm probably going to bring up topics oh, that yeah. people want answers to. So that way it's all out there. And Look at this, dude. He was so hyped. He was so hyped for this. This was like the best moment in his life. And then five hours later, he was in denial that they ran a train on him. And invited Keemstar to run a train on him too. Fine. I don't want to have this crap on my content anymore. I oh, damn. Move on with my community and, and breathe a sigh of relief after today. And I'm hoping that some closure will come out of this. So there. nothing's off nothing's off the t off the table today. We can talk about whatever whatever we want to talk about, um, which is great. Um, I don't. Okay, okay. I I feel he was feel honest. good about that. And he wasn't an open book. Didn't answer any questions, and his only defense was I didn't know. Do it with no evidence. Yes, yes. Well, that's the open book, I guess. Is uh, ask me questions, but I I can't tell you. I'm just gonna let you ask me the questions. It's uh, it's kind of like Tony Khan when he went on Ariel Helwani's show. I think that's one of the things that, once again, there's going to be things that we're going to talk about. Big ups, uh, Copeside Phil for the that five. Dude. I feel is as long as you're honest, and we're, we're going to push you on things, Phil. You need to understand mm -hmm. that we're going to push you, and and mm -hmm. I think, you know, the one thing I said over and over again is is I feel that I'm a fair interviewer, a fair interviewer to myself, fair interview to the person I'm interviewing, and fair fair to the audience, and uh, that's one thing to keep in mind as we go along along here. So. I guess could I, uh, could I very briefly just make one statement before sure. we begin? I want to publicly apologize to you guys, to your other hosts. To <laughs> Look at this guy. He's so nice. Because for the past two weeks, you guys have seen your content derailed because of me. I never intended for that. I kind of was worried it would happen, and it happened. I don't control this black cloud that follows me around the internet as much as I try, but I still feel bad about it. it it's, it's not your fault that because you decided to have me on your show as a regular guest that now you had to put up with two weeks of drama and nonsense. I'm hoping this, again, will put some closure to it as well. It's not just about me. It's about you guys also being able to say, okay, we did it. We had the interview. And can we get back to normality? I love your from? show. I okay, I figured out. I am a long about time that. fan of Screw Attack. I used to watch everything you guys were putting out in the mid-2000s before YouTube was even prominent. I, I've watched every episode of your show since you rebooted it. I, 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 I'm so upset that this has become about me somehow and I'm done with it. Like, that's why I'm, I, I want to apologize to everyone. Never intended, and I hope that we can move on from it today. Yes, but his initial intent 
was to be a sneaky guest on the show, and then everybody would shit on Craig endlessly for not asking him questions about his bankruptcy in WWE Champions, but instead talking about fighting games in YouTube in 2010. That was his original idea. He was going to get so much shit thrown these people's way, and they wouldn't even know it. And he knew that. He knew that and still wanted to keep it a secret. So, Philly, you just killed our show by giving us an endorsement. Thanks, man. Appreciate go. that. <laughs> oh, you're no. horrible. You guys suck. I hate you. Oh, you're going to ask me terrible questions today. I really hate you guys. All right. Well, well let's let's get into some of these terrible questions. And I think this is this is something that I've heard. Um, the questions that I'm going to ask today, they're, they're a good mix of oh, questions that have been on the interview. interview. I love Craig after I hate Craig. Yes. Well, Craig mistreated me. That was it. I hate Craig because he mistreated me. And before that, he was like, I, I love Craig because he's my buddy from 10 years ago. Watching Craig and Adam realize in real time that Phil is a compulsive of liar. Look, uh, Craig basically went through the tractor boot camp. And I don't mean this as in people were trying to get him to, to catch DSP in a gotcha moment or trying to make him look bad on purpose or something. But um, it's... Uh, you got to give a shout out to ALT. He was also involved in this, which basically was informing Craig about the ways that DSP manages to weasel himself out of a question and give you like a non-answer. So Craig was able to recognize when those moments happen and was about to avoid them. Like it happened multiple times in, in this interview. Uh, while uh, Adam was kind of the neutral. He was just sitting there absorbing things and observing what is happening in the moment and responding to it in real time with like a clear mind. And that's why it worked so well because they had the, you know, you can say good cop, bad cop dynamic, but it, it was two different perceptions on this, uh, in this situation. Internet, there are questions that I want to know. There's questions that uh, some of your biggest detractors have asked me to ask you. Um, so they're there. And I think that's, that's important. I want to get all sides of this. Um, so I, I think a, a great, a great starting point for here is when you're streaming, Phil, who who is streaming? Is it Phil or Dark Side Phil? Who? Well, it depends on okay. It depends on what I'm streaming. It also depends on what time period you're talking about. Today, you're pretty much almost getting hundred percent the real me. Of course, every once in a while it's funny to over dramatize something that's going on. I have a segment on my podcast called Old Man Yells at Cloud where you know, I, I, yeah, I really that's, that's no longer a segment. It's just the whole podcast on um, topic I'm talking about. And I over dramatize, like I'm so concerned about it. Or if I'm playing a game that really is, I'm dying a lot, or I'm playing an online fighting game, I'll emphasize the fact that, oh, it's unfair. It's bullshit. You know, I'll always ham it up, but that's kind of my shtick. That's always been kind of my shtick. And I think my actual fans know that, but you know, the internet wants to pretend like otherwise as if you have never watched my content over the past 15 years that i've been a content creator on the internet you would have seen this and we already we're already getting a pre-stream this is just a regular pre-stream but here what is contradicting is that uh he's been talking about how back in the day he was a character he was this guy that used to ham it up and say things he doesn't mean just to get a rise out of people but he's saying that in right here he's saying that that's always been his shtick and still is but I thought now you're just the genuine raw Phil. I guess not. That I do in certain situations. But today, I am so different. Than and I guess, I guess I'll have to boost everybody for his audio to be fine. Because no, now you, he's going to sound fine. Everybody else is going to sound too loud. In content for 15 years, you go through several different stages and evolutions. And you know, OBS is going to compress YouTube, it. It's going to take way care Way back when, it was all about being a character. It was about over exaggerating it was about being dramatic it was about saying the risque thing that's going to get people talking what did dark side phil say in his playthrough today are you kidding me i can't believe he said that um but what happens is over time things change you know and there was really uh, how can i say almost like a, an epiphany to me in 2017 a lot of different things changed in my life i had a lot of things that kind of rebooted and Business-wise, one of the things that rebooted was I went from being someone who focused on on-demand content, you know, videos that you would digest and watch offline versus being an interactive online streamer. And when I became an interactive online streamer, I realized, wow, wait a minute. I've been doing this wrong the whole time because... Yes, like, I, also, I also don't believe he was ever a character. I don't think there was ever a character involved. He was just more, more relaxed to just be himself. And nowadays, he knows that if he is himself, he's just going to get banned off of YouTube. You know 
eight plus years. We can all only hope and pray for a pass to an ASP interview. To know the levels of contents and toxicity overload. Hello, boyfriend. Yeah, we can we can pray, but we all know it's 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 unlikely, man. It's unlikely because the pasta. This dude, he wanted to sue Phil for real, for real, like actually sue him for what was it? Gross negligence or something or wire fraud? And then everybody laughed at him, and then he had a mental breakdown. I've just been talking to a camera and pretending like I'm the only one in the room. I have an audience live watching me. What the hell am I doing? I'm ignoring them. And once I started having an interactive conversation with my audience, it became so much better, this social experience of having meaningful conversations, seeing their live uh, reactions to things I'm doing on stream. And so I realized I don't have to be a character anymore. I could just be me. He's playing a just... character now before he wasn't. You know, there's a lot of truth to that. Because now the character is like positive Phil, which is the guy who constantly talks about how awesome he is and how positive his life is and everything. But all his actions lead you to believe the opposite. And that's why it's so easy to, to tell that it's, it's just a character or at least it's, it's not the genuine him. Talk with these people and be honest and, and about my feelings. about. And me. of course, you can see chat is popping off. He's going to do 20 minutes on every questions if you let him. Then we got another guy saying, stop the rambling. Then we get... Phil rambles too much, and everybody's already tired. We just started, and they're already tire tired of the filibustering. Or whatever. And again, yes, every once in a while there's an exaggeration. Absolutely. But that's part of the fun of it all. You know, we're not all just here to be Mr. Serious all day. How boring would that be? But at the same time, yeah, today I would say I'm a lot more laid back of a person, and I'm a lot more honest and transparent with my audience with, with the discussions we have. Although every once in a while, yes, there's obviously everyone wants to every once in a while ham it up and be a cartoon character, joke a little bit to get a little a little laugh or a little rise. But for the most part, I would say what you see today in my content is is more authentic than it used to be. So, so dark side, so so dark side Phil is your oh, and we got Jaha in chat who says okay, so he's not a character since 2017. Copy. I mean it up, and and right now you're just Phil. Uh, yes and no. Again, I mean, I, it's what, cool to be. Bro, able to... what the fuck? They just asked him right now. Is it just Phil? And he says yes and no. Well, you can you can just say right now it's Phil. We're having an interview with Phil. That's like imagine if they asked him that on his bankruptcy. What is it? Like, well, you know, like, like what 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 does it when you when you say there are times that I you know I'm over the top. Like, what, like, give me an example of of what that means. What does it mean when you say, well, I'm over the top and and. Why would you, you know, if there, the internet has changed, right? Uh, there was a, there was a point you, you are correct in saying that, uh, back in the early two thousands, you know, uh, into the, you know, when, when you kind of rose to prominence, there was, you know, you, you took your personality and you put it a little, uh, it would exponentially make it a little more, a little more over the top, but the internet has changed to authenticity. People want to get to know, and, and I don't disagree with you there, but when you, when you mix up. And you're, it's almost like you're sending mixed signals to your audience. And most people, they they haven't watched you for 15 years. You know, the idea, the idea of saying like, "Hey, I I've been uh, I've been on the internet for 15 years. You should know you should know how I act." But the reality is, is that most people see you through clips, uh, through Twitter or or YouTube, and they they don't know you. Very correct. Well, the truth is that he's only using the the character excuse when he gets in trouble, and the rest of his time. He just claims he's DSP. And many people use the character excuse when they get in trouble because it's a very uh, common, convenient excuse. So regardless of how long you've been on the internet, I mean, I, I've been doing this forever and, and the vast, 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 vast majority of people watching right now have no idea who I am. So, uh, you know, you treat every viewer like a, like a potential new viewer. So uh, kind of walk me through that because I, I do think that's kind of, you know, like provide me with an example of, of what, what DSP is versus Phil. Sure. Uh, right, right now I'm playing a game. It's called Wo Long Fallen Dynasty. Oh All my right. God! It's games made by Team Ninja, not from Soft, but it's very much meant to be like a a from software style game, like Dark Souls or Bloodborne or Elden Ring. It's ultra challenging. Things are gonna kill you with one to two hits, right? In my opinion, this is my opinion. It's not very good. A lot of people disagree with me. They love this game. Okay, I don't like it. I think that it, it's a cheap knockoff. I feel like it's very wonky. It's not polished. I will say those things in my content. But in the heat of the moment, if I'm running through a stage and I get, oh, instant kill, cheap death, I freak out. Oh, you son of a bitch, this game sucks ass. It's the worst game ever. The game devs don't know what they're doing, blah, blah, blah. That's that's the dark side feel over-the-top persona kind of coming through. I could just sit here and say nothing. 
and be like, oh, that sucked that I died. People don't really tune in for that. In fact, the reason people are watching me play that game is because they want to see that over-the-top reaction. So I'll ham it up every once in a while. I don't hate the game. I don't hate the game devs. Of course I don't. Yeah, and you can see that the chat is blowing up at this. Nobody is buying this. No, they tried to make a good game. Nobody is buying this. I don't think it's great. What, do you get this level of hate for just hamming it up when you're playing a Dark Souls, uh, Souls Souls-like video game? Are you serious? Is this the actual answer? But... You know, you, you, you go over the top every once in a while. Now, just like but, you but said, is that just something that Phil would do also? Right. Well, uh, well, Phil would do that, but Phil wouldn't be like, like, for example. Okay, the game. Oh, more examples. Like counter, it would be interactive, chill, meaningful content to track how many times he lies during the interview. Oh, well, to do that, I want to go like all out and be able to find, find him lying about it. Like actually pull up the receipts. And I don't think I got enough time to do that. I can have a, a contradictions counter. I mean, it's a cheap debt. Do you really think that? We're I... already like 17 minutes in. So I guess next time, like five years from now, I'm going to rewatch this. That upset about it. It's a game. I, you know, it's a big deal. Oh, Everyone cool. gets triggered by games. I mean, I get, I get triggered. Exactly. And thank I, you, uh, President Tanaka, for the suggestion. Really. A lot of people put a filter over what they say and do when they put out their content. Why? Because they're trying to be marketable. Right? They're trying to say, And like, this is insane, man. It's insane. He's been talking for like five, ten minutes. We're already talking about how other people suck. This is just the pre-stream. Sponsor. I want that opportunity. I have never filtered myself on the internet. That's why a lot of people don't like me. Be okay, well, I guess you just answered your question why people don't like you because you're unfiltered. And that's not a good thing because unfiltered Phil is just negative, toxic asshole. Because they don't want truthful reactions. They want Mr. Marketable, Mr. Smiley. And when I say things like, oh, uh, this game I really don't like because this is unfair. Do you think that game companies are happy about it? Of course not. You know, but, you yeah, but, know. But, but, Phil, but, but Phil, hold on. Like, you, do you think that they're really, do you think that those game companies are, are like looking to establish a relationship with like, like they're not. I mean, the, the reality is, is that these companies are looking for streamers who, who stream to 5,000, 10,000 people Correct. as opposed as opposed to, you know, a couple hundred. And that's right. Like, like what, whether it's you saying or, 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 or DSP saying it, um, I, I don't, I think that if people were watching to see those over the top reactions, I think they were watching for that a decade ago. And I, and I really mean that, right? Like I, so look, I had a character named Evil Craig, right? I, and Evil Craig was the was meant to be the essence of of just the <laughs> and and now Craig goes on his own tangent about his own alter ego, internet troll, right? <laughs> I did it for ten episodes, twelve episodes, whatever it may be. Oh, dude! And I stopped. Uh, big up Squan Rodriguez for nineteen months. Are you watching the whole five hours of this? Well, if I do, I'm gonna miss the podcast. So at some point, I might jump over there and then come back to this. But I can't do the whole saga in one stream. That's impossible. Because then I have to do the post show, which is on DSP's perspective is like three hours. Doing it because I realized that that I was I was um, growing an audience of people that were negative and trolls, right? And it's funny. It was funny and it was so still so silly. But by by you starting with the idea of saying like, look, I'm going to overreact big. I think there's there's two prongs to this question. Number one, if people were really watching to see your over the top reactions, don't you think they'd be making clips of that? instead of instead of other clips that they are making and those would be going viral but they also are making clips of the overreactions if we were to say that him playing wolong and being angry at the game devs is him hamming it up well snort hogan duty streams aqua teal hate army whoever is clipping that they're gonna clip this and they're gonna upload it and say in the title dsp goes super toxic on the wolong game and people are gonna watch it and see that he went super toxic so that's not helping him either and number two, if if you're really not enjoying the game, why are you, why why play it? Why play it in the first place? That's a great question. That's something that's actually been. But but, but start with start with number one though. Start with number one. Like why if if people were watching to see your over the top angry reactions, don't you think they'd be clipping those as opposed to clipping other things? In truth, yes. I don't know what they clip because. I have so much stuff on the internet about me that I don't really watch a lot of it. I hear it secondhand from my viewers or in a chat or whatever. Um, no, I, I, I understand what you're saying, totally. Uh, case in point with Wolong, 
there's totally some people who are turned off. Yeah, I can put this on on like, like 1.2 speed. Let's give it a shot. Watch him play it because he's gonna get angry and he's gonna oh, turn this into just this rage fast, ball that we don't like watching. We like seeing the real Phil. I'm just gonna leave it on time. raw. There are people who I've told my audience I don't like this game. I would like to move on. Be this raw dogging kind of it. into the second half of your question as well. I say, I've been very transparent with my honest with my audience about this game. So I don't like it. I feel like I, if I'm going to play a FromSoft game, why don't we just do a second run of Elden Ring, a new game plus run? And a lot of people are down for that. And others are like, no, Phil, we like seeing you rage. This has been a part of your shtick for 15 years. This is a lot of the reason why we tune in. I'm seeing more attendance on my Wolong streams, and I'm getting more, honestly, more support on my Wolong streams because they want to see that rage come out of me as opposed to me playing a bunch of games where I'm more laid back and relaxed and chill. I have a bunch of those in my rotation. That's... My core fan base will show up for that and support it. But I love like the way he talks about his fan base is like he's talking about a government and there's different parties in the government and they all want different stuff and they have like a spokesperson or you know somebody that they elected to talk for them and they they go to Phil and they're like yeah Phil so my party says that we love you and this game is great you should keep playing it and we're gonna support it. You will always get he talks about it in these like super overly complex ways about. Things that are much simpler. Many things about him are much simpler than he wants to make him out to be. Different group of people. That, that and one really of his I... biggest problems ever is taking himself way, way, way too seriously. I feel is one of the reasons why I'm still here 15 years later. There, I have different audiences. I have one audience that'll come and watch me be the real Phil. The relaxed Phil. I just sit back. I'm chilling. I'm playing a game. I'm not going to rage. The game's, you know, nothing really too challenging, right? I got, I'm playing a Elder Scrolls for Oblivion right now. That's exactly what that playthrough is. It's relaxing. Right. But then when I play Wolong, now it's time for that old Dark Side Phil to come back out. And now a whole new audience shows up. It's funny because you'll watch one of my streams. This is the Untied States of Phil. Yes, yeah, the Untied? The, the United States of Phil. That's that's what it actually was. Hey, we figured it out. Streams will say, well, the Utopia. Phil gets around 200 to 400 viewers a stream. Okay. But in reality, when you look at my metrics on YouTube or my analytics, actually, those are like thousands of different people. One stream gets 200 viewers, the next stream gets 300. Those are 500 different people. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if they're different people. Uh, I, I think that's too far-fetched. And you can't really see that, I think, on YouTube analytics, or perhaps you can. But I don't think he knows how to read analytics. It's not hard, but I just don't think he does. Because people are coming for different kinds of content. When you've been around as long as me, you realize you get people from all over the world and for different reasons. Um, if I were to but are they be... sticking? Are they very good question? Are they are are you retaining them? Staying though, because 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 you know if you have five hundred people come in and, and they're just kind of coming out, that's that's actually bad for the algorithm. That's bad. You you want people to stay and subscribe and and uh, you know you have these these new people coming in because they want to see a new game, not necessarily because they want to see you, right? They they're interested in the game, not necessarily you. If you're playing a game that's that's topical or new or something along those lines. Uh, again, yes and no. I would say back in the day that was the case. Like new releases, I would get ginormous spikes in attendance because I actually used to have but DSP Gaming, which is my gaming channel, used to be one of the more prominent gaming channels for Let's Players on YouTube over a decade mm -hmm. ago. Mm -hmm. I was in the algorithm. I play a new game. I would see my, my attendance double, triple just because I'm playing a new game. I don't get that anymore. You know, it's been, and there's some of the things we'll probably talk about today. One of the reasons was that, that why that happened. Um, trolling activities, you know, false copyright strikes. It kicked. Oh yes. Out of the let's go. Uh, let's start talking about the trolls, please. So today, it doesn't really matter what I play. Honestly, uh, I mean, yes. I'll why would anyone want to play up that kind of character? His logic is absurd. That is also true. Uh, well, even though there's there's plenty of YouTubers nowadays that that play some kind of a negative stereotype character, but I think the most interest, uh, the most important thing about playing a character is knowing, uh, being good enough at fleshing out the character to the point where people can distinguish when you are talking and when the character is talking. I'll play a new game and I'll get it. And this just doesn't happen with him because it's not a character. Break IRL. Yep. And it, oh, it, it gets, it, we haven't even started getting into the part where it, he, he breaks. Like they legitimately ruined his mindset. He was walking out of that interview like, uh, I think I made that analogy on Twitter. It's like you get hit by a car but you're, you're having a, a rush of adrenaline, so you can't exactly tell how much the damage is. You don't know how hurt you are. So you just end up walking away, and then you, you discover like a couple of days later, you're completely fucked up. A little bit of a spike, but as for audience retention, it really depends on what I'm playing and, and who's there for what. Um, there's some people that don't care what I play. 
I could I could sit here and play. Right, you, you, got, you got your hardcore. You got your hardcore. You can play Tiddlywinks and people will show up, right? Exactly. But right, I, do, I, I will get an increase when I play a rage-inducing game or a multiplayer game where you know there's going to be an element of challenge where I can either persevere or I can really fail miserably against people online in a competitive setting. People like that. And that's the variety that I bring in. But, yeah, I, I, like, I understand what you're saying. It would be great if maybe I was just one kind of content. But I found in the 15 years playing kind of both sides, it gets you different audiences. And it's worked for me. At least that's what I feel is one of the keys to my longevity is tomorrow, if they never made another FromSoft game, I'd be okay because I still play everything else. I would I'm not okay. be okay with that. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't be okay with that either. I love those games too. As much as I rage at them and I'll be angry in the moment, I absolutely appreciate and love them for what they are. Well, clearly you, know? you just need to get good. I'm just, you know. Exactly. I'm a terrible player. Everyone knows this. Well, let's 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 talk about something real quick. So, so you early on had this perception of the king of hate. That was something that you that you marketed, you created, or whatever, right? Whatever it is, that was your thing. The king of hate. You had the king of hate dot com and all that stuff. And now you have now you're Phil, right? But do you feel that? Um, do you feel that that still follows you around? This idea of of built around like look. James Rolfe, Angry Video Game Nerd. He's clearly a character. People know that there's the Angry Video Game Nerd and then there's the character. Exactly. That's exactly what I mean. You just need a clear distinction between the characters. But your perception is that there's this there's this hate around you, this negativity around you, right? Do you think that that has followed you to the point to where, um, you know, regardless of if they're coming to watch you, Phil, or DSP, that um, that, that is... A, been a negative detractor for you this is the whole hate moniker absolutely um and of course i guess with this would be a good time to talk about what the moniker means because a lot of people think the king of hate means oh that means that phil's just a hateful person towards games and game developers and everything else he's just going to rage on his stream and just hate everyone and that's never what it was anyone who does five seconds of research to the what does the king of hate mean i've answered this question so many times in the 15 years i've been a content creator but no one wants to hear the answer the answer is I used to be a competitive Street Fighter player back in the 2000s, okay? And there we go. It was a really weird situation because Street Fighter wasn't big like it is today. Street Fighter was on the downturn. There were no new fighting games out. So the way to get attention on the competitive Street Fighter community was building up drama. So right. I would go online and I would be the biggest internet troll to everyone in the Street Fighter community. I would make fun of them. I would just destroy them online. And everyone okay, who so feels like the so biggest So let's, fa let's fast forward, right? We, we was, sure. we, this has been well established. This is a decade ago. Let's talk about today, though. Like, do you feel okay. that? Do you feel that this this has followed you around? Do you feel that people? Do you think? Do you think that the King of Hate moniker is still relevant? Today it is not. It was because when I started, my whole my, the meaning behind it is when people hate on you. You don't use that to become a victim. You don't use that. Oh, really? To crawl into a ball and hide in your corner and oh, what, people don't like me anymore, so I quit. But that's, uh, dude. What would happen when Jaha wanted to beat him up? That's exactly what he did. Exactly. Instead, you use that as a way to motivate yourself to do better. For example, when people say, uh, "Actually, no." Originally, his explanation of the King of Hate was that he's motivated by the hate so he can hate on people back. So it was basically fighting fire with fire. That's what his idea was. So the, these motherfuckers hate me. Well, I'm going to use that hate to fuel myself and hate back on them and push back and fight back. Hey, you're but now it's like I use the, the hate to motivate myself to be positive and succeed. You're never going to beat this game. Which obviously is not working, of course. Because it's so tough. Ah, you say I can't do it. You're hating on me. Say I'm a bad gamer. I'm going to beat that game just because you said I couldn't, right? You say, I'm, I'm a bad content creator, I'm this, I'm going to fail, I'm going to... No, I'm going to prove you wrong. I'm going to use that hate around me, and mo I'm going to be the king of it. I'm going to motivate myself with all that hate to be a successful person. I've, this is a mantra I've used in my entire life to continue on and be successful. And that's why I have so many haters on the internet. I use that to fuel myself every day to come back and say, no, I'm going to put out a great, meaningful stream for people, regardless of what these idiots say on the internet about me. Um, but it follows me. You're absolutely right, because people say... The king of hate is not that Phil owns the hate against him and motivates himself. They say, he's a hateful person. Take a look at that thing he said 10, 15 years ago. That racial joke he made. That ridiculous sexual comment he made. Oh, you know, here you see you see Craig's facial expression? Because he knew what was loaded in the chamber. He knew what was happening. He knew what was going down. And he was like, oh, okay, Phil. You know the, the, the old saying, do not interrupt your enemy when they're wrong? 
Well, he's not interrupting Phil at all. Hate is, and then they'll say, look, he used to have a website, thekingofhate.com, and then they'll reference that stuff and say that I'm a, a bigot or I'm a, you know, I'm a racist or I'm a sexist. You know, they say it to this day. They're, they're probably saying it right now in chat. They used to say this uh, over 10 years ago, by the way. Just keep that in mind. Keep that at the front of your mind because that's going to come into play very, very soon. You know, okay. it's not true. Well, well then let's, let's, I, I wasn't uh, planning on talking this till later. Over. Yeah, well, go, go you, ahead, Adam. When you climb to the top of, of like the hate mountain and claim to be the king of hate, don't, don't you think it, it's almost inviting people to try to take you down? You know, you, you said that you made that your thing in the Street Fighter world. And then as time went on in the YouTube realm, that's what you were, I guess, made your 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 position on the Internet. No, you're the king of hate. So, like, you can almost expect people to come back at you and try to use that same kind of vibe. And, you know, I, I've seen plenty of clips of, of random shit throughout the, the past couple of weeks because I didn't I didn't know who you were. Right. So I, I'm I'm still kind of new to this YouTube realm. And, uh, you know, I, I've seen I've seen the way sometimes that you I, and of course, this is what people share. Right. So what I've seen is you kind of letting it get the best of you in some cases where you're letting that almost get under your skin where I mean, if if you want to be that person on the Internet, you kind of have to be able to take it as well. Um, I, I just I just wanted to point that out. You know, it's almost like you kind of asked for it by being the king of hate and making that your thing it kind of was like all right well i if i'm gonna dish it i gotta be able to take it as well i 100 percent agree with you adam today but i've been on youtube for 15 years and when i started on youtube <laughs> oh was... my god everything he says begins with when i started on youtube well it's no incredible let's players making a full living doing it the way that I ended up doing is the background noise his audio yes i was i'm almost kind of like a case a history lesson look at what phil has done and don't do it right look at all the mistakes phil just made in the last 15 years and if you want to be a, a someone who makes gameplay content on youtube don't do what that guy did because he screwed up you know when i started 15 years ago I, I i was like i'm just gonna roll with what i do in street fighter it worked there why not do it on youtube okay I this is getting sped up a little my bit. hobby i had a nine to five oh, job craig was letting phil dig his own grave throughout the whole interview and it was a beautiful thing to watch happen live yeah well that's how you do it that's how you do it let him talk let him talk and as long as you're prepared to answer just just go and for it something i came home and did two three hours a night i would pump out some gameplay i never took it seriously i never thought it would be my job or anything so i was thinking i just rolled down my over to youtube now fast forward two and a half years after i started on youtube i lose my job Oh crap, what am I going to do? Can I monetize my YouTube right, presence? Right, right, I right. guess I can. But now I'm the king of hate. Everyone knows me as the king of hate for two and a half years. This is my shtick. This is my moniker. What do I do? You know? I, <laughs> you ask him to go click on the ads, the Bill. Did you've already you asked him to click the ads? That's what you're known for. And well, so uh, it's been rough. It's been rough. I'll, I'll tell you this. Two years ago, well, excuse me, about a year and a half ago, I had, an, I, I had a revelation. I was like, I have to move on from my past in any way that I can. I have to try to get rid of this moniker. This is something that people were actively using to weaponize against me. They were going to businesses that I was associated with and telling them, you have a bigot on your website. Do you know that? Look at all these things that he did. And they would link to things, little one-off jokes from 15 years ago. Right. As if it's something I, I did today. Ooh, this is interesting. Now we transition into something good. Well, and they would say, he's okay. the king of hate. So I said, I have to stop this. I have to get rid of the website, rebrand myself. And now that's why I, I'm, I do not live by that mantra anymore i don't even mention it you know so but what have you done what have you done phil to to change the perception of that what have you have you changed the look of your streams have you changed your production value did you take a break did you say look i'm i'm leaving and i'm gonna come back but but i, I need time to kind of rethink this uh, like did you because you're still going under the it's the same still the same channel still dsp still dark side phil I, like um what 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 have you done to to change the perception of that? I mean, it's been a consistent line the entire time of right. of Phil Phil Phil. So what have you done to change that? Because it, it sounds like you're saying, well, you know, woe is me, but ultimately it comes down to your actions. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and if if you were to watch my content, you know, five years ago, ten years ago, fifteen years ago, hell, two years ago, and you were to watch my content today, you would see a difference. Like for example look how everything looks behind me right now right up until just you know six months ago i still looked like shit okay so 
the superficial changes, cosmetic changes. Is that what we do? We re we change the name of something. We put different color uh, decorations in the back. But what about the behavior of the King of Hate? Does that change? Because that's the most important thing that should change. I'll admit that, you know. I but you know it's because I don't have the know-how. I don't, you know. I'm 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 very much crowdfunded by my viewers and fans, and it's they who contribute to everything and. In this last year and a half, there's been kind of a reinvigoration. Let's change everything I'm doing. Let me listen to feedback. Just in the last year, I started re doing React content. I was the biggest. <laughs> and he brings this up in front of two regular people. Like, it's a groundbreaking achievement React in content, content creation. I crapped on it constantly saying it was terrible content. It's the lowest. Guys, guys, guys. I changed because now I react to videos on the internet. And before, I didn't like doing that. Form of content on the internet. I hated it. And then I started listening to my viewers. They're like, Phil, what? why are you so ignorant about this stuff? You know, you got to start to open up and be a, a more laid back guy about all this crap. If you don't want to be the king of hate, you got to listen. And I started listening. I started doing different kinds of content. I changed my setup. I'm trying to change the perception around me. But the problem is... It wouldn't matter if I went away for two months and rebooted my channel and renamed it or whatever. There is such an overwhelming stigma against me on the internet um, that it wouldn't work. These trolls. Oh, would... so he didn't bother changing his behavior because it wouldn't work. So he just did a bunch of cosmetic stuff to pass that off as change and pretend like he's a different person. Thank you for the answer, Phil. Just follow me no matter where I go, what I do, no matter how much I change, they don't want to believe it or they pretend like the change hasn't happened. So that they can keep rolling on with their their hate trains and you know it, it sucks i would love to do a full reboot and rename dsp gaming it wouldn't matter within within a day that's dsp gaming don't be fooled it's the same guy you know so well, i have ch tried to change and and do better things and make more laid-back content you watch my content today way less of that rage kind of stuff way more chill content interactive stuff meaningful content with my viewers i feel but the stigma <laughs> remains well, let's 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 talk about something real quick that that can add to that stigma, right? Um, and and I think this is like this is important. You said the light bulb went off, you know, about a year ago. You got to change. You, you change your background and stuff. Um, but 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 I want to bring up like there's still jokes that are made that. Okay, so here I see a lot of people in the comments giving them shit for you know dwelling so long and harping on and on about the the slave trade joke. It is directly related to these two segments that we just saw. It's directly related to the Phil character versus the Phil person and how much he has changed over time. Directly relates to that. Um, that don't necessarily, like, they don't fit today. And I want to I play one for you really sure. quick and just kind of get your reaction to this. Okay, so this is, oh, this is yeah, so you know, you know where this is going. And I, I want to watch oh, this yeah. so, so we all understand what's going on here. And now Chad's going to blow up. Just watch their chat. All right, boys. Prepare the slave trade. We're selling a right off for profit. <laughs> you know, oh, man. Right. Oh, we get a nice little DSP manual neck yeah. zoom in. Stay with her. Right. She's too valuable to escape. Oh, and that, that just Lots like, of money. damn, that's, that's the cherry on top is the too valuable to escape. That should have been a bigger meme. And look at, uh, look at Adam's face. Cause you could tell he's probably seeing this for the first time. And he's like, what? <laughs> like, damn. In the, the deafening silence in these couple of seconds. That's okay. fucked up. Yeah. So, so, so what's going on there, man? <laughs> like, let's, let's talk about that. Like, how does that's, that, when, when you see that. Oh. When, when you see that, how does that make you feel? What are you thinking? Do you regret that, saying that? Like, is that edgy sure. humor? Well, first of all, I have an honest question for you guys. You've, you've now seen it. I don't know if Adam has ever seen that clip before. Okay. No, is I that haven't. the first time? Okay. What do you think the joke was there? I'm just curious. What do you think I was trying to joke about? That you're selling that girl to the slave trade? Yes. Literally, it's that. Okay. That's what it sounded like, and that's pretty fucked up. Okay. Now, from what reference are you? Are, do you think... Um, how can I say this? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll approach it from the detractor perspective, okay? From the detractor perspective... No, I want to hear, hear your perspective of what yeah. you meant. 
Oh, I love that he cut him off. Because this is what's going to be a bunch of fucking nonsense talking himself in a circle. Right, okay. yeah. And doing, like, mocking voices. Oh, Phil said the slave trade. Slave trade. He's fucking racist. Like, well, you know what? It's, the, it's, you well, know that's going to happen. What the detractors mean. Like, it, for, like, for me, that would have put me on the detractor side. Because it sounds like you were making a joke about selling that little girl to the slave trade. How is it not that? Like, what did you mean? Oh, no, that that's, it, that's absolutely... That's the joke, but there's a difference between saying that's oh. okay and it's funny or the ridiculousness of the situation. See, you just saw that clip completely out of context, correct? You don't know what the, what's going on in the game right there. No, okay, the context explain. the context is you changing. That's the context because this is old Phil. This is King of Hate Phil level jokes, and I thought you were reformed and born again, and now you're doing the same jokes you did in 2012 or 11 or 10. The context, then. That sheriff is a corrupt sheriff. And now, now we just add a bunch of fucking nonsense to this. He is actually orchestrating a situation to try to murder people inside a building to protect his secrets. He's like a dark guy who controls the whole town. And no, he's a dark guy. No one knows. Like, like this one. Is he a character? Who's this? Everything. Everyone thinks this. He's a dark guy. guy. So you. This is being revealed throughout the plot of the game. He's a scumbag, right? So, the joke is this guy's such a scumbag. He's he's saying to the dad. I'm going to save your daughter. Give me your daughter. Let's take him in and rescue her. But in reality, he's such a scumbag, he'd probably do something like that. He'd probably, you know, traffic people. That's the joke. Now, is it a joke that's acceptable by today's standards? By 80% of people, probably not. I agree with you. Do you think that's a Should joke? Like, do you think that's a joke acceptable by any standards? Like, 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 I don't, I don't. Even, even a decade ago, two decades right. ago, three decades like, ago. Nah, a decade ago would be perfectly fine. I mean, YouTube was fucking crazy. Come on. And, I think, and, uh, and, and nowadays it could be perfectly fine. If we're not talking about this dude who acts like he's the most purest person since Jesus. It's, it's um, like, uh, I just want to hear your thoughts on that because like I, you I can make that joke really funny. There's inappropriate content. And we've, think, we've, look, we've all been we've all been guilty of edgy content before, you know, so. I think it's it's dark humor. It's definitely skirting the risque okay not to say that it's I, I've skirting the risque from other people but that doesn't make it okay for me to do it i know that um and you know there's well, especially but especially with 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 what's following you around this this mm -hmm. the, you know your reputation right do you think that if you truly if the light truly went off in your head to say like i gotta change don't you think it would be like well maybe maybe i should bite my tongue on this one i may be thinking it but mm -hmm. but how about i bite my tongue on this yes i 100 percent agree with you and it's, it's a working process. It's something that has to happen naturally over time. It's not something that can be a switch that's flipped because, uh -huh. you know. Again, so there's still I'm leftover so... dark side Phil inside. And he can't fight his true nature of the character that he built. It's, uh, it's, very, it's very deep. It's actually super deep. Done this for 15 years back in the day. That's what people came to watch. That's the content they wanted from me. That's what got me popular on YouTube. That kind of ridiculous unacceptable over-the-top dark humor joke okay um today it's not acceptable i know that and but the thing is those jokes still click in my head i absolutely should have not done that joke i will tell you that right now one million percent you know but it's a working process and here's where you have to have some kind of an air of fairness or at least you have to see the big picture all right i've been doing this for 15 years i've been doing it full-time for a job since 2011 I do it six days a week full time. Six days a week I'm here full time streaming. Um, I have over a hundred thousand videos on the internet. Okay, people will always find something that that, that moment of weakness, that stupid thing that I said. I know, ah, stupid that Phil. Why moment did of that weakness. I make that joke? But once it's out there, it's Dude, out. Dude, come on, you man. What you can do is apologize for it. Say you're gonna do better and try not to do it and move on. Now there's a reason why I'm on the show today. Okay, this is what, March 16, 2023, and you had to show a clip, one random clip from last summer. You didn't show something I did in the last week, the last month. You showed something from last, the one moment of weakness. Whenever I do something stupid on the internet, it gets hyper analyzed, you know, looked in with, with a microscope and blown away. This is what Dark Side Phil is. Have you watched the last five years of content I've put out? There's probably. Okay, yes, I'm a human. I make errors. Absolutely. And I'm stupid. And I do dumb stuff when I get over emotional. This is not the norm on my streams. People see that clip out of context like you guys just did. 
And if all you knew of Dark Side Phil was that joke, you would hate my guts. You'd be like, what a, what a scumbag. He made a joke about child trafficking. What kind of a horrible person thinks child trafficking is funny? When you watch it in context, it's yeah. not as bad, but it's still bad. But when you know, watch the con- all of- The context that you explained didn't make it any better. I agree, it's not fine. <laughs> I'm not sure which character you're <laughs> oh using. man it just got cut off he got brexit tackled like portraying so you were were you acting as the sheriff in that situation yes. that's why i did that's why i did like the accent yes i, okay. I don't know I, I i think that like in a situation like that like we live in a society <laughs> i love this segment because it's just so weird that society now where like look i under, i understand that going yeah, that that's why i did the exit okay into this interview <laughs> that literally every second of this is going to be analyzed and adam understands that and you understand that right but mm-hmm. literally everything you say there's a camera on you at all times especially when you're a live streamer you know and i, I mean for somebody who who does this for a living i just i just feel like you you have to be able to bite your tongue at, at sometimes and you need to know better you i mean you said to yourself you did this which was was flipped and uh i understand that i totally understand i am very forgiving of mistakes right but when there's a pattern of these things uh that go back over the course of, of, of time like it's no longer a mistake it's it's a you know it's a continuation so i, I don't know i i think look if you're saying that that the con- I, i'm i'm also a big believer in taking people at their word right uh up until their actions show different um so you're saying that over the over the course of the last since that joke, you've been pretty squeaky clean and you and you haven't made inappropriate jokes like that that are that edgy, I guess. I I, I don't. Here's the thing. I don't want to say that because I'm here six days a week full time. You know, that's a lot of my life. And I guarantee you, if that I is say, true. Right yeah. Now, if I say, man, yeah, that was it, Craig, that's all I remember. Immediately, right. there'll be other examples tossed out right now. On the, they'll find it. Right. They'll I understand. Find it. And that's the problem is. But when what is the problem? What the what? Look. So the problem is, uh, big ups, uh, sleepy squid for the sub. So the problem is that he says that he's changed over and over again, but then you present him with clips that show that he hasn't changed, and that pisses him off because it goes against his narrative of having changed. Well, uh, good job, Phil. Good job. You are hundred percent on the internet at all times with the amount. Of- the little weasel voice he puts on here. Oh, later, later when Keemstar joins, man, we hit critical mass on the Mickey Mouse voice. Content I put out on the internet, they will always find another example or whatever. I am actively trying to change. What I will say is this. You would be challenged in the last maybe two, three years to really find a running pattern of me doing really bad jokes like that. Okay, maybe you'll find a few. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely a flawed individual, but... You're not going to find it as like, like you wouldn't say, oh, here's 47 times within a year that Phil did that. I know for a fact he's a scumbag, right? You'll find one time here, one time here, one time here, and then they oh, blow Phil, it up on the internet. You just, you just gave so many different people a, a reason to do exactly oh, they, that. Oh, they will. I know that. But the thing is, they do it anyway. It doesn't matter what I say or do. This is what they do. So now you, you said that the, the <laughs> switch in your brain you know was was off so that you you made that joke like do you do you have it in 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 there that it's like you thinking like when you said that you're like maybe that was too much or you were just free flowing and that's just kind of you um no don't lie about this if i'm streaming okay so we didn't want to outright lie about this so we're getting the long answer and a joke pops into my head and and I feel oh man that's probably too much today I usually will not say it. usually it would be maybe an extenuating circumstance or uh, just for a second a momentary lapse I feel like that what that was was a momentary lapse because I've done it for so long I get this weird observational humor in my head and my, you know my brain is going a million miles a minute is this, this here's a joke here's a joke here's a joke here's a joke right but do you think and, that's observational <clears throat> humor though like that's I don't <laughs> like it's I don't know like, I, I'm not one to like there are people who make like there are comedians who make jokes and they're edgy and such like that i guess do you fancy yourself as a comedian like because you're telling you're telling you're telling us that people come to your streams to watch you he is an unintentional comedian i'll give him that he's better than brandon schaub who is an intentional comedian you know uh rage react to streams and and you know uh things like that 
I don't necessarily, and I don't know. I'm, I'm asking, and I think this is a better, probably a better question for your fans. Are they, are they coming to watch for, for those edgy jokes, or are they coming to watch you rage? Because I don't know, man. It, it just, it doesn't, it doesn't fit. You know, that, that's, no, that's I a agree really. With you. I agree. I actually agree with you today. I should not have made that joke. I know that. That today you're 100 percent correct. 15 years ago, even 10 years ago. It was a different climate on YouTube, and people were looking for that. That's who I was, and now I'm not. So this was last year, you said? That was probably summer of last year, yeah. So, because it it just feels like a a big leap from going from a sheriff who is, like, trying to kill people to seeing a little black girl and thinking a slave trade. Oh, no, no, you said it. Now you said it. Oh, you said it. You said black girl. You said black girl. You said black girl. You racist. You fucking KKK member, Adam. Adam the racist Krigler. You said it. That, we got him, guys. We got him. He's canceled now. It's over. On That's screen. correct. That's correct. And herein lies the problem. What? I didn't think that. In my mind, it doesn't mind, matter. It doesn't I, you're matter. You're right. You're right. You're right. I agree with you. But in my mind, I didn't even see that. I didn't think that. That's okay. you know, the joke was this is a scumbag sheriff. He's literally lying to everyone. If he's going to traffic someone for profit, I wouldn't be shocked. It wasn't, she's a black girl going to the slave trade. And that's that's stupid of me. Why the hell did I not make that connection in my head? Because I'm stupid. Okay. You know, I admit that. I'm dumb. I, I don't know I, if I, I believe that. You don't have to. That's fine. Okay. You don't have to believe me. I, you know, I can't make you believe me. I didn't think of it at, at one moment. Did I ever think, oh, she's a black girl. Make a slavery joke. Absolutely not. It was about child trafficking, essentially. And that this guy would have probably done that because he's such a piece of garbage. <clears throat> Okay. Okay. Thank you, Phil. Let's talk thank about you. this segment was way too long, mainly because DSP's answers were way too long. So I understand the impression of they're they're wasting valuable national television time on this. I get it, but it wasn't because they were so pearl clutching about his joke that they just couldn't let go of it. It was about the whole narrative that he's changed without actually having changed. He hasn't even changed his T-shirt. Well, nowadays he did, but you can see him wear this T-shirt in like 2011, probably. You're, I, I feel like we can. I, I feel like we can go on for. Biases. Phil don't know he's racist. Uh, unconscious biases. I don't know much about that. I guess it's just recognizing unconsciously that people are somehow different in some way, but uh, disliking them for that and joking about them being like that—that's a—that's a different thing to me. You know. Uh, for an hour about this clip, but we, you Let's know, move on. L- l- 12, 12 you know, hours. It's like if the first thing that comes into your mind when you see somebody of, let's say, from a different race is the first stereotype that you can think about them so you can make a joke about it, that's more of a more than an unconscious bias. That's just telling me that you got something against those people in particular, whatever race it is. Show well, coming up, folks. Right, right. <laughs> let, let's let's talk about this. Um, so it seems like your biggest detractors uh, are some of your earliest. Yeah, fans. it legitimately is like level one racism. You just see somebody and you're like, what, what, what is the first thing I associate with them as a negative stereotype that I can insult him about? And then you just do that. They, they were fans who have turned into detractors. Why, why do you think that is? An interview like this. That's one I would love to see. Uh, Onision interview like this. He did. He did a stream with the drunken peasants. But Onision, like he's super confident in himself, and when with him, when you talk, when you talk with him, is is like, how do I describe this? He always like makes he filibusters in the same way as DSP, but in a more kind of intelligent way, you could say. So you constantly get lost into looking up definitions of things because he's constantly talking about, oh, what's the definition of grooming somebody, and then you gotta pull it up and then you got to debate him for half an hour what constitutes as grooming so you, you can never like you can you can never have a, a, a an actual healthy discussion with onision <sighs> um so i mean this might be a long answer my fans will know it but again i've been doing this for 15 years my first 5 years that i did it all right i had absolutely no effort to make it professional at all i was being a jackass on camera okay and I didn't even have direct capture for five years. I was having a camera pointed at my TV. Everything looked like junk, okay? But it was a joke. It was like, I don't care. I'm just some normal guy filming games. I'm terrible at them. I make risque jokes. I'm swearing at them. That was the shtick. That's what everyone liked back then. And then basically what happened was after doing it for about four to five years, someone made a video. 
And the video was called, This is How You Don't Play Metal Gear Solid 2. And this was a playthrough I had done on Metal Gear Solid 2, where I did my usual shtick. And my usual shtick is, oh, I suck at the game. Do I, and is it my fault that I suck at the game? Of course not. It's the game's fault. It's Hideo Kojima's fault. So I blame him. I insult him massively during the playthrough. I'm just raging at this game constantly. My viewership loved it. But someone made a parody video essentially taking out the moments of me doing that. Taking out all gameplay moments that would have been considered good or fun or entertaining and only focusing on basically the cringeworthy moments. They made this montage and it blew up with popularity on the internet. Okay. <clears throat> and essentially what happened was all of my shortcomings as a content creator for five years, these things that people liked now became, oh, Phil is not like his contemporaries. He's not putting effort into his content. He's just a jackass. Look at him. He's a, he's a joke. So now let's make fun of him. And what ended up happening was people would take every playthrough I did moving forward and make a this is how you don't play video about it. And my my fan base turned on me. Admittedly, if you would like, I'm not going to go into a giant explanation. So, so been, your, your fan base turned on you because of what a video that somebody else did highlighting like if that doesn't yeah. make sense, Phil. It, like, yeah, it doesn't make sense, Phil. Everybody turned on you because somebody made a, a highlights video of you being bad at a video game, and then people started hating you as a person because you were bad at a video game? Yeah, make it make sense, Phil. Make it make sense. Oh, uh, we haven't even got to the parts that don't make sense, like at all. Like, did you did you get did you get bitter when that happened? Because when oh, I of course yeah, you did. Oh my god, yes. So do you think that do you think that bitterness changed the way that you were a content creator? Did you did you like add that into your your shtick as you say? Uh I don't think so. I think what happened was I reacted so bitterly to it. In hindsight today I look at it and I'm like that was an opportunity. I could have taken that and run with it. I could have done my own or I could have highlighted those and laughed at them, but instead Again, it was a different yes, climate. Yes, 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 yes. That also applies to the things that come out about him nowadays. He could have done his own, like, toxic DSP clips. Let's say he uploads a video on his channel, DSP rages at glitches in Star Wars Battlefront. Instead of letting everybody else clip those and get the views themselves. He could have, he could have, but it's not going to happen. That's just not him. Because he takes himself way too seriously. And that's kind of the appeal of him as a lol cow is somebody who is so unserious, taking himself more seriously than many, many other people on this level or higher levels take himself. Today, everyone who makes content has all these methods of making a living, correct? We have also, yes, he, he did try making a this is how you don't play that I guess his fans made and it didn't take off because it's not genuine. It's not it's not earnest. Patreon, we have crowd. It's fabricated. Actually. That didn't exist back then. Back then, I was someone who had a full-time job, and the job was putting videos on the internet with monetization on them. That was my so only this was stream. this was after 2011 when you lost your job. Oh, correct. Yes, I lost my job in late 2010. I was doing YouTube for a living for about two years when the "This Is How You Don't Play" movement started picking up. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, the way I saw it, and this is now I know this is stupid. I thought people are stealing my content, man. If someone takes my content without my permission, edits it together, and only shows the worst of me. That's going to highlight myself and my business in a very negative light. That's going to make me look like crap. And instead of people laughing with me, now they're going to laugh at me. And therefore, that's theft. I outright said this in my video. <laughs> that's stole theft. my content without my permission. How dare you? This is bad. This, you know, today, I realized how dumb that was. You know, it's many years later. And let's no, be honest. No, 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 no. Up until, what, two years ago, he was calling Tevin a criminal because he was stealing his content. This is a, a thing that's still going on. Just look up on Pig Pig Go stealing my content or something along those lines. Try and play around with it. You're going to find like dozens of mentions. The bubble was going to burst on ad revenue on YouTube one day anyway. I don't oh. think it was ever going to last forever, but, but I was an idiot. I thought I actually went 1 million percent bitter against it. And when that happened, people saw that change in attitude of me. Wow, Phil used to totally just not care about anything. Now all of a sudden he's always bitter about people joking about him and stuff. And that It is also like crazy poetic how this happened because at that point he was the king of hate. And the king of hate got rattled so hard by, let's, let's just call it a mostly innocent montage of him being bad at video games. And being bad at video games is not really a, a huge sin. Uh, as far as I know, it's not illegal. And he had such an extreme response that it, it engaged more people to do that, to look for that response. So the king of hate 
he couldn't withstand like any hate just goaded them on to do it more and more well and uh, now... that's what you just said right there so you're admitting that you you added you added this bitterness but initially <clears throat> like two minutes ago you said that's when they turned on you before it like, admitting that you actually were getting bitter so don't you think that like that kind of correlates like maybe it was that moment when you didn't own up to the fact that people were making fun of you being this king of hate guy now going to they're stealing my shit i'm fucking pissed about it uh what the fuck and now everyone's like well, who the fuck is this guy you gotta own it if you don't own it then like why sh you know then then you're just a joke so it felt like you just kind of like let that run your ship that you were you were sailing correct I have, I have nothing I could say to counter that in any defensive manner. That is, it's a mistake I made. My my reaction to this is how you don't play directly fueled the fire for more people to keep doing it and to escalate further. Because yep, absolutely. it's just a movement of Phil's a bad gamer. He doesn't deserve the success he has on YouTube because he has no production quality. He just, he's a rager, you know. There's no, you're, you're okay. not going to watch a Dark Side Phil playthrough and get any kind of knowledge of really how to play a game at a good level because he's not good at games you watch to watch him rage and make bad jokes and stuff but I, it became instead of watching his raw content to reward him with ad revenue watch the this is how you don't play video so he doesn't get paid for it and just make fun of him instead and my well i mean those people wait 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 those people that would just regularly watch the this is how we don't play they are not your target demographic to begin with if they're watching a video that is exclusively comprised of your failures they weren't gonna go and watch your playthroughs that's not what's gonna happen actions one million percent fueled that i will admit that now over the years it got worse and worse and that's i'm sure we're gonna get into how it didn't, wasn't just about phil's a bad gamer anymore it became everything else under the sun and we can talk about how that evolved over time but it's my fault it is my fault that people have originally turned against me on the internet 100 percent it is okay so you feel that your reaction to the this is how you don't play is what really parlayed your fans into becoming detractors? Yes. And it's not all of them, but absolutely back then, I saw people who had been longtime supporters and fans disappear only to years later crawl back into, you know, as, as someone who was crapping on me. Crawl well, back? They're crawling back. <laughs> fans disappear. And they vanish into the woods, and then they crawl back as trolls and goblins and ghouls. <laughs> I didn't, the way I saw it was, and this is, again, this is my, I'm, I'm such an idiot. I admit this today. You know, after 15 years of doing this, you realize how you change as a person and how you can see from a different perspective. My, mon or my mentality was, I'm the popular YouTuber. I'm, that's that's still his mentality, by the way. I'm the guy putting out all these videos and everyone's watching. I'm making money. Except he's not the popular YouTuber me. anymore. How can you say that I'm doing something badly? I'm the one who has the successful business, not you. So who are you to throw criticism at me? That was my attitude. What a dumb attitude to have. What a, an idiotic attitude. Everyone knows that you need to actively be listening to your viewer base and your fan base and working with them to create a product that's meaningful to them. What is epic is that we got to see the climax of this whole feedback saga um, in the form of the suggestion box, which, well, it, it was great. And I guess it's no longer active. That That is over now, I guess, because he called people entitled and they wanted instant gratification. And at that point in my career, it was just put the same shit out every day and hopefully people watch it and, it, and you know, Hey, at to, up to that point, 2012, 2013, I hadn't seen any plateauing. I hadn't seen any decline. It was still going up. So I'm thinking, hey, everything's good. If people are saying I'm bad, I don't believe them. That's bullshit. That's just them trying to ride my coattails, right? But in reality, they were all correct. They were 100% oh, correct. My, says my the guy stick was tied. No to every new suggestion. Yep, exactly. That's what I was talking about with the with the suggestion box. And he, he doesn't just say no or just uh, politely decline the suggestion because some of the suggestions are just bad. 59 results of stealing my content from DSP rolling on yeah? the floor laughing. Hey, there we go. Stealing my content. 59 results. Just this phrase. You can, you can spice it up. Like stealing content content is stolen stuff like that and you you're going to get enough for a compilation
tired. It was old. No one wanted to watch someone with a camera pointed at their TV, raging at Hideo Kojima. They wanted to see meaningful content, and things were changing. There were people coming to YouTube with better production quality, much higher quality stuff, interactive streams. I let all that pass me by. I was an innovator at the beginning, and I was a dinosaur five years in, and that's totally my fault. And what would you, you know, what would you say you you innovated at the beginning? At the beginning, uh, oh, let's see. So this story has changed a lot since then. So apparently, uh, according to the current version of this story. He revolutionized YouTube by being one of the first people ever to do YouTube shorts, uh, also known as TikToks. He was one of the first people ever to do a podcast because he did a hate live. He did a wrestling podcast, even though those been existing. I don't know if he bragged about that one. He did a co-op playthrough. Flowers, dude. Meaningful content. What are you talking about? Well, it is meaningful. You, you don't see? Maybe you're just a dang dirty detractor, dude. You should take a shower. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, what else did he revolutionize? Well, he was one of the first ever Let's Players. He invented the term Let's Play. Uh, food vlogs. Video essays. Yes, video essays. And even though he doesn't outright say he invented him, uh, he was one of the first people doing him, which kind of, according to him, means that he pioneered it in a way. The improv commentary style and the ability to basically do a full-length playthrough with commentary over it. I was not the first person who did it. There's other people, everyone will, will argue, there's actually argument between it was either Slow Beef or someone else who originally was like the big first Let's Player. Yeah, it doesn't, well, the whole thing is, I mean, congratulations to whoever invented it, but it's not really a hard thing to invent. It's not really something that is, is truly groundbreaking because playing a video game and filming yourself for the internet would have been invented at one point or another. It's just inevitable. But I was the person who started doing it rather than back then when I started on YouTube, 2008 is the year where I really started doing active playthroughs. The people who were doing gameplay on YouTube were mostly known for being like a guru in one genre. This is the Call of Duty player. This is the fighting gameplay. I was the jack of all trades. I could play any game, do commentary over it. That was kind of improv commentary. And people thought it was funny because of my, my, my mannerisms, my jokes. Yes, back then, that kind of stuff was funny. Um, and, and you say that kind of stuff. What, what do you mean? Well, we just talked about it. You were talking about risque jokes. You know, back then, my commentary was like 90% sexualized content. It was sexualized porn. content. It, it was like jokes. Pornhub on the DSP gaming channel. You know, sex jokes, bad stuff that today you don't say that stuff. That's stupid. That's dumb. That's lowbrow comedy. But back then, that was a big part of my content. I watch now. I, I, I couldn't even stomach watching stuff that I did 2008 to like 2011. I, 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 it, it turns my stomach to listen to like who I was, how cringeworthy I was back then. Look, like, we, all, we, all, I, look we all get it, right? We understand that, that people change over time. Totally understand that. I guess my thing is, what have you done? So you've had these light bulb moments, right? You said you had one last year. You had one you know, in 2012, 2013, where you realized that you're getting left behind from a technological standpoint. And you're doing gameplays that are, uh, you know, you're, the big difference for Phil was Phil could hand, could play all games, not just fighting games or Call of Duty or whatever. What has changed? What are you doing differently now in 2023 that that you were doing that that you weren't doing in 2013 when you had this realization? Because mm. it's it sounds and when, it sounds like you're doing the exact same thing, Phil. It sounds like I'm I'm the guy who plays different games. And occasionally come to my, my channel to get some, some sort of a uh, shock, shock value joke, right? What differentiates you now from who you worked a decade ago? Okay. Wow. Geez. First of all, a uh, full-time streamer. I wasn't back then. I was just a YouTuber. Now I'm a full-time streamer, six days a week, full-time, you know, get mostly gameplay. I, now I do react content as well. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, those jokes, I don't really make anymore at all. Now, when I turn on a stream, it's about having a relaxed social conversation with my live audience uh-huh i have people who come by and who are right relaxed <laughs> dude what Don't kind of fucking stomach. gimmick I'm name is this to launch dsp throwback yeah he loved doing dsp throwback because dsp throwback is celebrating old phil that's the whole purpose of the channel is hey you guys i have some iconic playthroughs that you haven't seen in a bunch of years come see them on this channel it's literally like a celebration of who he was even though he hates it and it turns his stomach and it makes him sick that he was like that. Recognizing the chat and I can talk with them. And as they're, as they're a friend, 
Okay, back then I didn't know anyone. I maybe I knew you know people who helped me with moderation and stuff, but I didn't know my viewers back then. I didn't have any personal relationships with any of them. Now it's like a friendly community. It's a totally different vibe watching 2023 Dark Side Filled and 2013 Dark Side Filled. That's for sure. Um, and and you know having that now when I play a game, it's a community effort. I'm playing Oblivion right now. I don't know anything about Oblivion. It's the first time playing it. But people help me with the game. And because of that social aspect, the game is a relaxing chill session. There was no way I could have done a chill session in 2015. Oh, my God. That was. That was a, a chill rage, session. You know, risque com commentary kind of Okay, guy. I think it's time to close the poll, guys. Thank you for 912 people for voting. So the poll was, is DSP the most hated man on the internet? We didn't get a binary yes or no choice. So instead, we got top 10%, 5%, 20 and 50 and the winner is top 10%, which I kind of agree with, I guess. It's, uh, of course, it's just an estimate, but he is pretty hated, and he is on the internet. Today, that's all gone, mostly. Now, yes, there are moments of rage. I'm playing Wolong. There's definitely moments of rage that come back. But for the most part, you know, watch a stream today versus all the things that people say that I am, and you'd be like, I don't get it. I get this all the time. Someone will come by a stream of mine, and at the end of the stream, They'll say, Phil, just so you know, this is the first stream of yours I ever watched. I've heard all these things about you. And I don't get it. I just watch a three-hour gameplay stream. None of the stuff that people say about you just happened in the stream. In fact, it was very relaxing. So what just happened? I'm like, they highlight the moments that are the, the, the shortcomings. That's what they do today. But or, dude, okay, there's, there's a couple of things. That's why uh, King Jad plays bingo every day. Because there's a couple of things that are guaranteed, that are negative, are guaranteed to happen on a DSP stream every single day. Which is, you, he's probably going to beg. He's probably going to make some negative comment about the, the amount of money that he's got recently. Or in the stream particular. He's probably going to insult somebody. Uh, insult, perhaps, a company. Uh, or somebody else. Or maybe sneak this somebody. And this happens on a regular basis. On some of the Street Fighter streams, we got a very high chance probably over like 70-80% that he's going to call somebody names because they beat him in the game. Uh, so on and so forth. So, yes, it doesn't happen every 30 seconds, because if it did, he would not be on the internet. He would be completely deplatformed off everywhere if he, if he was that toxic. But it happens enough to where it leaves a bad taste in everybody's mouth. Reference 2013 Dark Side Phil, as if that's today, and saying that's the content I put out today. It's, it's not. It's just definitely not, you know. I, I have a whole new channel where now I'm doing React-style content, which, again, I used to be an, an idiot. I, I hate React content. Reacting, that's low brow. That's little, minimum effort. And people are like, Phil, people are interested in your thoughts. They just want to hear you react to random stuff. Yeah, he's yeah. Um, talking about low brow. He's never done a single high brow piece of content in his life. He's always done low brow, basic ass, level one stuff. Always. Always. They want to hear you talk about a new stuff. Everything Why about his content has always been basic. At, at, some uh, at some points, towards the beginning, it's been... Probably the most rudimentary form of content you can have. The most level one basic type of setup. With a camera and a screen. And a dude that you can hear in the distance sometimes make a rape, rape joke. That's bad. And then I go, you know what? Let me give it a shot. I start doing rap content. People love it. So that's on me for years being an idiot and saying dumb shit on the internet. And now I try it and it works. And it's more relaxing and it's fun. It's interactive with my audience. That's the difference. Is that I've now become a more laid back Guy, I want to put out meaningful content for my people every day. It's, uh, now the they're going to ask him what meaningful means. I did one rage-inducing thing. Everyone laughed at it and talked about it versus, wow, I just put out a four-hour stream, and people told uh, me that they were able to separate from well, their daily lives and relax with me and have a good time. That's more meaningful to me than getting one rise out of a stupid joke. What What is a... Um... What's a day like look for you? Uh, like what, when you oh. wake up, what is it? What is your average day like? Walk me through a day Whew. of Phil. Okay, this a day of Phil. This is going to be a great segment because this is basically like, look how busy I am. And he's telling this to people that are probably have more to do than him. They probably have more work to do in a single day than him because, well, he's about to tell you about his day. Okay. Like when you, from, from the time you wake up to the time you go to sleep. And this, uh, I'm gonna put this on 1.3 because it's it, it's it's a lot and it's stuff that you know. Uh, usually I don't wake up. Usually my cat wakes me up, <laughs> and uh, you know I get out of bed and get you ready for the day. You know, just like a normal person, you know, shower or eat breakfast, have a coffee, do chores around the house, quick. You know, depends on the day because some days my wife's at work, some days she's not. Uh, you know, this literally doesn't happen with the chores and getting taking a shower and all that stuff. He rolls out of bed like 
20 minutes before he's scheduled to go live. And he probably just makes a coffee and is still hung over. Because I know, I know, because I know how this shit feels like. The office here. So, I, I you know, time-wise, you know, I probably get up between 8 and 9 a.m. every day. Um, I get into the office usually between 10, 10, 30 a.m. Uh, I'm setting up for my stream for the day. I'm, I'm, I'm reading news off of Twitter to try to have news stories for everyone to talk about on my podcast, which I do every day. Um, my stream usually goes on by 10.45 a.m. my time. Uh, you know, we do a little bit of pre-stream, you know, get some people on the stream for about 15, 20 minutes, play some music or whatever. And then I do what I call the Level 1 Podcast. This is about an hour to an hour and a half long show where it's just discussion. And it could be... It's just discussion. Topics, whether it's my gaming schedule uh, for the next week, whether it's... Especially <laughs> a wide variety of topic. Whether it's a video game that's coming out or my schedule. Well, events coming up. Or recapping... This is the worst, man. The recapping the previous day is like the worst segment you can have on a daily podcast. Literally the worst. Getting feedback from my viewers on how do you like the, the things I'm currently doing, news stories, all kinds of stuff. This is something I just started about. I got a long drive for work today, so thank you for this team, Mr. Mob. Hey, don't worry about it, dude. Thanks for the super chat. I appreciate it. Year to a year and a half ago. And this is probably going to be longer, like quite, quite a bit longer than this. So we still have a lot more to go. So. I haven't even started drinking beer yet. That I didn't used to do, and I realized this is meaningful that I should be doing in my content. So I do the podcast. Usually the podcast ends around 1230-ish Pacific time. You know, maybe take another few minutes break. Then we start with gameplay. So we'll do about a three to four hour gameplay stream. Games, are, as we talked, are wide variety. And I have a set schedule I do every day. I'll, I'll post it up everywhere on my social Look at this guy. He does so I'm much doing. stuff. Um, that gameplay will... And you know, the, the actual amount of stuff he does is a lot. But it takes him so much time to go through it. Because he does everything in the most basic or counterintuitive way possible. Like, his schedule is, is the most basic shit, counterintuitive. He gotta update his Nightbot every day. He gotta do this, we gotta do this. And you know, DSP having to do stuff like that is like 90% slower than your regular person. Four hours, then when that's done... Imagine getting news from Twitter for your podcast. Well, you could do that. There's nothing inherently wrong with that because there's a bunch of media outlets that are on Twitter on their own pages. But he just... It, it, it's almost like he just reads the, the headline and then just passes it off as coverage. And most of his coverage is just gossip and assuming what's going to happen and assuming what happened and just calling somebody an idiot because they fucked up. I have to upload all that content, so, you know, another half an hour. Well, I, I wouldn't really mind it if he would just screen share. Of course, he's not doing that. But if he would just screen share or screenshot somehow the article and we would just read it together on stream. Because, well, of course, I don't trust him to be objective. But at least we're going to get something productive done. Roughly setting up uploads or whatever. And then usually I spend some... If my wife's home from work, I'll spend about an hour with my wife having dinner. Uh, you know, running errands around the house. Again, depends on the day or anything I could squeeze between streams. I'm right back on stream again. Right back on. Six, six, six thirty. I'm in the office again, um, and I'm streaming again for another two to three hour, you know, gameplay stream. These the late night streams are more chill streams. What I say is the daytime streams are more. It, let's say there's a major new game coming out. Uh, you know, in a few weeks we got Resident Evil. Actually, next week Resident Evil Four Remake. That'll be my daytime streams. That's the one everyone wants to see. More people can watch usually on an earlier time zone or time frame. So I play that on the first stream. My late night streams are chill. You just want to relax with me. You don't care about rage. You don't care about a new game. You just want to relax with Phil. Come to my late night stream. That's like 645. Ah, uh, yes. The and relaxing stream. Yes. That runs about two, three hours. And it's just chill gameplay. It's not about the gameplay. It's about me talking with my audience. And if there's gameplay, great. We'll advance with the game. But it's more just relaxing. And then when that's done, you know, that stream probably runs till around 9, 9.30 p.m. Then I got to upload. And then, of course, I'm closing down for the day, setting up streams for the next. I'm probably out of my office between 10 to 11 p.m. So all in all, <clears throat> you know, we were talking workday wise. My workday starts roughly around 9.30, 10 a.m. and ends around 10 to 11 p.m. Then after that, I maybe have an hour to spend with my wife and relax at night. Uh, you know, watch, the, watch a movie, watch a TV show or whatever. And, uh, you know, and then chores around the house. It's time for bed and on to the next day. And that's six days a week. That's my life. Uh, one day a week I take off from streaming and content creation. Uh, and that day is essentially every possible thing you can think of that I need to cram into one day. Whether that's grocery shopping, doctor's appointments, running errands, uh, everything you can think of. Oh, by the way, that's the one day I have off to spend some time with my wife. Other than okay, but, but where do you get to choose that? You get to pick that. 
And having like streaming more days doesn't inherently translate to getting better support. That's what he doesn't, he's never understood. Just because you stream a lot of days doesn't mean that if you streamed less, you wouldn't get the same amount of support because you could. Because so then you would increase, uh, you would increase the demand by reducing the supply, Mr. Businessman. If we're going to do something, we try to cram it in on that day. Um, and that's so, my life. So let me ask you this. And that's my life. Just based off of what you what you're saying right now, that that doesn't seem. Is there anyone who likes talking about themselves more than Day SP? Um, I'm sure there is. I'm sure there is, because there's some like crazy unhinged people on the internet that are so ab absorbed by himself. But DSP is up there. He is up there. Like the most healthy lifestyle. It doesn't seem like the most conducive. Like. You know, from, from, a, from a streaming pers per perspective. Or a but chat, please help me out. Let's answer this question. Who are people that like to talk about themselves about as much as DSP or even more? Content perspective, yes, you're producing a lot of content, but it doesn't seem like a very healthy lifestyle. Do you feel, do you feel that your community and the people who donate to your streams are enabling that lifestyle? Do you feel that they are encouraging you to live that lifestyle that may not be the healthiest lifestyle? Well, this is a very difficult question to answer because, yeah, you can think about it and it's like, yeah, this guy streams a lot because people give him money, so that's how he pays his bills. So they're not really enabling him. Sleep voice soothing fills oh, really? Around the house is breaking things and having Ket lace up her work boots and overalls to come fix it. Seeing she's the man of the house, please talk about my wife, Mia Cat Mop. Who? <laughs> you know what? A cat lacing up her work boots. Steel toed shoes. I'm, I'm running errands around the house. Uh, big ups, Arlong. Better get those errands done. And maybe do some outside the house. You know, that shit's crazy. So you're saying through people showing up and supporting my streams, they're making me work more. Is that the question? Yeah, that's it's it's a weird question to even comprehend because they're enabling him to what to do what to keep streaming. Maybe well, maybe you maybe you have a um, a pressure that you're putting on yourself to do that because this is your only job. And then you're therefore working as much as you are because you are you know, working for the support that you have. So mm -hmm. it, it, it's like cyclical, like they, they come and then you're like, I need to be there. And then like, now you need to be there and do it all day. And then if they're not there for you, then it's kind of like this mental um, addiction almost. I mean, I've been right. doing YouTube for about three years and uh, I, I know that it's a thing. Um, getting addicted to super chats, numbers analytics like the way that you spoke about analytics about 20 minutes ago or no 40 minutes i don't know earlier in the stream you know you're clearly very much like watching it and and you know attuned to it so it's obviously on your mind right i think the biggest thing is you know we talk about mental health right mental health physical health and how they're how they're so tied together and the one thing i didn't hear during there is is a time to you know whether work out or have time for yourself yeah. That is true. That is a very good point. Because you need those like literal decompression segments for yourself. Everything that you're doing right now seems to be for from a streaming perspective, from a content perspective, right. right? Because, well, you see, because he decided to make his whole story about his day, about how much work he's got and how much he's suffering. And now they're like, well, okay, but the, do, you, do you get a break? Do you, that sounds really fucking stressful because it does. Even though I know that's not the amount of work he does, because of course he's, He's making it out to be more work than it's than it really is, but they don't know. They're just taking it at face value. Oh, and, hanging out with his wife, you know, right? Well, uh, but, but but an hour at the end of that's the day, chill. right? Yeah, and and that's that's awesome. I I'm just thinking once again, like you, it seems like you're in this this never ends never ending. I don't know for back of, lack of a better metaphor, like a hamster wheel where you you get up and you start running and then you finish up at the end of the day and you you finish up running and then you get off. You go to sleep and you wake up and, and you do that six days a week. And I understand we all have our, you know, we all have our hamster wheels and our, and our, our uh, rotations and our schedules and the way we do things. But um, it, it just appears that just from the outside looking in that um, if you weren't making the money that you were making, you probably wouldn't live that lifestyle. Okay. 
fair enough. Um, I've talked about this many times over the last several years with my viewers. They say, what would you change if you could improve anything about your life? What would you do? And the answer would be somehow to take financial pressure off of me so I could spend more time with my wife. We've been married since 2019. We never went on a honeymoon. We haven't been on a trip since you, you we did. got married. Well, yeah, okay. Um, can't, can't afford it, you know? And I'm sure this is stuff will come up. Yeah, you know, I went through a bankruptcy. Yes. Because of really bad choices in my past and a combination of online trolling ruining a lot of my financial income with my business. Um, and a combination in tandem of that ruined a lot of stuff for me. Since the bankruptcy went through, I have not been able to fully recover because of it's always something else. And I'm tired of it. I really am. I'm looking, where's the light at the end of the tunnel? So I can have an extra day off with my wife once a week, which I think I deserve and she deserves. But every time, and again, well, as we've learned from Dark Side, Phil, you don't always get what you deserve. I, 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 or, or sometimes you get what you don't deserve. I want to make something very clear here. I am not trying to put myself out as a victim. Um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna come back to that a little bit later. Do you think he listened when they talk? I think no. Oh, I, I think he did listen. I mean, they're very kind of straightforward with their questions. They are pretty clear questions. Outside of the one that I, I, I just told you I didn't get about the, the whole enabling thing. Yeah, I, I think he listened. I think he tried to understand. Uh, but, you know, when in, later on we're going to see whenever you got a difficult question that you just... The only way to get yourself out of it is to lie. That's where the problems happen. All right. The reason that a lot of the things have happened to me over the years is because of me. I know that. I'm a flawed human. I'm sorry for some of the horrible things I've said and done over the years. I, I've, I've like what? Uh, can we just itemize and just say what we're sorry for? If if he's so sorry and he recognizes all the bad things, can we just like start naming them or at least say a couple of them? Can we say I'm sorry for the, the segment I did on the Hello Jew and all that stuff? Can we do something else? No. We're just going to say just a blanket statement. Well, I'm sorry for whatever I did. If you're offended by something, I'm sorry about it. Sorry I did it. Okay? Can you stop harassing me about it? Thank you. We apologize. That's why a lot of people hate me. But every However, time that it looks... He struggles to recover from bad choices due to ongoing negative behaviors. That is true. Support, ...or failure to recognize and address underlying issues, which can perpetuate their difficulties and hinder personal growth and recovery. There we go. Two ...and doesn't know that... Uh, you know, uh, in a in a weird way, his trolls actually, well, think of his best interest more than his actual fans. Because his fans are legitimately just enabling that lifestyle. They don't question anything. And when you don't question everything, you just let this guy do whatever he wants, and he has a bunch of, like, self-destructive behaviors, of course that's going to happen. And he's never going to see the light in the end of the tunnel because he's preventing himself from. Well, the trolls at least are calling this shit out like things are getting better these people will do something horrible to me or my family that ruins financially things for me this has happened several times over the last few years it was two years ago all right there was a light at the end of the tunnel this i was still on twitch this wasn't when i was full-time youtube streamer i was a twitch streamer i've been streaming on twitch for four and a half years oh is this when he got the partnership and my member or excuse me my subs on twitch were at like 900 subs a month things were going good i said publicly to my audience guys this is great you know, the bankruptcy went through last year. That's not great, but that took a lot of financial burden off of me. If things keep going how they're going, I see a light. I'll be able to I'll be able to improve my business. I'll be able to maybe take time off, spend time with my wife, reduce the amount I stream. This will be outstanding. What happened? My trolls took the king of hate mantra, which we just discussed earlier. The king of hate and, mantra. And they got me kicked out of the Twitch partner program because of it. Now, yeah, but how, how did that happen? I want to see more transparency on that contact that, that he had on Twitch that told him how everything happened and how he got slandered. I want to have some more insight on that. Because just trusting him on his word, I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm not taking that. Partner program for four and a half years. Twitch had no issue with me. Twitch they did have multiple issues. He got suspended multiple times and he cried about it. That factually did happen. Once he insulted a guy's beard, he got suspended for it. Or I think it even said uh, indefinitely suspended. And the other time was when the, the stationary thing happened. You know, the stationary alert. Thanks moment. Thanks for exposing the Flathead Society meerkat. The Flathead Society is going down, dude. The, the round headers are going to be on their ass anytime soon. We're going to find their hideout and we're going to straighten out their heads.
knowing who I was in my past and the kind of content that I put out and everything willingly took me under their partner program. They signed me up for promotional opportunities. They had me promoting certain, uh, different things on their streams and stuff. Um, that was uh, the Twitch bounty boards that I guess pretty much every anybody who's a partner could get. I'm not a hundred percent sure about that, but yeah. And then that wasn't that wasn't Twitch actively going around parading DSP as like, whoa, look at how amazing this guy is. Even though it did happen once, okay? I'm wrong here. It didn't happen once. They did misspell his name though, um, because they uploaded this promotional clip on Twitter um, that featured a couple of streamers i guess on the level of dsp because at that time around that point he was one of the biggest earners when you when you look at the the tier three subs i believe now i'm not 100 percent sure on that you can definitely find a video about it though and they uploaded a video with him in it promoting him and they misspelled his name and after that i think they deleted the video and i'm not exactly sure what happened about it but he did address it he talked about it or at least maybe on twitter they actually campaigned to get me kicked off of Twitch, and they did. So I'm not kicked off of Twitch, but I can't make money on Twitch anymore. What so what, what did they do? What what do you feel that that they did to you uh, to get you removed off Twitch specifically? <clears throat> they organized a campaign. They did it, and I, you, the thing is, these people are so they, they everything they do, they try to do publicly, so that way they can get a laugh out of it, or at least get credit for it. So there was an organized movement against me where what they were going to do was say that 2011, excuse me, 2021, Phil, because that's the year this happened, is the same as 2009, 2010, Phil. But they this is the thing, dude. This is the thing. If it was an organized campaign, you would be able to, to pull up the source of the information and where everybody organized it in a split second. That getting kicked off Twitch wasn't his fault. Yeah, it's, it's actually pretty crazy. Now, in, like, I'm, I'm, like I'm saying, if it was an organized movement like a harassment campaign you could find chat logs of somebody's discord where they talked about doing that you could find like a kiwi farms thread of people compiling evidence against them you could find that and none of that has ever been found so it's making me think that it's not organized or coordinated or anything it might be just one guy that sent twitch like a, a video of dsp being toxic as fuck or like a compilation of racism and they were like hey you know what we're not going to be taking any chances. This guy shouldn't represent the Twitch partnership program. Bye-bye. Took out of context clips. They took those bad jokes from back then, which I've already publicly apologized for. And I don't do that kind of stuff regularly anymore, okay? I've grown from that. Well, they I just saw a bad clip from a year ago, so that's pretty <laughs> Correct. Again, uh, that's correct. Oh, man, he cut him off right in the middle of, like, the redemption speech. Crazy. I mean, I'm oh, yeah, and also, if you tried to do this on Kiwi Farms, you would get banned because organizing uh, troll campaigns against somebody is against the rules. Totally fallible. I make mis The way he got cut off, let's see a replay of that. Really anymore, okay? I've grown from that. Well, they I just saw a bad clip from a year ago, so that's pretty recent. Correct. That's correct. And again, I mean, I'm totally fallible. I make mistakes from time to time, okay? But for the most part, that's not me anymore. You can watch I, I know, but uh, but but what you just said was just disproven because you had just made it that same kind of racy joke. I, I'm not trying to like <clears throat> make exactly. it a big deal. And also, have you did you guys notice that he added, "I don't make these jokes regularly anymore." It's one of those DSPisms where you can't quite call him wrong in a liar. You can't do that because well, he didn't he didn't say him regularly. But I'm just pointing out that. What they were saying is 2021, uh, Phil, is the same mm -hmm. as before. When you are you just told me in 2022, you made a joke. So this was after they'd said this. And it was you're making the same kind of, like, inappropriate jokes that you were back then. Correct. So it's kind of, so they're right? Are they no, right or are they wrong? I mean. They're, they're right in saying that I still make mistakes and I'm a flawed human. They're wrong in saying this is who Phil is all the time. This is his content because that's what got this this happening. And by the way, it wasn't just the Twitch partner program. They they basically did this exact same thing to all these different business relationships that I had. They said he's the king of hate. He has a website called thekingofhate.com. Here's a bunch of bigoted, racist, sexist, you know, horrible jokes he's made over the years. And they compiled this into like a montage. And they basically had hundreds, if not more people, pummel these businesses with it to the point where they said, listen, it's not that, you know, we had Phil on our site for so long. We knew this was him. 
But we can't have people constantly harassing us for this. So we have to end it. That way, the, the, the we have stop. to end it. it. Did, did Twitch it tell you that? Did they say that to you? Twitch told me all. Here's what I where they told me. Oh, this is gonna be he interesting. And he he is looking all over the place. He's looking up. He's looking to the side. It's like, guy, it's not that complicated. Just say what they told you, unless they didn't tell you anything and you're just lying about it. Uh, yeah, very interesting. Hey, big ups, uh, John Yo for the membership, dude. Into your history, and we found that over the years you have used um what was the word it wasn't racial it was harmful slurs um hateful slurs phil hateful slurs but look at how conveniently we change it now so it's not that bad it doesn't sound that bad and now you're gonna see probably the whole chat is gonna fill up with hateful slurs Harmful slurs. As Just look at that. I'm, I'm it's coming. Saying really nasty racial or things that I do not say. I do not say those things. You, you'd have to go back so far to see me say something like that. And yeah, look at their time. chat. It's going crazy. Oh, yeah. I'm sure. How many? How many up. of those did we get? So we got a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. There's at least twenty just on the screen I'm looking at right now, and there are more to come. With people reminding everybody exactly what he got suspended for. Up what it was specifically, and we could address it individually if you want to. But the, the way they're portraying, oh, we found that you said this 100 years ago. Sorry, you're gone. Like, what? I was under sight for four and a half years making money. You know, you never had an issue with it. Now you find something from the past, and that's not acceptable. And all of a sudden, what changed overnight? And the funny part was it happened to me. It happened to another streamer called Wings of Redemption and others all at once. Almost as if Twitch was having a culture shift. Where they decided they wanted problematic people off the site they wanted well, that, them, you know that is true i mean there that, that happened to plenty of people right. I, I know so, people who got uh, booted off of twitch because they're yeah phil christian and exactly phil it. he's it's, a catholic it's pretty crazy so i, so, I don't right. like twitch so here i am i've never received any kind of a warning i never gotten a community strike everything i'm doing according to twitch terms of service is fine i'm not banned from twitch i could stream there right now but according to their partnership criteria all my past actions are unforgivable, and therefore you can't make money on our site anymore. Did so, you go to them and, and bring them, you know, did you explain to them, this, like this comment was made? Did, have you had any sort of discourse with, with Twitch to kind of explain these things? Because if you're saying that these, these comments were made a decade ago, five years ago, seven years ago, whatever, and, you know, culture was different or whatever, whatever it is you want to say, have you had that opportunity to speak with Twitch about these things? And if you did, do you feel... Well, no, we'll, st we'll start there. Okay. Uh, it's, and by the way, it's not just Twitch. This happened to several other businesses too. I don't want to talk about all of them publicly only because it's just going to open the hornet's nest. Why? But basically. No, oh, it's because you, you can't justify any of it. Because he got banned from Teespring. He got banned from Stream Elements, Stream Labs. How are you going to get banned from both, dude? Like, this is actually crazy for me. It's actually crazy for me, genuinely. These businesses. But one of them. So he got banned from Stream Elements, if I'm correct, because, let me think, he called somebody mentally ill, and then they clipped it, uh, I think their name was Music Mouse 7 and they clipped it, they posted it on Twitter, and they tagged one of those platforms, and then th that platform was like, wow, uh, I don't like that, and people replied to, yeah, well, what are you going to do about it, and then they did something about it. This is the way that they approach it now is well we have terms of service if you break them too bad we have absolutely no legal obligation to tell you what you did wrong because we just don't have to i don't believe that's true i think if you do something wrong they should tell you what exactly specifically what you did and how to remedy it because if you're telling me i did something to break our legal agreement obviously i want to fix that i don't want to keep doing the wrong thing but they don't care i tried reaching out to the legal team of twitch and essentially they, they that we have no obligation to, to have further contact with you if you'd like to reapply yeah that, that's kind of how it works i don't agree with it either but you signed a contract that says that this might happen and then this happened so you know why cry about it partner program come back in 365 and again like i said he had at least two suspensions that happened to him prior to this Five days and reapply and at that time we'll so it's like at what point are you gonna stop explaining yourself to this guy and just get rid of him because he's a liability evaluate the situation so well, now me... i'm out of income for a year okay so can you can you still be an affiliate nope 
I was out of, completely out of the partner program for a full year. And that's so it's been a year. Um, why, why don't you try to rebuild the affiliate side of things and uh, and try to reapply? And I mean, oh yeah, and one of, one of them was related. So one of the bands from the streaming platform was related to a company that was based in Israel, and obviously somebody sent them a very positive gameplay of Dead Space. And you can you can tell what happened after that. It it's been how many years now? I mean, and it's and if you go the affiliate, so if you go the affiliate route, uh, you, you can't even uh, make this shit up, dude. It was crazy. Twitch, and it, let's let's be real. Being a partner on Twitch it, it allows you no nothing. You know, there's nothing. There's no benefit of being a partner on Twitch at all outside of them. It's actually to, worse because you right. have to. You can't share your content in multiple places. You have to mm -hmm. be exclusive on Twitch. Right. So it, it would yeah. seem like the best route would be go the affiliate route and not be a partner on Twitch. That way you can stream to YouTube and cast your net as wide as you possibly can and and uh, grow your audience as much as you possibly can. I don't, I don't know, like, it, why, but, why not do that? Well, he didn't do that because he saw at that point when he got removed from the partnership that at any point he could get removed from Twitch in general and lose everything. So he just decided not to take any chances and go back to, Twi uh, to YouTube. I guess that's what happened. Well, that... I've told you one half of the equation. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you other stuff that was also going on. Within that same time frame of that happening the whole year, uh, Twitch had basically several times shut down my business entirely for things I never did. So, for example, it was the summer before I'm streaming a game, and my stream just goes offline right in the middle. What happened? Oh, you've been hit with a copyright strike. A copyright strike. Someone lied, said they worked for the company that I was playing the game of, and, and impersonated an employee, and Twitch doesn't vet it. They just shut your whole stream down. This happened probably three to five times within a small time frame. And I'm like, wow, like, I hope it goes away. Eventually it did, but they left me with basically no avenue to really fix this issue besides going to their support and saying, you know, what are you doing? Do you actually have confirmation this is real or not? Yeah, I don't know about any um, of this shit. Then at the same time, okay, that I got kicked out of the Twitch partner program, I decided I'm going to just what you just said, Craig. I didn't just quit Twitch that day. I stuck around for about a month after that. I said, you know what? I can't get super chats. I can't get paid subs right now. I'm going to roll with it anyway. Let's see what happens. Can I make a living? I had a Patreon. People were sending me tips, you know, direct donations, as you call them. Maybe I could still make a living doing that. And you know what? More power to it because if I can, now who cares if I'm not in the partner program? What are they going to get me kicked out of, right? The As site? Streaming, the whole platform. Shut down again. What? Oh, you, you said a racist term. Oh, so was the was the stationary suspension after the D partnership? That would be interesting. And look at this face. Look at this face he makes. You said a racist term. What? Me? I would never. No, I didn't. And then Which I agree. The whole stationary thing, the whole debacle was very funny, but uh he shouldn't have been suspended for that. Obviously it was a slip of the tongue. I repeat what, oh, what did they back. say you said? What did they say that you said? I believe it was the N-word, but I- You believe? You're not going to remember the slur you were accused of saying? It sounds like, um, I don't know. It's shady. I don't know because they don't say that in the log that they submit. They just say, oh, you were caught saying a racist term. Did you, you say the N-word? Oh, no. I was playing a Returnal, and when I was playing it, I was in the middle of saying something, and then, like, an enemy attacked me, and it was like a jumble of words that just happened to maybe sound like like that if you were not oh, listening right. in context you might say oh it for two months lemon head big ups dude but it was it was actually like me getting tongue twisted you know everyone and it could happen to anyone and then they some mass submitted my trolls mass submit that to twitch oh he said the n-word so now i get kicked off of twitch temporarily my whole stream gets shut down it took about a day i got, I got brought back but it's like at one point when am i going to realize this business is not being professional they're going to kick me out of their partner program for stuff I did 10 years ago, not give me any recourse to appeal it or stick up for myself. We don't have to do that legally. So, you know, oh, so now I'm out. I'm out money that I'm, I, I was making for a living. Now you can shut down my stream at any time for something I didn't even do. And then I have to go out of my way to correct your mistake because you're an unprofessional business. I mean, and I was there for almost five years building a community. I had so many people who loved me being on Twitch and I lost a lot of viewership and a lot of income moving from twitch and coming over becoming a full-time streamer on youtube youtube is not as profitable to stream man there's no real uh discoverability over here it's very hard to get noticed on dude YouTube. nobody's gonna discover you ever but why there's no you, discoverability on twitch it, either 
Yeah, why, I, I, why I, do you want to even I, be a streamer anymore? Like, <laughs> why even bother at this point? Why you even want to stream, dude? Come on, because it's meaningful. Come on, man. Come on, come on. Big ups uh, for four months, Copeside Phil, dude. Big ups. What What is your <laughs> reasoning? And I, I I like streaming. I understand. I I love being on stage. I'm a musician as well. There's something about having an audience that I really love, and I I love having an audience. They're the reason that you know I'm successful, and it's like. If you're struggling, if you're facing this, like, wouldn't it be better for your well-being and like your relationship with your wife and your family to just stop doing this for a little while to get a normal job and just, you know, kind of take a breather? A lot of people have said that to me. My mother said that to me when I got married. She's like, you know, look how things are going. You know, on the Internet, everyone's crapping on you. And, you know, don't you think that maybe long term things should change? And at that point, and this was that was around 2019. Uh, before the bankruptcy and all of that, uh, I kind of agreed with her. I was like, yeah, look at this. You know, I'm, I'm trying my best. I'm trying to ch improve and be better. And it's like people don't care. People just want to crap on me no matter what I do. And also, also, I don't think these guys understand just exactly how broke he is. He cannot afford to take a, a week off like he did last year when he was sick. Because when he came back, he was like the begging like a dog. He's legitimately fucking broke. Like you can't. He can't take a month off of streaming to look for a job because he's just going to go homeless. And my mom said something really important to me. She said, you're not beholden to anyone but yourself and God. What? Like, as long Does God pay your bills? As long as you're okay with who you are in the morning and that you feel that you're okay with God. And my mom's religious. I'm not. Okay. But when she said that to me, it, it, it was like, she's right. You know, why do I have to answer to an angry mob of people every day? Why can't I just live my life like everyone else on this planet? Right? Because you're beholden to your little fan base of people that pay your bills and put food on the table for you and your wife. Like, what is this? What is this fucking narrative that he is like a, an independent man that doesn't bow down to anybody? He's one minute man's bitch. You see, yesterday, did, did one minute man actually tip yesterday? Because I, I saw this clip of, of him not having tip during the podcast and this dude was going crazy. Like, the faces he was making are insane. Um, like, he's beholden to people that almost, uh, I would believe, sometimes support him, not because they want to support him, but they just want to power trip on him because they realize he is beholden to them. They know this. So they want to get their money's worth by feeling like they're, they, they, have, they have this power that they can use. But, and of course, there's always a but, uh, a lot of things changed between 2019 and now. Um, I love what I do now. At one point, I'll, I will openly say this, I hated what I did for a living. Around 2016, uh, a lot of things were going really bad for me. Uh, YouTube had really started to just totally hate me. Um, I was getting, you know, all kinds of horrible things were happening to me behind the scenes. My, my personal life was falling apart as well. This is before I met my wife, by the way. Um, and I was going to... the whole thing wrong. He's treating his mom like she's a dent. She probably told him to call it quits when she saw this and get a job. I like to imagine this lol. Well, I, I think there might be a, a part of this. They might be that angle that she tried to also push and be like, yeah, well, Phil, now you're married. Aren't you thinking about like looking for some more stability, like an actual job? Because, you know, now you have a family to support. It's not just a girlfriend you got. I would assume she said something like this. Or maybe she just said, well, Philly, get a, get a job, boy, so people don't mistreat you on the internet, boy. I didn't know what to do. I felt like I was trapped. I was like, I'm so much debt in my name. There's no way if I quit YouTube, if I'm going to make, you know, if I'm going to get a nine to five job somewhere, I'm going to lose everything. I'm going to lose my house. I'm going to lose everything because I, I, I can't afford it. If I get a nine to five job, I would never make as much money, uh, you know, as I do on YouTube or Twitch or whatever. Um, so that's really, I, that's really what it comes down to is, is streaming is more profitable than getting a nine to five that's 50 percent of it i would say about 50 percent weight because the other half is since i became a full-time streamer in 2017 and i changed my formula it's not just about pumping out a ton of videos a day instead it's about having meaningful content with an audience that i connect with this now i would say for 2017 till today has been the absolute best time of my life professionally and personally <laughs> i met my wife professionally by the way crying about views every day and how low they are and reading out street fighter six stats to himself so he can feel good about it 
Well, I think he is right on the 50%. I think it's 50% money and 50% ego, which is oftentimes the equation that comes up whenever he wants to do anything. Because when you go to work to a nine to five, you're not going to sit there all day and people telling you how meaningful and amazing and gorgeous you are like they do on his stream. They're just going to treat you like normally like everybody else. And he can't because he's the main character. I have a great he's the protagonist. Well, as little time as I get to spend with her, it's the best experience I've ever had in my life. It was a life changing experience meeting my wife and then becoming an interactive streamer. And leaving that past behind, I have to fill dead air constantly with a stupid, risque joke and dumb commentary and growing up and maturing. You know, I'm 40 years old. I'm not some teenager or 20 year old being an idiot on the internet. I don't, my audience today is not the same audience I had 15 years ago. Now, if you look at my, as, as Adam says, I'm Mr. Analytics, right? If you look at my, my analytics, you'll notice I get almost no teen viewers, almost like less than 1% of my viewership are teens. It's people in their mid to late 20s, 30s, and 40s. Why? Because now you come to my content and it's chill fu fun. You know, every once in a while the rage comes out, everyone laughs at it, but it's more meaningful stuff. I love that connection I have with my fans. I, I really feel like my fans are my- Oh, Craig is so done. I'm going to that Look level. at him, Personal. Craig is so finished, man. And Adam is just sitting there waiting for this guy to shut up. Connection, But they're kind of like my, my friends. They're really good acquaintances. Who and I this is just sad right now. This is just sad. Alert. He's been in debt since the early 2000s like damn. Yeah, it's actually crazy when you think about it. Oh my god. And he didn't he didn't really do much to change it. Of course, he's not getting a million credit cards maxing him out, but he's not really toning down on his uh on his expensive vices to say the least. Big ups to 1 year of membership Eisenhorn. Big ups, dude. Congratulations. Oh, and we can and chat, thank you. we can dick around every stream and have meaningful and talk i learned stuff from my audience and now, now i look back at my past like what a dummy i was i had this amazing experience i could have been having for years and years and instead i sat there making dumb jokes instead of actually making meaningful content so i what, love what my is job now. what does meaningful mean what does that like walk me through what does that mean do you feel like you're like is this you say you have your your audience is your friends right you feel like you have a, a now i've seen clips of you say that that you know your audience is not your friends, right? So like, is it, are they your friends or are they not your friends? Are they, because you're kind of speaking of, on, you know, mm -hmm. just based off clips I've seen. Sure. Um, you're kind of speaking of both both sides of your mouth here. My, my audience are not close personal friends. I'm not gonna come on stream and tell you about super important behind the scenes stuff in my life. You know what I'm saying? At the same time, I'm here 60. Yeah, you are though, but hold on, you are though. You are telling us about these super no important stuff. Goes to praise for working hard. No one cares if I try to change. And you do it for you, not for detractors to like you. Yeah, you got to do it for you. And when you do it for you and you improve yourself, you're going to see some kind of results. It's not guaranteed, but you're going to see them most of the time. We, we kind of have. This is, my, this is my social interaction outside of my wife. And the one day a week that I leave this house to, to, to do stuff when I'm not streaming, this right here, this laptop, this chat is my social action, interaction with the world. So that is me being friendly with people. That's, you know, as if you were, you know, you go to your place of work. Hi, how you doing? Your coworkers, right? You walk in, you hang out with them or whatever. It's kind of what it, it kind of feels like a camaraderie um, with regulars. And, you know, there's people who come in and out all the time. And that, that's What's the nature of the Phil's luck and how many times God has given him a chance to be better. Yeah, but with a person like this, you can give him a billion chances and it's never going to count. And it's, it's, it's he's just not going to take get the best of it. But here, he just compared stream chat to co-workers. Hold on, I want, I want to get back to that one. Because he just said it randomly in passing. This chat is my social action, interaction with the world. So that is me being friendly with people. That's, you know, as if you were, you know, you go to your place of work. Hi, how you doing? Your coworkers. Yeah, my coworkers. I regularly call them mouth droolers and tell them to go away and never come back. And uh, I get fired. Right? You walk in, you hang out with them. My coworkers, kind of by it, the way. Kind of feels like and my coworkers regularly give me money. Camaraderie um, with regulars. And, you know, there's people who come in and out all the time, and that, that's the nature of the beast. But um, I really do feel like today it's more meaningful what I do. There's, again... Back in the day, people would say, Phil, I loved your content because I got a laugh today watching you rage. Today, it's like, Phil, let me tell you something. So let me tell you something, brother. Yeah, this today is this. Let me tell you something, brother. When I hold a man's penis, I tell you what I do. I hold on to it tight, brother. You're milking a human.
That's what it is today. That's what it is. We just hold tight and we milk it. Something horrible <laughs> happened in my life. And I came by your stream and I hung out with you for two hours today. You were playing Oblivion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oblivion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've gotten those too. I've gotten those too. And it's messages like that. Of course, I appreciate those messages. They're great. But once you let them like legitimately get to you and get this ego built up that you're saving lives by playing video games or uh, making fun of Phil... That's when things go bad and you start taking yourself too serious and it gets too deep. Conversation about something going on on the internet. At the end of that- And you can see that he fully believes himself. He thinks he's legitimately like saving lives right now. That stream I felt so much better. You know, I, it was such a, um, a fun, meaningful experience to me. And when people give me that feedback, that lets me know that what I'm doing is worthwhile with all the hate and all the shit that gets thrown at me every day, that what I'm doing is meaningful. I don't, since I've become a full-time streamer and I've taken ownership of who I am, and the content I put out rather than just making dumb jokes, I feel like now this is the best time of my life because I'm helping people. There we go. There we go. I just told you that. You don't want to fucking get that shit into your head too much because it's that's just random people that don't know you. I don't know if that sounds crazy or not, but... Yeah, it sounds crazy. Stop buying into your own hype. Stop smoking your own drugs. That's what they tell me. and I Or whatever they say. Me. You know what I mean? It's like kind of reciprocating back and forth. Yeah, like a game of telephone, huh? You tell them something and then they repeat it back to you. So they are yes men. That's what that's called. Hey, hey, you guys, I'm having such a fun, chill, interactive, amazing time with you today. Hey, Phil, I'm having a super fun, chill, interactive time with you. Okay. And of course, many of those people that send him messages are not genuine. The only reason they're doing it is for him to keep, like thinking more highly of himself so he can get more lost in his own delusions of grandeur literal delusions of grandeur Let's because this guy just admitted right now he feels like he's saving lives by playing street fighter and calling people mouth droolers all day so um i i think that every every streamer has a relationship with their audience that's unique right um as somebody who's doing it i i don't know your personal relationship with with your with your audience <laughs> um is that you Adam, was that you toasting? Okay, okay, just make well, sure. You were talking about a relationship with the, the audience, you know? And right. Just, just giving them right. a shout, giving them a toasty. Okay, just, just making sure. There's actually a lot of uh, reputable channels. Uh, I finished the video game in the chat says, that is extremely hard to believe on this whole segment. We had Mudahar earlier saying that DSP is just parasocial enough to get the dent bucks. So, um, and that's why he's talking about people like they're his like... friends. <clears throat> you're, you're and there was a couple of more check marks. Uh, some of them I didn't know. Is a little different when it comes to, um, you know, you're very open that you are funded by your audience, right? You and you've said many times that uh, you know you don't want sponsors, but you started talking today about how no sponsors will touch you, right? Because because of uh, uh, for for a number of different reasons for your reputation, mm -hmm. right? Um, what, what is it? Which one is it? Would you rather have sponsors? What's wrong with having sponsors compared to, uh, like if, if a sponsor is going to come and pay you $500 to talk about, you know, uh, whatever their product is, uh, wouldn't that be better than, than having to rely on crowdfunding or your audience on a day-to-day -day basis? Oh, you know, it's a double-edged sword. It really is. Because I could say right now, if I had a bunch of sponsors on my stream, Absolutely, would things financially be better? Would the, would the pressure be taken off of me to earn on a stream? Yes, absolutely it would. Um, but at the same time, and again, this is something no, that people will bring. No, up we're gonna stop. Over. We're gonna we're gonna stop this before it even started, because when you do a sponsorship or a partnership or a brand deal or an advertisement. It's literally an advertisement. You're not supposed to be like when you watch somebody doing an advertisement, they're not supposed to be genuine. They got paid to promote the product. They're promoting the product. It's a business relationship. That's all. So when he starts talking about how he's going to betray himself and his audience by shilling stuff, your audience should be smart enough to know that it's a product being sold because you agreed for that deal. And it's perfectly normal and everybody fucking does it. And they do it on TV. They do it in any industry you can think of. There's product placement. And nobody thinks they're being objective. Because they're not. They're inherently not. You know, I agree. Um, I have always, always, in the 15 years that I've made content, 
always been critical of people who shill. And there's a difference between, oh, I have a sponsor today and I shill. There is. I know that. Tell us. You, know, you can watch people out there who they put out a 30-minute video and two minutes of the video is a plug. I think that's acceptable, right? But then there's people who, like, they try every opportunity. Yeah, like the time. raid stream. Like the raid stream. Because they gave me an opportunity. All I had to do was play the game for an hour. That's all I had to do. And it was literally just the business relationship. They paid me to do it, and I promoted their game, and then I had an eight-hour stream after that. Everything they possibly could. Every aspect of what they yeah. do is a monetization. I've seen... In my but at least I, I do enjoy the game. I still log in every once in a while. It is pretty enjoyable as a casual thing to just do when every sitting around not doing anything react content last year i watched someone who because also i got a, a bunch of other like chinese games offers that i just i just couldn't even bother to download because they just look like terrible shit he's supposed to be doing a heartfelt message to, to about something going on they're crying on stream and on top of the stream there's ads running like you can't turn that off for five seconds to do your heartfelt message to your audience right didn't dsp do the same thing when he was doing emergency streams and his patreon link was all over the place um, for me, oh, well, but, but hold on, hold on, Phil, because normally when someone is sponsored by a product, they typically will like or use it. Yeah, usually. In the case of a game stream, the audience can see for themselves. Yeah, that's it, literally. Because there are times where you say, look, and as long as you made it clear that it's an ad and people know that it's an ad, then it's fucking fine. Okay, I really need now if you if you get like secretly given money by somebody to promote their product and you don't even make it clear that you're promoting the product, then the, then we have a problem. I, you know, I'm in a really tough spot now. I got this coming up and on this on the same screen, you have a you have a tip tracker. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's the same same type of thing. Like you're you are you're, you're tracking your revenue on, on the stream. And I, I, I don't have any problem with that. That's done by millions of streamers. But. But it's the idea of saying like, hey, I'm in a really tough spot right now. Uh, I really need you guys to help, help me out. And in your words, you know, I, I'm going to be eating, you know, uh, lunch meat sandwiches, right? Like, I, what's wrong with lunch meat sandwiches? <laughs> and and now, now we have the biggest lie of this whole stream. This is it. Sometimes. There's nothing wrong with lunch meat sandwiches. I eat them a lot. I eat them a lot. Like, who are you trying to fool, dude? Who are you trying to fool? When was the last time this dude ate a lunch meat sandwich? In 1996? This guy, imagine this guy, who is who believes it's beneath his level to go to Walmart. Imagine this guy eating a lunch meat sandwich. Yeah, good luck. Next time. <laughs> They're delicious. Um, no, I see what you're saying. For, for the tip track and, and he said it in that specific segment i could actually pull it up for the extra context uh dsp lunch meat sandwich because that's a very iconic moment uh is is it this one <laughs> he is oh yes this is the the title of this one is great this is vintage hate army watch uh dsp is starving and needs money or he might have to eat a ham sandwich no it's serious you guys he might have to eat a sandwich this is it. Oh my God, this whole thing. Okay, if we start from a that being said, because that's the he best place to like start. sounded like Cookie Monster when he said that. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, they're delicious. I eat them all the time. So that being said, all right. Very nice. If you like my content, and if you can support the streams today, please do. In particular, I absolutely need help with tips today. If you tip me today, and I hit the goals today, I'm in a good position for tomorrow. If I stream today and I hit none of the goals, I'm fucked. And essentially, I'll, I'll be going grocery shopping. I guess we're going to eat a, eat, a, eat a lunch meat sandwich, you know, for our day off. Can't even have a meal out or nothing. And this is it. Imagine. Imagine you having to degrade yourself to the point where you have to eat a lunch meat sandwich. That's unacceptable. We need to hit those goals. And he's talking about it like it's lit literally beneath him to eat a sandwich. Because, that of course, this guy and his wife, they're... Uh, food connoisseurs. They love everything that comes from a restaurant in a plastic box. It's really there for rewarding my audience. And I know that sounds weird. I, I would prefer not to track tips. Because if I didn't have to track tips, I wouldn't have to count all stream. I could just kind of <laughs> focus on what I'm doing with my audience. Um, <clears throat> But, you know, uh, there's incentives. There's rewards that they like. They like silly things I do on stream. They've, they've come up with ideas, not me. They come up with the idea that if I raise a certain amount on a stream, I put on a stupid hat or a vest. They they donate hats and vests for me to wear on a stream to look like an idiot. And I'm okay looking like an idiot for them. I don't care. What do I, you know, I'm self-deprecating. Who gives a crap? You know, they're, they're supporting me. It's a way to give back. Um, No, I hear what you're saying. 
The difference is, all right, there's a tracker on the screen. Okay, big deal. I'm not going to... So I understand the begging now. So he begs so much because he loves his audience so much. He wants to reward him whenever possible. I get it now. He's begging for you so you could be rewarded. Oh, I was so stupid. Sit there and talk about it constantly. If you watch a four-hour stream I put out, yes, every once in a while, I'll hey, guys, it'd be great when you get some more support on the stream or whatever today. And then we move on, right? And I'll hit up upon it a few times during the stream. Some people say I hit upon it way too much. And I understand that. Everyone has different perspective on that. I agree that sometimes I do it too much. I'm trying to get better at that. Um, but there's a difference between that and you could tell that a stream is being done because someone... And you can see here Mudahar is saying, LOL, what rewards? Blowing bubbles? LMAO. Buying themselves and having a passion or someone turned on a stream today to make money. Like nobody is buying this. Um, there's people out there that I feel like the only reason that they're in it is there's no passion. You know, they don't love what they're doing. It's because they saw dollar signs and they but want still, to monetize as much as It sounds like projecting right now. <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> Phil, Phil, Phil you, you, you just said, you just said a few minutes ago, and I mean this with all sincerity, man, you, you're, you're, you said just a few minutes ago, the reason why you still do this is because you, you can make more money than a nine to five job, right? And, mm -hmm. and Half it's of it, right. Mm hmm. Right, so like that—that's a pretty big half, you know. And uh, I, I don't know, man. It just—it doesn't seem. It seems like when when you're asking your audience for money consistently, look, Adam and I have both worked with people who, who like the worst thing you can do is 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 value is look at your audience as a dollar as a dollar, right? And yep. yes. and this is something that that I don't have a whole lot of, you know. I've left companies over this, right? Um, and this is something that I, I don't, I don't agree with. But I would say that when money comes in and you reach a goal, let's say you reach a goal and you put on your vest or whatever, how are you taking that money? And are you, are you reinvesting it into your content? Are you reinvesting it into cameras? Are you uh, doing special streams outside of, um, outside of? Uh, just your this answer is the best. You're about to get the what best answer you've ever you that's ever been people. answered. I, I mean, I get you have to pay bills. I get it, right? What value are you adding to your to your audience's experience to further that meaningful relationship that you that you're offering? Very meaningful relationship. Uh, shout out to 16 months Dorzak who says big up Smearcat in a bust emote. So now we get the answer. How did you reinvest all that positivity into being even more positive? Um, yeah, we, we've had big goals. Like, for example, um, if we hit a monthly members goal on YouTube, if we hit a sub goal on Twitch, now instead of just doing our normal routine gameplay, I do an interactive event with the viewers where we'll talk for a series of weeks. What do you guys want to see? Do you want to see a big react event? Do you want to see a special party atmosphere? We just did one uh, a couple of weeks ago. It was a Super Bowl event. I never. What is what is a event. react event? What is what does that mean? Oh, this is like it. It's like being a detractor and trying to to like talk to somebody about DSP, but then you use all of these like insider terms, all of these, uh, I forgot how it was called, ubiquitous language that only we understand. So he tried to give them basically a pre-stream expecting them to know all his lore and they just don't. So they're like, okay, what's a react? It they just do watching stuff or? It, well, a yes. react would be, for example, let's say there's a, a documentary, a long form documentary out there that people really want to see me react to. It's like two hours, right? But for me to react to it, it's going to take like three, four hours. Well, that's going to take a major chunk out of my, my normal schedule to do. You know, people also don't want to be get backlogged on the games that I'm playing. But you hit that event. Now we're going to do special things. You know, this big React event, it's separate from all my other content. A lot of times it's hyped up. We, we set special things around it that I normally wouldn't do. Uh, yes, some of that money gets reinvested. Uh, I have a series. I know this sounds stupid, but my fans love this. It's called <laughs> Feasting with the King. But wait, I thought, like, why are we talking about your fans like their children 20 minutes ago we talked that they're uh, you know like 18 to 25 and then 25 to 40 and stuff like that all these demographics but now it's like okay you guys i know this is like really stupid but my fans those idiots they love it so much basically i order a meal and i eat a meal with my audience they think it's funny because they think it's funny to see me eat i look stupid they say uh -huh. I'm, like, I'm, I'm in That's what the trolls like, say. They like making fun of me, right? When you but say the still, king, you're still using the king moniker. I, I see. Right, uh, the king of hate. 
Not the well, king you hate. That's the thing. There's, it doesn't there's... matter. You you say the king, and you know that... <laughs> the way he he tried to weasel himself out of that. Well, it's not the king of hate. Then the king of what? The king of blank space. But that's what it was. So people are gonna make that connection. You're one hundred percent correct. And I need to, the thing is, I should, I do need to try to fully phase it out. Feasting with the king and ask the king are two leftover shows or events that I do that have the king moniker in them that I probably should try to phase out or re rename. But when you have a sh things that have been running for so long, people actually have pushback. Like, don't change it. We love it. It's been like that for so long. Those are my those are my true fans saying that, not my haters, you know. But you're right. You're right. I agree there. Um, but anyway, no. Yes, I try my best to reinvest, you know. There was... How? Well, well like I just said, do, doing something <laughs> above and beyond. I, I, I'm, like... That doesn't cost any money, though. You know, doing another stream, reacting. That's just Correct. making more money. But, and also, that stream has been already paid for. It's not like he's doing it out of the generosity of his heart. Those member goals, they're paid for. Correct. But and if they don't get hit, the event doesn't happen. Then, you know, the, the ordering of a giant meal that normally I wouldn't order. You know, I'm talking ordering two entrees and stuff getting door dashed. You're talking 50, 60 bucks on my pocket that I normally would not spend. You know, mm -hmm. it's not budgeted, but because... You know, we did this special event. And I know I hear what you're saying. What you're saying is, if you have these goals every day, where's the money going? Oh my God, no. You just asked yourself the question, and he asked himself the question because he had a canned response. That's why. Would you really like to know? Do you really want... It's I mean, not, it's not, honestly... And now we get into the more, um, I guess, the, the deeper levels of this onion that is Dark's Fadil. And then at some point... In like two hours, Keemstar joins, which is, of course, the climax. It's not that we are asking, it's that mm -hmm. you, I feel Give money for event. Event takes a day slot, so when he gets back, he has to ask for more dollar to make up for the day they gave him extra money to earn. But he also, he also makes money during the event. So it's not really like he's doing anything selflessly. Just, just straight up, nothing. Like the people out there that have been supporting you that now have turned against you because they feel you lied to them or uh, you saw them as dollar signs and that's all you that they were to you. Yeah, it's like, I feel like they want to know most. Well, let, let, then let's talk about that. Let's talk about that for a minute, right? Set up. There was a, um, you know, you went through bankruptcy, right? Mm -hmm. And that's pretty public. You went through bankruptcy and there was this, um, the, the $5,000 um there we you know, go business finally expense thing has been talked about by your detractors quite a bit they say mm -hmm. what could you possibly be spending five thousand dollars on look i'm like the you are a streamer who streams you know by your own schedule you're 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 active 12 hours a day doing this right and uh there's and by your own you know, admission you, you said like you didn't fix the set at all it's been just a shoddy set for most of your de over a decade of of doing this mm -hmm. right so there's there's this whole like what what do your business expenses look like i mean i've done this for a long time the business expenses are your initial cost of setting up your camera your mm -hmm. lights and and that's about it and then after that it's your 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 cost Internet is bill. your time yeah it's, it's right. your time right and uh so so walk me through what does that look like what is it specifically you know there's this five thousand dollar business expense every right. month so right. what, what what is this Okay, even if the the 5000 is just a figure that they had to put in the bankruptcy papers so it all looked good or whatever, and it was his tax, not the tax, but the bankruptcy lawyer's job to do it, it doesn't matter. He still spends multiple thousands of dollars on what is considered to be, I guess, random bullshit uh, that prevents him from having any kind of financial stability. And it would be interesting for him to reveal a little bit of what those things are. Uh, but now we're just gonna go into this whole discussion about like what the five thousand is and where that came from and that he doesn't know anything. Okay, so first of all, we're talking about things that came out publicly during a bankruptcy uh, proceeding, correct? And I believe mm -hmm. that the five thousand dollar a month number came off of I, I I believe it's from my my a tax return. Is that correct? That it was filed or, or you know the data? I'm trying to remember mm -hmm. exactly where it came from. Um, you guys probably know more than me because you've probably been inundated with this. But wait, wait, well. how how are we supposed to know more than you about your own bankruptcy, dude? Where you spend your money on? I'm I don't. So far removed from this. I want to hear it from you. I th I think again, I'm just speculating. 
I think what happened was when I filed for bankruptcy, a lot of information goes public. And so they look at a public filing. I guess there's certain information that's made public. I don't think it's all your tax returns. I think it's like one year's worth or something. Um, and I guess there was a number that was thrown out there that it looks like Phil does, spends $5,000 a month on business expenses. Now, number one, I don't do my own taxes. I have a tax guy to do yeah, it. Yeah, but you spend your own money, right? Pay him to do it, okay? Here's what I can tell you, all right? When I, I can tell you right now because I'm working on it right now for this year. <clears throat> what are considered expenses that a tax attorney wants to know you're spending every month? Geez, um, your mortgage, because if you work from home, I guess that's part of it. I don't know. Again, I'm not a tax guy, but you, you cost your mortgage. Um, all of your utility bills that apply to you operating well, the business. What? Correct. Hold, hold on, Phil. Phil, you've been doing this for 17 years and you don't know what your business expenses are. You don't know what. Yeah, you, exactly. You get tax write-offs on and stuff. I mean, like uh, specifically, uh, no, I don't. I, I give it all. To, I pay a lot of money to a tax guy. I have a giant, you know, spreadsheet of data that I provide. Yeah, but but yeah, exactly. You provide the data though, so you should know the data. You should be very familiar with the data. And now he's acting like he just doesn't know, like somebody else does it. Work it out, because every year it's different. You know, I get the feeling tax loss chains and stuff, and they figure it out. I give them all the data. In fact, just got an email from a tax guy the other day. He's like, we still need this data for you for this year's tax filings. We need how much do you pay for utilities? What, you know, what's your cost of internet this year? What's this? What's They need all that information. And I got to get them to it, and then they do it. So <laughs> what you're, what, here's the thing, all right? Everyone, look, we're really going to get to the meat of it, is this stupid WWE champion's bullshit. And here's the thing. Yeah, he wants to derail the topic into talking about what he wants to talk about because he got a pre, pre-made pre response. I cannot wait to well, talk about it. Well, okay. but, but, he can't we'll wait. He can't wait to talk about it, by the way. Keep that in mind for when we get there and he gets to talk about it and he's not very talkative. Yeah, but I but I want to okay. stay on this for a minute. I want to stay on this for a minute. Like, just once again, walk me, walk me through this because, like... I'm just, I'm, I'm and also Murahar says in the chat, uh, you can only use a percent of your mortgage, not the whole thing. I'm trying to put myself in your shoes. But this though. is, I guess, the it's the is the tax guy that does the percentages or whatever. He kind just sends him some kind of data, but he knows what kind of data he's sending him, and he definitely knows where his own money is going. Uh, trying to after all, he doesn't have much of it. He's not like a trillionaire to the point where you can't track your own money. He got a couple of thousand. Uh, while you're while you're uh, piecing it together, you know, building that up, I just want to remind you, uh, Phil. Like mm -hmm. you, you said at the beginning of this stream, you want this to be where people can go to finally, like, oh, you just go watch that video, right? Yes. I don't, I don't have to say it anymore. So, Correct. like this, you you said, like, what do we want to know? This isn't for us. This is for the people out there that are like, what about the five thousand dollars a month? Yeah. Sure. So, you know, what about WWE champ, which we'll get into, like, what about these things? So it's like, you're, this is your chance to now. What does he mean? Like, if you declared bankruptcy, you should know everything about it because yeah. they would have asked you. Yeah, pretty much. But of course he relies like, like with pretty much anything, <laughs> with anything, he, he relies on paying somebody to do it and giving them complete power over the issue. So it's taken care of, you know? It's not like it's his at any of his business. But I assume since it's his bankruptcy, he should know everything because he knows where all his money comes from and where it goes. Say, all right, it was the freaking business expenses, uh, whatever. I mean, it was the mortgage. It was this. I don't know if, mm -hmm. if that's actually considered a tax write-off. I, I, don't, I don't want you to get in trouble, but I don't know. It just feels... No, I see, that's the thing. Uh, again, when I went to that bankruptcy, oh, my God. That was the craziest rigmarole because my tax attorney, excuse me, not my tax attorney, I misspoke. My bankruptcy attorney had no idea what they were getting into with me being a public persona. And there were things you can do, I guess, to protect from online harassment, which they did. I tried to explain. They didn't really understand who I was or whatever. And so when all that went public, that was the, the most drama filled bankruptcy hearing ever. <laughs> thousands of messages from my haters about stuff but anyway the most dramatic bankruptcy of all time award goes to dark side phil congratulations let me answer the question first and then we can get to anything you want to talk about there i would assume 
that that the, the expenses are including everything that I do. Okay, that's that's related to the business, and that could include mortgage, any insurance that I'm paying that relates to the business, um, you know, health insurance and or medical costs, um, legal costs, and that what I'm talking about is my tax attorney, but also other attorney and things that I've been involved in over the years, which. Maybe we will get into that today or maybe we won't. I don't actually, I really can't talk too much about certain things. We'll get to that, about identity theft and stuff. Well, I, well, I, I thought everything was on the table. And I understand. I understand. I don't expect them to go super crazy on it. It's the first time I ever mentioned that, you guys. So, um, among other things, you know, all, all the normal things in a month. You know, like I said, utilities and all of that. It adds it up. Here it is. Here's my tax return. All of a sudden, I'm being accused that that was a lie or something. All right, here's what I can say. Because I'm not going to sit here and go back to a 2010 tax return and say, here's what my accountant said or whatever. Right. This is from 2010? That's $5,000 a month? Oh, excuse me. I'm not, did I say 2010? I meant 2020. That's totally my fault. I meant 2020. It's this was My bankruptcy was 2020. So I believe, I think the tax return that must be referenced is like 2019. Something like that. Okay? Um, here's what I know. Because of the amount of trolling that happened to me, this judge that was involved in the bankruptcy hearing was attacked online with so much shit. I had to go into meeting after meeting with both my bankruptcy attorney and this judge. Hours of work. We went through line item by line item of all of my expenses. I had to explain to a judge who has no idea what live streaming is, the entire concept of being a live streamer and showing every single expense and line item and, and rationalizing what it was to my business. This is this, this is this, right? You know, and it, it took so much work. At the end of the day, after all that extra work and time and money that had to be put into my bankruptcy, it went through. The judge understood. I showed them everything. If anything, if anyone should see line item by line item what my business expenses are, it should probably be the judge who's going to make a ruling on if I should be granted bankruptcy or not, right? That's the government, a government representative, correct? They saw it all. They went through all of it. And at the end of the day, they said, this all makes sense. Approved. Well, so, so it, but in the vast majority of time, Winners in bankruptcy experience like some sort of relief, mm -hmm. right? Whatever the debt is that you were paying, it's gone, right? So why do you feel so? Why do you have to go back to the well, going back to your audience, um, and and ask your audience to to crowdfund your your content mm -hmm. uh, when you claim and and you you know you still say that nothing has really changed financially for you? Great question. Thank you for asking it because this is one of the ones I get hit with every day. Um, we just talked about also also really chat. interesting point being brought up in chat. By the way, um, if he went over everything line by line, why is he having such a hard time remembering? That's very interesting. With Twitch, okay. So the bank, and I'm not expecting him to remember exact amounts, just like general general kind of stuff. So yeah. I spend every month an estimate of this much on taxes and this much on this and this much of that. You know, it's it's just kind of common sense stuff. He goes through around mid to late 2020. I'm relieved of all this you know, revolving debt that I had in my name. But there's still debt that remains. There's still my mortgage. There's still my car payment. There's still taxes. And taxes is a big thing because for years there, I was not able to pay my federal taxes properly. And well. It, you, 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 you couldn't pay them or you didn't prepare to pay them properly. There's a difference. Because I thought you hold on. I thought you said that you paid a guy to do your taxes. But he did him wrong. Correct. To file the taxes. Because because well, the... what a horrible judge to approve his bankruptcy. Well, I, I don't know much about how any of that works, and I hope I never have to. But uh, I just think they just wanted to get rid of him. They saw he wasn't really that big of a deal. People were getting on their ass about it, annoying them and shit. So they were like, oh, okay, let's get this motherfucker out of here. He looks fucking concerned and stressed out. And he's looking like he's about to start crying. So let's let's just let's just be done with it and move on to the next thing. Plus, on top of everything, this happened during COVID. And nobody knew what was happening or what was going on during COVID. I think the one thing that people need to understand is that you are acting as an independent contractor with YouTube and Twitch. And whoever right so when you're paid when when somebody gives you a dollar super chat youtube takes 30 percent of that right and that so you get 70 percent that 70 percent then needs to be taxed by 
by uh, Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam comes in and they take however much of that. So, so you, you know, by the end of it, you could be getting anywhere between 50 cents of that or or 35 cents of that, depending on what your revenue is for the year, you know, and, and you're the tax brackets you're in. It sounds like, Bill, that that you didn't necessarily plan accordingly for that and you didn't save your money to ultimately pay. And if you if you have a tax person to do this, a CPA, which is for any online creator, that's like the number one expense is is having a CPA to do your taxes. That's the number one thing because oh, yeah. going through and you know that's that's extremely important. But your tax, like has your tax person ever ever came to you and said, hey, you should probably prepay your taxes. You should be paying quarterly instead of having one big lump sum at the end of the year. Because it that just oh, yeah. seems it seems really irresponsible for somebody who who works online and has done so for 17 years to have a tax person who hasn't suggested that and no, haven't no, no, had no, you no. prepaid. Do not please that, that my tax guy is great. And okay. He, 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 you know, I have an well, estimate of what I should be paying, not even quarterly, monthly, like basically, can I make this monthly payment? And some months I can easily make it no problem. And other months I can't, I have to pay less depending but, on the income that I made that month. But that income is based off of your tax for that month is based and your quarter and your year is based off of the revenue that you're making that month. So if you make ten thousand dollars that month, then then you're going to be, you know, then you prepay whatever two thousand dollars in taxes, three, whatever, however much it is. Right. So the money is already in your account. So why why would you have trouble spending? Why would you have trouble with that? I'm, I'm, I'm really having a hard time following this because sure. if you have the money, it's either being spent before it's time to pay taxes or or i don't know i i don't, I don't know please walk me through it yeah please okay. do so i have two revenue streams one revenue stream is very much daily income that i get from my viewers meaning like tips let's say okay that's pretty much tips on a stream the other revenue stream is the other income that i get from youtube that's ad revenue super chats memberships and all of that okay daily i get tips and that essentially is the money that i'm using day to day to uh pay pay some bills pay bills grocery shopping pay uh, bills you know buy a new game for the bills coming up all that kind of stuff the youtube money that comes in behind the scenes is what i use to do all my ongoing recurring payments my more so so bills more bills my everything is just bills uh you know, <laughs> this is the most billed person alive everybody just it, imagine they probably just start sending him uh, mails from random businesses that he was never a client of, but they just send him an invoice and he just pays the bill. It's just good guy Phil pays all the bills. Damn it, whatever. What's ha here's what's happened. Okay, the bankruptcy happens. Great. End of 2020, things are looking up. I'm actually getting more popular on Twitch. I'm starting to make good money. I announced to my audience in early 2021. Hey guys, guess what? There's a light at the end of the tunnel. You guys are supporting me so much. The bankruptcy went through. It's looking like if you keep this going this year, not only for the first year in many years, because now the bankruptcy is over with, now I can pay all my taxes properly for the first Whoa, time. Whoa, epic time. event. You know, my problem is we have that much debt and everything. But Phil, hold on, Phil. I thought you don't bring up private, important information on your streams. And now he's talking about how glad he was to announce to the public that he can finally pay his taxes properly. You know, I, I couldn't do it. It was my fault. I was in financial ruin. All right, 2021, things are looking up. And then what happens? They get me kicked out of the Twitch partner program. They shut down other revenue streams for me that I can't really talk about. Later on that year, identity theft, which we might not get to today. I don't know if we'll talk about that. That's a huge one. Identity you clearly theft, want to talk about it. it, it, and we'll, it we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah. It cost me we'll so there. much money to fix the identity theft thing. So now I went from I'm good to, oh, I immediately have lost a revenue stream from Twitch. I have to go to YouTube. I'm making way less money on YouTube now than I was on Twitch. All that money that was gonna make everything even, I'm good to go now, it's gone again. I'm way reduced income again. So you're right. Just <laughs> everything now, went wrong what, on YouTube adjusted. again. My mortgage still exists, my car still exists, all those regular expenses still exist, and now I'm making way less. So it, it, here, this is a running pattern and I hate this shit. Every time in life I feel like I'm getting ahead, something happens and screws me over. I'm serious, it's, a, it's like a comedy of errors. It's but once again, once again, Phil, it, then then why not remove all that shit and just do something different? I'm not I'm not telling you what to do, but like mm -hmm. if if there's if you keep running in, if if you keep running into a wall, 
eventually you need to take a, sec a different direction, right? And where's and like at the end of our tunnel, Meerkat. Uh, where's the light of the end of our tunnel? I don't know. I don't know. I guess we just keep driving straight, and it might be a a light, or there might be a wall. I don't know. You never know, dude. I, I... We're about to find out someday, I guess. Uh, it's interesting to see who's going to be there at the end because it's uh, imagine DSP just officially getting off the internet, retiring, or I don't know, maybe he's going to die or something. And the, the people that are there are going to witness something special, something truly special that's been decades in the making, like unironically, legitimately. I love that you love what you're doing right now, but if and maybe I'm not going to be there. Maybe TBS not going to be there. Maybe most of the channels that are there today are not going to be there, probably gone for one reason or another, but somebody's going to be there. Somebody's going to make it a part of recorded history and people are going to be looking back decades from now, generations from now, they're going to be looking back, be like, oh, dark side Phil, legend of the internet. Still struggling with this so immensely. He destroyed all of at, his at trolls. Point, don't you need to like self-reflect and say like, look, man, I'm running into this wall fucking five times. It's, I, I should probably not be doing this or change my approach to it. Mm -hmm. I hear you. And like I said, I had that conversation with my mom in 2019 um, about changing it and, you know, not be beholden to people, do something different with my life. Um, I mean, yeah, let's be honest. A major, a major factor is money. Have to be honest here, right? That's what this is about. I'm going to be transparent. Major uh, factor. I mean, it sounds like it is the factor. I mean, it, <laughs> sounds, it sounds like you, you're just spending the money as it coming in instead of saving and preparing for the next month where it might not mm -hmm. be as profitable so that you could be like, I already, I, I'm saving. Maybe I'm not going to buy that new game. Maybe I, even though it's probably a write off because you're doing it for business, doesn't matter. Right. Uh, you know, it seems like you just got to start saving money maybe be a little smarter for the future i mean i'm not trying to like lecture you no on you're money, right but you're it right. seems like you it <laughs> seems like you need it so yeah i need uh, what i need and I've, I've said this before i'll just just say dude i would i would love to watch dsp react to this whole thing and in all of the moments where he is aggressively agreeing with adam i want to hear what he has to say i want to hear his commentary i need like a year and here's what i mean by that I need one year. Now, guys, I'm in hospice care. Two bills coming soon. Yeah, prob probably something along those lines could happen. You know, it it's very plausible. Very plausible. And he's going to be streaming from his iPhone or something. To, to, <laughs> he's going to be like Daniel Larson. To, to make running money, across the country. Not or have my troll I don't know. <laughs> fuck with my income. It's they never going to happen. I agree never. with you. I now agree with you. I know that now. But that's what's happened is every time something happens that screws my income again. Well, wait, oh, here we go. I worked my ass off. I changed who I am. I'm a different kind of content creator. All the things that they had issue with with me. This is why they do it to me right there. We don't like Phil for this, this, this. Okay, I'll change all of that. No, nope, still do it anyway. Ruin his income. So why not. change? Why change? What's the point? Yeah. It's not doing anything. Why Why wouldn't you just stay the person that you were and that you, you, Good or you point are here. or whatever instead of like trying to like adhere to people on the internet? Because the people on the internet are going to hate the haters are gonna hate. Like, who fucking mm -hmm. cares? So, what's what's the point? You're doing well, it for nothing. I agree. I I understand what you're saying. At the same time, I feel like that a lot of the changes have been very productive. I I like like I said. Now I love what I do for a living. I didn't before. I do now. I actually genuinely want to, to be here every day with my audience. It's fun. I wake up in the morning energized, ready to go. I used to wake up in the morning like, oh, I gotta go play games and film again. That was a horrible mentality. Who wants you know? It's, I treated it like any other job. This now I love it for the last four or five years, but. Um, I hear you. Um, but yeah, if I were to quit YouTube, let's say right now, cold turkey, I quit YouTube. I can't find a job out there that's going to pay what I'm doing now. You know, in, in addition to that, there's always the factor that I've been out of the job market for a decade. Who's going to hire a 40 year old guy that hasn't done anything besides. Yeah, well, operate an online streaming business for 10 years. Nobody, ago. nobody with that attitude, though. Oh, yeah. there we go. Here he got bodied because this is really the answer. Nobody with that specific attitude. And of course, the, the rest of the stuff is not helping him either with not having any experience, not having any skills, because he could easily get a job as like an editor for somebody where all he had to do is sit at home and edit videos. I've done that freelance and it took like eight hours a week and I just paid, got paid for it. Uh, but he didn't learn how to do those things. He could have learn how to use Photoshop, how to edit videos, and then he would have something to offer to a workplace. And they would, even with the experience he's got, they would get him 
uh, hire him and teach him even more stuff so he could could contribute more to the company. But he just doesn't want that. It's clear that he doesn't want to do that. You know, so it, it, you know, it seems like you're you're already defeated, not even worth worth trying. So so you're putting yourself in this hamster wheel that Craig was mentioning earlier. It's just like I there's no option. This is it. So I have to grind. I have to do this. And like that sounds miserable to me. Even though you you say you're having fun, it seems like you're just trying to convince yourself that instead of actually it is. It might be true. It might mm -hmm. be true. But two th these two things could be true also. I'm I'm just pointing that out. What I'm seeing. And I I just like to kind of continue on with that, right? The idea of like, do you do you have a business plan? Do you have what it looks like in? what your business looks like in a month from now. Do you have a business plan for a year from now? Um, you have a tax guy who runs your numbers, but are you are you saving money? Because it, it doesn't sound like you are, because just based off what you're saying, and it, mm -hmm. it very much sounds like you're gonna be doing this when you're 60, right? And if you, know, and if you wanna be doing it when, when you're 60, that's fine, but, but this doesn't seem very forward thinking. You know, when you seem like you're, you're living day to day as opposed to mm -hmm. thinking about long term. Um, and, you know, dude, you're 40 years old. And at a certain point, you got to look at things and say, like, well, do I want to be doing that? Like, will I ever have enough money to retire? Will I ever have enough money to to not do this? You know, so so walk me through that. Walk us through that. The idea of like, do you I mean, it's OK to say you don't have a business plan. It's OK. It's like. We're putting it all on the table here, Phil. And if you don't, that's mm -hmm. fine. Uh, just kind of walk me through it, man. Uh, currently, do I have a business plan? No. No. Have I had course. business plans in the past? Yes. And every single one of them has been destroyed by my income. By the trolls. Right you know, to have a plan, a long-term plan, you have to know at least what the stability is going to be today and depend on a little bit of that stability. And it sucks. Like, like Adam said, you two... Twitch, any kind of online content creation is a constantly fluctuating thing. Tomorrow, everything could be turned off for all of us. We can't even stream, right? It could be a new law that says we can't do it anymore. In which case, then I guess I am boned and I got to go out there and get a, a, an offline job, right? Um, but I, how can I lay out a business plan when every month is different, when it looks like there's consistency to my life? Oh, here's what I'm making every month. That's, again, that's exactly what was happening in 2021. There was a series of months, like the first three months to four months of the year. Things were going great. I had a business plan. Here's what I want to do. Let's do this for a certain amount of years. Let's expand. Let's improve the setup. Let's try new things. Let's do this. And then if it keeps going, you get to the next stage of the business plan, right? And what happens? I lose my partnership, identity theft, income's destroyed. Now what do I do? Business plan's gone. So how can I set a plan? Then, then make a new plan, like a short-term plan. Because the long-term plan is just a series of short-term plans. God damn it. And yes, he did say offline job, which I mean, technically he's correct. These people won't allow me to even have any level of stability in my life for even a few months. You know what you do? Stuff that they're doing. You make another business plan. You move forward. That's what you do. Like any, any, no. I mean, I don't know. What choice do you have? Right. The, the only choice is to make a new one and continue moving forward. I like, agree. Like, I, will, I will not be beaten by these people. You know, it's not, it's, what you well, just said sounded like you you were. Oh like no! You, you have been over not. and over again. One of the I'm, major I'm letting things... you know. I'm letting you know what you just like the what you had just finished with. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a business. He asked what your business plan is. He was like, I had a business plan, but they kept shitting all over it. Like that was your response instead of this is my business plan, mm -hmm. right? You didn't you didn't you don't have a, a future vision. That's I think that's what. Craig oh, I was do. Going okay, for. okay. I spoke. I do have a future vision. The problem is if I fully explain it. They're going to try to ruin it. You understand? Oh, wow. That's a good answer. That's a good answer. That is a good answer. Uh, I understand why he would say that. And let me think of what his future vision could be uh, based on what he's been talking about recently. So I assume the first step is going to be uh, play more games. And I'm only talking about his business. I'm not talking about like refinance the house and whatever, because obviously he wants to do that. Uh, play more games. Then stop playing games and start doing diverse stuff. And that's it, basically. Basically, his whole idea is to stream eternally until the sun dies out and explodes. He's going to be streaming. That's his idea. That's his concept. And it's not just for the money. It's because if he stops streaming, there's nobody to feed his ego. There's nobody. Nobody. So he's always going to be terminally online because he just doesn't know any else. 
said that. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Like, do I have an idea of what I'd like to do? Yes. I know exactly. Actually, I have steps in place to know exactly what I can do uh -huh. to try to fix my situation. I don't want to listen. Sounds good. I don't want to be here on stream every day saying to people, toss me a few bucks. Oh, my God. That's the worst feeling every time I effing do it. I don't want to say, hey, hit me. Do this. Do that. That's obnoxious. I just want to play games and chill with my audience. And this is the funny part <laughs> that my detractors will never mention. Before my income kept getting screwed over all these different times by them and by my choices. It's not just them. It's also my bad choices that did this. I never had any kind of crowdfunding. It was always just Phil's making a living on YouTube. That is blatantly false. That is just wrong. He's been having a, a PayPal link in his description since the dawn of time. Not that there's anything inherently bad with that, but it contradicts what he's saying right now. Via ad revenue. I, and he had a Patreon, too. I had no sponsors. I didn't take any money, extra money from anywhere. I wasn't asking my fans for crowdfunding. Everyone else was. I wasn't doing it. It wasn't until the revenue started to get hurt by that that I decided to do crowdfunding because everyone told me to do it, right? Now, my income's ruined over and over by these people, and what's their number one critique of me? You beg too much. I wouldn't beg if you didn't keep messing with my income. And this is literally just a pre-stream segment. Like, you, you don't want to have this happen during an interview like this. I, the only reason I have to do it weird. is keep ruining my, my financial income. You keep ruining it for me. And then look at how heated he gets. You keep ruining it for me. So Beg how begging, can I have... Go ahead. Sorry. I'm sorry, Phil. Begging begging for money is never a good look for anyone. Completely anyone. agree. Completely agree. I can't I can't dispute it. Well, it's indisputable. Then, okay, then, then look. You, yeah, we all... We all the reality is that he's always been begging in one shape or form. Back when he got paid off of views, he was crying about people not watching enough of his videos so he can make views so he can get paid. So that by itself is begging for money because you're begging for people to watch your videos that you get paid from. Then when he stopped getting paid off of ad revenue, he started directly begging for money on stream. Established, look, the idea of like going on stream and saying, I really need help for these taxes. I really need help for whatever. I got a big thing coming up. Um, Trav, can you please kill it with the uh, with the chats, please? Um, the the biggest thing, and people asking, is this live? Yes, this is live, right? Of course, it's live. <laughs> um, the, the 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 you had an opportunity with with Keemstar and Drama Alert. Oh, this now we're getting hot. Now we're getting heated up. So we got about an hour until the level one moment starts, and then we we might come back to this after that. But I assume that's going to be miserable, so I'm probably going to end it after the podcast. One to go on there for is it fifty thousand dollars was being offered to you to to go on this podcast, right? Fifty k. Why not do that? Like that's mm -hmm. that's a that's a giant amount of money. And yes, there's taxes attached to that. It's after it's all said and done, it's probably thirty k, right? But why not just say, okay, I'll take your money and I'll spend a couple hours on your podcast. Uh, and it, that would clear up so much of your financial burden. Mm -hmm. Okay. Keemstar story. Here we go. <laughs> well, no, no. Just, 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 but just answer that question. I, I don't, I don't want to hear the story. I just want to know, like, why would you not take 50K? Because that's not what happened. You, you've you been told a story that's not true. I oh, it's a lie. Know. It's a fraudulent so, story. There's a history with Keemstar where, you know, over the years, this guy's a horrible reputation on YouTube. You know, everyone knows it. I'm not going to crap on the guy here but every just go look on youtube you'll you're find crapping on him right he now he said and did to people and things over the internet um Looks i've a had a bit. little bit of history with him a little bit but not a lot you know um and basically he had been pretty nasty to me a few times tweets and things like that i'd what it is is people will ask me something on a stream what do you think of keemstar and i'll be like you know it's not just keemstar it's a lot of guys i don't like these drama youtubers i call them misery brokers okay mm -hmm. what they do is a, if you have a bad day they're having a good one because you had a bad day. What kind of content is that? Um, entertaining. Stop having bad days on the internet in public. Of course, people are going to talk about it if they think it's entertaining enough. To, my, to me, I feel that's the worst kind of content. You're benefiting from someone else's personal drama and misery. Keemstar is definitely one of those people in my eyes. You can disagree. That but okay, oh, this is what I don't understand. He is allowed to broadcast his personal drama and misery to benefit from it by gaining the sympathy of his audience. According to him, that is okay. But anybody else is not 
is not allowed to find his drama and personal misery to be funny and entertaining if they think it is and, and make fun of it and laugh at it? Uh, sounds a little bit hypocritical. It's okay. That's what I think of the guy, okay? So I, I said this one day, casually, he starts insulting me and everything on the internet. So we have a little bit of bad blood there, okay? All of a sudden, earlier, it was last year, okay? Unbeknownst to me, people start telling me, Phil Keemstar is trying to contact you. I'm like, what? What are you talking about? I, you know, I have a public, e Craig knows. Craig emailed me. I have a public email. If you want to talk to me. Maybe it goes for there. two months. Can you be cruel? Let's figure out, you know, it's a business Can be bitch. No yeah. email. Nothing. Okay. He is, he's sitting on his Twitter and he's making. On his Twitter? <laughs> Someone tell Darkseid. And he's making public tweets as if it's like illegal or something. As if it's immoral to tweet something at someone else. I feel I want to talk to him right now. Contact him. Tell him I need to talk to him. There's $50,000 on the table and he needs to contact me right now. Yeah, because that's how things work with people that Keemstar communicates with. You just go on Twitter and you send him a DM and they're like, yeah, I want to talk to you. Are you free? Let's jump on a call. Let's jump on a stream. Whatever. That's just how it works. And this, this guy, this senior citizen of the internet, he just doesn't get it. So he thinks this is like unprofessional or disrespectful. Like, boy, you're not that serious. You're not that much of a professional. Is that, first of all, is that how you start a business relationship? Is you scream on your- Yeah, why not? Someone come talk to you? If he has something to offer me, should he not- Phil benefits from his own misery. He did, he does. More than anybody else, really. Contact- And it's his, absolutely his choice to broadcast it publicly online. Contact me? So I well, only know about this because people come to my stream to tell me about it. Okay. So, so to answer your question, I think like, again, the only reason why anybody knows of the restraining order that Cat got is that he told everyone. In, in a traditional environment, no, that's not how you start a start a relationship. Uh, when you deal in the space that Keemstar does and kind of the drama, like look at me space, um, yes, that is how you would start it because it, you throw out fifty thousand dollars on Twitter, people go, whoa, you know, yeah, I, you know, I want to want to get get this attached, so. Um, is traditionally no, but we're not dealing with Coca-Cola. We're dealing with Keemstar, right? And that, that's what he does for a living. So he wants to put eyes on his product and drive mm -hmm. interest. So I, I would say, yeah, he did do it the right way in, in his world and in his interest. It's the okay. same thing as the people making a, this is how you not, don't play a video game. It's the same shit. They're using your, I don't know, for lack of a better word, clout to make content and it works. So what Keem did it and you know you're you're doing that same thing you're bitter that he's not approaching you respectfully you know you, you if he actually wants to get you on his stream or whatnot he maybe should have reached out to you but you know he's he's basically using you it's like the right Correct. thing would be is to use him back right and, and if, there's, if there's upset. right and if there's 50 grand on the table what better way there's no way he's going to make and now as you can see in the chat Keemstar he has entered the the battlefield and also review tech usa sent him like a, a 50 dollars super chat to ask about why are you above a 50k sign-on bonus for a podcast but will ask for tips for groceries the next day it makes no sense well because he is uh, better than the other guys and he's not a lol cow according to him 50 grand back off of an interview with you like wh why why don't you why don't just take it cash the check and then you're golden okay or even, even even if it's 10 grand even if it's five grand even if it's a thousand dollars, like, mm -hmm. why not just be like, yeah, I'll take it, sure. Okay, let's continue because that's this isn't what happened actually. There's, Please, it wasn't it wasn't an interview. I'll, so I, explain you. that part because I, you know, there's I, I just want to know about that. Like you said, that that's not what happened. So what did happen? Correct. So eventually, I had to DM him on Twitter to get, even get his attention because he wouldn't contact me. You know, I learned from drama on my stream. Everyone's drawn up drama on my stream. Keen wants to talk to you, so I DM him, and he's like, "Call me right now." I was like, "I can't," you know. Just tell me what is this about? You know, I'm streaming. I'm busy. Just let me know what this is about. So I, I, I'm serious. I had to go back and forth with this guy so many times for him to just tell me in a DM what I'm interested in is I want to do a show with you. I want you to host a show. This was not an interview for two hours. This was some kind of like an a big project he wanted to be involved in. I don't know exactly what. Let me explain. So he says, but I don't want to talk about it in a DM. We got to have a phone call. I'm like, okay, that's reasonable, right? Let's have a phone call. Here's my number. Here's when to call me. I, I'm available at these times of the day. Okay. 
I wait, the call never comes. It's been like two days, the call never comes. Maybe he's not serious about it. I don't know. I don't know what's going on in this guy's head. All of a sudden, I'm on streams. He starts calling me when I'm on streams. I'm like, is he, I, you know, I don't know what's going on again. So I DM him after the fact. I'm like, hey, you want to go? So basically, it's like, it's like stupid telephone phone tag. By the way, this is the same guy who can fuck around to no end on his stream. There's no amount of time that he's not willing to waste. During his podcast, we've had times where he would just browse the Xbox or the PlayStation store to find something or to download something that has taken him like more than five minutes to do at a time. This is the guy that just gets up. Once he had a, a chipped nail and he got up and he left to go in and fix his nail in the middle of a podcast and everybody else was just like sitting there looking at an empty chair. And then he's acting like Keemstar calling him in the middle of a stream is like blasphemy. You, it, It's like you broke the law or something. Like, dude, you waste way more time doing way more insignificant stuff than this. The guy won't even contact me to talk about what he wants to offer me when I'm available, right? So at that point, I'm like, let me figure out what this is. And I talked to my wife about it. And we sat down. I was like, sounds to me like he wants me involved in a project. I don't know what it is. And my wife says, you know, you know about him, right? I was like, of course I know about him. You know, everyone knows about Keemstar. And you're about to and see the Keemstar response in chat. So this is just the beginning. But Keemstar is getting involved officially here. And he says, I offered Phil. And he spells it with two L's, by the way. Phil. I offered Phil a really good deal. Was very respectful. And he gave me nothing but disrespect in return. And he's lying about me not calling him. I called him. He ignored set times. And we're like, you know, right now, $50,000, if this was real, would be hugely helpful for us. It would put us, you know, back, you know, jump ahead, square, almost square one, I would say, um, with all the things that are going on financially behind the scenes. And, you know, when, at the end of the day, you got to do what's best for you. You got to do what's best for the business. You got to do what's best for everything. Everyone's good interest. And if this were someone who I felt had, like, my best interest in mind or possibly um was not had the history that he has i probably would have done it you know but this is a guy who has a history of online he gets you involved in something and then everything he does is for his own personal gain and it doesn't matter how much he hurts you as long as he's still benefiting from it well here's the thing even if that podcast was hosted or organized or produced by anybody else, as long as the format was based around lol cows talking to each other and Phil was supposed to be one of them, he would never do it. Okay. There was no offer to me of being on an interview for $50,000. That's a lot. Right? So, what, okay. And I'm just, just for, if it sounds like there's miscommunication here. Yes. Right. If, if we were to get Keemstar on the show right now, and kind of kind of walk through this uh -oh. because I'm, I'm I'm very intrigued by this, right? I want to know more about this project. Would you be open to that? Absolutely not. Not after all the stuff that happened after that. Okay, so 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 you you would not be open to talking to him right now. I'm never going to do business with Keemstar. Not after okay. the things I now know about him and the other things that he said and done. Absolutely not. Okay, okay. Then I will delete my tweet that I was about to send asking Keemstar to come on the show. <laughs> I, I, I didn't send a tweet out, just so you know. <laughs> I was going to. Um, here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing. You can say there, it's a difference between short-term gain and long, long view, right? I feel like having any association with that guy in the long term is just going to hurt rather than help. I feel like it's going to be even more, more trolls, more toxicity towards me uh, than I already have. Because I've seen this guy's, I've seen documentaries on this guy. It's factual evidence. Hey, he, Bill, I've seen documentaries on you, bro, and they said you spend all this money on mobile games. What's up with that? Whoa. Creates I don't, I don't, I don't want to worry about, I don't want to talk about Keemstar. Yeah, um, it, but, but, I, 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 I want to say you should use that mentality towards money. It seems like, you know, you're, you're holding him on, on that, but instead of in your own world, I'm, I'm just saying it's just going to help you out. I, I, I feel weird because it feels like I'm, like, lecturing you, but I, I'm just, like... I'm the type of person, I, my friends call me an honest asshole, and I'm mm -hmm. cool with it. Like, I don't mind. I'm, I'm brunt. I, I'm freaking vicious sometimes, and uh, it just, just seems, you know, you're being really raw here, and, and honestly, props to that. So Yeah, um, major props, for I, sure. I just, that's just, this is just who I am, so I just, uh, just feels Dude, like No, I take no that. offense from anything, and I, I appreciate all of the input. I really do. Having conversations like this can only help. 
Well, so so how do you? Oh, score by the, the way, super important moment here because I hadn't noticed this before. He doubles down on how productive and helpful and healthy this interview is. Literally, yes, having conversations like this do nothing but help me. And then the next day, oh man. Yeah, of not not taking Keemstar's money, but taking it from your from your audience who no i don't i don't think the other lol cows ended up getting the 50k because that was only if dsp was a uh, a board i think i think and every once in a while i would tune into it if they're talking about something that i remotely care about or i'm like really stoned um and it's uh it's it's pretty weak it's pretty weak and i i gotta appreciate keemstar's desire to put up a a clown show as big as he can every time but most of the time he just has no idea what they're gonna do on the show and they just end up waffling and rambling about boogie and boogie's a uh, shaman that was in jail but then he wasn't in jail and then he was gonna go after boogie whatever it's like boring repetitive shit no maybe and of course if he was involved if dsp was involved the dynamic in the whole format would be completely different because they would be, 100%, they would be having DSP trolls on. They would be having people. Most most of the spotlight would go to DSP, to be honest. Because Wings on that podcast is super boring. Boogie on that podcast is, like, fake. And, and he is hamming it up. And it's just, like, not genuine. And you could tell. It's very transparent. So, yeah. It's, it's not really... Maybe they're slinging crack. Maybe your audience, you know, you don't know where that money's coming from, right? They may be getting it morally in a, in a you know, in a way that you may not agree with morally. Um, how, how do you square yourself with that? You know, maybe, maybe that I, I think everybody, you know, if you have a sizable audience online, you, you deal with people who are favorable people and you also have some unfavorable people in your audience, right? Um, and they may get money from other ways. So how, how do you square that in, in your brain with, uh, you know, Keemstar versus unknown money. I don't equate the two. Like, Keemstar money is, I'm taking money for a direct project that apparently is going to be a long-term business relationship with this guy. I'm associating myself with a guy who I don't respect, don't like the content he puts on the internet, versus people who watch me, like who I am, like what I stand for, want to support that effort to keep it going. You know, my crowdfunders are the people who let me, allow me to do this for a living 15 years later. I'm a small-time guy, but I can still make a living doing it while others of my size can't because I have the amount of support that I get. And I appreciate that so much. They know that I tell them every day, thank you so much for allowing me to keep doing what I feel is meaningful for you guys. And what you tell me is meaningful every day. Um, but here's the thing. And this is, an oh, and you got, thing. you got, of course, you got rich in Chad who really, really wants to be on, um, as with everybody else's stream. Cause rich is just desperate to be on anybody's stream at all anybody anybody please just have me on uh but I'm, I'm so glad he didn't join this call that guy's so boring <clears throat> as a someone who's crowdfunded mostly you know it's mostly income coming in from streams and also he's not involved in anything like he's not i knew from people watching ads all of that this is a question for you guys too i guess this is interesting sure can, or can you be held accountable for your viewership correct like for example Right now, the G2s. Mm -hmm. I, I would hope that they're all upstanding individuals, right? You always want that, but you don't like know what they're so. all doing, right? Sure. You don't. You, do you micromanage your G2s and say, well, you know, there's someone who's nice on my stream and they come by every day. And I just found out, I went to their Twitter to find out that they're a horrible person. They say racist things on their Twitter all the time. Hey, we're talking about Derek, but kind of. Time. Because if, if he said sexual stuff, we would know they're talking specifically about Derek, but yeah. If someone came to you and said that, would you say, oh, I got to ban them from my community now because they say things on their own personal Twitter? Um, well, if it's bad enough, then yeah. No, it's censorship. I don't believe Yeah, that's it. censorship, and I, I, really? I don't agree with that either. But I, I do think that it starts and stops with expectations, right? Your expectations, and it starts with, with leadership, right? Whether you like it or not, I think that you are the leader of your community. You are the people that everyone looks to and on how somebody should act, how somebody should uh, interact with other people in your chat, how you are the, the flag bearer of how, uh, what the community should be like, right? So uh, I think ultimately your community emulates the hosts. And um, that, be, that being said, I do, I do say I, I absolutely understand not wanting to go in, into business with someone that you don't respect. Uh, yes. I, I pers yeah. personally know um, many.
that that's that's a valid response. Like I don't like this guy. I don't want to do business with him. But the big question is still about the fifty k. You're gonna pass on what is going to be for you a life changing amount of money just because you don't want to work with somebody. Meet different people that are very successful that I don't. And I mean, I I wish, dude. I wish he he wanted to work with uh, Keem because Keem would make him his bitch and he would talk shit when they are live. Uh, Keemstar. He called his um, he called his editor on the air and just fired him. It's it's so embarrassing with them and their editor. They can't seem to find a decent one to edit out the shitty ass podcast that is super easy to edit. I don't even know where they find those editors. They pay him like two thousand dollars a month for that too. Fact, and I'm like I'm couldn't be happier not working with them. Right? Exactly. I mean, the root right. is exactly real ones. No. With Keen. Yeah, I, I mean I get that. I get that. So, so we'll, we'll let, let's let's kind of. Okay, let's let's kind of dig into this a little bit, right? So, where's the line, right? When you when you still going? Wow. Oh yeah, we're still going. Probably gonna go for a little while now. Have let's just say you have a community member that you know, you know via their Twitter. Let's just say they are selling coke, right? They're selling illegal drugs, whatever. Don't you want to be like, hey man, like, I'm not. I'm not into that. Like, there's visual evidence of them doing something bad or, or at least alluding to something negative, something that would be uh, shunned uh, in a normal society, right? But you, you know they're a part of your community. Um, I, you know, and once again, they're coming into their community, potentially, uh, you know, potentially bleeding that into the community. Um, I, I don't think you censor them, but maybe have a conversation about it. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree. It, it's, it's, it's a line of, is it influencing you and your content and your community or not? So what? I think, I think we're going towards a certain topic. I, oh, yeah. I don't know if there's a particular person you may be referencing. Oh, you see, he already got the, the Derek defense loaded up in the chamber. The Derek defense. Right. He was ready to talk about it. Look at this greasy smile. I, I don't, I'm, I'm not going to reference any specific community members. That's, that's not what this, 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 is not about, this is not about, you know, specific community members. We're here to talk to you. Okay. I, I do. I do. I, I want to actually address something real quick. Um, so Kim, Kim actually just tweeted and, and uh, responded to what you just said. And I, I want to hear your thoughts on it. I'm going sure. to read his tweet. Uh, Kim, he said, DSP is lying in this live interview. I called Phil at the agreed times and he ignored my calls and claimed later he was at work. He ignored my calls for 50K up front uh, for the uh, low cow podcast to stream to under 200 live viewers, begging for them to pay his rent and his utility bills. Both Wings and Boogie <laughs> agreed to low cow, uh, low cow podcast. The only reason it didn't happen was because of DSP. Thoughts? Response? It's a lot, blatant lie. He called me when I was on stream. I looked at my phone when I was on stream, wondering why I was getting a phone call. After the fact, I realized that was Keemstar calling me when I was on live stream. How, how did he realize that, though? Because you, you wouldn't get a caller ID. You would just get a number. How would he realize it was Keemstar's number? It's just blatantly false. Yeah, it's blatantly him. weird. Okay. Times I said there was time frames between streams he could call. At, one day, I actually sat here for an hour in my office after a stream waiting for him to call, and he never called. But why didn't you call him? He's what? He's sitting in his... Uh, and also, like, you would be sitting in your office? Like, you can sit anywhere and wait for a call. It's just, why would you say this? It's so weird. Well, if it's not true, he's gonna, he's gonna post, you know, when you were streaming and the phone call. And if not, then, you know, it's pretty easily provable. Yeah, that's fine. So, he never, I'll tell you right now, to, to my knowledge, he never actually called me when I, when, during the times that we talked when he was available. To my knowledge. So. And there, there we go, of course. When he says, to my knowledge... That means nothing. That's all I can say. And then, you know, after the fact, I here's the thing. I just wanted to have the conversation. As I told you guys, I personally have issues with the guy and the content he puts out. I do. So at least, at the very least, knowing it's in my family's best interest to have the conversation, find out what the conversation is about, at least, to find out, you know. But but he wouldn't even have a conversation. So if you, the conversation doesn't take place, of course I'm not going to say. If, if you can't even have the call... How on earth could you ever enter a business relationship with someone for a big amount of money, for a big commitment of time or whatever it was going to be? You know, it just didn't make any sense to me at all. So that's why it never happened. Okay. 
And by the way, Boogie, I've talked with Boogie behind the scenes. He really wanted me to be on the show. But I, t- I told him personally, I can't do it, man. I can't do anything with Keen. I just can't do it. I, a guy, I can't be involved business with what he stands for. It's kind of like the same thing. I know this is going to sound crazy. All right. I'm the kind of guy that I, if I can help it, I won't shop at Walmart. Okay. Why? Because I don't, I hate that company. Come and there we go. Now we want, now we get the grandstanding on Walmart. This is the same guy that buys everything from Amazon, by the way, a company, no better than Walmart. But he has destroyed small businesses just, and he's buying it just because it's convenient for him. It's little towns, right? Now everyone shops at Walmart because has the best price. I, if I can help it, I won't. Every once in a while I go there, but for the most part, I, I can't, I got, that's the kind of guy I am. Maybe that's a huge flaw with me, right? But I'm not going to take money. I would feel like taking a paycheck from Keemstar is kind of like blood money. That's money he made. That's blood money, dude. He tried to steal the podcast with Boogie. Yeah, he wanted to do that. They also talked about that on a different show somewhere. I think Keemstar talked about it. That that Phil secretly wanted to do the, the podcast with Boogie and Wings, but behind Keemstar's back. So, and call it something different. People, drama content he put this out. This weasel. To earn it. I'm not going to do that. Didn't you start your career on, on like drama and hate? But not against people. I never, I will say this. I never, if I could help it. But the people in the street, fighter, the street fighter community, like that's who you said you were targeting. Oh, okay. That's different. And here's the thing. You're right. I uh-huh. totally, How's that different? It's di- no, it's different because I've changed now. I. <laughs> this is, this is a top five moment, by the way, the way he delivers that line. It, I've changed now. Like it's, it's. Uh, I don't even know, dude. It's so shallow and it's so basic. I've changed now. I, I've changed now, okay? I'm different. I agree, and I, I've talked about this in documentaries about me. <laughs> I'm in sorry. You sound, you sound like, like the abusive ex-boyfriend trying to get back with his girl. I've changed no, we, now. Don't worry about it. Adam, you're talking about something that happened the first half I, of the 2000s. I know. I, I'm, just, I'm just calling, as I said, it just sounds funny, like hearing that, yeah. um, I, that I changed now. That, that line is so... I, I don't know, overused by the I was an people. online troll in the Street Fighter community. Absolutely. There was online harassment that happened. Absolutely. I've learned from that. I've been through it myself now. And I realize how harmful that is and why you would never do it. Especially when you're someone in a position of power who has an audience to actually troll people, to do drama against people. That's so harmful to them. I would never do that for personal gain anymore, you know, ever again. Uh, he's done that multiple times for personal gain. Pro Jared, Wings of Redemption, Machinima. Uh, whoever has his downfall and has DSP watch their documentary, he's doing it then. There you go. And taking that money from Keemstar, I feel like I'm taking money from other people who've been hurt in order to benefit. I can't do that. Have you reached out to anybody that you were, that you feel that you wronged in the Street Fighter community to let them know that you changed and that you're sorry? Well, the people from back then, I would have absolutely no idea how to contact, but I have publicly said things. For example, last year I went, I did a react to the down the rabbit hole video about me. This is by Frederick Knudsen. It was millions and millions of views. It's one of the the videos everyone was watching. It was made in 2017. It covers all my early years as a YouTuber, but also my career in the Street Fighter community. And I admitted publicly to how bad I was back then, what an awful person I was just to get over in the Street Fighter community. You know, there's people back then that for no good reason I trolled them. For no reason. I'm no, you know, I'm just an asshole. And I apologized in that video. I mean, I mean, do you want me to name names? I mean, well, sure. Yeah, yeah, because because I want to know who's so hard to get a hold of. Oh, uh, what's his name? Oh, Shane? man, they, they got him cornered now. Because, like, most of those people, you can just go and find their Twitter, right? Should be relatively easy if you really wanted to. And after this stream, Phil slid into Review Tech USA's DMs to apologize to him and be like, Hey, man, I don't want any bad blood, man. I, I heard that your daughter's not doing well, so I hope she does better. And then he used that. That event, him texting Review Tech USA to dangle it in front of his face. Next time, Rich made fun of Phil. It's like, dude, I thought we were good. I said, I sent my best wishes to your daughter. JD, why you still dislike me? He really believes that things work like that, like it's a video game. You choose a positive um, line, like dialogue option, and then instantly the other person likes you. Okay, I don't even know if he's even around anymore in the Street Fighter community. I mean, in the early 2000s, I destroyed this guy for no reason. No good reason. I don't know. You know, I just, I latched on to people because, look, if I, more, the more I make fun of this guy or the more I try to attack these people, I get over, right? And it caused so much drama. You know, people, we almost fought at Evo. It's so stupid. Now I look at it, I'm like, boy, I was dumb. What kind of dumb shit was I? I thought I was a pro wrestler. I thought, oh, man, I'm talking he shit. He still does. We're going to have big rivalries at, at, you know, fighting game championships. It's the dumbest shit. 
Oh, and they literally pulled up the guy's Twitter. They found him immediately within like a minute. And it's like, hey, is, is this the guy you couldn't get a hold of? You know, right. so is that is this long, long tram? I, I don't know. You tell me because that's the thing. Like it, it's used, these people are not hard to get a hold of and his DMs are open. So like I feel I feel like that's that's pretty disingenuous to, to say like, well, I, you know, it, it's more like I don't you don't want to put forth the effort in saying that. You know, I I'm gonna say this publicly, and it should it should it's a big blanket to cover all the things that I've done wrong. When mm -hmm. if you know that you that you've done things that that you regret, you should probably reach out to people and say like, hey, I I'm sorry for what I did. I'm sorry for what I said. Because the reality is that on today's internet, it's not impossible to to find these people. It's it's very easy, and it just comes down to like a little bit of effort. And I'm not I'm not saying that you're not, but I'm saying that maybe there's an opportunity. To provide a little more effort you you know what craig i never even thought about it like that Here, here's here's why little mini story when i was in high school i was bullied a lot okay and years later one of my bullies actually contacted me like probably around that time frame when i was in the street fighter community and he found me online he contacted me out of the blue he's like i just want to let you know we got to stick I'm, together i'm just kidding no, no, he, no he basically said i'm sorry for what i did to you in high school like i think back I when Phil talks about not knowing how to contact people, it shows that he thinks technology and information is much worse than it is. It's not the 90s. Yeah, and in the 90s, when you look at his forum posts, he could find anybody. He found all of them to shit on him. But now when you got to look for him to apologize, you can't find him because they're all gone on the internet somewhere. On it now, because I've grown. Big ups, uh, Wesley I H. realized what an asshole I was. And I said that, I responded, I said, thanks, but I don't really care. You know, I've moved on with my life. You don't have to worry about it anymore. And that was it. So to me, I'm so far removed from those days. You know, we're talking 20 years ago. Does this guy care to hear from me 20 years later in a DM? Yes. Never, never even crossed my mind. But you know what? You've made the point. And now I'm going to have to think about it. I have to think about who are those people that I wronged back then? Uh, who possibly I could maybe reach out to. He's definitely probably. Yeah, nobody. Nobody. He just reached out to Rich so he can dangle it in front of his face. That's, that's the only thing he did. That was one of the people who, you know, man, for no no reason. It was just every day hammering that guy to the point right. where at the, at the end of EVO, we had a, a grudge match on stage. And then when it ended, I wanted to shake his hand. And he was so upset, he refused to shake my hand because I had trolled him so badly on the Internet. He basically was like irrevocable harm that you've done to me. I'm not going to shake your hand. You're a piece of garbage, right? Now I look at that and I'm like, yeah, I don't think the guy was harmed more than he just had absolutely no respect for this guy to shake his hand. I don't think DSP could harm anybody on the internet because he never had that pull. He never had people to support him. Because if you look at those forums, DSP is like the only guy. He would just be trolling people and nobody would like back him up on it. He's just talking shit by himself. Like, I probably would have felt the same because I've been through that shit. I'm on the other end of the trolling now and now I get it, right? But you're right. I, you know, well, I, I think it like makes sense. You know what, what you're what you're talking about. You're talking about growing, growing as a person. I think those are things that that people you can absolutely learn from. You know, and absolutely should learn from. And and those are those are things that are incredibly important to do. And to answer your question, does he want to hear from you? I guarantee he wants to hear from you. He doesn't know he wants to hear from you. These people don't. But but taking time to just say, hey man, I messed up. It's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. You know. Uh, if, if, especially if you know you messed up, like people said, "Oh, Craig, you messed up," but I don't know why I messed up. They just they just point their finger, you know. True. Um, no, you know, I know why I messed up. Those it's me every single day life. on this right. show. With, with it's been, a, been, been a, a consistent theme with Adam. He's always pointing his finger. <laughs> you really messed up. Um, all right. Oh, wrong way. There we go. Um, I'll say this. Don't, um, don't point your finger at me. Uh, I'm not pointing any fingers. No way. I'm straight. All right. Uh, let's continue on. All right. So we. Let's talk champions. We've made mistakes. We're going to uh, attune for them or do our best. Um, let's go into WWE champions. Sure. Let's talk about this because this has been a consistent theme uh, with, with all the detractors. They want to know about your experience with this game. Um, just a real simple yes or no. Mm -hmm. Do you currently still play WWE champions? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes you do mm -hmm. oh man why are you so um why why are you so uh hesitant to talk about that or to talk about uh wwe champions and 
we'll start there. Oh, why am I hesitant to talk about WWE champions? Uh, uh, because all the stuff that people are talking about them and is backed up by a lot of logical proof that all connects to one another, uh, all of that is true. And he cannot disprove it, and it makes him look very, very, very bad. So that's why he doesn't talk about it. Um, well, the thing is, I wasn't at first. I did talk about it publicly years ago when the game first came out very innocently. Oh, yeah, because then you had nothing to hide, did you? Playing it casually, uh, you know, that I was a fan of wrestling. This is a game that I played, and I, you know, over the years, every once in a while, I would casually mention a mobile game I'm playing or whatever, but, um, you know, it's nothing that I would think that my audience would be super interested in. Oh, really? What, what, you know, what mobile games, I casually will talk about them. That, that would be like something I would mention on my podcast, you know? Oh, let's talk about them playing a mo new mobile game today or whatever, right? But what's ended up happening is, over the years, every little thing that I mention that's not directly related to my content or my business, what I'm doing on stream, somehow gets twisted into something distorted or messed up by my my mm, like what to give an, an example and this is a prime example of them in my opinion but no that's not an example because we're not actually explaining anything with facts we're just saying that we're giving an example I disagree trying to orchestrate something well just one of the many things because we can go through a lot of the things they've done that have been completely disproven but this is one of the things that I never went out of my way to disprove because it's stupid. It's ludicrous. It's. Can, it's, I, can I ask you, Phil, have, have sure. you ever spent money on this game? Of course I have, yes. Have you spent a lot I of have. money on this game? Good question. What does a lot mean? Anything over, over $100 is too much on a mobile game. So Probably if, when the game first came out, yes, I spent Look, man, I would even say anything is a lot of money on a mobile game if you're barely getting by and you got to degrade yourself to get money from random people on the internet. I, I would say any amount of, of money on, on a game like that is just too much. It's unnecessary expenses. Uh, considering that the game itself is free to begin with. You can play it for free. $100 on it. That was okay. 2017 when it first came out. Trust me, I'm versed on this game now for all the wrong reasons. But you've been playing it since 2017. You haven't been versed in the game up until now, until the trolls started talking about the game, and then you learned about the game from the trolls? Um, yeah, this does not make any sense. So yes, in the first you... year. Wait, wait, so... you just flex on how good you are at the game? <laughs> no, say? no, no, I said I'm versed in the game because I, I have to know about it because they, they're freaking put me in conspiracies about it and shit. It's but you know about it because you've been playing it, and you still play it, and you spent money on it, right? Right. Ridiculous. Okay, I don't well, want to know about it. Then, how, then, how much money have you spent in this game? You might, you, do you mind saying? T total, I couldn't tell you. It's, it's definitely total under $1,000 over the years. That it's oh, that's just a bald-faced lie. Okay, not over $1,000. No. No, absolutely that's not, not. That's, not what, that's not what people think. Oh yeah, look at that chat. 100k, 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 100k. Six stars. 100k, 100k, 500k. Okay, I don't know about that one. That's cr they oh, think, oh they I think know. That you're you're <laughs> some sort of a, a whale in that game. Oh, I know. I've seen every. You know, I, well, okay. I haven't seen every video. I've heard it all. I've heard, you, first, what do you it mean? Was... Wait, wait, wait. But there's a big difference between I went out there and I saw what people are talking about me. And I heard from somebody that told me what people are talking about me. There's a massive difference between the two. Like thousands, then it was 10,000, then it was 20, then it was 40. Now it's yeah, because you keep spending. 100, I think. 100,000, supposedly, I spent on this game. Well, we started well, no. talking about it, and you instantly went into just attacking other people. Like, we don't have to... Like, Absolutely, there we go. Like, they, they may deserve it. I don't know. But we, we can have this conversation without even bringing them up. Sure. Right? We'll, we'll bring them up if they're... Okay. If they're you, you know, you're you're saying you're instantly going to the they're making up shit, but you do play this game. You have spun, mm -hmm. mo spent money on it. And right. I think what ha what's happening is when you're begging your audience for money and then complaining that, you know, this King's Feast is too expensive for six, a sixty dollar meal and you're you're stressing for money and then putting money into a game that is a mobile game that is. I mean, let's let's face it. Mobile games are not necessary in life no nope. spending any any amount of money on a mobile game <clears throat> uh I, i've never played this wwe i don't even know it i i saw like a picture of it and it looked like candy crush mm -hmm. or so, i don't know what the hell it is you know but it just feels like they feel like you're you're just using them to like using your audience and like i don't want to be used 
I, I personally, I don't like feeling used. I've been used by people in the past, and I don't have time for that in my life. So when people are watching someone online and supporting them and then feel used, like when, you know, you, you say you beg too much and, you, you know, you're working on that, which is good because, as I said, it's not a good look. But even talking about, hey, this other game that they believe you're a whale in, why, why do they think you're a whale? Where, where are they getting this? See, here's the thing. I don't exactly know. What? I said so much to this thing over the years. But wait, I thought, oh, dude. Two minutes ago, he was talking about, dude, I, I'm well-versed in the game because of the conspiracies people make up about me. So I need to research them to know what people are saying about me because they're slandering me and, and I need to protect myself. And we transition into, well, I don't exactly know. There's just so many things people are saying. No, people are saying a very consistent information. It's just quite a lot of different pieces of proof that tie in together that you know if, if some, I, i'm just gonna briefly in my head try to go over what i remember uh-huh apparently dude i mean come on man you show up to this podcast you know for certain this is gonna be asked you are prepared for this question to tell people that you're still playing the game but you can't answer the context behind why people you're why people think that you spend so much money it's just it's just lying it's just so obvious that he's bullshitting at first, there is no logic to any of this. It was that there was an account in the game. That's the name of the account was they call me DSP, okay? which is which is also your Twitter handle. That's correct. Mm -hmm. And so just by that association, they're assuming that's me in the game. OK, now for what I'm going to understand after that, after I guess at some point it had been asked on a stream or whatever, is this you? And I said, no, that's not me in the game. It is not, by the way, that is not my account in the game. Um, what is your account in the game? That I'm not going to say. That's that, that, And if you're going to say why, because back when I signed up for that game in 2017, there had never been any drama around mobile games or anything like that that I had been involved in. No one had ever asked me the question of what's the name of your account. I have a, 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 an account name on basically my Apple device that kind of crosses over a lot of different accounts. Okay, And if I were to tell you information about my account, these people will absolutely use that to hurt me. They will try um, to. Absolutely, I'm, I'm not exactly sure that this is how things work with an Apple account where you just carry over all your stuff in different games. Cause I would think different games have different usernames that you can use in them. So I'm, I don't buy into that, but I don't have an Apple device, so I can't confirm that. I'm just very suspicious about it. This data to get into other accounts, they will probably try to Commit identity theft, impersonate me with Apple. I can't do that. I've already been okay. through that. Okay. So, so on the record, you're you're saying that uh, that account, they call me DSP, is not you. That's correct. Okay. Well. Now, so well. All, you know what? All I would want him to do is open up Champions, and this is something that he can do right now. Open up Champions and show the screen with his roster. That's all I want him to do. Show the screen with all the characters he got. And we can cross-reference to the rafters guy, and we can see um, what's going on with more certainty. That's the least he could do. Okay, but that... Here's the thing that, that I'm having a hard time wrapping my, wrapping my brain around, right? Because apparently that, that name was changed later to down from the rafters, right? Why would somebody, if this is a troll that is a whale, right, that in this game... Why would somebody, after let's say let's say after this was brought to your attention, it was it, the name is later changed, right? And they're spending all this money on this, right? And they know it's being you know this is being tracked in this game. Why would they change the name if they're just trolling you with with they call me DSP this this name? Why would they then change? the name if it's just a troll to begin yes. with what's, what's the point i'm trying to well, wrap my head around this idea here sure apparently there's a couple theories theory number one is like you just said this person was actually a troll who was trying to make me look bad and <laughs> that was the theory until the name changed but i agree with you that doesn't seem to make sense does it why would you try to ch change your name if you weren't you know maybe and again this is me just guessing i have no clue because it's not me this is, oh my god, man, I've never seen anybody more guilty than this guy. Because him, like, trying to pretend he doesn't know anything says way more than he thinks it does. Because he's really bad at pretending he doesn't know anything. Because we put in, you know, the high voice and 
the expressions that he makes. Look at those facial expressions without even any sound. So it can be distracted. We're like looking around. We're making weird expressions. Oh man, this doesn't make sense. That's not even me. Like, look, I, I don't know anything. I like, I don't know. Jit player. Maybe it was a fan of mine. Maybe it was, a, you know, who knows? Or maybe it wasn't. Maybe it's complete chance. You know, this is not Dark Side Phil. This is not DSP Gaming. This is it's, they call it's me It's Dark Side DSP. Patrick. I, I know, <laughs> again, who knows? You're right. I, 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 that's the point. Is it's not, it wasn't my name. It wasn't like Phil Burnell or whatever. It yeah, was. but uh, well, that makes even less sense if it was Phil Burnell. But they call me DSP is a handle that he's used in many games. It wasn't that the same handle he used in uh, in Supercard. And uh, one name that I use on a Twitter account. So. Maybe this legitimately... And he used that same name on the Discord. So, I mean, and he used the Discord to communicate with other people in the game. So you might want to make your Discord name the same as your in-game name so people don't get confused. It was someone who was playing the game and over the years was getting, like, harassed. I don't know. Here's, here's what I can tell you. Since this started happening, all right, I was... Oh, and he used it in Pokemon Go. Okay, well, that... That makes it make a lot of sense. That the, my actual account name was going to get out there, and they were, like I just told you guys, they were going to try to, like, harass me or change, you know, harass my, my Apple account, hack my Apple account, whatever. They're going to harass oh, his account. I got I got to say, real quick, it, mm -hmm. if that, the, whoever, they call me DSP, change it to whatever the hell they change it to, why haven't you changed it to some That's, uh, that's what I'm about thing? to say. That's exactly what I'm about to say. I asked, the, the you know, they have the help chat or whatever. I asked them, I said, listen, this is happening, and I'm, I'm really afraid. And they told me they don't do that. I was like, what? Like, yeah, we don't do that. We don't do name changes. I said, there's evidence that, th that there is. They wouldn't do it for me. So maybe, I mean, I don't know. Maybe this this person, because of the <laughs> level that they spent supposedly in the game, because they're a whale, maybe the Look company gave them a solid. Look at this. He's explaining exactly how he did it. They keep spending. And Whoa, like, what if I could do it like that? Whoa, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, apparently you can't just change your name. There's no option in the game to change your name. Dude, you know, well, that that's my theory. Of course, the theory, because there's no um, there's no solid facts behind the name change. That's the one question mark that's been left unanswered. And I really, really wish we could get some more insight into this. But what I think happened is, uh, you know, DSP, he goes full on Karen mode on anybody. He wants to talk to the manager of everything. And you bet your ass he went to the support chat of WWE Champions and he was crying about how he got harassed and how I spend so much money on this game. You better give me a name change. Otherwise, I'm going to leave a one-star review on the Apple store. And then they just gave him a name change because, like, why the fuck not? It's not there. And you contact support. They say we won't Because they're it. harassing this guy. He's being harassed right now. Because this is the same guy who was tweeting at and talking to and responding to developers working on Supercard to give them advice on how they can develop the game better because some cards were overpowered or something, or the meta was fucked up. Okay, look, I... <clears throat> there's a lot here. There's a lot here. And look, I, I'm of the mindset of once somebody gives you money, you can do what you want with the money. But... True. But the but is, if you ask for the money and give them a different reason than what you're going to spend the money on. Well, that's that's just dishonesty and that should be questioned. I think that there this is there's we're we're here to put all the cards on the table here and 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 work through these things. So when you have when you play this game and you ha you have this whale that has the exact same Twitter handle that you have that is pulling this elaborate elaborate troll on you, right? If they are, if that's what it was, I don't know. Right. But, and, and I, I, look, I, I hate to bring this up, I hate to bring mm -hmm. this up, but, but I'm but I'm going to, because I feel like it needs to be addressed. Go for it. People have been very aggressive with you to the point to where they have leaked bank statements from mm -hmm. you. Right. And that's obviously not cool at all. It's, it's ridiculous that somebody would go to that length and it's, a, it's honestly upsetting. But it's out there, right? And there have been, you know, according to these leaks, there have been dozens, hundreds of transactions mm -hmm. to uh, to the Apple Store. Uh, some many over hundreds of dollars um, that that have been there. 
were those your transactions? Look at him rocking, man. Look at all this rocking. He's having such a great time. In the gamer baby booster seat. Look at this gaming booster seat. And we got the nice gaming headphones. We got the gaming background. This dude is gaming to the max. He's game maxing. No. No. So so those were not tied to you at all? No. Are you going to prove it? Okay, the bank no. leaks? Now, see, now we have to get into the identity theft thing. Okay. Yes. Um, it's literally the same thing. Well, let's just talk about the bank leads first. Well, they're tied to that. Okay. You know what I mean, like they're going. No, it's like actually the same what? thing. Hug H H. Huh? What? Bank leaks? I don't even know. They're not. They're not mine. I don't even have a bank. Uh, big ups, uh, Farfik Nugan for ten Man. bucks, dude. I still um, can't pronounce this. Please help. Bank Go ahead, leaks, explain it, please. Then. Sure. The bank leaks are not accurate. Those are not. That is not my account. So it's the person who took your identity was spending money on app in the Apple Store. No, that's that's not my account at all. Whatever so, that is is not me. That's fabricated, it's, or or it's someone else's account. I don't know whose, but that's not my account that was leaked. I've so, had a lot of issues that happened with identity theft that same summer, but they use that to run with oh some my kind God. of conspiracy theory and say that was me, and it's not. So you're saying just just so we're on the same page. Mm -hmm. You're saying that this account that is not yours, that had thousands of dollars of, of fees to the Apple store consistently, mm -hmm. that are uh, these, these amounts just happen to tie to exact amounts in the game that we're talking about, WB yes. Champions. Exact amounts to like the decimal, exact amount of the... Uh, of the microtransaction plus the Washington state tax. And it's not that thing that is the um, the big selling point of the leaks. Is all the small transactions to stores in Total Wine, Bahama Breeze, some kind of like restaurants, the PetSmart. All of those are in his area. And they're detailed enough to, to where you can track them that they happen on his day off. Like how can you have a coincidence like that? That all just makes sense and fits in. How does it work? Um, and, the, and it's a game that you also play. Yeah, mm -hmm. even the, the Burger King purchase. The Burger King. So just so we're all on the same page, yeah. you're saying that that is not your account at all, and they were unsuccessful in, find, in hacking your bank account. They did not hack my bank account. They did not have access to my bank account. It seems awfully convenient. And we're right. just... just <laughs> right. It does sound awfully convenient, <laughs> but that, that's the truth. It's, you can understand how us looking from the outside in looks at this and, and, and raises an eyebrow and doesn't yeah, quite it, buy it, oh, right? It, to, to me, it, I mean, from an outside perspective, who, who doesn't know anything, would look like you had to go and file for bankruptcy. You had all these issues and people calling you out for spending way too much money on this game when you should have been saving for taxes. And then, you know, this shit comes out. And you're like, you're freaking sweating. You got to freaking do something about it. It's like, oh, I was hacked. That that identity theft. Like, maybe I, the identity theft happened. I'm just like painting a picture for like these people on the internet that mm -hmm. hate you mm -hmm. and are trying to convince the world of what happened. And then, like Craig said, I mean, you are playing it. Mm -hmm. It is your username. There are all these bank statements that actually correlate perfectly with this game. I, I, I'm leaning more towards that side of the story because it makes more sense. I mean, it, you needed an out. You were having, you have money issues and have had money issues for a while. Yep. And it's just like, uh, it's reason, hard to believe, dude. The reason that this story has not died out like every other one is because this is the one that I really don't have a way. What What other story has died out? The WW Champions thing is still a thing to this day. People keep bringing it up because there's no proof against it. To prove my innocence without further exposing myself. Uh huh. Do you have a police report for the a, the a police identity report? You don't. Oh, you no. can redact certain things. I do not. Do I don't have a police report. I. Jeez. Oh, and this is like I love his reaction when when Adam asks him about the police report because he reacts like it's an outlandish thing to even assume that he would go to the police after his identity is stolen. Losing myself. You understand? Do you have a police report for the, a, the a police identity report? Look at this face. Super shocked. What? What police? No. 
You don't. Oh, you no. can redact certain things. I do not. Do I don't you, have a police report. I. Jeez, oh, how do I? Did, did you not go to the police when your identity was hacked? No, I went to. I went to all my financial institutions. I went to the credit. And look at Bureau. this, like looking up. He looks so guilty right now, and I understand he's probably under a lot of stress and pressure because he's on somebody else's stream and they're asking about his personal business, and he's also hiding a bunch of stuff. But man, he's not doing himself any favors with this body language here. You didn't go to the that. police though when someone no, was I stealing didn't. your identity. No. Why wouldn't you do that? I didn't even think to do it. I don't think what would they do about it. I didn't think to do it. A crime a federal crime is committed against me. Who am I gonna go to? Well, not the police, obviously. We got uh, Alex B for five months, dude. Uh, this is the perfect Southwest Airlines commercial. Wanna get away? Yeah, you wanna get away? This guy is getting away with everything. And all he has to do is deny, deny, deny. Try to fucking get the person and arrest you them. should be just like him. I, I mean, you're, I guess, maybe, but here, I okay. Guess. I guess what I gotta do is tell you a little bit more about all the crap I've been through. Uh, I have contacted <sighs> the police about the harassment. No, no, listen, I have contacted the police about harassment over the years. Uh, you know, when I got swatted, um, years later, when someone was actually doing tons of fake transactions against my PayPal account that were all fraud. They were actually fraudulent credit card transactions. I contacted our police here and I had a big conversation and they said, listen, this, I swear to God, this is <laughs> the conversation. We don't do that. We don't have an online task force for this stuff. Online we, task said, force, the, the cyber police. Human trafficking, that's it. That's all we can do. There is no way they told them that. Hey, Mr. Brunel, I'm sorry you came to the cops, but we only specialize in human trafficking. I'm sorry. Here's the number to the FBI if you want to call them. But unless you're talking about ginormous sums of money being tossed So down. you did contact them or you didn't? <laughs> not, not about identity theft. I contacted them years earlier about other issues. And you talked to them about identity theft? I talked to them about a lot of different things that, that had happened or could happen. And they basically but why, why would you have talked to them about identity theft years earlier if no, none of that was even happening to you? Well, I don't, I don't know if we specifically said, oh, you know, identity theft. What I, I, like I said, there was a case where, first of all, I received death threats, like pretty serious death threats. So what does that even mean, pretty serious death threats? What does that even mean? Anybody who knows where you live can make pretty serious death threats. But like right off the bat, like he feels super pressured. We've, we start smelling some bacon sizzling, and then it's like, wait, you guys are forgetting about one important detail. I'm the victim here. He tried to chat to the police through the website. Oh, yeah, maybe maybe he did. He encountered a bot, and the bot was like, well, I, we can't do that. If, uh, if you're looking for help with human trafficking, press 1. Oh, I, don't, I don't know if we specifically said, oh, you know, identity theft. What I, like I said, there was a case where, first of all, I received death threats like pretty serious death threats someone saying they're gonna come okay. out and murder me with a gun will we get review time with boyfriend like this when the june the cretin doc comes out oh yeah I'm not sure if you think it will be good or bad oh i might just watch it as it premieres because why not it's gonna be a big event so I, I, I would like to be there when it's live unless it premieres at like four in the morning but i i don't think june would do that i think it's gonna happen around this time well that's and a I, completely so yeah of course subject correct right and i contacted them about that and while I was talking to them, I also brought up PayPal issues that I was having with fraudulent transactions. Oh my god, he swarmed them. He gave them a fucking pre-stream. And they didn't know what to do, so they were like, well, Mr. Brunel, I can't even help you, bro. I don't even know what your problem is. Things, and they basically said- Because he, like, he tells everybody his life story as if they know him for the last 10 years. Because after all, he is the main character. He's the protagonist. You don't know the protagonist? Come on. We don't handle that. We can't. We don't have the capacity. Local PD doesn't care. You have to go, you know, if you want to go to the FBI, but they even said, here's the number. If you ever get into something really bad, you're afraid for your life or something, you know, call us 911. Outside of that, anything else, it's, you know, big transactions or whatever, like you lose a million dollars. Wait, wait, wait. They gave him the number to 911? Wait, they gave me the number. If something happens, Phil, call this number. It's called 911, and we're going to show up. Here's the number. If you ever get into something really bad, you're afraid for your life. Let's or be honest about this. The police and emergency services stopped taking his calla months ago. Uh, I don't know if he sent him any calls. Well, let's let's hear this one. I I want a I want a nice replay of this whole thing. We can't. We don't have the capacity. Local PD doesn't care. You have to go. You know, if you want to go to the FBI, but they even said here's the number. If you ever get into something really bad, 
you're afraid for your life or something, you know, call us 911. Outside of that, anything yeah. else, you know, <laughs> big transactions or whatever, like you lose a million dollars, you call the FBI. That's it. So I didn't think, you know, I know I didn't. Find no, I, I haven't seen any police records of him calling the PD. I don't know what that would even be about. Um, outside of probably the, the time he got the wellness check. Police report about the identity theft because I didn't think they could do anything. They told me years previous, there's not, nothing's going to happen about it. Well, you know? it didn't so seem like you were talking about identity theft with them. So, well, so anyway. let me let me ask this, right? You you address the bank leaks on your on a stream. Mm -hmm. Why, if they're not yours, why? I why? Ooh, very good question. If they're not yours, why even address them at all? But there was an identity theft that tied into the bank leaks, so you could see why, I guess. Did you, why did why did you why did you feel the need to to talk about the bank leaks if if they weren't yours? Uh, did, well, what do you mean by that? Like, to, are you referencing a specific stream that I did? Or Just in general. I mean, if if yeah, I I actually am referencing a specific stream that he did because he had. I remember I was uh, visiting family. And I was just coming back and I saw he announced that he was going to be, I'm going to address the drama uh, type of stream. So I was there for it. I was, uh, I was restreaming that. Somebody, if somebody hacks an account and they say, this is, this is Dark Side Phil's bank account, right? Why don't you say, well, it's not mine. What are you even talking about? And like, I, did, I think I that, did. Okay. I'm sure that I've, I, I've never said that that was my account. Then how come... And this is, you know, the internet doing what it does. There's been matchmaking based off of your, your, you know, your life, going to restaurants, big events in WWE champions, things like that, that line up perfectly with this bank account. Like, and, and I think I said, it's, it's your money, dude. You can do what you want. I, I don't mm -hmm. care. But, but why are like, it just, if we were in the court of law and, and somebody was to bring all this evidence <sighs> in front of say like look hey there's a bullet here here's the gun that he used it has his fingerprints on it this person is dead because this person pulled the trigger and the other guy's like oh, i didn't do it well like there's clear like dna they're there and like i think that's the thing that i'm really struggling with here man is mm -hmm. is uh real quick so this guy carl uh sent sent them a super chat saying the bank account was tied to his so social security number which i also have some vague memory of I do remember that because I believe they had to social engineer the last four digits, which I don't know how they did that, but you could probably brute force it if you do enough combinations. It's probably not that crazy. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I've heard something about that. And there's bound to be somebody that knows way more than me than that. It's It just seems like if you would just say... So yeah. it's like it can't not be his bank account. Yeah. It was my bank account. It was really fucked up. And it made a lot of sense to me, like, tech-wise, tech that they would get read-only access by social engineering his shit, and then the only access they would get is some kind of a, an online bot that reads out the transactions to you. So you technically had no access to the actual funds. And the, the only access... That was, like, really clever, actually. You gotta give them a lot of credit for what they came up with, because that shit is clever. Uh, it lined it aligned with all these things. By the way, I play WB Champions. I'm you know I, I have a hard time quitting it. It's it, those games are addictive, uh, and he, he just kind of said, "Yeah, these things are accurate." I think people would like just be like, "Okay," and and they'd be cool with it. But it just seems like you you you're, you keep digging and digging and digging. And I, I mean, walk me through this because there's just evidence here, like mm -hmm. mounds and mounds of evidence. And that's right, a, you, you claim that it was someone else, but and, why, and, why do a lot of the things on the bank statement actually correlate to things that you actually did and paid for? Right, and the only that evidence that, that, that you're putting out is, well, no, it's not, or that's a lie, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, just walk me through this, man, because I'm, I don't, like, I'm, this is, the whole purpose of this thing was not, not to make you look bad at all. But right. I just want to walk through this here, man, because mm -hmm. it, it doesn't make sense. This doesn't add up. What, so what? specifically like you said a couple things there first you said big events in the game correlate to money being spent on the account. no i don't think he, I, I don't think he meant in the game i think he meant in life no 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 in the video game the actual seasonal events weekly events because they have them all the time because that's how these games work and whenever one of those was happening just like when nowadays when game box tracks them when that was happening there was a lot of money spent 
from that account well in to paypal life or apple itunes and in, in in the game apparently there's like special events that happen in the game and it's you know a certain characters released or whatever i don't know i don't know enough about the game right i, I didn't do a deep dive into the game just mm. there are special events that happen hey you know it's like you see this on on any game call of duty apex for this time only you can buy this character or whatever um that that's that's all i'm just trying to mm -hmm. to walk through this man but i see here's the thing i don't i don't know specifically what you're referencing I guess what you're saying is there's transactions on that account that correlate. That's something that that's been proven that I spent money on. How? Oh would my that even god! Prove? Oh my god! What kind of a person goes to the defend himself on any kind of platform and has no idea what they're even defending himself from? And this guy had a month to prepare for this. What does that well, mean? I mean I but of course, why would he need to prepare when he's fucking guilty? He knows the truth. He knows how things are better than anybody else. He knows where all his money goes. He knows where all his business expenses are from. He knows all of this. It's just like tiring to everybody else having to watch this. I mean, maybe you went to a restaurant and... and it's like, dude, okay, just like, just fucking admit it was you, man. You're not going to get a better shot than this. You're not going to get a better chance. You said, hey, I'm going to go to dinner tonight. And then there's a transaction at a local restaurant for an, uh, for an amount that may add up to a couple people dining at a restaurant. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, th that That's all. Like I said, I'm just trying to trying to walk through this yeah i don't know that's i mean first of all from exactly from your perspective if i were sitting where you were right now and hearing this story you know i'd be like he's probably lying i i i don't know how to defend again i don't know how to defend myself without putting myself and my family at personal risk and that's the problem i don't that's, know how, the, how that lines up i that, wish yeah, i, that's I wish fair. i knew i wish i knew i could explain those transactions here's I guess, man, I'm trying to figure out how I can tell you from my perspective what really happened that summer. Um, and why, because I did. I love supporting my favorite detractors. That stupid look on his face now that he is finally cornered is so beautiful. I, I love it, man. Everything supporting you guys. I, I, I would like to. With hearts. I would like to print this into like a big poster and put it up in my bedroom. Like, <laughs> well, not in my bedroom. I don't want DSP looking at me while I'm doing stuff. When I'm getting laid by my girlfriend, but yeah, that, that one face that I showed you like a couple of minutes ago, that's, that's the face I want to print out. Here's, here's something very easy, very simple, mm -hmm. very simple. Big ups. Uh, you have also. my email and this is, this is a small ask. It's also a big ask. You can say whatever you want. Will you, and you can say no, and I'm totally fine with this, but just confidentially between us, will you send me a screenshot? of your of your account of your wdb account and just so i i i personally i will not share share your name to anybody but just between us man i have to think about and what, and what vouch for you i would put out yeah and, and I'll, i will vouch for you either way i have to think about what kind of risk that i don't want to say here's the thing I, i'll consider it okay you know what i want to run a poll because uh the time to start the the restream as soon but i want to see if there's more interest in watching the restream of the podcast or maybe we can just come back later and watch it on demand and just skip all the uh, obnoxious excruciating nonsense of course the downside to this would be that we're not going to end up watching it live but watching it live has a price and the price is uh your soul i can't agree to it yet i have to so make sure to go to the poll you know, and I, not say that I think you would do anything with it. I don't. Mm -hmm. You. I think you, you got to look at what what's to benefit more than what's to risk. You have no idea the levels, of how this is going. I again, accounts that I happen. do. I see it. I I'm well aware. I I have chat up. I mean, I mm -hmm. I know. I I mean, people have been tagging me relentlessly <laughs> since it was okay, announced well, you were coming on the show, and I like again. I didn't know who you were. I I had never heard of you before. Uh, it, before this moment when Craig was like, hey, so do you know who DSP is? And I'm like, no, uh, what's the deal? And everyone's like, oh, we got to freaking tell Adam who DSP is. You know, it's like I see the amount of attention that you get in a negative light, mm -hmm. right? So, like, I understand. That's why I'm like, I kind of understand that you don't want to be too forthcoming with your uh, any more information that isn't public already because it, as there's a, sh a lot of out there. So... You know, but but you're in a pickle, man, because yeah. the the internet is a fucking pulse, and it's a new brain 
that humans are still learning how to adapt to. And right now, there's a big chunk of the internet that has a target on your head. And, right. you know, you, you've said it multiple times that you fucked up. You held your hands up. You said, I didn't handle this right. I fucked up multiple times. You did this and that. So it's like, if you want to remain on the internet, which you seem to enjoy streaming, and you like what you're doing now, which is good. I'm glad you like what you're doing. But it's like, if you want to move in a direction that's going to alleviate some of these these haters any anything might help uh, obviously not giving them more ammo which i mean i've i've grown to trust trust craig um of course you know don't tell him i said that uh but you know i i uh i i think that that would actually do more for you than you think if if craig came out and was like all right guys he he sent me this the, the proof and I can confirm to everyone yep. that his account. Yeah, is I, I don't think he had any intention of showing anybody anything, because, well, he's guilty. Not, they call me DSP. And this whole thing of like pretending you're looking for any kind of way that you can prove you're innocent is just performative. It doesn't really have any kind of anything to it. Whale account, you know, like or or the uh, or the other the other name down from the rafters. Or what it changed it to, yeah. Right. 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 Like almost at this point now, it's like it's almost suspect that you're not wanting to just do whatever you can. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. It's suspicious that you're not trying everything to clear your name out of all this slander and the shit that's been thrown your way. It's suspicious. Again, I I hear you. If I was sitting in your in your position right now, I would feel exactly the same way. But just as the levels of shit that I've been through and, and people who betrayed me, not that I'm saying Craig would. I don't think he would. But I, I, I have no interest, Phil. I, to be, I want to be really clear with you, man. And just like this, we were talking about this. I have, I have zero interest in making you look bad. Like I, I think there's a tremendous opportunity here for for you to be humanized to a lot of people who don't see you as human, you know. And and to err is to be human, right? That's the old saying. Like everybody fucks up, and you've owned up to a lot of those things. But there are there are certain things here, man. That that I just. You know, it, it, they they don't add up, and you're saying you're saying, hey, if I was in your shoes, I'd be saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. It it doesn't. I, it, I don't know, man. It's it's not connecting. It's not connecting. And I'm trying to help you out here, man. I really am. And, I hear you. And yeah, I I don't think at any point Craig wanted to make DSP look bad on purpose. The way DSP says that that was the whole idea the whole time. I think Craig just wanted to do a good job with this interview, and he tried, and it paid off. Good job. And I think he was fair the whole time. So I feel there was some wasted opportunities to delve deeper in the actual identity theft and what happened and where it stemmed from, you know, to the extent where DSP was willing to share, you know, because he couldn't talk about all of it. But uh, of course, we got five hours of this and we are exactly halfway through. I feel like there's help there's, yourself. I, no, I feel like there's nothing else to be said then, you know, because. Um, could I could I bring up one point about these bank statements? Sure. Yeah. So. Oh, now this is his debunk. This is the the one thing that he managed to come up with that makes him look innocent. Uh, you know, in his own mind. I've I've seen limited amounts because here's the thing. You guys just said why why do you bring it up on your stream? I only bring this kind of stuff up on my streams when someone else brings it up and there's like, it's such a loud fervor on the stream. People are talking about it in the chat. I'll address it. Okay. I did look into it. I looked, I saw some of this supposed bank statements that are mine. Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple things that don't make sense to me. All right. Number one, if this is me, okay, there's a bunch of transactions on there, I guess, from like pet stores. Okay. And people are like, well, that's because Phil has a cat. Yeah, but those, pet, those transactions are like big. You're talking like hundreds of dollars a week or something like that. I have one cat. Now, again, that's okay. he said, she said. It's not going to prove my innocence, but everyone knows I have one cat. He's been on the stream. Yeah, but this dude admitted multiple times that he buys the highest end food and cat litter and everything else for Jasper. Like, he literally buys them the most expensive stuff. And also, there are iTunes gift cards in those stores as well. Correct? Correct. So let's finish this thought, and then, uh, according to you guys, with 54%, we're going to watch him live. And he has a brand new intro today that is terrible. So uh, we're going to take a look at that as well.
All this time, I don't have- well, let's just finish this topic, so we can come back to it later. A secret herd of dogs in my basement. I don't even have a basement. So we're, you know, some of the transactions in that, that I've seen- don't Wait, wait, what, what? Hold on. Within this whole verbal diarrhea, he just says random stuff. Cat, Listen to this. On the stream. All this time, I don't have a secret herd of dogs in my basement. I don't even have a basement. I don't have a secret herd of dogs in my basement. I don't even have a basement. What? What did that even mean? So we're, you know, some of the transactions in that that I've seen don't make sense at all per what I, it's funny because you say circumstantially, some of these transactions could be yours if you went out, you know, and ate. Okay, you're right. But some of them also don't make any sense. Like, like which okay, ones? There's a bunch of transactions on there that say iTunes. Okay. Yeah. Now, I don't know, but here's the thing. The, the he knows, first of all, he knows exactly because there are videos of him. There's this classic video by Mr. Hut stuff that's called DSP Gaming Gotcha King that is all about his experiences with Gotcha. And he explains specifically how everything works with the iTunes cards. Even admits to having his family members send him iTunes gift cards for Christmas so he can spend them on mobile games. This is stuff that he himself has admitted on his own show that has been clipped and put up as a separate video. Narrative that they have put out there about me is that I'm begging and shilling to my viewers. The viewers give me tips every day and that money goes right into WWE champions, correct? Like that's the narrative that they, that they say on the internet. Well, it's essentially like that. Essentially it is. It's not literally, it might not literally be like that. It might first go to your bank account and then you might get yourself some DoorDash and then you might spend it on champions. If that's the case, Okay. Why are there bank transactions for, for iTunes, right? The money is in my PayPal account. Okay. Why are there bank transactions for iTunes? It doesn't make any sense. Why would I take money out of a PayPal account that I have that I get my tips from, transfer it to my bank account where then I take a hit because there's a transfer fee anytime you transfer money from PayPal to a bank account. Well, so I'm taking a, a big financial hit on that money. Then I'm making transactions in the game off the bank account. Why wouldn't, why wouldn't it be made out of the PayPal account? Uh, I'll tell you exactly why, brother. And the answer is chargebacks. And it's because every time he gets a chargeback, you know, the money gets taken away from him. And for him to prevent the money getting taken away from him, he just moves it over to the bank account where nobody can take it away from him. So that kind of... Kind of sounds like that's going to be the case. That doesn't make sense to me. It makes no logical sense to well, me. There's a lot of things that, that haven't made a whole lot of logical sense here, Phil. I mean, let's just be real. There, there's a lot here. That <laughs> and at this point, Craig is like, yeah, bro. Yeah. Stop. Stop with this bullshit. That up. Right. Well, yeah. isn't, isn't the iTunes like where the microtransactions from games get charged? So that uh, actually would make sense. It would make. No, no, no. You're, you're, okay. You're correct. But the point I'm making is. The money's in the PayPal account. So okay. if if there's yeah, but on, hold on, I know what you're saying. But mm -hmm. on PayPal, you can actually use PayPal, and you could click use balance or use your bank account. Oh no! Uh huh. And it'll uh huh. And, and he's acting like he doesn't know that. I completely forgot this moment when Adam just explains to him. He pig explains how it works. He just said he got all that money from the slave trade. Yeah, that should be, you know, my side business. I actually operate a very profitable trade. <laughs> just pull the money from your bank account, but using PayPal as the payment service. Yes, because I remember the bot. I even did a remix of it. I probably can't find it because it was on the old laptop. But the, the thing, uh, the bot says $110.09 from PayPal. So he also used PayPal for the transaction. I'm actually going to find this, the remix that I did on my phone, and I'm going to play it in my microphone like a, like some kind of a savage. And then shortly after, we're going to go watch Phil, um, you know, the, the other Phil, the raw Phil. So it was called PayPal, correct? Uh, here it's going to be somewhere. V, J, PayPal. There we go. Here it is. $1. Oh, you, can't, you can't hear that? This fucking sucks. $110.09 from PayPal. Okay, so let's leave PayPal behind and let's go to our pal, uh, Mr. The King of... 
Exactly. And we're about to see what ha what's happening here on this side, the dark one. Namely this Harold Halibut game, which no one really knew what to make. Uh, so yes, he's talking about video games now, but first... Uh, he had this brand new intro that is great and totally not just some something just taken off YouTube. Uh, which there's nothing bad in. It's just kind of bad when you just take it off YouTube and kind of... That's that's all you do to change it. And then you just slap it on your stream. Oh my god, look at all this music he's been playing. It starts here. Okay, so this is the new intro. Yeah, brother, look at this. Dynamic font. Dynamic background. We're going through time and space. Full on neon lights. Cyberpunk style. And then we start buffering. So this is it. This is the new intro. And then he said, Hello everybody, my name is Burnell. And he made a... What? I am, and this is the Level 1 Podcast. Oh my god, we literally said Burnell at the same time. Level 1 Podcast. What? Why are we buffering Burnell? Buffer in Burnell. That's uh, how we're going to call him instead of Flathead Burnell. Legit, why is he buffering, though? I'm going to hit him with a dropkick. Yes, the border is epic because he is capitalizing on the Fallout TV show. So I guess he needs to have a Fallout-themed layout, even though he's not playing Fallout. I have a new idea later tonight over on my DSP Reacts channel. We'll be talking about that in just a little bit. But... Today on the show... So we're just gonna skip to live. Let's just skip to live. Not talking about anything important. And he never is. In a nutshell. Unless there's drama going on. Three hours, okay? You're like a tech person on the ship, but all you do is menial stuff. You're not smart. You just do the busy work, okay? So let's say you go clean out the filter system, and all that entails is going downstairs to the basement, going to a console, and pushing a button a couple times, all right? Go to take this message to so-and-so on the ship. Go t talk to this person, get a piece of rock, and bring it back to another person. Like, that's the game. But as you go through the game, you're talking to all the different characters, and you're getting the lore of the universe. You know, humanity apparently was going to die out on Earth. The Earth was going to be destroyed, or it, it's not clear if it's going to be a world war, if it's going to be pollution or something. Like, you can't really tell. But essentially, it's the plot of Horizon Forbidden West, where a group of people who think that they can, they can repopulate somewhere else leave Earth on a spaceship. And they travel the galaxy looking for a place... And it's like 200 years later, they crash land on a water planet, and they're stranded. They can't get off the planet. They're uh, you guys happy with your choice of activities? I bet you are. I should have subtracted all the troll votes and just did whatever I wanted. Because it works out for him. Uh, almost Fallout-esque. And what I mean by that is it feels like you're living in a vault where the whole thing's run by a corporation. So it's very corporate. You have a CEO who comes on, has announcements and stuff like that. A lot of advertisements and things on, on the TVs. But it's also retro-esque like Fallout where it's tube TVs and stuff like that. So you have future tech where you could fly on a spaceship across the galaxy, but you're still using tube TVs. You see what I mean? It's like Fallout. I don't. What are we talking about? Fallout. Something that's like Fallout. The new game that so he's been playing, I don't even know the name of it. Hours of doing all this stuff is that... Yeah, Harold Halibut. ...to escape their orbit where they're stuck in this water planet because they're running out of energy. What they were doing is they were taking in local creatures and life and they were converting them to make energy to keep running for 50 years. But for some odd reason, now all the life around them isn't as, as energizing. Like they're taking in the same exact life samples <clears throat> and using them and they're not getting as much energy out of it anymore. So this okay, is so I I'm gonna crazy. I'm gonna play you now the PayPal song that I made. It's really not much. Uh, that's why it never was a real song. But I remember this. One hundred ten dollars and nine cents. One hundred ten dollars and nine cents. Um, 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 I have one meal out with my wife for any errands we need to run in the port, and. Well, weekend, this is going to be a problem. Now, in addition to that, later on... Yeah, that was it. Okay, let's go back to this. show. Although it's funny because a lot of the actors aren't British. A few are, but a lot are not. So it's kind of like British humor, but not with all British actors. It's a little off-putting, actually. Um. So, I enjoyed it. I played three hours of it. How did it do? Well, viewership was very, very odd. A lot of people showed up to check it out and see what the heck the game was. But I think once people realized, oh, this is just a narrative game where you walk around and do menial things, 
uh, most of the audience left. Like, we went from over 400 viewers down to 250 <laughs> by the end of the first stream. I can't make the game crazy. Not. You know what I mean? I'm that's the day one effect. That's the Burnell game. effect. You can't make it more interesting than it being just a narrative-based game, and that's exactly what it is, okay? Support. Well, support was outstanding, but I think that was because it was a premiere stream, and a lot of people just wanted to support the fact that it was a premiere stream. I don't necessarily think it was people coming by and saying, oh my god, Harold Halibut was great. Let's support the stream. You know what I'm saying? Um, so basically, I'll put it this way. I enjoyed it because I like narrative-based games. Would I enjoy personally seeing the game continue and seeing where the plot goes? Yes. But I don't know if that's in line with the audience. And to give Okay, we're getting another one of these. After it I sounds like video, pretty much every game nowadays is given this treatment. Video, I said, hey, I like it. I'm having so much fun with it, but I don't know, man. It's up to my audience. Continue this playthrough. I barely got any response on the videos. And part one, has, as of this point, has like 600, 700 views. Parts two and three don't even have 300 views. So apparently everyone checked out part one. We're like, eh. And then even go, didn't even go to part two and three. Okay? Now, here's the thing. All the time, people ask me, why don't I play more indie games? Because I'm not exaggerating. The vast majority of the time that I try indie games, they don't work. They're much like a game like Harold Halibut. It's an oddball game. It may be interesting to some. But for most part, they don't catch on. They don't get attention on this channel. And I'm like, all right. So here's the thing. Originally, as we explained, this is not a playthrough I committed to. This is a game that we were just trying to see what it was. All right. I don't ever have to play it ever again. There's no commitment there. All right. Okay, this man. Asking for. This okay, brother. We try we're gonna play whatever you want, now, man. Just, just, just say what you're gonna play. You don't have to commit to everything. I'm gonna support you. In this case, this is the game I would personally like to play, but it doesn't look like it jived with the audience. Alert, alert. A All successful right? streamer fact, with a curated audience who never knows so what his audience wants. That seems completely logical and legit to me. Yeah, he never knows what they want. They can never agree, which is for some reason he expects his audience of people that don't know each other to agree on what they want him to do. Which is chat, like a right really now. weird notion to begin boring. with. No offense. I'm not very interested anymore. Not really our style. You know, big uh, up Slogan K for the five, okay. dude. It's not really my style. Not my cup of tea. There we go. So there we go. Okay. So here's the deal. If, if that's the case, then I guess what we're going to say is, at least based on this feedback from one session of Harold Halibut, that we're probably not going to play it again. All right? Now, if I say that today, and all of a sudden there is an off-pouring of people who are like, well, we just didn't watch it yet. Now we watched it, and we like it, and we want it to come back. Please bring it back. Then I'll consider it. But as yeah, of yeah. now... I mean, I no, that's not going to happen. Even saying that it's in the schedule when I'm not getting many people asking for it. You know what I'm saying? Luthay says it isn't fun to watch. <laughs> Was that Blueface? Blueface, baby. So I just what is happening with that guy? Clear. Last time I heard about him, he was right. falling off if like this big is time. New attitude that we're having around here, that there will be games on Game Pass we'll try, and if we don't like them after a session, we quit. Everyone has to be okay with that. It can't be, oh, well, now you're quitting every game. Well, then I don't want to watch. I don't want to hear that. What? All the feedback <laughs> on the edge. I don't want to hear that. But now you know. And don't. But now you know. That people are gonna tell you that on purpose to piss you off. You're literally telling people how they control you. Because you're telling them what really bothers you, and they're just gonna do more of it. Commit to all of them unless they're really working with the audience. That's what I'm being told. If I do that, and then I get complaints, I'm gonna get pissed off. I'm just gonna be honest, because I'm trying to fix <laughs> the content. I'm trying to make this content entertaining and fun for you. I'm trying to do what you're asking for. Oh, he's like super of pissed off today. People just can't agree, and then I do what I'm being, I'm being asked to do, and then people complain after the oh, fact. Alert. How he many got people? One hundred and fifty-three dollars, but the dance didn't like it. But he just said it's because it was uh, most probably because it was the day one. It was the premiere stream. <laughs> Want me to play? I, I don't. 3. I don't get it. Right? Like he's yeah, never yeah. happy, man. He's never happy. This one hundred fifty-three dollars, and on uh, a different stream, he made like two hundred and ten or something with a bunch of like pre-arranged tips. And, and like he's still not happy. Everyone complained. It's too many RPGs. You're playing RPGs constantly, right? It's like so you're damned if you do. You're damned if you don't. So yeah, I think let's let's we tried it. Apparently, it's not working. I like it. I would continue playing it if it were my choice, but it's not my choice. It's everyone here. You know what I'm saying? It's it's a community. It's me putting out streams that you want to see. It's not me just playing games for myself. 
It's supposed to be, you know, we go hand in hand with this stuff, right? So then let's agree that Harold Halibut just didn't work. All right? And let's move on. And if you want to see someone play it, I'm sure there's people out there playing it. In fact, I know for a fact some people got it early and were getting promotional copies and likely are getting paid to play it. I'm not kidding. Like, some people got it like a day or two early because my wife had said, yeah, you know, there's other people playing Harold Halibut if you want to watch a playthrough. And I was like, oh, I am going to check it out on on uh, Tuesday. And she was like, oh, okay. You know, other, like three or four oh, people she'd... He got over $350 yesterday. He's not happy. Yeah, man. Uh, I mean, seeing how quickly he gets triggered today, I'm thinking that it might be some tax stuff that backfired on him. And things are not looking good. Because he seems like he's really under some pressure. And we just started this podcast like 15 minutes ago. Actually, 15 minutes. We're already playing it on YouTube like super early. And I guess because they got early copies. And he was like unironically just pissed Most off. Um, You know, I'm not doing that. I have no commitment to playing it. So there you have it. All right. Um, So there you go. We've made the decision. We collectively have we decided Harold Halibut is a no-go. Now, again, here's the thing. If I get a wave of response now saying, oh, no, you made a bad decision please keep playing Harold Halibut, then I'll consider it. But right now, I'm not seeing that at all. I barely got any well, comments on the I mean, do I even need to say that? He's setting himself for... All you need to say is, well, guys, prepare the trolling trade. We're going and telling him to keep playing the game. That was the views are pretty subpar. I mean, it's pretty... And now he's going to come oh, come tomorrow on stream and say that he got like 5,000 comments by people wanting him to keep playing the game. Street Fighter 6 video from last night does better than a part of a brand new game that I played yesterday. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, <clears throat> I guess we've made our decision. It's it's There's nothing wrong with the game. It's a unique art style. If you like narrative-based games and you want to get hooked on an interesting story with quirky humor, you'll like the game. But I guess that's not what my audience is looking for right now. Okay? Cool. Last night, it was Street Fighter 6 and it was exclusively Blanca gameplay. Okay? Now, before we even get to talking about my gameplay and talking about my, my you know how did it go wins and do losses, we have to do that is that a mandatory I'm gonna activity address a topic right now oh we're gonna it's talk drama enough, honestly oh, of people being really silly are bad on every this. single game he plays yeah literally so i don't know what what's gonna save him at this point okay so i'm turning the pop-ups off because he's gonna talk about drama stop it okay ranked play versus casual play all right in Street Fighter VI, when the game first came out, oh, right, it's because people are making fun of him for playing casuals. Essential to getting good matches in the game because there were so many people playing at so many different levels and ranks that when you went to play casual play, the game would essentially toss you right into a random mess. You would be playing people of the bronze level and then up to platinum level and then up to diamond level master, but then back down to gold level, silver level, and the there would be a strong strong discrepancy in the quality of match that you would receive depending on if you were playing ranked versus casual. It seemed that if you really were trying to learn the game, trying to play your best and play against the better opponents, you absolutely had to play ranked play. Okay? That was when Street Fighter 6 started and I would argue that probably persisted through the fall. Alright? But then something happened. Allow me to explain what happened. Okay? There was a fall off. What does that mean? This happens inevitably with he every fell single off. fighting game. You reach a point that's like a plateau. And then all of a sudden what happens is certain players realize, I'm never going to do any better. I'm not having fun playing this anymore. And they just fall right off, meaning they don't play anymore. Now the people that stay in the game are now the people who are dedicated to getting better and playing way more than just on a casual level. Do you understand? What that means is that they're going to continue to play, to study the meta, to look at videos online, to go to tournaments and watch tournament footage and streams. They are going to try to improve every single moment that they get, and most of them are only playing Street Fighter VI as their fighting game. They're not juggling three, four fighters. They're not juggling other games. They just play Street Fighter VI. This is their thing, okay? That's typical FGC behavior, fighting game community behavior. There's nothing wrong with it, all right? That's legit what happens when you get a vibrant and healthy fighting game. After about six months or so, you get a giant drop off in player base, and then you get the consistent people who stick around and want to keep playing and getting better. Fair enough. So what happens when when that happens is you get a dramatic change to the player base. For example, when I was playing casual play early on, I was getting such a wide gamut 
of skill level. Like I said, bronze. Oh my god, gold, I feel like I've heard this like a million diamond, times before. You know, he's just justifying why massive, people are like kicking his ass in the game. You see all those different levels represented in casual play. Now, when I go to play casual play, the vast majority of matches that I get are master rank. And even more interestingly than this, I get to play master rank people that are basically higher rank than me. All right? There you go. Okay. Is that all? And that's good. Please be that's all. That's a good thing. No, you know, it's I not. Have not. We're just getting okay. started. For those who don't know, they hit the reset button on ranked matches about a month ago. So any rank you were at, it was hit reset and you start over. It was kind of like, okay, we're all starting from square one from the beginning of, of ranked again. So for me, I would have started all of my characters that are in master at the 1500 point at master rank. Okay, so that's where I would start just reset and then see how I do. If you win a match, you win points. You lose a match, you lose points. But I'm when I'm playing casual play, I'm playing people who are at 1,600 or more points. I wouldn't play them. If I was doing ranked right now, they would literally give me bottom of the barrel because I haven't played it all. I'd be playing people at 1,300 points, you know, people who are barely... Okay, what is the point to all of this? Why are we even talking about it? I like to call the tryhards. Oh, ah, yes, mean? the tryhards. These people are people who only got to master rank because they played so much that statistically they were going to gain enough points to get there. They're not good. They're scrubs. Okay, understand that. Now, but they beat you though. Them. That's being factual. These people don't understand fighting game mechanics. They don't insta understand fundamentals. All they've learned is online patterns. Meaning, oh, I'm Ken, and if I do this flowchart over and over... Oh my god, this is the longest ever preface to somebody being shit at video games that I've ever heard. It's like a laundry list of excuses. Six times out of ten, I might win a match. Unless I play someone good, then I get completely bodied, right? The problem is, the flowcharts work made better online, especially when their connections are bad. Well, guess what? These people's connections are bad. So you go to play them, and they're doing their flowchart, and you just can't do anything you want to do. Your inputs drop, you can't block. Like, what is this crap? This isn't really a competitive game, but this is how they play it, all right? Those are the people who are at the lower ranks of Master right now. Okay, so if you hit ranked and you just start off in ranked, you're going to end up playing tons of those people who just, the, the game is horrible. It's not fun to play. you got to play it in a weird freaking way that's not competitive to try to get around their flowchart pattern bullshit because their connections suck shit. Uh-huh, okay. okay. <clears throat> so they're actually bad. So, they beat you, but they're trash is what you want to say. Okay. There you go. Um, right. That's, that's where ranked is right now. Now, if you can push your way through those lower ranks and get to say 1600 1700 ranking points master points then you're going to play better players i can confirm this because some of the players i've played at that level are very good i played an ed who whooped my ass even last night there was a jamie who was like 1600 dude he was good and i was like these are great matches i'm having a really good time because i'm getting to learn the problem is the only way you will consistently find people at that level is to play the game constantly i will repeat that the only way to play people at that level in ranked is to play the game constantly. Not play it for Friday night fights and one other night a week for four hours total. This would have to be, I'm playing it three, four, five times a week, three hour sessions in order to hang at that level. And by the way, play only one character. I want to emphasize that too. Not switch between five characters and go around. I'd have to play the same character over and over, nonstop, ad nauseum, repetition, on ranked oh my god man why can't you just the play the video game like everybody else why can't you just play it have fun and then end the stream and go fuck off instead of doing this who is he doing this for aside from himself Vast majority like everybody watching him that actually gives a fuck they know these excuses already they've heard it all before time and time again with every single fighting game ever the feedback that i don't get it man you want variety. You want me to be alternating. With I get it. I get it. He wants to feel better about losing to a bunch of people on the internet that don't take it as seriously as he does because he takes it super seriously. Being good at Street Fighter is a core part of his identity. And if he's not good at Street Fighter, then uh, it's, it's terrible. It's the worst. It's bad. So he can never be bad at Street Fighter. Characters. You want to see different gameplay rather than the same character nonstop. Correct? So... With all that being said, all right, the best way right now that it seems to play Street Fighter 6 is actually casual play.
This is allowing me to play better players. You know what? I've I've wide. decided to finish the whole interview tonight. Uh, so we got about two and a half hours after the podcast. So yes, this is going to be a long ass stream, at least eight hours. So I can fit what I was planning on part one and two of the of the thing of the side scrollers arc into one stream selection of play because i mean i started it already why not same scrubs who will play exactly the same laggy way and me just being stuck at the bottom rungs of master because i don't play enough to overcome the bullshit okay but what's funny is this certain group of people keep coming in oh he's still not playing rank well did your casual play sucks did you watch the gameplay you didn't you're just a whining idiot who wants to come in and complain about everything Okay, it's really fucking stupid. If you watch the matches, you'll see no exaggeration. Last night playing casual play for two and a half hours, I think I played three people that weren't master. Three. And most of the people who I played at master were either 1500 points or way above. So I ended up getting really, really good matchups. They were fun, they were close, they were back and forth, interesting matchups. This wasn't, oh, Phil is spanking everyone because he's playing casual. Admittedly, that's what it used to be like. But casual play has completely changed in this game. It's not what people think it was, okay? So, basically, if you're saying, I only like ranked, ranked is better. Why? Justify what you're saying, because it makes no <laughs> fucking sense. Well, because it actually means something. Because you're actually playing for something. And you're a competitive, former, professional fighting game player. Why are you just sitting around in casual with the children? Right now, ranked is exactly what I just described. All of the tryhards who play the shit out of the game, you have to get past this grouping of laggy pattern scrubs to get to good players, which would entail you need to play this game a ton to do that. I don't do that. I play it twice a week. So if you want to see Street Fighter VI, you got to accept the fact that there are better ways to play it now and not be in this mentality of, oh, tryhard ranked, tryhard ranked. It's stupid. It doesn't even make any fucking sense. There's no, no factual justification for saying ranked is better. Right now, it's not. Unless you're a hardcore player, ranked is not better. Okay? It's just you're full of shit. I, there's no way to justify it. Okay? There's nothing on the line when you're playing ranked. The, the ranks mean nothing. Everyone got to master by playing, mashing. Most More people are in master than diamond. Are you aware of that? More people are in master than diamond. Does that make any sense? Does that mean that DSP bragging about being master with multiple characters has less value now? Because, well, it doesn't seem like it matters anymore, so all that flexing is for nothing. But I guess it mattered back then, when he got the Master. Even though even back then, people were making Master with, like, negative win-loss records and stuff. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense at all what you're saying if you say that Ranked is better. There's no difference besides I actually play better players in Casual. What's on the line? Nothing. Worthless ranking points that mean nothing. <laughs> it doesn't, it does, if I'm getting better matchups playing casual, why would I play ranked? Unless I'm an idiot who just wants to appease certain people who say, ha ha, when he loses, he loses points. Look how low his points are. Fuck you. No one cares. You're a loser. <laughs> Look at how pissed off he gets. <laughs> no one cares about that shit. And this all over Street Fighter VI, a video game, by the way. Look at how pissed off he gets. I'm actually having a good time with what I'm doing right now with Street Fighter VI. Oh yeah, of course okay. you are. I want to play more. And I think what I'm going to do is simply focus on the character, the five characters who I use, and I'm going to keep playing them in a rotation so that I can get better. All right. I think I actually want to play again with Blanca on Friday. And I want to, again, it's going to be casual play, but I'm actually getting a lot of fun playing the casual matches because I get to play better players. I'm playing people 1,600, 1,700 ranking points and I'm learning. Oh, you hear that? That's matches. beer, dude. I've seen that Jamie do cool stuff yesterday. I'm like, damn, those players are good. They have this flow. That's what I was calling it, this flow. Oh, there's also a really good Rashid I played, like first match. They have this flow where they've learned a, 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 a sequence of things they can do that almost seem like it's a non-stop pattern, but what it is, it's a bait system. So they'll do a move and they know that they've recovered and they have some options. So they wait and then they just toss something out. It'll be a, a hit or a low hit or a throw or a mix up or, you know, and it's neat to see that. I would not see that if I played ranked. I'd be seeing the same. Uh, what kind of beer? Playing Generic? Ben and Luke and I don't know. Nothing special. And stuff with their shit connections. It's like not going to be fun. Four and so a half percent alcohol. 4.4. Blanca again. It's going to be casual play again. And then after that, I'll probably mix it up again. Now, who do I want to use after that? Um, you know, I don't know. I'm really skipping this. We're going in. You gotta get buffs 
in season two. If not, they might as well just remove her from the roster. Because it's just a wasted yeah. spot at this point, you know? Hello, hello. So will I use What's her again? Up, I don't know. Would it be possible to, to make a collab video with Ivy Girl? You guys playing, should play Smash Remix. Like Smash Remix? That's like a Super Smash Brothers game or something. I've never played one of those. But I don't know. I don't mind doing collabs with uh, whoever it is. As long as we got the good idea. Uh, like uh, the right idea for a concept. I never got Zangief to master. And if they hit the reset I don't mind it. As long as I can find the time for it. have something potentially that I can get to master. You know what I'm saying? Like I could play him and get him to master at least. So I might do that. I might actually play Zangief ranked at some point and try to get him to master. That could be a challenge, all right? Um, but outside of that, I feel like once you hit master- Oh my God, I'm skipping to live, man. Like, this is worthless. JP, including like the yeah. bloody lake and the blood palace and fighting the, the true form of Moog. That's the oh, no. central that we're- Oh no, we're Elden do. Ringing again. Number two. Returning to the mountaintop of the giants. Will I collab with DSP? Doing yes. That way, fighting the, the I'm doing it right now. Unlocking Feramazula. He just doesn't know it. Feramazula, which in itself is a long dungeon with tons. And we got a nice. Wait, was this a, was this a salute? Top of the giants. Oh yes, it was. On that way, fighting the the flame giant. That way. Unlocking Feramazula and then doing all of continuing that way. A long dungeon with tons of boss fights and things like that. Which way? Continuing that way. On that way, fighting the, the flame that giant, way. unlocking Feramazula, and then doing all of Feramazula, which in itself is a long dungeon with tons of boss fights and things like that, right? So there you go. Or number three, returning back to the northern frozen wasteland. Taking oh, let's go there. Content. Let's get out of here. Some, uh, big optional content. I can't wait to go to the um, frozen wasteland so I can freeze to death and not watch Dark Side Phil. And of course, we've got the Haley Tree. So that's three completely different options, right? And... We gotta figure out what to do, and I need your feedback. So I think what we're gonna do is when we boot up Elden Ring, I'm gonna do a poll, and you guys will vote on the three options. Blood Palace area, uh, Mountaintop of Giants, Garmazula, or Northern Wastes, Haley Tree Unlocking. Okay, so, and we'll see what you want, and we'll go from there. Any one of those is very challenging and should be fun to watch and play. So we'll see what you want, and we'll go from there. Um, Tonight on the late stream, we are doing something completely different. Something I've never done before. A 42 Ladies and gentlemen, year old's tonight. dissertation on why he sucks. Yes. Why people do not like is just a fighting game man. Yes, yeah, literally. A dissertation on why he doesn't actually suck. It's not why he sucks. It's why he actually doesn't suck despite losing. On DSP Reacts, my React channel. That's YouTube.com. It's fantastic, dude. I, I can't. At 6.45 p.m. Pacific time. Big ups, uh, You're gonna do New Omega. First ever or no omega active review Everybody knows oh interactive right. review what does that mean you get to decide the scores on the channel streaming and i am going to be talking about the tv show fallout which just released a week ago on prime video i finished watching it with my wife a few nights ago and i want to talk about it but the thing is if i talk about it here i will spoil it i don't want to spoil the show for those who haven't seen it so this is going to be a stream exclusively for these those who have seen the show and want to show up and hang out and interact with me. Number one, I'm going to give you my overall thoughts about the plot elements, the show, the acting, the environment, you know, everything. Oh my God. So he's basically going to summarize the entire show, a whole season. I don't know how many episodes it got, like 10, 12, something like that. Acting the story. I want to give you a full insight into my thoughts about the show. Then what I'd like to do is compare the lore of the show to the lore of the games and potentially discuss how things changed and other things in the lore. I want to discuss Todd Howard's comments about how it's it's canon to this to the games when literally it cannot be. <laughs> okay. It literally cannot be canon to the games. So I don't care what Todd Howard said. He's an idiot. All right. And many other things. I'm sure what's gonna happen is we're all gonna have wait, I, wait, wait, wait. Oh, last time I checked, I thought he loved this review. Uh the this uh TV show. I thought it was like the best video game adaptation or something, and now it's not canon in Fuck Todd Howard. I agree with the second part, but that's a that's a big switch. Opinions on the show and things to say, right? That's the whole point of the stream. Instead of it just being me talking to a camera for a half an hour or 40 minutes giving you a review and then it turns off, and if you want to speak, leave a comment, right? Instead, I want to have that discussion live with all of you who have seen the show, okay? So... If you've seen it, 
if you're interested in hanging out and having a good time with me and having an interactive discussion, please head over to DSP Reacts later tonight. Okay, yeah, I got the gimmick. I got the gimmick, and it's not very clever. So it's basically the generic DSP review of a TV show on DSP Reacts, except it's going to be a live stream so you guys can contribute. Uh, uh, I mean, have meaningful conversation and add in your thoughts of what you thought about Fallout, the TV show. Sounds good? Yes, it, it does, indeed. If this does well, then I will consider doing this for future things. Not yes, he will do. Of course he will do this. Of course. I'm, I'm shocked that he hasn't thought about doing it yet. Only TV shows, but maybe movies, maybe video games. Maybe I can do a big review stream for a video game. And not only do I review the game, but then we talk back and forth about what we liked and didn't like about the game and things you know, improvement and how it will continue in the future. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <clears throat> no, he's not going to watch TV on, on stream. He already saw the thing. He's just going to review it. It's an interactive review series on DSP and it's not. No, it's not. Mind. It's not interactive, dude. Come on. It's not interactive. It's just a live stream. I've been saying recently. An interactive review series. I'm looking... For other content to put so on much unnecessary other prestige just being added the react show once a week that where I, I do clips on dsp versus the internet now i fully understand that many of you probably have not seen the show or maybe you're in the midst of watching it and haven't finished do not attend tonight's stream it is going to be tons of spoilers all right we're going to talk about another weird dspism is instead of saying do not watch the stream he says, do not attend the stream. Different elements of the show and it's It's plot. very weird. So it just sticks out very strangely. Okay. But the good news is I'm going to record it. It'll be on demand. You'll be able to watch it after the fact. So that way you don't have to watch it now. You can watch it in a week or two when you finish the show. Or hell, in six months if you get access to the show. Then you could go watch the interactive review after the fact. And you should still enjoy it just as much as if you were there live. Okay. So this is a new thing. I'm curious. Who's going to show up? Will people engage? Will people support? Will people like this idea? Or is this another idea that I try and it doesn't work? I don't know. But I want to try something new. Let's see how it goes tonight. I hope you will join me for that uh, on uh, tonight's late stream. Okay? Cool. Sounds good to me, dude. Okay, let's keep it moving. Is it possible uh, to have keep a it moving. that says spoilers to alert new viewers? I think what I'll do is in the title, it'll be Fallout TV Series Interactive Review Spoiler Alert. So that way people will know there's spoilers on the stream. There's no excuse if you join the stream. Oh, I didn't know there were spoilers. It says right in the title. If you can't read the title, then it's not my problem, right? <laughs> but I mean, there you go. I mean, if, if somebody is clicking on a stream that says Fallout TV show review, you kind of assume there's spoilers in it. Like, I mean, this just kind of makes sense. <clears throat> okay, that's tonight. Tomorrow I'm off from streaming. I'll have a... I'd like to say I'm going to have a more relaxed and chill day because we're not going out to do a bunch of stuff all day, but I have a bunch of errands to do tomorrow. Like, basically, it's all the stuff that's accumulated to do. So I'm going to have a day where half the day I'm out running errands. It's going to be... I don't want to say it's frustrating. It's just, if we're having a day at home, I would love to stay home for most of, most of the day and spend time with my wife. And when I'm out half the day, you know, got to go, go to the dump, got to go grocery shopping. I got to return a product at a store. I got to go to the pet store. I got to go, you know running around for three, four hours on a day that I should be at home relaxing with my wife. But that I mean, it's literally three, four hours, man. Get up at 7 a.m. and you can get everything done by 10 and come back home, bring your wife some breakfast, have a nice breakfast with her, and then have the whole day off. Yeah, that sounds like a good time to me. That's what happens when you only get one day off a week, right? And of course, sometimes you're going to have an appointment at a time that you don't like, but, you know, that's just what being a mature adult is all about. Um, so that's my day tomorrow. When I come back on Friday, it's going to be Helldivers 2 and Street Fighter 6 Friday Night Fights. Then on Saturday, it's going to be more Elden Ring. And Saturday night, it will be the premiere. The premiere of the Beyond Two Souls co-op with my wife, Kat, on the late stream. It's definitely happening this Saturday night. Again, Is it happening, though? How definite is it? Hopefully nothing will. We're going to begin our co-op on Saturday night, okay? Obviously, Sunday's React Day, and we continue on with that. Oh, schedule. so it's definitely now, happening in, unless something time, happens that makes it not happening. Treasure. Okay, I get this it. It's coming out, I believe, on the 25th of the month, but I think that's not my next day off. So probably that it's a week from this Friday. We'll try out that game. It's supposed to be, get this, a Soulsborne-style game 
starring a crab, a hermit crab. And you're underwater fighting things in a Soulsborne, uh, you know, area. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it should be interesting to see how that goes. And if it's good, maybe I'll keep it in the rotation. Maybe it'll be another Harold Halibut. What is it with all these undersea-themed games this month? Harold Halibut, another crab's treasure. Is there a Finding Nemo game coming out this month? Like, what is going on? I don't understand the, the pattern here. But, yeah, so we'll try it. Now, here's the other thing. And this is completely out of left field. I wasn't expecting this. You may notice, I have a new border today, right? Take a look at the border. Take a look at all the stuff around the edges of the stream. Um, so, it's really bad. Well, Mania is currently hitting the internet because the TV show is... Oh, yeah. Look, my, oh, my God. This guy is such a culture vulture or whatever that's called, an opportunist or whatever. He's worse than actual companies that do that shit. Because now this TV show came out and it's hype and it's making people turn their eyes towards the Fallout franchise. And now he slaps a Fallout skin on his own stream. Because that's the thing people are talking about right now. They've greenlit a second season already. Oh my Prime god, Video. this guy is so Everyone's corny. excited for Fallout. And Fallout 4 is getting He's a, a corn dog. upgrade on the 25th. Including improved visuals, better frame rate, and that's about it. It's really yeah, I'm actually looking forward to that update. One better on modern consoles. Particularly on the Series X, supposedly, it's going to be optimized. Okay? <clears throat> Surprisingly enough, people are now asking me, "Am I going to play Fallout 4?" And I'm like, "Yes, he is." We we he's really desperate together, right? That you guys did not want RPGs right now. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, RPG overload is too much. But then again, Fallout 4 isn't necessarily an RPG in the style of what we were talking about. If you take a look at a game like Baldur's Gate 3 or Like a Dragon, or Final Fantasy VII for that matter. Those are more traditional, slower-paced, turn-based, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Fallout yeah, yeah. He is playing it, dude. He's going to be with playing bats, it. With some RPG elements thrown in. It's definitely not a traditional-style RPG, so to speak. And, again, I'm getting requests for it. You know what I'm saying? I, people but are, are saying you guys going to support? I'm considering it, but that's up to you. Remember, we're going to try this Another Crab's Treasure game on the 26th as well. So, what I would say is, think about it and see if you're interested in it or not. If that's the case, what could end up happening is day streams could be Elden Ring and Fallout 4, and night streams could be Helldivers 2 and Street Fighter 6 with some variety tossed in for the React days or the co-op with my wife. And we could do that for the foreseeable future. FYI... There is nothing whatsoever going on in May. I believe until like the third week. Let me take a look at my Oh my schedule. god, this is insufferable. Get out of here. The game to do a last game, I've already played it. If, again, I want to take me. And sadly, I think so many people are just so set with me every time I play a game, 100 percenting it, completing it. And that's just a mentality that I think has to change, you know? I don't think that every game is always going to work. I don't I don't not even aware of other streamers or content creators that all whenever they start playing a game they always finish it right but this is but this way dude this is your gimmick this is what you've been always doing and bashing other people for not doing is that you're the guy who plays the raw game and you make a raw valid playthrough of the game unlike those idiots that play it day one and then they play something else so it's actually a rarity to find that lots of content creators will play a game see how well it's doing and judge if they continue it based on how well it's doing, you know? So. So? Let's see what you want. Let's test it. Let's test the waters, okay? Darth Hobbit, I mean everything. He says, what do you mean if it works and sticks? I mean, if people show up to the streams, people watch the videos, people engage on the streams and enjoy them rather than sitting around saying they're bored, and people support the streams. It's all of those things going hand in hand. That's what's going to determine if a game sticks and stays in the rotation or not. It needs to be the combination of things that work. It has to be entertaining. It has to have people who want it. It has demand. I have to be liking it. You have to be liking it. Yes, it actually has to make some money because this is a business. Like everything. It has to be a little combination of everything. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it has to at least fit together. Okay? <clears throat> Pizza Box Gaming says, your voice is kind of cutting in and out. Is it? 
I I don't see that on the mic settings here. It looks like my voice is registering. Yeah, I don't think I it don't is. I don't know what would have changed to be causing that. Um, I'm looking at my filters right now. I haven't changed them at all. We have noise gain, noise suppression, and limiter. Some people are saying it's totally fine. Swag Needle says, no, it's working for me. When I lean back... Okay, hold on. Let's test this. So now I'm talking right now. But why, now why can't you do, do this off stream? I lean back. Is it cutting out my voice right now, or can you still hear me? What a I great podcast. Back. Imagine Joe Rogan doing this. He would back. get clowned. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Right. <laughs> this is so stupid, too. man. This, this is, is so ridiculous. <laughs> I'm now facing the television. As <laughs> I am the now video. facing the television. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's gonna be so fun when him at, and Cat show up with uh, with the matching toilet seats. It's gonna be an iconic screenshot. Iconic screenshot. I love it. I already love it. I can imagine how good it's gonna be. But I can't watch it live because it's at like really? 5 a.m. The vast majority of people are saying it's fine. So the matching toilet seats. Like the soulmates they are. <clears throat> okay. Anyway, so that's what's going on right now. This week, we got Elden Ring continuing. Some Hell Divers continuing. Street Fighter continuing. Call with my wife beginning. All right. In a little over a week's time, we're going to try another Crab's Treasure. Oh my and God. Was this this whole time we're just talking about schedule? Yes, it's actually been nine years since Fallout 4. I haven't played it since it released. And what. What a difference my content is now. I mean, take a look at me back then versus now. My entire life is different. My content is different. My everything is so different. So Just war never changes. Interactive stream, the likes of which we haven't done with that game, right? So, all right, let me know what you think. All right, now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for everyone's favorite segment. Phil's day off? Oh, no, we got ESPN. And uh, I have a, a few stories today. Not too many, but I'd like to cover a few. Number one, Alone in the Dark, which I literally just finished playing on Monday night, 16-hour playthrough for both sides, by the way, has had a giant price drop already. The game hasn't even been out for a month. Originally, it was $59.99 or $60 USD. The game's price overnight dropped to $39.99 on Amazon and yeah, Best Buy, good. with likely prices everywhere else going to drop too. Usually when that happens, Walmart and everywhere else drops too. So a lot of people during the playthrough were like, oh, this isn't that bad, but it's just not worth 60 bucks. Well, guess what? Now it's 40. So I'm just throwing that out there. If you're interested in possibly getting it because you were waiting for a price drop, the price drop has already happened. Okay. We have, sadly, a news story, the likes of which we're hearing more and more about these days, but we don't want to hear. It's bad news. Somebody today. getting laid off. Take two interact. Oh, yeah. Take two. It's having layoffs. Take Two Interactive, for those who don't know, the company that owns things like 2K, um, Rockstar, and other divisions. Okay? A 5%. Oh, here we go. Let me read it word for word. This is from The Verge, by the way. I'm just reading an article from The Verge just to give proper credit here. Oh, wow. Take Unlike always, when we like don't give anybody credit. Auto, NBA 2K, and Bioshock has announced cost cutting measures that will lay off approximately 5% of its global workforce and scrap several projects that are already in development. The company said in an SEC filing published on Tuesday, it is streamlining its organizational structure, which will eliminate headcount and which will, will uh, reduce future hiring needs. Take Two says it will incur charges of up to $200 million to enact its cost reduction program, which aims to save the company over $165 million per year. So they're spending $200 million to save $165 million per year. Yeah, this shit is actually crazy because Take Two. One of the greediest publishers under the sun is laying people off. This shit fucking smells like fishy. So after two years, they make so up. much money. Come on, bro. The downsizing efforts are expected to be largely complete by December 31st, 2024. A 5% workforce reduction works out to around 579 of the 11,580 employees that take to disclosed in its latest impact report. The company hasn't specified which teams will be affected, which projects will be dropped, but Grand Theft Auto 6, the highly anticipated and expected to launch next year game, is likely to be unaffected. Yeah, that's what I mean. Uh, GTA Online money. NBA 2K money. Or 2K is part of Take-Two, I think. 
Yeah, and, and they're still laying people off. Imagine this fucking industry. Shit is wild. Um, and so This is just another blow to the industry. There's been mass layoffs across the industry since 2023, but interestingly enough, Take Two is in the process of purchasing Borderlands developer Gearbox from Embracer Group. We were just talking about this a few weeks ago, that Gearbox and all of its games, including not only Borderlands, but Duke Nukem and other franchises, that they're all going over to Take Two, but now they're laying off 5% of their workforce. And it's like, it's just such mixed messages. Microsoft is buying Activision Blizzard, then lays off an insane amount of employees. Take Two is buying Gearbox and then lays off employees. Like, how does that work? If you're doing well enough that you can invest in growth, why do you then cut back? It. What is this corporate strategy? Because again, in the, in the case of Microsoft, all right, when Phil Spencer was literally directly asked, what is going on? He said, well, right now, ga gaming is not is not growing. Gaming is stagnant. And because of that, we need to be profitable somehow. So we wow. have to lay off employees. This is actually a, a crazy, like, DSP-ish thing. To, to, to not, like, to be at fault for gaming being in the state that it is, and then complain that gaming is in the state that it is, and then fire people. Again, I want you to understand the CEO of one of the major game developers of the world is saying to make money, we need to to get rid of employees. He's the head of the company. He's in charge of the ship. He's the one that should be making them profitable. And because he's doing a bad job, he has to lay off employees and he's okay with that. So if you want my opinion, here's what's happened. Gaming had what a giant happened, boom Phil? during the pandemic. Everyone was stuck at home. So everyone started staying at home playing video games constantly, right? At that point, all these game companies decided they were going to invest in the same style of game. They were looking for a game that was going to be a long-term profitable game. Games as a service, microtransactions out the butt, correct? This is what they all wanted. This is the model that they thought was going to 100% succeed and save gaming. When you say save gaming, what it means is line their pockets with money. They all wanted to be GTA Online. So every single company started developing those games. And what happened? Uh, they all wanted to be Fortnite, basically. And we're, we still haven't recovered from this. Pandemic ended, the bubble burst, and games as a service are failing. Most games as a service games are not doing well. It's rare to find... It's not even It's not even the pandemic, man. There's just too many games that are kind of the same game or the same concept or the same idea mechanically. And there's just not enough people to be supporting all these games because they're live service. Model that's still working. Now, the ultimate teams kind of shit is still working. GTA Online is still working. Right? Fortnite with a bunch of microtransactions for children. Because that's all it is. It's a children's game now. It really it's still is. Working. It? But most other games that tried to jump into the space since the pandemic have failed. So what ended up happening was they all overgrew. Let's have a bunch of studios here. Make this, make this, make this, make this. Oh shit. The bubble burst. No one's going to buy that shit anymore. What do we do? Guess what? Lay people off. Because it's their own fault. It's their own misguided management their own very misguided direction for their company. They never should have had all of their eggs in one basket like that, that the future would be. Because you know what happens sometimes, uh, I guess with games that are similar to, uh, what happened to the Suicide Squad game, where they start developing it when there's a certain trend happening, which was in that case, the looter shooter, but you can replace that with the extraction shooter or a battle royale, it doesn't matter. So they start developing it, and three, four years into development, that trend is no longer trendy. But you've sunk so much money into this project, you kind of got to do something with it. So you put it out, and then it's a, a game that is obviously just outdated mechanically, and it sucks in a bunch of other ways. So it just falls completely flat, and everybody's miserable. The service, and they all tried it. Every one of and on top of everything, games cost a bunch to develop. So, yeah. These major developers said, we're going to do it. And then, oh shit, it doesn't work. It's failing. We, we fucked up. So when it's funny, because they're saying we're laying off 500 employees and we're canceling a bunch of, of, of games in development. What games? Are you even aware of a ton of games Take-Two is making right now? No, you want to know what it was? Games we don't know of. 
<laughs> oh yeah, and in the narrative was terrible. Don't get me wrong. The that problem that game is full of problems. And it's not just that it's a looter shooter or mechanically. Just look at the UI. Just look at the UI. Probably be that kind of game. And now they realize it ain't gonna work. We're just canceling it all. You know what I'm saying? And I think I really think that's the case. So it sucks. If you're part of Take Two, one of the biggest game companies in the world. Yeah, and you can take two job, dicks your because in your ass. <laughs> company, that sucks. You didn't do anything wrong. You worked your ass off. You busted your butt. You put in your hours. You made uh, the games they asked. Game prices rise as the quality of them goes down. Oh, yeah, and that. Because I recently, like, man, I haven't bought a full price game in a long time. Because I just look at it and it's like 79.99 euro. Like, are you sick? Are you using that money to buy illicit drugs? What, what the fuck is up with you? you too and uh, of course what most of the the scumbag publishers do i'm looking at you ubisoft is they make a thousand editions of a game so whenever the game goes on discount they discount the deluxe edition so instead of the original price let's say a 79.99 and the deluxe edition price is like 90 and they discount it to 79.99 so you basically just pay the normal price but get a couple of dlcs and now you're losing your job because some dumb fuck who's rich as shit fails upwards has a fucking... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know, happen. Phil. I know. Screwed up and decided to put the company in the wrong direction. And now you suffer because of it. What kind of a world is that? Why do they not suffer? Right? Why don't the people who make the bad decisions actually suffer as a result of the bad decisions? Should we crucify them? Like They're not. They're just not. They're set up that the people up there are always protected and the people under are the ones who always have to get hurt. It's yeah, really it's, up how that it's pretty much in, in any organization like that. That's just kind of what happens. And it's not a good thing, but that's just kind of capitalism for you. <clears throat> anyway. Um, that's just how life works. This is just absolutely ridiculous that it's like that. Because, again, you would think if you're the biggest company doing the best, we know Take-Two is rolling in dough. We, they... GTA Online is the most profitable game in the world. Why are they cutting jobs? Right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Anyway. um, That sucks. One more story. Despite... Oh, this is from Games Radar, for the record. Despite the Fallout TV show's success, Bethesda Veteran says not to expect Fallout 5 anytime soon. We need time to make great stuff. First of all, we knew this. Right? We absolutely knew that... They weren't going to be making a new Fallout game because they're working on Elder Scrolls 6, which they've apparently been working on for a decade and have zero progress. Yeah. Right? They have nothing to show for it at all or else they would show us. So Yeah, because I, I think they're having some struggles with the engine. AAA games take too long to make due to the need to impress graphics hogs like DSP. Appealing to consumers like Phil is killing the industry. It, it, that is also a thing. Appealing to people that are not your demographic that's going to buy your game and enjoy your game and also spread good word of mouth about your game is definitely a part of where uh, of why the the industry in, is in the state that it is nowadays after the insane flop that is starfield and i will officially say that that game is a huge flop you know bethesda was planning on that game to be a ginormous sales success and the fact that no one talks about it and no one has reported sales numbers means something it means the game sucked and flopped and did horribly Okay, and rightly so. It's an uninspired, trite waste of time. It's a joke that they thought that that game was actually going to be a good one. I agree, it, actually. Um, it has a lot of potential, anyway, but so that's, that's just game, all it has. In development, apparently all their eggs are in this next basket. It's funny because all their eggs were in the basket of Starfield. It came out, right? So now all their eggs are in the basket of Elder Scrolls Six. But what about Fallout? You just you have an awesome TV show that just came out. Everyone wants to play Fallout. Oh, well, yeah, we can't but make that game. Why? But Phil, it. all the people that just found out about Fallout, they have four or five games to play. Uh, I guess if we exclude the old ones that are completely different, let's let's say they got three, four, New Vegas, and seventy six. If if they want to get that far, but it's like all the people that uh, that uh, know about Fallout, they've already played them. Probably they're gonna go back to replaying them. Do you understand your, your game development model doesn't work? It doesn't work. You can't make one game every 10 years and plan that people are going to think that it's the best game ever. You, your last major game was Fallout 4. Fallout 76 doesn't even fucking count. 
even though, yes, there's a player base for it, it's not anywhere near as big as they had hoped. The game is not that good, all right? They need to stop with their bullshit for a while and say, we need to start making good games again. And if that means... This means nothing, bro. This is just a bunch of nonsense. Hey, they need to make good games. Bethesda should think to themselves and say, hey, we need to make good games. I want good games to come out, not bad games. Trader hat wolves be great with that t-shirt. Uh, which, which, wait, what is the slave trader hat? Which one? If Does he have one? Or you mean the, the pilot hat? License out their IPs to studios that know what they're doing like Obsidian, then that's what the fuck they need to do. But bro, Obsidian got to make the Outer Worlds and it was the most mediocre game that has ever existed. Yeah, it runs fine, and you can complete it without problems, but it's just a mediocre experience. Remember. But of course, this guy jerking Obsidian off for a game that they did in, in when? When did Fallout New Vegas come out? Fallout New Vegas. When did it come out? You're jerking him off for a, for a game that came out in 2010? Like, half those people that made the game are not there anymore. Even probably more than half. It's been 14 years. 14 years. Obsidian offered to make them an interim Elder Scrolls game. And they declined and said, no, we don't want to do that. But we made New Vegas. It was hyper popular. No, forget it. For, no, we're just going to do it ourselves. Yeah, they made New Vegas once upon a time. It's dumb. You know? Is it, what, what the fuck? And Outer Worlds was basically them saying, we can do that again and not doing it again. People right now are clamoring for Fallout content. And all they have is a nine-year-old game, a 15-year-old game, a 16 or 17-year-old game. You know what I'm saying? Like, they have old games to play. Old hey, you can play uh, Fallout Shelter. Or they can play Fallout 76, which is online only. You know, games as a service. <laughs> they don't have anything new to play at all. You know what I'm saying? Like, they need something. They need something. And they have nothing. Just old stuff. You know, our best offering is to release the update to Fallout 4, a nine-year-old game. And it's like, that's not, a, that's not a good idea. It's not a solution. That's not even a, a suggestion. You know, they should have had something. Yeah, apparently, spoilers, One Minute Man is back. In the pipeline. Why on earth? So Phil gets to relax, finally. Would they have done it that way? I'm, I'm actually at a loss. Why would they have done it that way? That they released the TV show with nothing to offer at the time the TV show releases. So if it's a hit... They literally don't benefit. But they've been... Bro, what the fuck? What? What? <laughs> oh, my God. Genius. They right. don't benefit outside of massive public attention pointed towards properties that already exist. People that can just go and buy them. And they're all on discount right now. How do they not benefit? I mean, at least you could say when the Halo TV show hit, as little as it had to do with Halo... They're going to get a huge boost in the sales for games that have just existed. They don't lose anything. And they're going to get a bunch of people probably hopping on to Fallout 76 because that's the latest entry in the franchise, even though it's it's worse than the one that, that came before. Halo Infinite was out at the time. You could go get Halo Infinite, and it was relatively new, right? When The Last of Us TV show came out. Yeah, The Last of Us and The Last of Us 2 and the new versions. So at least you had something to buy and enjoy... If you liked the TV show, not a nine-year-old game. I just, it doesn't make sense. It's like they have no strategy at all over there. It's like they're just fl flubbing about in the, in the breeze. Like, have you ever seen that video, the viral video online of the, the, the plastic bag that just oh, flutters okay. about? Outer Worlds is so boring and bland. Uh, I did have one playthrough of it. And then I started playing it again on console. I just couldn't get myself to go through it. It's just like such a soulless experience. And uh, the choices that you make are bad. The whole writing is just super bland. It's it, it it's nothing like New Vegas. It's nothing even like Fallout Four. Breeze, just it looks like it's alive, but it has no direction. That's basically you know that's Bethesda. I wouldn't say it's yeah, terrible. No I I would say it might be worth a single playthrough because the game is mechanically okay. It's it's not buggy, glitchy, or like broken. You can play it totally fine. It's just not a very satisfying experience. Movie tie in games at this point. After years of everyone mocking movie tie in games for being lazy slop, he doesn't know but, what he wants. But hold on, he wants a TV. No, I know what he wants, and he's thinking in kind of vaguely the accurate, correct direction. 
where it's like, okay, I understand it. A video, uh, a movie, uh, a movie or a TV show that's based on a video game is coming out, and uh, you want to have also a video game of that franchise or something else of that franchise to come out so it can capitalize on the hype. Right. But these games take years and years to develop. So it's not always going to happen. Maybe it can happen with an Assassin's Creed game because those come out every year. No cares in the world. Just let the bag blow. That's not a company. <laughs> what kind of a company do they operate over there? I'm, I'm at a loss, man. All right. Anyway, that's gaming news for today, everybody. Oh, that's that's, that's it. <laughs> Whoops. Hey, big ups, Coroner, for, for 21 months, dude. Enjoyed the segment. Congratulations. Um, so, it's time for shout outs. First shout out of the day goes to Luthace, who gifted five memberships to the community this morning. So, congratulations to the following people. Dread congratulations to all of you. Uh, outside of that, we have nothing to shout out as of now. No super chats. No tips. So if well, I mean, let's be honest. This was a complete nothing of a stream so far. He started off crying about Street Fighter. Then he talked about his schedule. And now he read out like three articles. And that was it. And now we're just giving shout outs for nothing. Something comes in to shout out. I will shout it out. But as of now, we got nothing. All right. So what I will do is open up the chat. Oh, uh, <laughs> this guy sucks. And let's see if you guys want to do some Q&A, which you guys want to talk about this <laughs> And now we just do Q and A. And if anything comes in, uh, I think I still stand by my idea that he should do Ask the King once a week, once a week. Hey, big ups for the five gifted memberships, uh, Donnie Darko fifty three, dude. Big ups. He should do Ask the King once a week and never ever do Q and A during the week outside of that. It's gonna make Ask the King feel special, and it's going to not make this stream so obnoxious and insufferable. Now, okay. Cool. Which is very important. It is preferable okay, that your stream is not obnoxious and insufferable. You see what I mean? Because now we just got a shaky guy who's just sitting here tweaking out for money. And nobody's really, like, biting. <laughs> but one one minute man's going to be here. Come on. Emotes? We already got the spoiler on that. So that's, that's definitely happening. You fall out. Oops. No one wants to talk. And no one even wants to talk. Imagine this. No one's bored. What's up, Just Clunker? How you doing? Crickets! No one wants to speak today. You're all... You have nothing to say. Your minds are addled. Your minds have been addled. What happened? The Mind Flayers were defeated. <laughs> Walk Warriors says Fall 76 got much better. I'd love to see you give it a go. At this point, though, let's be honest, though, okay? At this point, do you really think that Fall 76 would work for me? Fall 76 is a game that probably it's good if you've invested in it and you've played it for a long time. Do I want to jump in at ground level this many years later? Remember, I did. Remember, there was one E3 where it was free. It was just the, it was just the, like the spring after it had been released that fall, and the game was just utter dog shit. It played horribly. It, it was not fun. You know? It was buggy as shit. And I was like, I don't want to ever play this again. This is a stupid game. Now, maybe it has improved over the years. But, again, is this the kind of game that you would enjoy if you've already been playing it? You're immersed in the lore. You're with a community of people who play it. Versus, I'm just going to jump into it now so many years after the fact. I don't know. I'm, I'm not convinced. Plus, it's an MMO. And MMOs don't really work for me, as you know. Online gameplay where people have potential to be trolls and shit. You know, it doesn't usually work. That's what I said. Fall, Fallout 4. Game I haven't played in nine years. I don't remember much of it because I haven't played it in nine years. You know, to jump back into that might be kind of fun. I don't think that that's going to work, though, for uh, for 76. Just being honest. Uh, no, I didn't know that 2K is making a new Mafia. I didn't hear that. I didn't see anything about that. You could play it solo? How can you play it solo? How is that even possible? Back in the day, there were no NPCs. <laughs> Remember? So they've completely redone the game to be a solo game now.
You have to go on a private server? How the hell do you do that? How in the holy hell would you do that? You could just set up a private server? They allow that? Oh, there's man. Now and there's actually NPCs? Wow, so they just totally changed the game, huh? Like Yeah, they did a lot of stuff for that right game. Now. I still don't like it, but, you know, you might want to give it a shot. Oh, wait a minute. Isn't it subscription-based? Don't you have to pay for it, right? It's not free, right? You actually have to... Oh, what am I doing? I would look at it on Xbox, not PlayStation. You have to pay for a subscription fee, correct? I didn't even think about that because it's been so long since I played an MMO. I didn't even think about something like that. It's free to play. They don't charge you to play it. It's free to play, but it's a premium sub, and that's what includes the solo play. So you do need to pay for the premium sub in order to get it, huh? The blimp just did a super chat. He says, I want to wish you luck. There's a really cool concept for viewing a topic live like that. Here's a bit of support. Hope you have a great day and cheers, uh, a day off and cheers for streaming week. Thank you, uh, the blimp. <clears throat> To find the leaderboard. Where the hell is it? <laughs> Where the hell is the leaderboard? There it is. First super chat of the day. Thank you to the blimp. <clears throat> I received a $20 tip. From One Minute Man. Thank you very much, One Minute Man. Let's Whoa, he came today. through, you guys. It happened. It happened. Finally. Because he didn't show up yesterday. So I think uh, I think One Minute Man is uh, going to start exerting dominance more and more often. Because, like, some days he's going to be gone and Phil's going to be like, oh, man, wow. Well, what happened? One Minute Man used to show up every day. Then the next day he's going to be here, he's going to leave a message. Then a couple of days he's going to keep tipping. Then he's going to be gone. Oh my god. There we go. Did it work? Big delay. Alright, one minute man, thank you for the tip. Let's see what he has to say. Ah. Hi Phil, if you didn't notice, I wasn't here yesterday. Harold Halibut isn't my type of game. The graphical style points to a young age group as with Crab's Treasure. Maybe you could try Chicken Police Paint It Red. It's a silly but funny game. It's $20. Onto a more serious matter. At the conclusion of Alone in the Dark with Emily, you were surprised you could get Grace's ending. You said, I didn't know we could do this, but I... Oh, you know, man. Fuck the, off. The wasn't here. Fuck off. This is getting okay. skipped. So anyway... It's worthless um, gaming you. discussions. One minute, man. And yes, it was actually funny yesterday. One Minute Man wasn't here. And I guess because he just didn't like the game. He wasn't interested in it. And he didn't do his his daily contribution. And then people started freaking out. And then we actually had someone who con contributed and pretended to be One Minute Man. But they spelled his name wrong. So we knew it wasn't him. <laughs> I'm pretty sure after all these years of daily contributions, One Minute Man remembers how to spell his own name. Right? So we knew it wasn't him, but it was kind of funny, though. Um... Shout out to Lucky Gremlin, an Ultra member. Popping his Ultra membership here. He says, I think Fault 76 would be a change of pace. Uh, I've been gone for a few weeks for work. I'm glad to be back. I'm enjoying Street Fighter 6 last night. Is there any plans to try out Ed? You know, I'll be honest, probably not at this point. Only because to play Ed, it's going to take an investment. And what I mean by that is I would have to go into training mode, do all his moves, do all his trials, then go into to casual, learn stuff slowly again. And basically, unless it's a character I'm really interested in, I don't think it's something that I should do. Like, for example, with Akuma, yeah, I actually do want to do that with Akuma. I think Akuma is a staple character of Street Fighter. I want to see how he plays in this one, because let's be honest, Ryu and Ken, and Ken play very different. So you would think Akuma probably also will play very different in this one, right? So Akuma, I'm interested in. Ed, not really. Ed is just kind of like, I didn't I, I never, I never, didn't play Street Fighter V when Ed was in there. Uh, I'm not interested in his redesign in this. I, I'm interested in learning his moves to counter him. I'm not really interested in learning him as a character I want to play with, okay? Um, so there you go. Uh, but uh, I'm happy you're liking Street Fighter VI. As for Fallout 76, I don't know. You guys tell me if you think it's viable or there's a way to do it. I'm being told you have to buy a premium pass to play the game solo. I don't know if I want to do that. Like, Fallout 4 is on Game Pass. I can just play it right now with the upgrade, which is what people seem to want. They want to see the upgrade. 
And I'm not saying that Fallout 4 will work as a long time playthrough. Maybe we just do a couple streams of it, right? But again, the new attitude. Try stuff. See if it works. See if it sticks. If it works and sticks, I keep playing it. If it doesn't work or stick, I don't do it, right? And that's okay. That's a better attitude than every single game I select must be committed to as a long-term playthrough no matter what, right? Okay. Um, I received a $3 tip. From Ugly Tuna Roll. If you're playing Fallout 4 would be awesome. I didn't watch your first playthrough. I was playing it at the same time. I imagine most did back then. Whatever the people decide, cheers and have a lovely day. Oh, I can tell you what happened. I totally remember. I started playing it, and I liked it a lot. I was totally into it because it was like a modern version of Fallout. But a lot of people didn't like the modernizations. Number one, they felt that the game was too easy because it removed some of the RPG elements and made it more of a shooter rather than a game that was based on RPG stats. Oh, uh, man. We could have been watching the side-scrollers right now. I particularly streamer now. Back then, I was not. Back then... Oh, go fuck off, Burnell. Okay, somebody remind me if uh, if he does something crazy. We're going back to watch the, the interview. Fuck this. This is miserable. We're watching a miserable Q&A that's probably nothing going to happen for the next, like, 40 minutes. I started, like, falling into a coma or something. So let's go back to the thing that's actually interesting because we got, like, two and a half hours of it. God damn it. Okay, we're back. And I think I, I did the... I made a compromise between the people who voted on the poll for us to watch the podcast, which we did, and uh, going back a little bit early so we can finish this. So that that's that's irrelevant because you can you can just choose where the money's coming from on PayPal. So when we last dropped it, it was we were talking about PayPal and how Phil thought that why would all these bank transactions show up on the bank leaks? when allegedly he was using PayPal for them or the other way around. And then Adam told him exactly how this works. Let's get a quick replay for the context. So that uh, actually would make sense. It would make, no, 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 you're, you're, okay, you're correct. But the point I'm making is the money's in the PayPal account. So okay. if, if they're- Yeah, but on, hold on, I know what you're saying. But on PayPal, you can actually use PayPal and you could click use balance or use your bank account. Uh -huh. And it'll just pull the money from your bank account, but using PayPal as the payment service. So that that's that's irrelevant because you can you can just choose where the money's coming from on PayPal. Okay, I see what you're saying. But my my I was going off of their narrative, and their narrative uh -huh. is every day I'm begging my audience for money. It's it goes to my PayPal, and then I immediately spend that on WWE champions. That there we go. And now we gotta take everything literally, literally. I don't think. Well, I, I do think some people think it's exactly like that, but I would say most people think there's a couple more steps to this. Like I already said, first, he moves his money into his bank account so they can't get charged back because he needs them. And then he spends them on whatever he wants to spend them on, which is, you know, champions. That's the narrative. I, that I, I, didn't, I didn't believe that narrative, but it does seem that okay. you, you do get money and you just spend it on the things that need to be spent on instead of, you know planning for taxes the next month or whatever you know that's um, no that is absolutely correct yes right and uh, or well, things that aren't necessary which could then, include wwe not saying that it is but right. it could be do you feel that um you said you still play the game do you play any other mobile games yes do you feel that you're addicted to them at all no I, no? I play them casually. I play them, you know, what, for example, dude. <laughs> uh, I'll be off the stream and it's night and my wife and I are watching. Anybody, anybody who's had some contact with an addict can, first of all, that you can tell a lot of the patterns that are happening with him. And second of all, you know that they cannot casually indulge in their addictions. It's never casual because that's what an addict is. That's That's what it means for you to be dependent on something. And for many people, it's different stuff. Some people are gamblers. Some people fucking... Uh, you know, are addicted to drugs. Some people are addicted to alcohol. Some people are addicted to fucking porn. And nowadays, there's more and more addictions. People having dopamine addictions, and et cetera, et cetera. But you see something that is completely unbelievable when it comes to him. Somebody as impulsive as him, who can't even keep his tongue behind his teeth. 
when somebody bothers him in chat and he has to lash out on him. No, that's just not how it works, man. You're too impulsive to be able to casually play games that you've been addicted to before. Casually drink alcohol when you've been addicted to it in the past. It just doesn't work like that. Watching a TV show. And as we're watching the show, I might just open it up. And, you know, these mobile games are not big narrative experiences. They're just like kind of busy work game, grinding games, right? You, you mash a little bit. You do like, like Adam said, this, this stupid WWE Champions is just a freaking uh, puzzle game like Candy Crush. It doesn't take a lot of intelligence to do them. They're more I like, mean, you know. Do casual a, players play, pay over, under just under a thousand bucks? No, you I, know, know. I feel like you, right. you you elevate your level when when you actually put any uh, money into it. But then when it goes over a hundred dollars, you you kind of ele elevate from casual to all right. I'm right. I'm a one of the core players. This this all started because you guys probably don't know the full history. This all started many many years ago before there was tons of financial issues. Uh huh. In the public. Uh, I was playing a different WWE game. It was called WWE Supercard. All right. Oh, thank you so much for bringing that up. And I would like to, uh, if you still don't believe the, the champions nonsense, sure. Uh, but to help you out a little bit, me and ALT had a great stream. I had so much fucking fun. So we had WPAG Supercard. And for, I think it was like, what, four hours? Yeah, for four hours, we dive in to DSP, not just him playing Supercard. Him talking about on forums in excruciating detail. How he played Supercard, what kind of cards he got, what was the current meta, cards that he got that were super strong, and etc. etc. And we also went through a bunch of mentions of like gotcha games and stuff, and we picked it apart. Go make that, uh, make sure to watch that stream if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, and then you can see the same patterns that we see nowadays with him, where it's like he talks about, uh, he talks about. Playing the game on Twitter. Look at this. He's posted about it on Twitter. This from 2014. Got a couple of requests to show my WWE Supercard deck. So here it is. Look at how open he was to sharing all of this when he had nothing to hide. But then he started begging for money because he was going to lose his house. And then instantly he had a lot of stuff to hide. Funny how it happens. This mm -hmm. one I actively spent a lot of money on. I will tell you guys this. I can't tell you the exact. I definitely I got addicted to that one. Everyone knew it. I talked. So you about have it been streams. addicted to mobile games. Yes, I have. I've publicly admitted this that I spent way too much money on that. And there was another one. It was called Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle. That one as well. This was before you know, way before the years before the bankruptcy and everything. That I was spending. I was spending too much money on them. And at that point, I I, I stopped. I cut off. I stopped playing WWE Supercard and, and Dokkan Battle completely. When I saw what I was doing, I stopped myself from doing it. And then. You know, I've casually played other mobile games over the but, years. Dude. And basically what happens is with, with my... And I know you guys are going to say you're changing the narrative. I Please bear with me with this. No, it's it's not okay. helping your case at all, though. You're right. I know. You know. But but I'm being honest. I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah, I'm not going to lie to you guys. This is all public record, you know. I'm not going to lie to you guys after lying for the last at least hour. Yes, I know this has been live for like two hours 40, but the last hour was when all the lies have been... Uh, has been presented about those games in the past and with these detractors what they do is they find a narrative and they stick with it if i can dispute it or disprove it or if it gets somehow disproven then they drop it and they latch onto the ones that they can't that i haven't been outright been able to disprove this particular one they've been looking for something to get me on for years and years and years and every single thing gets disproven or just forgotten about this is the one i can't Find a use way. Craig. Use Craig. Send him. Send him a screenshot. I haven't. I haven't found a way to do this without putting myself at personal risk up to now, and so this is why the narrative has continued, even though there's been so many different things that have been disproven. There's people who make videos about WWE champions that have made entire exposés about me in the past that were completely disproven. They don't care about that. What's the next thing that we can make drama about for Phil, so we can have personal gain on the internet and get clickbait views and shit? You know. Um, so that's what I mean. Because this all started years ago with those other games, I publicly admitted to everyone, yeah, I was addicted to them. I spent too much money on them. I'm done with that now. You know, and then I casually, people at one point, like 2017, when this game came out, asked me, are you playing any other mobile games? Yeah, I started playing this one. And every once in a while, I mention it. I think, I think the last time that I actively had admitted that I had played it was 2019. I had said that I was on a plane 
to Connecticut to get married with my wife, and I had played it on the plane. And then people use that as a, you still play mobile games, you're still spent, you know. So let, let's, okay. So, so, so you say okay. you play the game. You say you're not addicted, although you have been addicted to mobile games in the past. Yeah, look at how fucking ridiculous this sounds. Right. And I'm just, I'm it's just like it takes somebody else than DSP to, to just like kind of give you the whole picture for you to realize how ridiculous and silly this sounds. I'm just going to lay this all out in front of us, all right? Please so, do. You used to play a mobile game that was WWE related. Yes. Okay? You were addicted to that game. Fast forward, new game comes out, right? You play that game. And by the way, you, you, you separated yourself from that game because you knew that you were addicted to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Usually in the case of addiction, just usually there's, there's some sort of intervention in life, some sort of intervention that happens, whether it's brought on by friends, family, or just personal, you know, uh, you look inside yourself and you realize something needs to change. Right. Right. Yes. Uh, he was obsessed with Supercard. You're right, uh, Richard. And to the point where at some point he admitted playing over 80 hours in a week, which is like more than, than a full-time job. Uh, 80 hours in two weeks, by the way. 80 hours in two weeks. My bad. Which is a full-time job. He was like legit hardcore uh, super card guy. And back then... I guess he hadn't found out that you can spend money just to be good at the game. Because he used to be actually grinding. Because in um, in Champions, he's not really grinding. He's just spending money to get somewhere and acquire something, and then he just stops. Do you feel that you're addicted to to these games? I've already asked you this, but I just feel like, once again, you have you have you have transactions that line up with major events. I'm getting DM pictures of, of you, of, of your Discord, you know, your Discord handle in the WWE Champions Discord, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I have, and I it just it. seems, <laughs> there, there's all, the, so make it make sense. Like this doesn't make sense. Make it make sense. I, I have such a hard time believing that there is a, a group of people that are so hell bent, this evil plan to make you look bad that they're willing to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on WWE champions just so they can make you look bad. I, I'm, I, I don't <clears throat> buy it. And, and once again, there's an easy out here, Phil. I like, I'm offering you the, yeah, the easy out. All you got to do is just take a quick screenshot. You can email it to me. <clears throat> it's done. We all move on. The detractors move on and everybody goes, okay, you know what? you know and, and and we all move on that's it that's it it's it's very simple man and we want to make this happen like i i want i want you to be able to move on from it i want i want the detractors to be able to move on from it i want the internet to move on from it i want all the WWE content to 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 be done like it's it's there man it's there like yeah. let's 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 make this happen like mm. and then we're, we all move on and we can start talking about other things yeah, well, here's the thing, and I see right now the the lonely Goomba in the side scrollers chat says he's gonna log into a burner account on the game, and it's it's too easy for him to fabricate it. But within almost like a second, everybody's gonna be able to find out that it's a burner account, and it's just gonna go sideways, and nobody's gonna believe it, and he's gonna end up not just being a liar, but somebody who actively tries to fabricate evidence to look innocent. So it's it's really and he knows that he knows that. And that's why I think he didn't bother to try and come up with any kind of evidence because he knows the moment he tries to figure something out, his trolls are more in numbers and are more intelligent than he is. So they were going to debunk that shit immediately. OK, I'll, like I said, because I know he calls them, he calls them idiots, he calls them mouth drooling children, whatever. But at the end of the day, he knows that if they decide to mess with them, if they decide to find something out, they know how, and they will figure it out. About it, I gotta see how I, if, how I can do it. And, uh, you know, again, what liability? I'm not gonna 100% agree to it, but I'm very strongly considering doing it. Let's see if we can do it before the end of the stream. We have a captive audience here. They wanna know, right? Oh, I th no, hold on, hold on. I told you I'm not even doing anything with my phone or anything on the stream. I'm definitely okay. not doing it today on the stream. Okay. It's just, okay. you know, you got to understand there's liability here. 
This, okay. is, this okay. is not just a discussion for me either. I'm talking my wife, you know, every what? year. Because if this okay. account what? gets out, that's a lot of stuff that now can Look, I, I get it. I get it, right? Imagine the case this gets out. His Apple ID is, is I don't know, corrupt, not corrupted, but, you know, there's a... Is a problem with it. Everybody gets to know it. Somebody hacks into his iCloud and they find naked pictures of cat or whatever. I know it can be bad, but 90% chance is that he could completely, yes, compromised was the word I was looking for. Thank you. I just couldn't figure it out. So his Apple account gets compromised, bunch of shit goes down. I think there's like a 90% chance that he can come up with some proof that will completely, that will be functional if he had that kind of proof. And also, would protect him from anything bad happening. He's just, he's just guilty. That's the problem. He's just guilty. Compromise. Okay. All right. Look, like I said, family, I get it. Right. Totally understand. Okay. And then, then, you know, when you decide that it's, this is something that you're comfortable with, you can, you can email it to me. The email will only be seen by me, not anybody and here, else. Here's another question. Something that I've been pondering upon in my chambers. Um, why did he change his name twice? Because the first time it was the Gun Show 84, I think. I think it was the Gun Show 84. And then it got changed to Down from the Rafters, which is not only the second name change that apparently they, they don't even allow a first one, but it's a name that is longer than the maximum amount of allowed symbols that your name can be in the game. Because I think there were 12 symbols, and the other one was just longer. So it's very, very confusing. This part with the name changes is the, the one thing that I would like to figure out. And once I do that, it's is we got them nailed down. Okay, and I will delete it immediately after. And uh, and I will, you know, I, I will serve as your confidant in this process. So, all right, well, let's... I, I mean, I don't really know how to move on. From this i don't i don't know you know i i just feel like there's this mountain of stuff here and right. it just phil i phil, got a i got a i got a show name that you can you can do this is how you don't game i think you need to, you... i think you need to own it man i think you need to fucking take back <laughs> this is how you don't game you and just fucking lean into that dude fuck them oh you know i mean just do what you want to do do you man but like the best thing to do is be honest and and own up to whatever, right? So, if you if you truly you 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 said multiple times you don't know what you could do. I think Craig has given you a, a good out. If you want to use it, like I understand, you got to like think about it. That's fine. Um, yeah. Again, we didn't even get into the identity theft stuff of what's happened to me, and that you know that's why I'm so afraid. It, it almost ruined me, you know. And that's what I mean. Even this doing this is a risk. I, like as pointed out in the chat, several people have said like the charges to your bank account or to the to the bank statement that is not yours the alleged uh, account the the, the the that is not yours uh they include you know shops that are around where you live you know right. and, no, and I, restaurants right. and like exactly that just seems right. like once again phil help me out man like help me out man at an account that just so <laughs> happens to be around where you live Mm -hmm. That just so happens to be shopping and dining where you're at. That just yeah, so literally, to dude. Your soul, a, a, a social security number that is extremely close to yours. I mean, that's how they <laughs> access it. Not, not, you know, so we talked about how we totally. Bro, when when Craig starts just listing all the things that just objectively make sense, alert. and we like it's so good. Eleven ninety five. Eleven ninety five. Whoa! Now I can afford it, dude. Look, I'm gonna go to the. I'm going to go to the, the place where they, the Officer Sanders work, and now I can buy the tape. I don't need to get my dick sucked. I can just buy the tape and leave. So I don't, I don't even need Elmer's glue. This is fantastic, dude. I feel rich now. Not like Review Tech USA, like actual wealthy. That's ridiculous, but it's out there. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me ask you a question. Okay, now we get the clap back, because this dude realized... He got completely exposed because Craig just laid it out on the table. Okay, so this makes sense. This makes sense. This makes sense. This makes sense. How is that not you? And now DSP is on the offensive. Sure. This is interesting. Let's say, you know, I, I the screenshot. I send you a screenshot. You see it. Okay, this is his account. This is, you know, this is not it's, what he said was true. So then how did that happen? 
How did they make this bank? How did they do that? I don't know how they wait, did it. Wait, I wait. wish I knew. Just like the you're, like you're you right. just mentioned, those Discord, the Discord uh, chat stuff. I don't know how they did that. I have no idea. I guess I, I'm stupid. I'm a dinosaur, right? Like I don't understand. No. How they no. Oh, look at this, stuff. man. I love this defense. I love. Oh, and I love this face too. I'm gonna screenshot the shit out of this. This is the best. And Adam is just like looking down. He doesn't even know what to say. He's clocked out. But DSP is like a mad shrug and also kind of a cross-eyed look to him. It's fucking fantastic. It's so good. But it's like, how did people make this, man? I'm so stupid. I can't even figure out how they made it. Yeah, they did make it. You did it. I, I guess it would take them more effort to make, to, to like fake things in the way that they look reasonable. And because uh, of course, because... Whenever you post something like this on Kiwi Farms, the first thing people are going to do is question how you got it and ask for you to explain yourself. Okay, so explain yourself. How did this happen? How did you acquire this data? Which, of course, this is the, the obvious thing that should happen. I really have no clue. And people say, well, how could they? And it's like, it would take you more effort to fake it than actually make it. Done it. It's like they took advantage because I don't know. I don't know about Discord enough to answer how they could fake those logs. How do you... Uh, he's confirmed, by the way, not just confirmed. We have multiple Discord leaks from his Discord servers where he and his mods talk to each other. And we know it's him and we know it's his Discord. A fake a bank account or is it a real bank account that they somehow had access and found one that's close to... I don't know. How could... So also, uh, another theory that he proposes, they actually hacked somebody else's bank account who also visits the same places that he does on the same days that he has off. That's very strange. Because, you know, he usually has a Thursday or a Wednesday off. And that's usually work days for people because they work Monday to Friday, 40 hours a week. You know how this is. So for things to line up this perfectly, it needs to be like a, a an op that has been that has been in the making for like years. And all of this, I want you to pay attention to this specific thing. All of this would be made to look dark, to make dark side Phil look bad. Just simply to make him look bad. They're not trying to get him to, to go to the prison. They're not trying to get him in some kind of other trouble with somebody else. Just to make him look bad because he spent a lot of money on bullshit. That's their end game, apparently. Do you possible. think do you think that somebody went in and created a fake fake bank account and made eight like whatever twelve hours, eighteen hours, however however long it was, uh to I mean, do you really think that somebody dislikes you that much that they were they're, they're willing to make a 12 to 18 hour audio recording of every single transaction from a bank account that that uh that just happens to be right where you live right in the same area at shops you may or may not they <laughs> visit like this just seems oh, like an, like way like dude do you hear my honest answer yes yes i believe they hate me that much <laughs> Oh man, they hate me that much. They're going to go through all this effort to make me look bad on the internet. So people think I'm spending money on stuff I shouldn't be. Ah, yes. I have. Because like, man, I'm thinking for myself, okay, if I'm going to go through all this effort to fuck with somebody, I better get him to, to go to jail or something. I better get him in some actual trouble with the government. I'm not going to just make him look bad on the internet and accomplish technically nothing. Other situations that are similar. That have happened to me and i could tell you about them if you want or we don't have to like what it's just it's just way too elaborate man it just i hear it you just... i hear you i i think at this point at this point since dsp proposed to explain the other situations if i was craig i would drop this topic because this topic is dead already we got everything settled it doesn't make sense he refuses to say that it's him he denies he's involved in this okay move on to this Thing that dsp wanted to bring up because i'm curious about it but that's not gonna happen cat i've had people who've catfished me for two years saying they were someone to get into my group they moderated for me on my chat for two years bro so this is literally just somebody who used to be a dsp fan and then turned detractor and was like hey you know what i realize you're an asshole and i'm a mod so i'm gonna leak some stuff and they were a person they had a whole persona of who they were or maybe they were just LARPing. Yeah, I get it. It's like LARPing for two years a little bit crosses the line. But if you want to get into the inner circle of the real den heads, you need to be LARPing real hard and for a long time. All my other moderators were friendly with them. And then after two years, 
They revealed, I'm a secret detractor, and I I'm was a secret detractor. Like, what? You spent two years of your life doing this? And you're like, that can't be true. It's true. It's documented. I, I... What about, what about, Phil, what about that, what about that these accounts, the down from the rafters, the DSP account, why are they tied to your phone number? Uh-oh. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> oh, we got him. It's over. It's over. Because that was the one question you had to ask him. Like, hey, okay, Phil, if I try and log into that account, if I click on forgotten password, why the fuck does your phone number receive the code for it? Because, you know, that can only happen if you verified the phone number. I don't know what that means. How could they be tied to a phone number? I don't even know what... Oh, no! 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 No, it's so over, Brunel. It's so over. You don't say this. You have admitted in the past you know what 2FA is. You know what it is. You know it. And now it's like, I don't even know that. Uh, what does that have to do with my mobile phone? And what he did here, of course, in my opinion, because I'm not a fucking criminal psychologist. So what he did here was he tried to test if if uh, Craig is actually up to his entire lore, because that's what DSP does. He looks for a weakness in your narrative, and he's going to try and attack that weakness to see if, if you can back it up. Uh, or he can find a little bit of a loophole to escape from, like the little weasel he is. Well, when you when you register an, an account, you have to put a phone number attached to it, right? Why why would that be? No, you, to my knowledge, if you're gonna play any mobile game, and you see, and he he just got what he wanted to do. He faked ignorance, and then Craig didn't know what the phone was associated with, and DSP managed to squeeze himself right through that hole. You don't ever enter your phone number into it. It's there we go. Or, well, I guess it could be tied to many things. Line? Be tied to... What's that? Line, the line app? A line. And now again, I feel like Craig is just blindly spraying and praying for something to hit, but it's not really working out here. Perhaps. That's one of... Because with this shit, like with Dark Side fucking Phil, you need to have literally everything down. You need to be factual on everything. And you need to phrase yourself in the way that he cannot weasel out of. Because he uses those weasel words with like, yeah, I'm not playing any mobile games in a serious type of way. I'm not uh, spending too much money on crazy stuff. You need to be like, absolutely have him fucking memorized like he's the Bible. And the apps, correct. There can mm -hmm, be... Mm -hmm. Well, wait, hold on. Because he's going to try and squeeze himself out just like what he's doing right now. And in the end, he's going to think that he's won. Of course, to everybody watching, it's going to be obvious that he didn't. And he made himself look super guilty. Because look at this chat. Look at this chat. It's all LMAO, line app, 2FA, 2-step. I'm trying to think, like, currently, okay. I'm trying to put it in perspective of a game that I played today. Like, for example, WWE Champions. I believe it's your Apple account. It's a Facebook account. Or... There's a third one, and I don't know because I don't think I use the third one. So uh -huh. I use the Apple account. It's a LinkedIn. That's why you don't use it. I never entered my phone number. Probably not you know a LinkedIn. I mean? like it was just the of course Apple account you log into and you download anything off the Apple store or whatever. There's no phone number entry there. So I don't know how that would happen or how you would even tie it to a phone number. I have no clue. I've never entered my phone number into any mobile game that I've ever played. <clears throat> if you're bringing up the line account, that's something else entirely, which we could talk about too. Cause they yeah, let's talk about it. What is that entirely? Because... As far as I know, DSP has no idea what a line app even is. We've tried to spin that into it too. People have tried to spin something into something, so there's a, a, a nugget of truth somewhere in there. <laughs> what is it? We have What's almost been going for three hours. And yeah, uh, this is officially when <laughs> when when Adam just peace the fuck out, man. Like. You guys go on without me. I'm I'm clocking out. Uh, we have I don't care about DSP that much. And Craig, of course, Craig has been fucking studying for this, so he's staying until the end. Holy crap! And and it's been a, a great interview. I I know it's been tough. Um, I I'm certainly um, taking the stance of being very critical. Um, you know, I I, I don't want to make you uncomfortable or anything. Um, but I think that we should move to super chats because, uh, and I don't, I don't know if we're gonna have the time to read them all because I saw super chats going the entire time. Right. Um, 
Well, th there's there's a lot more to get to here, and I, and I I think that those who are contributing, they will be read and they will be appreciated. But I feel like there's more substance here that we need to hit on before okay. before we look, we talk about that. And I think those who are contributing will contribute because they want to contribute and they appreciate uh, they appreciate that this is happening. And Phil, I want to be clear, like dude, I, I told you all along, man, I really appreciate you doing this. Like I said, you. You had other offers. Uh, this was not meant to be an interview to start with, but I, I right. appreciate you coming on and being a part of this. Uh, I know that. Of course, those... uh, I want to give DSP credit for actually sitting there for five hours, even though I think part of him sitting there for five hours is based on the idea that if he was lying, he wouldn't sit there for five hours, which is something that a lot of guilty people say when they talk to the police. It's like, why would I show up to this interview if... I was guilty. Of course, I'm willing to cooperate because I'm innocent. But he actually had the balls to sit there and actually for once create a piece of entertainment that is worth something. So I got to give him credit for that. Thank you, Phil. Who who want to contribute, they will contribute. They will give memberships. They will super chat. They will buy merchandise, whatever, because they want to support. Um, but I think that there's more substance here. So so let me let me continue with this really quick, if you sure, don't mind. Sure. Yeah. yeah, it's your show. Um, right. Well, it's our show, buddy. It's our show. Um, right. Let's 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 talk about this, man. Um, so we'll move on from WWE, and we'll we'll talk about something else. Um, you have been you you have been doxed. You have been doxed. And oh is... man! Oh man! I love this part. This is the best part, uh, it, or at least one of the best parts. Because this, oh man, I had such a great pop when I watched this originally. I can almost feel the same energy. It was so much fun when I saw which video they're about to show him. So much fun. Ridiculous, right? Mm -hmm. um, now, to be clear, there's been a lot of, uh, you know, the the idea of what doxing is, right? Like, leading up to this, I was asking people, like, I want to know who I'm getting my information from. People are like, you're doxing us. Well, no, I was asking to, to see who I was speaking to. I feel doxing is putting personal information out on the Internet for people to find, for people to see. Um, and uh, that, that normally wouldn't be available to people, right? And you have been doxxed. Your personal information has been put out. Uh, like, why do I know that your personal phone number is tied to this account, right? Like, you know, your, your address, you know, all these things. It's, it's, it's insane. But you have also been accused of not necessarily doxing, but, mm -hmm. um, but holding the information of that you have over people's heads and i i wanted to kind of show oh you yeah brother real quick yeah maybe, brother maybe we can talk about this yeah so, brother uh let's... The, fact that it's... the moment i saw this frame massive pop pop of the night fantastic in twitter account because i know it's the the quote itself is so good the quote itself and then the resulting conversation that happens after this clip is phenomenal same exact avatar that he's fucking using for this troll account on my way. Because you get to see, first you get to see how smug and arrogant this asshole is on his own stream. And making all these faces and having this body language. But then we, we go back to the interview and he's a completely different person. Website. Oh, by the way, I have your IP, I have your name, and but I, I have, have your address. address. So, congratulations. You fucked up you really did be awesome one on twitter i have all your fucking personal information now i'm going to say this up front i'm not going to give it out i'm not going to give it out this is not a doxing video i do not condone it i will never give out someone's personal information or anything like that whatsoever then why are we bringing up having it in the first place why are we bringing up having it? It almost sounds like a thread, but then you backpedal because you know that this is against YouTube's terms of service or Twitch or whatever for that matter. However, understand something. I got you. How about the fact that it's okay. fucking Twitter? Well, do you think that's okay? <laughs> it sounds like a threat, right? That's the first time I've actually sure heard this clip. It like sounds that. like a threat, right? Said it. Pretty sure it was a threat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that, that that is definitely a threat. That is, I mean, okay. No, it's not. <laughs> this gets me every time, man. Okay, no, it's not. First of all, no, it's not. My per again, this is kind of goes back to I was, you know, you tell it dark. And this is, by the way, the high point, the most replayed part of the stream is here when they press him on the doxing. You know, yeah, it was. One way it came out a different way. 
what I what what I was getting at in that clip was this is someone who had hurt me. I don't know if you want to get into the specifics of what they had done. It's kind of a moot point, right? Yeah, um, they kidnapped his girlfriend really or something. It's actually one of the things that have actually actually hurt my business overall financially since then. Okay, I've never. So really it justifies it. it. No, it doesn't justify. That's it. what you're. That's why you wouldn't have said it otherwise. Yes, yes, dude, I love this. It's so good to get somebody actually call him out in real time. I forgot how good this is. It feels so good. It's so cathartic. Just for somebody to be like, yeah, Phil, and use the same logic that the troll's been using for over a decade. Be like, yeah, Phil, you, you wouldn't have brought this up if it wasn't a threat, if, if it wasn't relevant, if you didn't try and, and get back at him. It got me that angry. It got me that angry. They had actually hurt me so bad for no reason. I don't even know who that guy is, all right? And the only reason I knew is because someone had found that information, sent it to me. I didn't find it myself. And I said oh, so that. somebody else doxed him, and you bragged about having his dox. That makes it much better, Phil. It, it really does. On the stream, because I was so upset. And essentially, the, what I, the, what I should have... Well, he didn't really look very upset, seeing how he was smiling and nodding his head very arrogantly. He didn't look very upset. It's more like he felt like he had some power over this guy. What I said was, you know, this is a situation you hurt me so bad, I don't know who you are, and... You know, I think I'm going to go to the authorities with this. That's what? what I should have said. I shouldn't have said, oh, I got all your information about... <laughs> oh, man, can you imagine, like, DSP actually saying something like this? This is something that he would never say. Yes, sir. Well, sir, you hurt me, and now I might uh, explore the possibility of reaching out to the authorities in relation to this conflict. Sound good? Sound good, sir. You know... This is a situation you hurt me so bad, I don't know who you are, and... But you know who he is! That's the whole point! That's the whole point, is that you know who he is. You found out his information, and you're dangling it in front of his face. And then you're saying, oh, you know what? Since I'm a very nice guy, I'm not gonna dox you. I'm not gonna publish it anywhere. But just so you know, I have this information. I have it. I know who you are. That's the whole purpose of this segment. You know, I think I'm gonna go to the authorities with this. That's what I should have said. I shouldn't have said, oh, I got all your information and blah, blah. You're right. 100%, you're right. I never, so, I never doxed so that guy. So it was a threat. So you admit that it was a threat. And now it's it the, the best fucking quote in the whole stream is coming up. It was, it was me venting anger. That's a threat, dude. It was, it was me, correct. It was me venting anger Thank in a you. threatening manner. Yes. Thank you. But I never did it. And Adam has just had enough of this shit at this point. Had enough of this shit. And I, I wish so much, I wish I wish upon a star that DSP would meet somebody who is just like him, who can use semantics in that exact same way that he does. I wish that would happen, because I know that would infuriate him. Anything with it, nor did I ever dox that person. Their information never went on the internet publicly, or if it did, it wasn't me that did it. Like I said, someone sent me the information. But, but you understand, like, that that's... That's not something that that you should. Uh oh, Craig, you're breaking up. I can't hear you. Craig. Oh no! Now they get to Craig, to audio. switch the topic because yeah, Craig had technical difficulties. Uh, not sure his mic seemed to have been muted. Oh crap. Um, yeah. I mean, I I, I have people that support me. I have a few different companies. I have a coffee company, and like I have people's information, and I would never ever use it ever because, and I would never claim to even if someone pissed me off even if, if they bought my coffee company i knew where they lived that just feels like a weird like you say you your anger or whatever and and it just slipped out it's like is there things that go on that like in your head that might it because because the way it sounds like it mm -hmm. seems like you kind of just fly off the handle sometimes and do do shit and say shit that you're you know that gets you in trouble like I mean, at the, it, it almost yeah. feels like I need to be worried about you, dude. Like, I, I, what, what's going to happen next? I, I, you say you've changed, but, you know, it, it turns out that uh, racist mm -hmm. video with the little girl was only like seven months ago. It wasn't a year ago. That's yeah. that's pretty recent, dude. You, yeah. know, you say it's racist. You, you can say it's racist. That was not what I was making Bro, a joke about. Bro, okay. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter. The internet and... I thinks it's racist i saw it and it's fucking racist so you're talking about a, a killer who's killing people in their basement and then so you're bringing up the slave you're like sending a little girl off to the slave trade <laughs> it just, it's pretty obvious <laughs> we got man 
if we could have some kind of AI just grab all the different faces that he makes, because, like, this dude right now is seething so hard. Like, he hates what is happening right now. Because he realized somewhere around this point, maybe right after the, the, the champion's discussion, he realized that he is fucked. And now reality hasn't quite set in yet because he's super delusional. Of course, it will never fully set in. But he's, he doesn't like the pushback that he's getting from Adam because not only is he used to never getting any pushback, he's not getting used to getting pushback as direct as this. Because you're talking to somebody like Adam who's just going to tell you how he feels, the way he feels at the moment. And people like DSP, they don't like hearing that shit. They don't like that at all. All right. Mm -hmm. So I know you claim that it isn't, but it really did sound that way. But that's, that's what and I, I know out of like Adam right now is the Howard of this whole situation. If you think about it, because Phil and Craig have known each other for more than a decade, but he doesn't know Adam at all. And Adam is the guy who is quote unquote. Well, it's not a real quote. Let me just, uh, yeah, it's a fake quote. He's like ruining his moment right now. Until Keemstar comes in and ruins his moment even more by being Keemstar. I don't know, man. It just feels like... No, Craig, we can't hear you. Yeah, now... Oh, my God. This was so good. Because it's like Phil and Adam having a chat while Craig fixes up his audio. And, like, DSB completely ghosting Adam. It's like he didn't say anything. <laughs> oh, man. I love this interaction so much. Yeah, I still can't hear you, Craig. What the heck happened? <sighs> and I'm, I'm, I'm glad I could find so much joy in such incredible amounts of stupidity that very few people can find joy in, and it's very special. I appreciate you guys for being here watching this, and I appreciate you even more for being there last year around that same time when this shit was happening, because, man, this shit was wild. It was crazy seeing it in real time. I love being a part of events like this in real time, and shit is crazy. I got tired of his bullshit. I'm just <laughs> no, but anyway, or bullshit to, to, to follow up on what you just said. So that clip, just so you know. Oops. Whoa, slave Craig, we like can't hear you, dude. A little girl off to the slave trade. Wait, what happened? It feels like. I'm just <laughs> check, check. No, but anyway, or bullshit to, to, in to follow up on what you just said. Okay, there so we that go. Clip, just so you know, 2015. You know that clip is okay. from 2015. Not to say that 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 means anything. Yes, I will check, admit check, I check. made. Uh, there, there you go. go. You're back, Craig. All right, got me. Cool. Thanks. So that clip was from 2015. That's, again, one moment in my 15-year career that maybe I made a threat of doxing. I never did it. Something that DSP fails to understand is sometimes your entire life is ruined by one moment. Sometimes that's all it takes is just one moment. And I'm not just talking about, like, people on the internet saying weird stuff for one moment that ends up destroying them or ends up completely changing the public perception of them into something different based on what they said but you know, a lot of times it just happens where one moment can be the difference and dsp the problem with him is that he didn't just have one moment for example all he was ever infamous for was like jerking off he would have lived that by now and just gotten over it and still be known as the guy who jerked off but you know it would just be a, a thing that happened like almost 10 years ago and he would laugh it off and whatever. But no, with him, it's like moments upon moments upon moments upon moments o over the span of around two decades. And that just defines who you are. Those moments define who you are and how you are seen by the internet. But I shouldn't have done it. And I openly 100% admit that. I didn't even know I had ever done that. I don't remember that. No, he doesn't don't. even remember that. How convenient. I never know that it even happened. So I apologize for that. That I should have never done that. You know, the guy should also have not hit me with false copyright strikes that destroyed DSP gaming. Sure, yeah. You false know, copyright strikes suck. That year and onward and to this day, but that's a moot point. I should, I did the wrong thing. Oh, you, you can't fight a wrong with a wrong, correct? You can't fight fire with fire. It just makes things worse. And I shouldn't have said that. You're right. You're right. But I feel like that, that statement in itself, the idea of like, you can't fight fire with fire. You can't fight, um, you know, like, I feel like a lot of this conversation phil has been you like it's it's been denied 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 deny and it's you know i don't know you know that's not true uh, that's that didn't happen um but you haven't given 
a whole, you haven't really given any facts, any facts to back it up. I feel like this, <laughs> this is so good. This is so good when he outright tells him, Bill, you didn't give us any facts to back up anything you said, dude. Like, you're making us kind of look bad right now. Across the board, there's this entire mountain of evidence here that's saying, um, you know, that's saying this is, <laughs> these are the things that Phil does. These are the things that that uh, that has happened. And good job on Craig for looping back to it because they they went past the, you know, champion stuff, leak stuff, and DSP thought it was over. We're turning up the heat again. And then we're turning up the heat to 11 because fucking Keemstar is coming on. Um, and, and you're just saying, well, no, no, it's not. And oh, I didn't that, say no, not, it's not. I said or, or that's not true. Or that's not my account. That's not me. That's oh, not okay. my, you know what that I mean? Like. That, that, that's all I'm saying. You know, it just, just when there's a mountain of evidence, you can't just say like, well, no, no, that's not true. There you know? is definitely a reason why I'm in the position I'm in. This stuff doesn't happen overnight. This is 15 years of me all day, every day, putting myself on the internet, making mistakes. When I started 15 years ago, there was no groundwork of seeing, oh, here's someone who's done it and here's the right things and wrong things to do. And I've made tons of these mistakes over the years. Like I was just saying, that clip's from 2015. When that happened, I'm sure everyone called me. I said, how dare you make threats against that person, even if they've hurt you? Oh, you know what? You're right. I probably shouldn't have said that. And now I won't do that stuff anymore. And then maybe I did it again. I don't know. I, but, you know, I'm doing my best to improve and not make those same mistakes again. I do slip up. I absolutely do. Oh, my do. God. Well, what I would say is, and, I, you know, Craig, I have no clue if you did this or anyone else. If you just watch a stream of mine, you know, just come by one day. Watch I, I have, half, yeah. an, half an hour of the stream. Mm -hmm. Did you see anything like that on the stream? Did you? But it doesn't have to be every day. You've been streaming for like 15 years. You've been a, an internet personality over like 15 years. It doesn't have to be every day for you to have a terrible reputation for doing stuff. You just need, sometimes you just need to do something one time, one single time in the span of 15 years to get labeled as something and to have your whole career fail. And he's done it over and over and over and over again. Actually see me, you know what I mean? No, th th look, there is something. Because like, this is a terrible excuse and it's bad logic that doesn't work. Oh, you didn't see me do it on stream today, so obviously I don't do it at all. To the idea of people picking and choosing things that people say in, during, during interviews, during streams, during whatever, right? There is absolutely something to that. And it only takes, you know, 10 seconds to to screw things up right? exactly I, I totally understand that but it just you know adam you said something yesterday when we were talking about this do you, you want to you're talking about uh, co a collection of moments do you want to kind of say what you were saying yesterday i don't want to steal your thunder on that i i don't remember what you were what we were talking about well you're, you're saying that you're saying that in the event of these these collections that that your detractors put together of you saying these things there's a lot of them like there's a lot Yes, literally, that's the whole point. If you were to go through... For somebody that claims that he just has mistakes every once in a while, it's like, there's a lot of mistakes, man. It's like hours and hours of his, of mistakes. Most people over the last, you know, most people just in general, there wouldn't be as many. They wouldn't be as long. There, yes. There's, there's just a lot, lot to sift through. And maybe you have a... Maybe you have a uh, more watchful eye on you than most people, but but it just seems like there's there's a lot, lot there, man. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, th I think that's that's probably the biggest thing here, you know. I, uh, th I think you're right. I think it comes with being one of the most prolific. Oh my videos. God! No, it doesn't. You know, over a hundred thousand videos. Oh there's my God! Of grandeur. Yes. Oh, dude. Hell yeah! Delusions of grandeur. But no, it doesn't have anything to do with being one of the most prolific content creators. No, I don't care. I'm not saying it's good content. I'm saying it's just happy. You know, <laughs> you can say it's shit if you want. I don't care. But when I put myself out there that much, there's just that much more to microanalyze. And when I'm a small time guy. Oh, my and God. And again, we just pivot into him being a victim. And how pathetic he is, and how small he is, and how insignificant he is. You see concretely, oh, if we make that video about Phil, number one, you're getting the clickbait views. You're getting money. Oh, my God. Ads on the video. Or oh, my God. Continue to, to make fun of me. You know, the, this is how you don't play. I became the whipping boy of the internet. People made entire channels that were profitable 
based off just making fun of me. Oh my god. So, when I'm out there as the target and people realize, well, people have been doing this for years and they get away with it. You know, this started making fun of my gameplay. Then it became make fun of him and his mannerisms. Make fun of uh, his family members. Make fun of, you know, it, it's just it kept going big, big, big. As much as you can, as toxic as you can. No, I think um, pretty much most of the time is make fun of him as a person. Because his personality, he wears it on his sleeve. He doesn't really hide it. And it's very abrasive, it's very obnoxious, and it's very hateable. And that's why people hate him. Um, For the most part, I would say. There's, uh, there might be a bunch of people that just tune into the terrible gameplay or something else, or whatever. And that's what I mean, like, I feel like I'm the one, uh, it's me and others, they call us lol cows, correct? Uh-huh, okay, and now we just, he realized he's in the corner, so now what we do is victim time. Now we gotta... We got to hold hands and pray that things get better because we're victims. Big style. Him and all the other lol cows. Apparently, even though after this stream, he never wanted to acknowledge that he's a lol cow. Even though sometimes he admitted that he was a lol cow, but not by his choice because people force him to be a lol cow or something like that. So we got like a soft admitting that he's a lol cow. But for most of the time... He wanted to stay as far as possible from those people, but now it's us. Big, as much as you can, as toxic as you can. Um, yeah, and look. that's what I mean, like, I feel like I'm the one, uh, it's me and others. It's me and others. Now there's the lol cow community that are constantly being milked. You're milking a human. They call us lol cows, correct? Let's, it's correct. the term that's used, lol cows. Right, lol cows, yeah. So you got Wings of Redemption, you got Boogie. We're you got Phil. We are targets. Because we, they should be a protected class. You know what? When lol cows become a protected class, YouTube is going to destroy all the cyber bullies. And this is when we're going to have total detractor death. It's going to be over for everybody. Except Phil, Boogie, and Wings. And then they're going to be thriving in the promised land of YouTube. We don't really... We make mistakes repeatedly. We all do. And we kind of... We, sometimes we make the same mistakes over and over. I feel that other content creators make those same mistakes too. Maybe not as much as us, maybe not to the extreme. Maybe not as often and maybe not as severe. And whenever they do, they get shit on way more than you guys ever do. Because those videos making fun of Sneeko, who I, I like making fun of too because that guy is a fucking bum. Those, those videos make millions of views. There millions of views, not just the, the hundreds of thousands that a, a very successful video on Phil can make. They get millions that we do because they're much bigger. Therefore, when they fuck up, they're going to have much bigger of a spotlight on them. But those other content creators are big and they have ginormous audiences that back them and defend them. And, you know, the crazy stuff. I mean, the other day I saw a video on Moist Critical picking up an assault rifle. In okay. His, his video. Okay. And that is equivalent to what the DSP has done. Oh, what's wrong about Moist Critical picking up an assault rifle in a video? Mm -hmm. Would that, if I right now- Does that imply he's gonna go around and, and do something really bad with it? If I picked up an assault rifle, I'd be off the internet. Really? <laughs> the end for me, I'm out of here, right? It doesn't even matter what the context is. If I pick up a weapon- But I think street, it does. I'll it, be it, off it, the internet. But it very much does. It very yeah. much does uh, matter the context, right? Like if, if- Oh man, oh dude. Every time he gets some kind of pushback, is this like, it's almost breaking kayfabe in a way, in a wrestling term speaking. Where it's like, it, it's so interesting that you usually don't get to see this happen ever. Ever. And now he's trying to push a, a pre-stream level narrative and then instantly gets pushed back. And it's like, okay, Phil, well, I don't agree with you. And here is why. You know, In a very civilized way. Because, of course, if he was on a call with uh, some other people, they wouldn't have been as civilized as this, perhaps. What he was doing was he was he was making a point. I saw the video you're speaking of, and he was talking mm -hmm. about some beef he has with some other guy. I don't really know the whole deal, but the guy that he was talking to was talking about, uh, you know, clips. He was talking about clipping streams and clipping, and, and the guy who was who was kind of threatening him with a gun was talking mm -hmm. about the clips, clips, clips. And he's like, "No, listen, this is not that's not a clip. This is a magazine." And and he was explaining these things in context of for what was going on. I think context very, very much does does matter, though. I, and I, I it, it is against terms of service on YouTube to be live while holding <laughs> any gun.
That's well, he wasn't live. He wasn't live. Yeah. Oh, he wasn't live. It was, it was a video. Was yeah, it was a video. So then, it, then there's okay. nothing wrong with it. It may be demonetized and such, but well. Sure. So let, let, let me let me say this, Phil. You look. You have your detractors. You have people who are, who very much want to see you fail, or enjoy seeing you fail, or laugh at being, or laugh seeing you fail. That does not sound very fun to me, right? It doesn't sound like something that I would want to be a part of. Have you thought about um, going to therapy or anything along those lines to help you get through this? Because oh, that's a fun not, question. Not an easy, easy life that you've chosen for yourself. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, there's there's a lot to talk about, and I would imagine that going to talk to somebody. Because it's like, okay, this is a very good question, uh, because in the current context, it is what makes it more interesting. Because, okay, Phil, we heard in the last three hours and almost 10 minutes that you're a big victim. Have you tried somehow dealing with this emotional stress in a, in a good way, in a healthy way? This is basically the question here. Therapy is not a bad word. It's a, it's a very good thing for a lot of people uh, where you can just go and get these things off your chest and talk about these things. Have you, have you considered that ever? Uh, at one point I did, for sure. Uh, I would say probably around, like I told you, around 2016 was one of the worst years of my life. I hated my job. My personal life was falling apart. Um, but I didn't. I didn't. I've never formally talked to anyone. I'm not anti-therapy or anything like that. But no, I've just never gotten to that point where I've considered doing or seriously pursued that. Because, well, simply he doesn't see any fault in himself. So obviously, why would he go to therapy when... Everybody else is at fault. Everybody else should go to therapy. I do. You, I'm just throwing this out there. Do you, is it because you think that it's not you? It's everyone else. No, yeah. that's, that's the feeling I get. I'm a yeah. flawed human, man. I'm I, a I, I know you. Game. You've admitted your flaws <laughs> from the past. Like, you, but you, his whole that that's the thing. His whole "I'm a flawed human" is used as a shield, not as something that he works towards resolving. Because as long as he's a flawed human. He can keep making mistakes and get away with them because that's always going to be the excuse that he's a flawed human. Say like, yes, back in 2015, I said that fucked up shit. And I, I took that, you know, this is how not to play way wrong. And I, I admit that now, but it's like, it's really easy to do that, right? To mm -hmm. convince someone that you've changed. Not, not saying that that's what you're doing, but it, it could be, all right? So it's like, you know, it feels kind of like you're, you can do no wrong almost. And that's oh, the vibe I'm getting. Whoa. And I could do no, no wrong. That <laughs> no, no, no. Like, um, not, not in your past, but it does feel like you kind of have like, well, I've changed. So people should understand that. And like, yes, um, that's exactly what it is. I, I don't know. It, and it, it, I, I get him. He can't express himself exactly, but that's exactly what it is. He uses the whole changing narrative to protect himself from criticism. It's just a, a vibe that I'm getting that you're, you, because every t there's been so many times where we've asked a question and your mm -hmm. response was instantly blaming other people. And that, that was a, a consistent answer throughout the entire three hour, three hours and 10 minutes that we've been been live. So, you know, it's like a dish in responsibility elsewhere. Um, I, I, and I think that's like if I can echo what Adam is saying, right? Like, mm -hmm. Phil, we want nothing but good things for you, right? We don't want negative things to come from this the whole idea of this was you know to allow you an opportunity to kind of talk and talk through things do you i mean it, it and adam is correct you know pretty much what about this well my detractors or the people who are, who are after me at what point you know you have taken you have taken accountability for some things right for for this is how i was in the street fighter community this is how i was then but i feel like there's there are other things that that have yet to be, you know, you have yet to attune for or atone for, whatever the word is, um, that, that are what just- What is that? I just go back to it, man. It just seems like there's just this mountain of evidence and this, we're talking fucking JFK level conspiracy theory here. Yeah. <laughs> if, if, if all this stuff lines up the way it does, and mm -hmm. if you were just- And think of the end game. I'm gonna repeat this over and over again. The end game, if it was all some kind of an elaborate scheme or a conspiracy, is just to simply make him look bad. It's not to ruin his life. It's not to get him in prison. It's to make him look bad. 
just to say like, yeah, I play WWE Legends. Yeah, I'm addicted. Yes, I have a problem with uh, What's going to be in part two? Part two is going to be all about the fallout from this. So basically DSP reacting to this and also addressing um, how he views the, the interview nowadays after a, all more than a year has passed. So that's going to be part two. Yes, I... Yes, I. Uh, Cause there's oh, you know, there's uh, so much in the post show because this dude spent like three hours or something reacting to it. Um, I need to need to improve. I think people will be like, "Yeah, cool. Let us help you." Instead of stop lying, you know. And that's that's what it feels like right now, man. It just look only you know the truth in your heart, right? Right. And and right. the and the well and the evidence attached to it, right? Mm. Uh, which there is a mountain of. Right, it's so, we, Craig. I'm, you I'm, sound like you, you sound like a detective right now, trying to get a confession. I'm just no, saying. no, no. I, 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 and it's, it's not trying to. I'm not trying to. I'm more trying to sound just, like fucking Doctor Phil. I know, you know? but the, like, it, the, there's a fine line between <laughs> the two, and and yeah, I, I'll I understand be honest, that. It, it feels like you're trying to get a confession, and I, yeah, I don't, and, you know, I'm not trying to like it, make it, it weird and right. And, and I apologize for that. You've already been there a couple of times. So I know, like, I know, but I, I, I'm having, I'm just having a really hard time get through it. And I apologize if that's what it sounds like. That's not what I'm trying for. You I'm might, more, you might not be able to get through it, Craig. Uh, you're, you're right. I may not. And, and for <laughs> that, I understand why, why people would be critical. You know, right. I, it just too much lines up with the situation um, I'm in. It's, it's a, it's a lose, lose. There is no win. There is no win in this situation. Really? There just isn't. Really? No so, matter what I do, I'm, I, there's a risk. There's, there's a liability. And just like you said, even if I send you this screenshot, they won't care. They will not well, care. It, it, oh, honestly, oh, well. it, it depends, yeah, it, right? Yeah, I, I don't agree with you. I think it's very important that you display that you're putting in effort into proving your innocence. That's something that I think is very important in cases like this. Because, of course, it's on the internet. Many people are not going to agree with it. Many people, even if they're proven 100% that he's innocent, will never agree, will never concede to it. But for me, what is important that I would see is that he tries really hard to prove himself to be innocent, and he never did that. He still hasn't done that. And I don't think he has any plans to do that. I don't agree at all. There, the, There's people <laughs> out there that would, would be like, damn, would be genuinely shocked, myself included, because I, like, I don't think you're going to send that screenshot. But I truly believe it would be for the better. I think that, you know, I, I mean, I don't know how many people who hate you know who Craig is or can even trust Craig or think that you they'll probably just be like, oh, he photoshopped it. He, he edited right, out right. His, exactly right. His thing. One million you know, percent. That's whatever. It. That's the explanation. So, I photoshopped so, it today. so FaceTime with him, FaceTime and pull it up. And Craig will be like, we FaceTimed. And, and he, he opened the, I saw him open the app. I mean, there's ways around it that Craig would be like, I, I saw him do it live, right? I mean, right. Oh, DSP didn't like hearing that because he was, he was on board the moment he heard a, a valid excuse, which is that people are going to think that he's faking it. He's Photoshopping it. And he was like, dude, this guy agrees with me. I, I, I got a, I, I, I got a lifeline. And then he immediately went into how you can debunk that. And DSP did not like that, and now he's staring into his crotch. Okay, there's ways I, around I will, that. I will. Can I tell you a quick story as to why? Oh my I'm god, so not convinced that anything I do will help at all. Can I please just tell you a story? Will you bear with you, me for this is, a couple it's, minutes. It's your show, Phil. Man, yeah, absolutely. Go crazy. It's not my show. It's your well, show. Our show. Okay, come our on, show. <laughs> well, listen, we provide you a platform for you to Thank do you. it, and listen, you, you have. You have thousands of people at you know ready to listen to you right now. So by the way, you guys have been great. You've been great interviewers. You've been completely fair with me. You've given me thank you. You guys have been you've the fairest shake I've ever gotten on the internet right now. Seriously, and you should be commended for being as neutral. I know you're saying he's trying to get a confession out of me. I don't feel that way. I don't feel pressured. This no, he's trying great. to help you. That's really I what know. I'm saying. But he sounded like it. So. All right. And the well, thing is, he's not—he's not going to get a confession because I'm telling you, it's what I'm telling you. Is I know, true. but it's—it's—it's it's, it's, it's clearly Craig trying to help. Okay. So, so here's the story. Okay, when I, when I was first talking with my now wife, okay. Oh my God! It's gonna be the—it's gonna be the escort story. Of course, it's gonna be the escort story. Of course, it is, because it's the one time ever when the trolls were wrong. And they believed something that was objectively incorrect. In the part of the story that we usually skip over, uh, and by we I mean Darkside Phil, 
is that the trolls proved that it was not correct. They were the ones that did the investigation. They were the ones to call out the inconsistencies. They were the ones to do the research. People who actively dislike him. So if anything, that story proves that the detractors are objective enough to question things that smell fishy. To question things that are not exactly backed up by logical evidence. And they did, and they debunked that shit. But let's hear what he has to say. I was so scared that people were going to harass her or do things. We didn't live near each other. We had online communication. After talking for several months, we started dating. Okay, she flew out here on her own dime, by the way. It's another conspiracy that I paid for that way. No, that's not true. We started dating. And after a few months, she visited for Christmas. Okay, this was Christmas of 2017. I took some pictures while she was here, but I didn't take a picture of her face. I just took a picture of her back decorating my Christmas tree saying, here's, you know, here's someone nice who's in my life now. My life has changed because I had previously been in a relationship that was very public. And sadly, it turned out toxic. We broke up in 2016, or excuse me, uh, early 2017. So this was like something new and positive. It was that toxic. I to share with everyone, but I was apprehensive. Panda Lee was toxified. But I, I get it. Relationships don't work out. You break up. I get it. I understand it. About showing her face or anything. So all I showed was her back. Decorating my Christmas tree. I talked about what we did when she visited. We made some brownies together. We did this, we did that. Very, very basic stuff. I'm not making this up. It's documented. You can look this up on the internet. I wonder if you guys have come across this. There were people, my haters, made up an entire fabricated story about that was not someone I was dating. That was an escort that I was paying. The money that I was bringing in on streams, I was paying for a European escort and flying this escort across the globe to spend Christmas with me. Not only is he wrong, but I am convinced he is actively lying on purpose because he knows that the trolls did not make that narrative. The trolls did not create that. They did not fabricate it. It was the, the catfish itself that went on Kiwi Farms and started writing posts about it and had a, a Twitter writing tweets about it. It wasn't even the trolls related to anything in this. All right. right. Well, they had evidence. I don't think he actually had an escort because what he needs from a woman is for her to fulfill basically the, well, the purposes that his mother would. So basically take care of him, make him a meal, wash his clothes. And an escort doesn't do that. An escort has sex with you. And this guy is not interested in having sex. He probably knows what sex is, but he doesn't have it. And that's his choice. Sure thing. What does, that, what does that have to do with anything, though? Um, but, well, let's continue, okay? They had okay. evidence of it. Documented evidence. Oh, look at this. There's a whole social media... And, of course, this, this entire segment, following up a, a couple of segments of him looking guilty as fuck, is to distract everybody and to make the trolls look evil while Phil is supposed to be the victim. And that's why Adam is calling him out right now, because this shit is just... We, we know it's a smokescreen. We know it's a distraction. We know it's a derailment of it of the escort here's the logs of plane tickets here's the recipe for the the brownies it's well documented everyone said i was guilty i maintained my innocence for about three four months as she continued to visit me and we had our relationship blossomed and all of that eventually she moves in with me okay what ends up happening is guess what the whole thing was fake how how did that happen how how was it fake how did it turn out to be fake Huh? Who proved it? It was right. all my haters. They it was all my haters? Really? Oh, this is just shameless actively lying because I'm sure he knows what happened with this whole story. I'm sure he knows. It made and, the whole situation up. Well, now, hold on. Because, because talking about the narrative, the narrative is that your detractors actually cleared you of it. Cleared oh, you of it. yes. Like, no, this doesn't add up. I don't remember Craig pointing that out. But man, this is such a good exclamation to the this whole segment ending, where Craig is like, "Wait, Phil, actually, you're misremembering this." Right? They, they're looking for they're looking for evidence of this thing adding up, and they're, they're after the fact. And and they're the ones what, who, after who what fact? The evidence out that said like, "Hey, this is not this is not the case." That's right. fair. We what happened was for three four months they're making my life a living hell, just like with this WWE champions thing. Phil is guilty. Oh, and now we're, oh my god, this shameless bastard. Now we're just directly comparing WWE champions to the catfish. Direct comparison. 
as if to say, hey, these are the, the two same things. So obviously the trolls made up that other thing as well. You know, look at all this evidence. It's all there. It's outright. And then basically when she moved in with me, well, now what are they going to do? The narrative has to change. Okay. So now they figure it out. It's fake. They, you're right. They did research. They found out it's these two people in Europe who apparently they do this all the time with other streamers. There was even a possibility they were going to try to extort me for money, try to get them to shut up about it or something. Okay. So, okay. So it kind of seems like your trolls are pretty objective people that are willing to look out for the truth. If they feel like something is very suspicious, which is exactly what they did. Oh, so this entire defense, this whole segment completely fell apart. The moment Craig decided to just push a little bit on it. To give you some perspective, did anything change positively when that was disproved? No, nothing. They were on to the next thing already. They had already created what? two, three more narratives. What? That what? Oh my God, look at this. Oh, this is terrible, man. This is terrible. I hate this. I hate him having to, to reach for this logic. Whoa, did anything improve? Yes. You got your name cleared of something that you obviously didn't do that people proved that you didn't do. They went on to. Of course it's a positive thing. This is something concrete, ex almost exactly parallel to the situation. All this evidence, corroborating evidence, proving that it was real, it was real, it was real. No, none of it proved that it was real, really. There was no pictures from inside the house. It was just a bunch of claims that were never really backed up by anything. And the, the, I guess the bad thing for him was that it all correlated to him actually shipping a girl into his house and in and out of his house, you can say, I guess. So that would, that would make it more believable because you obviously have this guy going around on Instagram flexing he got a new girlfriend. And at the same time, there's an escort talking about being with him. So it makes it seem believable. And then people decided to push on it. And then it, it didn't make sense. And then all of a sudden, oh, yeah, we found out it was fake. Oh, well, move on to the next. There was someone who made a video about it. Okay. You, you probably know him. Craig, did you watch the secret limited video about the $100,000? Yeah, sure um, did. Yeah, here it is. It almost got more views than this interview itself. So this is the secret limited DSP gaming gambling, a hundred thousand dollars of donation money into a mobile game app documentary. It's fantastic, by the way, and it's just an hour long, and it's only about the the champion stuff. You watched it. Secret limited is someone who once a year makes a very negative video about me, highlights all my mistakes, puts it into one video. They made a nah, it's just 10 of your mistakes. We could keep going. Video documenting. We got like, dude, uh, when we do a year end tier list of all the drama that happened during the, the year on, on TBS, when we do that tier list, I have to limit myself to like 15 or 20 entries because otherwise we just get too much. We don't have time to talk about all of them. This, they called it the escort saga, okay? The thumbnail for the video was, was me, my ex, I don't know why she was in it, and the escort's face, supposedly who it was. Okay, so this, this is a, disproved. A, apparently this is a secret limited video. Let's go find it. Let's go find it. Okay, can we do that? So we go on video, so we got uh, DSP Gaming versus Secret Limited. We got uh, top 10 D worst moments of 2022. We got 100 rage quits. Uh, gambling. Okay, let's go a little bit lower. Alinity moments. Um, top 10 worst moments of 2017. Where, I don't know if you guys can see that. No, you can't. Uh, but it's a very nice thumbnail with Panda Lee and a horse on the other side. Which I believe was the year, of course, Cat moved in. So that was the top 10 moments of 20, 2017. That secret limited 100k video got me into Phil. Video changed what I watched on YT forever. Yeah, well, for good or for bad. Hopefully you're you're uh, chilling out and, and having fun along for the ride. Because that, that video is, is perfect. Because for a video like this, you need to be concise. You need to be straight to the point, And you need to present it in an interesting way. And this video does all of that and more. Because it tells you like exactly what kind of person he is, how susceptible he is to this kind of gotcha manipulation, this kind of stuff. And it has pretty much all the proof that is included in this. It's a fantastic video. So I can't find it, but let's see what he's talking about exactly. Three, four months later, did my detractors say, sorry about that, Phil. May have called, but yo, we made a big mistake. Let's forget. No. You want to know what he did? This is the same guy who made the WWE Champions video. He took the face of the escort and put a horse's head on it.
He says, my wife looks like a horse. <laughs> <laughs> took the video down it's he never the fucking apologized. internet though Did yeah but but hold on okay 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 and I'm, I'm gonna be as fair as possible so this is the video right this is the top 10 worst gaming uh, dsp gaming moments of 2017 and i believe of course number one is probably the escort right but at the end of the day that's oh no i guess that was laveria I'm not exactly sure. What is this? Uh, what does this have to do with anything? So I get views on YouTube, right? Um, you but anyways, my point is, and I believe it's here. Oh yes, this. The, yeah, slut Kimberly. I got a sub. Yes, but was it not? Was it not one of the top ten DSP moments of 2017? Was it not? I think it is. Even if it was wrong, which it ended up being, sure, of course, it was a big moment in the year of 2017. So it totally should belong in a video like this. Yes, I know. Come on, but this, man. I mean, they, when these things get get proven wrong, oh, move on to the next. It's just the next thing. I will send. I will. So send. But like, stop giving us things to move on to. Stop giving us the next thing. We can't just invent it out of thin air. Because people have tried and nobody fucking believes that shit. How many one minute ban conspiracies have we had? Probably at least 20. From anything ranging from one minute man is Phil to one minute man is Derek's parents because they want him to take care of their kid. Or, or one minute man is Kat, one minute man is Linda, one minute man is Jeff, which I still believe because it makes a lot of sense. But still, it's just like, stop giving us the next thing. Hey, so what does this have to do, do with it, though? Because I will disprove anything, and they will just move on to the next. It will never end. That's what I mean. There we go. So that means I should never present any evidence to clear my name off stuff, because obviously it would never get the job done. So it's the internet. So who fucking cares, then? So then so then why even bother? Why bother with any of it? And that's the attitude I've taken. Now, Adam, you just hit it dead on the head. Because this is the attitude I take now. Why, this was not supposed to be an interview, right? I was just supposed to... <laughs> you know, the, the, yeah, that's the, the, the best theory is One Minute Man is Linda. Because One Minute Man nowadays is leaving a lot of messages. So I imagine like a 70-year-old Linda Burnell sitting around playing Baldur's Gate 3. So she can come up with a question to ask her son as she gives him the daily $25 that he definitely deserves. I love that. I, w I would love to think about that. But obviously it doesn't doesn't sound very reasonable to be a guest on your show there wasn't mm -hmm. my intention to ever come out and have it be like this on my streams we don't have this that's why i wanted this to be the end all be all you want my actual answers on this stuff you watch the show and that's the last thing i'm talking about it right so i don't i this is off my streams i'm just i'm making content i just want to be left alone they won't leave me alone they're the ones who, who continue the narrative i'm with adam it's the internet it's going to go on forever so then why even bother? Why disprove anything? It's on to the next anyway. So once I disprove WWE champions at great personal risk, okay, on to the next. And by the way, now something might happen to me because I exposed myself. So that's why I don't care about it anymore. I've really become, in the 15 years I've been a content creator, I have become so desensitized to this stuff. I just, it's like, what's the next one? I don't well, care. If you, if you truly don't care, then you, you won't bother sending him a stream cut, screenshot. Yeah. Because it doesn't matter to you then. It doesn't matter either way. If anything, well, if I, if I, send, if I send Craig the screenshot, it would be out of, like, respect that he gave me his time today on the show. Oh, really? And he didn't end up sending him a screenshot. But the, the screenshot gate was very interesting. And we're going to get to that in part two. Uh, but let me just tell you real quick. It's basically Phil. He sent an email to Craig asking him if he checks his email regularly. And then Craig re replied him too late, so Phil didn't send him the proof. You know, it's some crazy shit. Like, actual, like, level one experiences. It's amazing. I love that. Uh, big ups to SD1593 for two months, dude, who says guilty. And I agree. It's pretty guilty. I'm saying, like... Well, that, that's, that's something that's, to think about. That's a lot of trust, too, because, again, I'm not a lot saying of trust. would ever do anything dishonest or, or expose me i'm telling you there's been times this exact situation oh my has happened, god and then something bad has happened to me because i did it imagine if phil was a fentanyl dealer this whole time <laughs>
<laughs> man tips is part of the, the laundering of his drug empire money. Yes, yes, this is what happened. Phil is a fentanyl de dealer. He's like a, well, it's basically like a Breaking Bad situation, right? Somebody who definitely doesn't look like they're doing what they're doing, but they're doing something super shady and they're making so much money out of it. Except DSP is losing money because I don't even know, man. I don't even know. <laughs> it's really, it's it's like Breaking Bad. Let's just say that. Uh, I, I haven't, I'll tell you this. I haven't done anything fentanyl. To... What if, uh, what if he got the whole gated community hooked on fentanyl and people are just like trying to break into his house and stuff because they're like super hooked on it. They're super addicted. So that's why he's so nervous. You know, that makes a lot of sense. If you don't think about it at all, or if you're really drunk, to uh, and I, I think I'm I'm both. Wade your trust or lose no, your yeah. trust. No. So you know, uh, look. Ultimately, this is your call. But the offer's there, and I know you said you didn't want to do anything, you know, with your phone during this. Respect that. That's fine. But you realize that by by leaving the door open, by even doing this after the stream, there still no. allows the opportunity. You know, it, no, it goes back. Oh, I spilled my beer. Actually, I overflew it, and no, actually, uh, why am I even talking about this? the picks are different? Didn't happen. Like, if somebody mm -hmm. sees you pick up your phone right now on stream, you were to then email it to me right now on stream, and it was this. This was to happen literally right now in real time as people were watching. It's, mm -hmm. it's on his done. bucket list. It's, it's on his bucket done. list. <laughs> but Seriously, you, it's like number three on Craig's bucket list for that to happen right it, now. It, I'm just but, saying. But, but, once again, I think this is all done. It's all done. It's all done. Um, all right, let, let's let's continue on, man. Um, <sighs> In the nice, bro. It's all <laughs> did did Adam laugh at him for taking a sip of this bottle? Because this is like one of the weirdest bottles he's ever had. Done. Um, <laughs> all right, let, let's let's continue on, man. Um, <sighs> Phil, hmm? how the fuck did you not know the camera was on? <laughs> well, that's an out of nowhere masturbation question. Fantastic. Fantastic. I love that. But it's uh, it's really good to break up the tension, you know, because they were talking about some really heavy topics such as mobile games and identity theft. And now we're just talking about beating your meat on YouTube. I love that. You know what I'm talking well, I, about. I, I, was, I wasn't going to talk about this, but... I, I, mean, we, I, I did. Yeah. What? And I, I think I'm going to speed it up because I want to get to the part where Keemstar joins. Because here, uh, after a little bit, DSP goes away and he blamed it retroactively on, on the Comcast guy because apparently the Comcast guy disconnected him or something. And then Keemstar joins and then DSP joins and then Keemstar joins. But I think in this, like, 20, 30 minutes, nothing really interesting happens. The fuck, man? I mean, come Dude, on. Sadly, <laughs> when it happened, I, I tried to, 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 spin, it. I tried now, to spin it. When was the piece of paper I'm trying to figure out? I have everything timestamped on my restream of this. But let's just watch whatever. It is like an hour and 40 minutes. In a very positive light, and I, I rolled with it. It's one of the rare times where I learned in my life, you roll with it and it'll go away. It never went away, but at least people, you know, it's just something funny now, right? <laughs> Imagine if I had reacted to that the same way I reacted to this is how you don't play. Like, that would have been the end for me. Like, if you, this guy, what's he going to say? He didn't do it or whatever. Of course, yeah, it happened. It's something stupid. But do you, the truthful story, sadly, is not happy, okay? Um, here's the truth. I've, I've told it before, but never in this context. So in 2016, it was probably the second worst year of my life. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We're getting masturbation lore. That's where we are right now. We're getting lore about the time he masturbated on the Internet. Everything was falling apart. Why do we need this? Just say, hey, man, I wanted to beat my meat. The camera was on. That shit sucked. I regret. And that's it. Okay. Um, here's the truth. I've, I've told it before, but never in this context. So in 2016, it was probably <laughs> the second worst year of my life. Imagine having to explain yourself over why you jerked off online. This is the worst thing. Everything was falling <laughs> apart in my personal life. I, I moved out here to Washington. I used to live in Connecticut my whole life. I moved to Washington in 2014 with my then girlfriend. And you know, you know, Adam is smiling about that same thing. I'm thinking right. I, I'm thinking right now. 
and Craig is smiling for the same reason I'm thinking right now, because it's like, this dude is pig explaining his masturbation. Our relationship was- You don't need to do that. Just keep it simple. It's a simple thing. Everybody beats their meat sometime. Everybody. It's just the thing we do. You just happened to do it when the camera was on and you were broadcasted on the internet. It's a funny haha -ha moment. You get to move on from it. That's it. You're never going to live it down because that's what most people are going to remember you for. But that's how life works. Next time, turn the camera off, dude. Hey, big ups anti-distortion for the five memberships, dude. Follow alert. It's great. Over the course, oh, we've been uh, we've been live for like eight and a half hours. This has been very fun. I miss doing long style streams like this. Two years of system. Because I used to do a lot of them back when I really had time to do them, but nowadays it's just hard, dude. I should quit my job and just detract DSP full time, forty hours a week. Imagine that's like five eight hour streams every day, every week. It's crazy, right? Imagine all this content. Except I'll have to go jobless and then be like DSP for the next 10 years. <laughs> Harassment on the internet, being swatted, docs, all this stuff. Her family members being harassed, my family members being harassed. Our whole relationship fell apart, okay? In 2016, I was living with her and we had two separate lives. It was like two roommates. Rather we than do not roommate. need this context, it brother. We do not need this. Just say you jerked off and move on. That's all that it has to be. You don't need to have, like, five chapters worth of lore. Like, we're supposed to be together, and we're really not. Um, it got to the point where she went off and had her own life. She had her own friends, her own job. I was doing my thing. Well, no one knew this. Everyone thought everything was fine. We, we pretended we smiled, whatever. No one knew that. I was depressed. I was really messed up in the head at that point. The way that I saw it was this room was the only place in the house where she never went. She never came in here, Okay. So this room was like my safe space. I know that sounds stupid, but it was like, this is the one place I can be away from that. And I can have my own safe place. And in particular, I couldn't tell you the specific day what had happened, but I, I guarantee you it was something awful that happened, an argument, a fight, whatever it was. And I came in here and back then, my, I was very different than today. I'm professional. I have layouts blocked. Uh -huh, yeah, back yeah, back yeah, right. Time. You know, I'm professional. He has the same slideshow at the beginning of the screen, uh, at the stream he's had since like 2019 or something. My, my you, you dashboard. Got a, like a couch in the corner that you exactly. can go do that, had, go do that this, now. Yeah, so I had the, the camera had been left on from the day before. Dude, you, you know what's crazy? Living in a studio apartment and, and being in a fight with your girlfriend. That's what's crazy. Because where are you going to go? I guess outside because there's nowhere else to go. Or back then, and this dude is living in like a mansion, the the gout mansion, and he feels like, oh my god, man, the only place I can escape is in my office. I didn't do face cam like I do today. Today, this is a common thing to have the face cam on every single stream. Back then, it was a rarity. I only did it for like FromSoft oh. games where I was going to get really upset. People like to see me rage on camera, right? So that again, that meant that dark side feel character. Um, I left ah, it on. The character. And so I come in here and I'm feeling like shit. I feel awful, like probably depressed, awful thing. And I, I you know, I beat one off <laughs> to relieve myself before a stream. And then <laughs> it's all over the internet. And I, oh, the camera was on, huh? <laughs> so it was depression. Oops. It was part of it. It was definitely part of it. Like, obviously, you don't sit down in front of a, you know, it, it, why would you even do that? I mean, what an idiot. To do that, and even in a situation, but it was probably something so horrible, you know, another argument. There's many of those. So you days. said the, the camera was on, um, and then oh, you started the stream, saying, and then I'm safe did... in here, where I film myself regularly. Yeah, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, what the fuck, dude? This this whole thing did not need any context to it. It's much better without any context. I jerked off. Deal with it. That's it. It felt really good. That's what he should have said. It felt really good. I don't regret it at all. That was the best nut I've ever busted. That or that what he should have said. Or like you were prepping for a stream, but the camera was on, so it it just happens. Yes. So basically, I, I, turned I have on a question. Uh, oh, I'm, yeah. so, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm uh, sorry. I'm just yeah. trying to walk my through. <laughs> okay. Uh, what was the lead time between starting the stream? and uh completion because that's pretty fucking impressive <laughs> i'm just gonna oh, not man. long not long man <laughs> it was you know i would turn on the stream i call it the pre-stream roll or whatever <laughs> <laughs> no, 
I don't. I, I really don't care. I really don't the care. The pre stream really lore. And they, they, like, he didn't even understand why the guys are laughing so hard. He didn't even get it. Uh, <laughs> pre, the pre stream roll. The pre stream roll. The pre stream roll. Oh, oh my god. god. Oh lord. All right. So it's a normal thing. <laughs> no, it's not. I did, obviously, no. It was a yeah. it. First, we got the pre stream, then we got the post nut. Name for it, Phil. You no, got no, a name no. for it. The time that I run, that I turn on the stream to let people come into the stream. Oh, thank God. The oh, the, he's letting people come into the stream, huh? Oh, jeez. Okay. That's not a routine that's... I do every day. No, no, no. <laughs> well, here's the thing, though. He got caught once. Who knows how many times he's been <laughs> doing it before? He, who knows how many times has it happened? While you've been listening to the beautiful PlayStation 4 dashboard music, this dude has been in the background violently jerking his meat and busting nuts left and right all over the office. How? Who knows how many times this happened? I mean, Absolutely. it'd be a hell of a pre-show. I'm just saying. Like, you, so you, here's, here's you the thing. Probably, is, hey, hey, you can monetize, <laughs> as our friends from Geeks and Gamers say, you could monetize. Like, the of course, the rule of thumb is when you get caught doing something, even if you've been doing it a lot, and you get caught once, you just say that that one time is the only time you've ever done this, right? Right, right. Of course. You could, you could, you right. could start. You could start a wicked OnlyFans, <laughs> Phil. I'm just saying, a <laughs> wicked OnlyFans. <laughs> oh, I. Jeez. And, and, and here's the narrative. Here's the truth of the matter. First of all, it took place on YouTube, not on Twitch. All right. There was maybe, <sighs> maybe 20, 30 people there when it happened because I just turned the stream on. But it doesn't matter. Right? And it was right, you know, laptop in front of me or whatever, <laughs> camera's on, so embarrassing. But what's the narrative now? Dark Side Phil masturbated in front of thousands of people, including small children, on but the he, internet, I mean, yeah. on Twitch, and didn't get banned for it. But it, oh, well, oh my God, it doesn't fucking matter if it was on Twitch or YouTube. You jerked off. Tens of, well, millions of people saw that because people clipped it. So it doesn't matter what the narrative is. When did that I mean, happen? Well, was... CNN rehired Tubin after he jerked it in a freaking <laughs> Zoom meeting. So, right. I mean, oh, yeah, that guy. Can happen, Doc. You know? Th thankfully, the camera was not panned down. That would have been Jeez. very, very bad. Thank God it was, you know, the angle that it was at. No one wants to see. Okay. It. Oh, and so right, it doesn't. Right, right. It doesn't show anything because I, I, I haven't seen it. And oh I don't no, no, no! It's it. just. It's actually like from the neck up, and it's kind of just like me tilting my head back and looking yeah, at the oh, yeah. uh, Okay. It. So it's, it's just this. My old, my old face. It's just my old hey, face. Hey man, that's it. There's been worse videos of, of prominent YouTubers with their heels above their heads, and uh, it's 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 been worse. But I'm the wow. one. That's that's sadly that's the association a lot of people will always have with me is that that's <laughs> that's how I became known on the internet in 2016. And, you know, all right. Well, all how right. am I ever gonna live that down? If ever if anything, here's what I live. Here's what I learned from it. That's gonna always, no matter what these idiots say about me, that's always gonna be my most embarrassing moment. I. All right, you, know, you know what? Hold on. I'm gonna give you some advice. All right. I want to give you some advice right now. You need to own it, and you need to have a a, a box of tissues behind you, and a, a t-shirt. As a as a fucking like, joke, dude. Troll yeah. them back. Here's well, the it. thing. Here, I, I, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. However, yeah. again, you have to understand something. We're we're joking about it. It's funny to joke about it and own it. But it actually, it's representative of, of a really bad time in my life. You know what I'm saying? Like it's okay. Depressing. That makes sense. Yeah, sure, it's sure. Depressing thing. My wife doesn't ever want to talk about it. You know, she she knew. Hey. I mean, think about this. She met me after, and really? she still likes me. She married yeah. me after that. So obviously, she's moved past. She doesn't want to talk about. It. It's like, why am I going to monetize Phil, the most Phil. embarrassing moment? Why why is this so traumatic to cat? I just don't get that. I don't physically understand that. Oh, you know. Be, be why why does she give a fuck that you jerked off on the internet in 2016? What does that matter? And also, when she was doing a Q&A the first time he unveiled her, she said it doesn't matter. She literally said it it's not a big deal. <laughs> Damn it, that would have sounded so bad. Yes. Uh, I was going to say beat your demons, but <laughs> in this context, Pretty good. Pretty good. by the way, I, I think the side scrollers released the beat your demons t shirt the day after this aired because, I mean, it's a good idea. Go for it. Shit. <laughs> and it had like the Diablo font on it because, of course, it's demons. Obviously. Very good. I mean, conquer your demons. Right, you know what right. I mean? Like that you you're like I don't want to I don't want to like go there, but it's like no, fuck that. Get, right. Like face it and and you know, conquer your demons. I got 
I, I didn't mean to make that pun. Uh, that was unintentional, but it was so good. Um, but but you know what I'm saying, right? I, I'm trying to like. You, you yes. say you don't want to go there, but like, right. conquer you're not the it, only person dude. Who said Own it. You're Own it. Own that person. shit. The problem is, again, when you focus on a focal point like that and that it becomes your end-all be-all, I don't want that to be what I'm remembered for. It probably but it, you will, will be. be. But I want people who come to my content every day to remember that awesome stream they had or that cool gameplay through that we did. I don't want them to think about the guy who, who had an old face beat off on stream. Like, it's so <laughs> stupid. And it's such a dumb thing that I've moved past. I'm not in that part of my life anymore. I'm so much happier now that I don't need to dwell on the past anymore. I don't need to think about that moment. It was stupid. And yeah, well, I don't I'll say want this. to be it there forever. If you're not going to monetize it, we will. Later yeah. tonight, the Beat Your Demons t-shirt will be available all <laughs> on the store. Oh, my God. <laughs> and the thing is, it literally was. I don't know if it's still on the store, because uh, how do I find it? Side Scrollers merch. Okay, but this is like over a year old, so I guess they, they switched it out. Unless they're, they're like us on TBS, where they never update their merch because they're assholes. No, there's no Beat Your Demon t-shirt. Nope. It doesn't exist, but there's a bunch of SS t-shirts. If you ever wanted to be a part of the SS, now is the time. You can get a unisex long sleeve shirt in white, black, or red and be a part of the SS like you've ever wanted to be. Is, no, no, that's terrible, <laughs> I'm, I'm dude. I'm totally good, totally good. I, 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 I thought it was really funny. All right. Oh, my goodness. So th there's a few things that I want to circle back um, back with you on, Phil. Phil, are you still there? You look like you're frozen. Did we, did we lose him? And yes, he is frozen. So here he's gone. I'm just going to skip over this. And then Keemstar shows up. A magical a magical goblin appears. I mean a dwarf. I mean a gnome. It was just so was funny. Great, I, could, I couldn't stop laughing. And I... I, just, I geez. All right. Uh, All right. Keemstar is joining us. Hello, Keemstar. Oops, How are you? Nice Keemstar. to meet you. Good. It's nice to meet you. You guys have uh, absolutely crushed this. I, I think you've done more than a fair job uh with phil here and especially like how difficult he is but i with him talking about the fifty thousand uh dollar offer and the lol call podcast i just really wanted to get on to say my piece because he's just dishonest he and I, I think you guys experience this right he had an opportunity to clear his name so easily and he just put it off and made excuse, made excuse, made excuse, and then goes on to bring up some other situation with hookers and some other lies. And it's like every content creator has been lied about, right? But in True. this one issue where he could just prove his innocence so quick and he doesn't take advantage of it, then it's like, yes, Keemstar, thank you. Thank you, sir, bald retard. Thank you. It's exactly spot on. And... <clears throat> I told him. Also, I, I love the bald retard meme. Dude, go on Twitter and look up the phrase bald retard. 90% of the time, it has something to do with Keemstar. I fucking love it. It's just making me more <laughs> sus. Uh, like that, it's making me trust your story less that you're not like, you know what? I want to fucking prove this shit. Like, yes. I'm sick of these lies. Let's prove it, you know? Well, I'll say this. Look. Keem, we appreciate you hopping on. Phil has rejoined us. Phil said he didn't want to be on the show if you were on it. Um, so I'll say, can we invite you back on after Shh. after we're done with Phil? Sure. Uh, sure. Absolutely. Okay. I, I appreciate it. Okay. We're, we're going to bring Phil back on. We don't want to make it, things weird. So uh, appreciate you understanding, man. And uh, you have the link. I'll DM you when, when we're ready. Okay, buddy? And here we go. This is, uh, this is proof that, that Craig is a stand-up guy. Because he said, you know, Phil didn't want Keemstar to be on. So they sent Keemstar on his merry way when when Phil was about to come back, which I think is super fair. And what happens afterwards when Phil agrees to have Keemstar on, it's because Phil agreed to have Keemstar on. Keem, appreciate it, man. All right. Uh, boof. All right. Phil, welcome back, man. Sorry, we had a second. We wanted to, he had reached out and he wanted oh, to know, share I his side him. of it. So, so we, pre we appreciate you running with it, man. So, um, so let's continue. Everything okay? I don't know. I have absolutely no idea what just happened. My whole internet went down and came back up, and I don't know if it was my ISP or if I've just been DDoSed. I oh would my god! Of course, me at this point, of course, um, because it it has never happened before for your internet to go off and then come back on. It never happened. This is the first time in recorded history where this happens. I've never, to my knowledge, my IP address has never leaked this one. But if it happens again, I guess we kind of Yes, know. and he did blame this directly on the Comcast detractor. 
which is something that is still interesting to me. I still wonder if that guy was legitimate because there was a guy who posted a bunch of stuff on Kiwi Farms. I guess not a bunch of stuff. He posted a couple of screenshots from some kind of a dashboard um, that looked kind of legit, but still smelled a little bit fishy. I don't know exactly how to explain this. So it's still up in the air whether or not there was a really a, a real genuine person working for Comcast that would actively fucking with his internet. But I'm more swaying. You see swaying? I'm more swaying towards believing that it was true than believing it was false. But I'm still split on that. I'm not completely decided. Right? Well, I hope I, that's I, not I the case. I, but of course, I mean, uh, he did show some proof that looked pretty interesting. And I, by he, I mean DSP. Because he, he showed like a screenshot of his... Um, his admin panel of his modem, where basically his networks were changed to uh, Pandali was better. That's when, one of the names of the network. And the other uh, the other name was Greedy Piggy. So I, I don't think he would have done those things himself. So I, I definitely believe there was some remote um, influence, to say, to say the least. No, that's not either, because that's a lot of work for me. I have to yeah, Pandali was hotter, my bad. Pandali was hotter. And I, I watched that live. I'm so glad I managed to catch this live. It was so much fun. Because he was talking the whole time about like, man, somebody's fucking with me. And somebody's like messing with my internet. And all this time, he was buffering every like 10 seconds. It was the best. Call my cable company then to get it fixed. It's not right. pretty. All right. Uh, let, let's let's circle back on some stuff here. Because I, I don't think, I genuinely don't think that Dark Side Phil knows how to change his like, uh, SSID. I don't think he knows how to do that. So I, I would believe there was an outside interference. Whether or not that was the same person that confessed to doing it on Kiwi Farms, that's a different topic. But I, I do believe somebody was involved that was not originally involved. Um, and Did I miss anything? Things... Did I miss well, anything? Yeah, th th there's, there's a few things that I feel like we kind of went through and i feel like we need to we need we do need to kind of address and i want to circle back to like the business expenses because we talked about the 5k we talked about oh, what are we going to say about and, that but we didn't really get an answer right like mm -hmm. and th this kind of all ties in together the idea of like as somebody who works online i've been doing this for a long time as well i understand that spending 5k on anything is a lot and the idea of a mortgage being a business business expense that's not necessarily true the, you, you mm -hmm. can you can from a Again, tax perspective know. you can well allow me to tell you because from a tax perspective you can you can uh take the square footage of your office space in your house and you can that can be deductible right and you can use that as a business expense uh you can take the internet in, and do those things but but your entire house your entire mortgage is not is not something that can be a a business expense right so with yeah with i didn't think that was of, legal i don't think that's legal right it's not it's it, it's not the way it goes um but with all that said i feel like there's with with all everything lined up right there's still a lot like are you spending that money on food or what are you spending that money on on it because you can pay for you know meals out and things like that as, as long as you mm -hmm. technically talk about business um you know and do, i've done that hundreds of times where you go out you go out to a meal and you say well we're gonna have a business meeting and it's just you and your wife talking about whatever right um it's you know it's just one of those things but Walk me through once again, like mm -hmm. what, what do, what are your month to month business expenses? What are you paying for as a streamer who works 12 hours a day? Kind of walk me through this. Uh, well, okay. That's, that's a good question. I'm glad we're back on this because we didn't have an answer the first time around. And I could tell you what I'm doing now. I mean, we're talking, what people are referencing is something from like 2019, I think, right? Is that a tax return for my, bank well, uh, uh, but, but I want to know about today. I want to know about today, like your expenses that you have on a month to month basis. What what do those look like? Are there are your okay. expenses? You know what? How about this? Give me one second. Sure. Do your thing. Yeah. Oh, my God. Should be fun. Look at uh, him. And he goes he goes over and finds a piece of paper that says bills on it. And he just like shows it to the camera or he doesn't even show it to the camera. He goes to get a piece of paper that has his bills written on it and he just reads it out. And it's like, yeah, it's well, mortgage, um, insurance, um, um, I got Amazon Prime. All right, oh. Phil, Phil is off, and he, it looks like I wonder what he's. This, this could be a surprise. We'll see what happens. I, I'm an old man. Okay? Yes, I 
do something that no one else does. I use paper and I write on it to track things. No one okay, else now, does this, right? Now, hold on, Phil. Before <laughs> I, before you show anything, I want to Oh, I'm not sure. going to show. I'm going to okay. read some things. No, I'm not okay. going to show anything. <laughs> I'm going to read some things. What I'd like to do is kind of go through here because people say every Dude, day, yes. Um, there, there's a stream a couple of, I guess, weeks from then when he actually shows a piece of paper, but he, like, conceals most of it so you can't even tell what's written on it. And he uses that as proof crazy man and i know i'm sure it's guaranteed if he was accusing somebody of something he wouldn't let it go until the most pure proof was presented to him the best proof ever but when he has to provide proof yeah we don't give a fuck here's a piece of paper that says bills on it your money go that's what you're, essentially that's what you're asking right yes the money go yes that's where does the money go phil I will, where does the money go uh-oh where does the money go? People have been asking this for since like probably 2017. Where does the money go? Where does the money go? Where does the money go? Are we gonna answer this finally? Well, actually, no. Tell me. No, you're good. You're good. you're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. Keep going. Um, here we go. I'm gonna go through this. I'm not exaggerating. Line for line, this is what I'm paying this month, and this is all, where all my money goes plus a few other things. Okay, and this is literally all of it. Great. Um, I have a subscription to Hulu. It's $10 a month. Okay, yeah. Nobody is putting you up on a cross for this. Okay. Definitely. We're, we're not talking about $10 per month, okay? Not a business expense. I'm just saying this is where our money goes. This is everything. I'm yes, serious. we need everything. Okay, sure. Um, I have my internet. I have two internet lines that I pay okay. for. They're very expensive because they're unlimited internet. It's, you know, it's not yeah, an hourly. Really, it's so like you have to crazy. pay a ton of money. Every time he starts talking about his internet, I just start laughing because it's ridiculous how much money he pays for internet. Internet. In 2024, internet is about as basic as having running water and electricity. It's internet. Come on, you can't fucking do without it. And this dude pays like, what What was it? $400 a month? At least. $400. Um, Hourly? Who pays for hourly internet? No, not hourly. I said unlimited. Oh, I, I thought you said, that, okay, you go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry, I meant to say data rates, not hourly. My Got bad. it. Data rates, you know, how much you use. Okay. Um, uh, I have my dues here where I live. I, I live in a, a community. The do dues. A condo facility community, so it's the dues, monthly dues. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, if you want to know more about the internet, check out the TBS episode with Profit. Uh, because he goes in depth about the internet and a bunch of other technical stuff that most of us couldn't understand, but we do have that episode. Go check it out. I've got, let's see here. I mean, Game Pass? but but you're you're reading off personal expenses, and that's no one's business. Right. I'm reading it's off the, everything. I don't care. I'm reading well, off everything, so you know where my money goes. Because this is the only, this is what they want. They want to know where all my money goes. I'm gonna tell you right no, now. No, I, I don't think. Yeah, that's... Oh, uh, Adam shouldn't have interrupted him. I wonder what else is on that piece of paper. It's a case. I think it was about the five thousand dollars, the business expenses that they were like, "What is going on with this? Like, how how is this the case?" So you're you're now giving them more shit when you're you were very uh, seemingly very nervous about giving anyone any more information that isn't public you know what i mean I, mm. i'm just trying to before you continue it just mm. seems like this is counterintuitive for what where you have uh said your your stance is on like revealing public information so like well i'm not going to tell you any any account name i don't know yeah no i i understand yeah i get that but still it's still personal stuff that it's like all right well uh, yeah, I don't understand what that's not what the subject was about. Right. It was about the business expenses, right? These aren't th these aren't business expenses that you're reading off. This is personal stuff. Well, some of this. Well, some of this would be considered business and some wouldn't, you know, like I was just going to say game pass. That's but what's you know, the that's... point is, is kind of where I'm leaning. Like, what what is the reason for giving us your personal expenses? Because people want to know where my money goes. Uh, you're asking your, me your business, what? your the business okay. expense money. That's what, they, that's what they're me... talking about. Specifically... That's what I've seen that on the internet. That's what I've seen that people are upset. There's the the business expenses, the five thousand, and then like I don't know where this like half a million thing. Okay, so so here Adam should have uh, let him talk definitely, definitely, because the guy was about to read through a bunch of expenses. Of course, it's gonna be the generic shit, and none of it would make any sense, and none of it would amount to much. But at least you got to hear him out instead of just interrupting him and then going on and on about like whatever. Is or what that even is, but there's some some questions. Half a million. 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't. Know. I, I heard. I, I've seen. I didn't look into that much because I, I have multiple shows that I'm. I do, and you know, I couldn't dedicate too much to uh, learning about you. So uh, I figured I'd come and just hear from you. You know, but like, uh, that's from what I've seen. It's the business expenses that. That's what people want to know about. Like, where? How are you spending that much money on the business? Here's the thing. If you were to nickel and dime every single transaction I do, when it comes to like video games and stuff like that, I don't think it gets close to that. I think it's, I, I don't of know course how not. it's divvied out in those, you know, in that report or whatever they but use. You for the should. I don't know how it's calculated. You make this money. You make this money. You spend this money. You should know everything about the life cycle of this money. Like, how does this not make sense to him? God damn it, what the fuck? You know, I'm not my bankruptcy attorney. Because, like, I think about my money. And I think about, okay, I can I can open up my bank account app and I can see every single transaction that I've done, every time I've withdrawn money from an ATM, every time I've went somewhere and paid with a card. I can see all of that. And that makes sense to me because I know where my money went. And now this dude, you're, act, you're asking him, okay, so how do you spend so much money on your business to the point where... We got this insanely inflated figure on the bankruptcy statements, and he doesn't know anything. And that doesn't give me more faith in him. That doesn't make me believe him more. It just makes everything more blurry. It makes it more confusing. I'm not my CPA. I know it's done right because I went through it with the bankruptcy judge. And of course, the only answer to this is that he's lying. That's the only answer because there's nothing else that makes sense. Line by line. So is I that, know is it's that where that, that mm -hmm. uh, large number comes from? Is the bankruptcy number like uh, how much debt you had? Oh, I, I, I'm just, maybe. I'm maybe. trying to take a. Oh, I felt. I mean, uh, you you know, right? I mean, if that's what you're, I don't know the total number of debt. Seems like a pretty big moment in your life that you would you would. Yeah, know. exactly. I, I didn't. I never. Exactly. You know. Such a such a cataclysmic thing that could happen to a person, such as a bankruptcy. You should know everything that relates to it because it relates to you. You're being held accountable by the state about what the fuck is up with your money, dude. It's not a milestone. Oh, man, I'm so happy I got half a million dollars off my back. I'm not oh, saying no. it's a it's a good milestone. No, but... it's a horrible milestone. So I want to move past. And for... But wait, 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 wait. I thought we were celebrating the bankruptcy. We called it a successful bankruptcy that the trolls were jealous of. Literally, he said people are jealous that he had a successful bankruptcy. And now he's talking about it like it's the worst thing to ever happen to him. Get and get that the government got a lot of debt off uh, a lot of debt off his back and he doesn't have to worry about it. You know, but in the past, but I don't know, maybe that's what that number is. But again, yeah, he legitimately said people were jealous that his bankruptcy went through and now he's back on the track to success. I don't know. <laughs> I, I can't go line item by line item. I don't know. Uh, it's from years and years ago. Well, technically, and technically, he should be held accountable, even though he wasn't because they just let it slide. But I guess they know better than I do. I don't even live in that country. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, guys. You still there? Yeah. Uh -oh. Okay, you're froze good. again. You're good. You're good. <laughs> you're good. Okay. Now we're getting random panic because the guys didn't move. Well, they call oh. me Mr. Freeze, okay. so. Okay. But yeah, like, I can't, I, you know, I don't have that. I don't know. I, I would assume, this is my assuming. That that data includes anything that's considered associated with the business or not, I don't know. Uh, again, I can without going through because I'm not going to go through all of it anyway. That would be exposure to talk about all that stuff. I feel um, okay. <sighs> A couple things that no one knows. I guess I have to. I don't want to do this. Okay. I, I really. This is this is when he is like super cornered when he knows it's all over and it's not even completely over yet because Keemstar is yet to join the call. Oh man, this is such a Wow. Wow. It's crazy. But yes, here we get into the couple of things that people don't know about, which is fantastic. And he also doesn't tell us anything we don't know about. But it's great because I'm pretty sure at this point he tried to make himself cry and it didn't work and it really fell flat. That would be exposure to talk about all that stuff, I feel. Um, okay. A couple things that no Deep one knows. Side. I, I have to. I don't want to do this. I really don't want to do this, but you know, I really want it to start crying. Phil, you do what you do what you're comfortable with, man. I think that's the biggest thing. Is I really don't want to, like, let me go put the paper away. I'm gonna tell you. Oh, let me go put the paper away. 
Oh, man. He was so ready to cry. It just didn't work. The waterworks didn't come out. Okay. The move didn't come out. All right. I don't like... I don't want to talk about shit, but I... I... And he tried. You could see he's trying so hard to cry. He's trying so hard. And he's... Like, if he had cried, it would be the most humiliating moment of his life. I would feel, like, humiliated by extension that I even watched this. Because he's crying in front of... What is it? Like, 2,000 people watching him? and two grown men that are talking to him and he's just like crying but he couldn't man you have to it sucked well, he just couldn't it didn't don't. work you, you said you said like 30 minutes ago you don't give a shit and it doesn't make a difference so yeah, pick pick a point pick pick a place to stand yeah i know i don't either, know. either you don't give a shit and you're gonna move on and let the haters hate you no matter what because there's nothing you could do or try to appease them it's not, it, you can't be somewhere in the middle where you're I like, I might appease you. I might Adam, actually do this. I'll think about it. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, Adam, I don't care one about one or that. the other. I care about you guys. I care so you're about sick. my viewers. Oh my God, I care about right. these neutral parties out there who put so much nasty <laughs> stuff about me. At least have a place to listen and hear my side. You know, that's what this is. And I appreciate you guys so much for giving me this time. I really do. I'm sorry I'm getting emotional now. Thinking. Of yep. Look at this. Dude, go on Pick Pick Go. Look up the phrase getting emotional. And you're going to find a bunch of clips of him crying. Because whenever he says this, he starts crying. It's almost like his cue to cry. And he wanted to. He really, really wanted to. It just didn't come out. You know, but, you know, all right, I'm just going to fuck this. I'm going to do it. All right, I'm going to tell you a few things that no He doesn't tell you anything, by the way. No one knows without specifics, okay? So it doesn't really uh -huh. put under the bus or anything. I've been involved in a few different, you know, legal things over the years. That doesn't mean anything. Legal things does not describe anything to me. Dollar alert. Big ups. Nine hours stream. Is this a record? No, dude, it's not. People forgot I used to do 12 hours. I used to do more than 12 hours, which is by like 12 hours and 10 minutes or something like that. No, it's not. I've been doing a lot of long streams. I just didn't have time in the last probably year and something. So, yeah, it's been... It's been tough, dude, but I'll, I'll try whenever I have time. I'll try. And this is the, the 6K special, the part one of the 6K special, because thank you guys for 6,000 subs. Of course, I'm going to try and do something special when I have the ability to. And today I did. So, yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Joe, for the super chat. And thanks, uh, Redbird, for the one month, dude. I've been involved with medical issues, my own medical health, issues. My wife's. All right. And it's not stuff I should talk about with my audience. I don't want my audience to come to my stream and be like, I want to give you a tip because I found out that you have maybe a medical issue or something going on. That's none of it. No one's business. I don't, I, you know, I said to my, let me explain. I said to my audience, if you're going to come to a DSP gaming or a DSP react stream, please come support me because you like me and my content. Oh my God. He's trying to cry so hard because like his voice is completely different. He's just not like the tears are not coming out. It's so weird. Okay, don't come support me because you want to stick it to the haters. I don't want that pity party. Keep that, you know, you know, let them celebrate whatever. Come and just support me. But yeah, that's that's a that's a good statement, Phil. But are we forgetting that the whole vest streak, the vest was a symbol of that positivity, that no matter what happens to Phil, his fan base is gonna rally against it and is gonna defeat it. So yes, effectively, the vest itself was a symbol of people rallying against the trolls to show them that your community is more positive than their community. For my content, if I tell you stuff that's going on that, that are expenses, you know, medical expenses, legal expenses, you know, and it's, ha I mean, again, I'm not going to tell you, I, you know, I have some medical conditions, okay? Look, and, then, 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 look, like gout? This is your form. Debt. Like, this is your form, Phil. Right. If, if there's some sort of like medical condition and there's a really cool moment when he when he freezes here. Well, then, 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 yeah, he freezes right here. And this is the frame for a couple of seconds. Take a look. <laughs> this is your form. Yeah. Like this is your form, Phil. Right? If, if there's some sort of like medical condition that is that is causing you to live you know paycheck to paycheck or and look again dude how can you say that this was uh like a setup to make him look bad craig is leaving the door open and is basically saying hey phil if you got something going on man that is costing you a lot of money 
that is making people confused about where your money is going, you have the ability to confess right now to say that and clarify that and make everything clear for everybody. Like Craig was genuinely a nice guy for giving him this opportunity. For stream to stream, it, you, you pride yourself on transparency. I can't think of anything more transparent than just than just telling your audience you have you know uh, something going on. And like you know what, people are people, and they'll understand that. Like if if God willing, I came out and and you know I had cancer or or something bad happened, I would. It's not that. It's definitely not that. Okay, I don't want to make right. anyone think that the, I'm trying to. Again, this is not a pity party here. Right. It's not that. It's that I have. So a, a few chronic lingering things that come back over the years and then, you know, yes, there's a medical cost. There's deductible, of course. You know, you have to pay to a certain amount. Uh, in a nutshell, I've been involved with a few legal things and I've been few, involved with some medical things, okay? And essentially what's happened over the years is I can't really pay them because of the financial situations that I've been in, okay? And did you pay any of those, did you pay any of those things as business expenses? I, uh, again, I believe, and I don't know if this is true or not. Isn't it true that certain... Okay, you know what I, I, I just thought about? What if, and that's completely implausible, but, but bear with me. What if Phil had such a, a situation going on that once he revealed it, everything made sense? Like once he revealed the situation he was going through and like all the stuff he had to pay for, now all the lies made sense. Well, this is what I had to lie about, you guys. This is why. And now it makes sense. And now all the trolls are just like, dude, yeah, I, I get it now. I get it. He was going through all this stuff. I sympathize with him now. And of course, like I, like I said, this is completely implausible. But imagine if it happened. Imagine. Alert. This is just like with Jaha, both times cornered, crying and claiming an ailment. That time was, I'm an alcoholic. This time, it's medical conditions. Yeah, and nobody knows what the medical conditions are, but it's probably nothing too bad. Since he's still going strong, and he's not complaining. Yeah. Stuff is covered, or is, is, is a tax deductible? I don't know. Again, because, I get uh, asked this by tax guy. I do, he says, your warrior, tax, warrior. Your tax guy was asking you this? He said, I just got an email the other day that said, Medical things and legal things equals needing more than 150k a year. Now, guys, just accept this explanation, okay? All well, right. yeah, it's it's a bad explanation, but then again, I don't know how things uh, work out with the uh, the medical things specifically in the United States because I've I've heard a lot of things about their medical things and their legal things. So he might be throwing a lot of money on on stuff like that, but nobody really knows what that is. And I, I don't really understand why he doesn't want to just tell people, especially if it's going to put him in a more sympathetic light. I don't know. Or it's either he's lying and he's trying to distract everybody from him lying about everything else, or there's genuinely this deep medical problem that he's dealing with that is, is stressing him out or whatever. We need your breakdown of what you paid for pre- Which again, this is Phil Burnell we're talking about. He over-exaggerates literally everything. This guy convinced himself that he has basically every kind of medical condition that is in a medical book. So I don't really trust him at all. I trust him as far as I can throw him. If you had any medical expenses, if you had any of this, we need all this to file your taxes properly. That doesn't so, sound right, dude. I don't know. Again, again no, listen, please. Now, here's the problem. I don't want people going over my tax guy. You know what I mean? He knows what he's doing. He, he is a I mean, professional. But he, but he clearly doesn't because you've been in tax <laughs> it issues. Sound like it. No, like, no, no. <laughs> my tax issues are not or from before this shit. They really are. I used to have tax issues with an old account. You might be getting the mm -hmm. stories mixed. I used to have an old guy who fucked everything up. This person I have now has fixed everything. Okay? okay. I'm not throwing anyone under the bus. This guy is great. And I want people to understand that. Okay? But basically, okay, I have a few ongoing things. When you don't have credit anymore okay but you still owe some things can get erased some things can't all right by a bankruptcy or whatever and i'm in a situation where i have ongoing costs that i'm on payment plans for mm -hmm. okay not oh a credit card i can't get a credit card i have no credit my credit sucks because i have bankruptcy no my I, I have payment plans so for example i incur a legal cost of several thousand dollars okay phil you don't have to pay that today you could pay it slowly over time here's your payment plan Right? With the IRS, I owe them back taxes. Phil, we understand. 
as long as you're in repayment status, you're paying this amount every month. This is, you know what I mean? So oh my God, my yeah, whatever, dude. I'm embroiled in all these ongoing things behind the scenes that absolutely no one needs to know about. Medical stuff, legal stuff that I'm going through, and tax stuff. And where does your money go? And then just think about this. I'm streaming six days a week full time. I'm stressed some days, you know? And then I got sure. to on my stream and hear, you blew all your money on mobile games. I, my wife and my... And but bro, you literally did. You literally fucking did, though. You literally did. And you're fucking... Like, this... Like, listening to this, I'm feeling like he's gaslighting me right now. And I know so much about him. I'm embarrassed to admit how much about him I know. And I feel like he's trying to gaslight me and it's almost fucking working. God damn it, you fucking did though. I mean, you're feeling so much stress with this. You going fucking on. bitch. And, you know, we didn't go on a honeymoon when we got married. We haven't been on a trip since 2019. We haven't done anything. So, yeah. You're denying it yourself. Do you still have your original notes file from the interview? Uh oh no. No, I don't have that. I don't even know what, what laptop that was on. I think it was on this one, but I just don't have it. And it wasn't really notes. It was just kind of my commentary when I couldn't say anything. So yeah, it was uh, it was pretty interesting. I get it. We we understand, which is why you know we talked about therapy. We've talked about all these. I under right. we understand, mm -hmm. right? We we've talked about all these things, but you you still haven't like you still haven't answered the question. I'm going to ask you this really directly, okay? On a month to month basis, mm -hmm. how much money are you spending? on wwe mobile games and or any other mobile games on oh my god he gave him such a good opportunity now is the chance man like how many chances are you gonna get just admit to it admit to it you just came off a segment where you were a big victim a bunch of legal stuff a bunch of medical stuff just just admit it admit it a month a month baby. bro big ups for the long stream you are the man heart hey big ups uh detractor al matter big ups for the 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 two dollars dude i appreciate it basis are, are you spending on itunes or any sort of mobile device okay just, a, just a okay straight let's see the answer here dollar amount. This, and this, whatever this it is month, it's okay okay do you want okay this month this month i have spent probably 10 to 15 dollars it's still way too much it's still way too much i know i'm being an asshole it's still way too much because you're, you're living paycheck to paycheck. You're living day to day. Those 10 to $15 matter. They matter. You could have bought yourself something. I don't know what you can buy yourself for 10 to $15 in the US. But in the shithole country I'm from, you can buy quite a bunch of shit. You can buy food for at least a day. At least a day. For one person, maybe even two if you're smart with it. You can buy yourself to, uh, potatoes. You can buy yourself rice. You can buy yourself beans. You can eat that shit for like a couple of days straight up. That is an honest answer. If you're if you're really as desperate as you like to to frame yourself as being, yeah, that money is just way too much. And by the way, it wasn't on WWE Champions. Okay, well now you're opening a whole other can of worms because there's a different game that you're spending money on, even though we know you're already spending money on one. And the different game is probably that Street Fighter 6, uh, or at least Street Fighter mobile game that just came out around that time. Okay, what was it on? Just curious. Well, here we go, because you know, if I tell you, they're just going to blow it up. They're going to. No, okay, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it then. Don't worry about it. If it's, if, if, they are, if you they say already it's a... said it's a okay. new game. It's a Street Fighter game. Ah, okay, the new Street Fighter one. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Is it good? What, what... It's all right. It's one of those. You build a team of fighters. They fight against each other. It's not. You don't even actively oh, play. It's like, it's like a RP, tap RPG. Crap. Similar. Yes. Yes. Okay. And I, I, you I know, have... that was just for experimental oh, purposes. Oh, oh, oh. I'm not. Original question was: What are your five thousand dollars per month business expenses on your tax? Yes. Return? How did we get here? How did we get here? Um, it's a slippery slope of how we got here. I I can't even like trace it, because at some point Craig wanted to go back to this and actually answer it, and then DSP went and got a piece of paper that says bills on it, and then he started reading out a list of bills like Hulu and his mortgage and a bunch of other stuff. So no, we we never really got the answer of what are your actual business expenses. Because when I think business expenses for a business like Darkseid Phil, and I would believe I know Darkseid Phil's business pretty closely because he has a daily uh, shareholder segment 
And I would like to think that I'm a shareholder to him because I fucking watch these segments, I guess. So I'm familiar with the amount of money he spends on his business. And the most he would do is buy a couple of games a month or maybe play a game off of Game Pass, which is a paid subscription service that costs no more than $15 a month. And it's not a lot. It's actually not a lot. It's nowhere near 5000 It's not even near 1000 Matter of fact, the amount of money that he spends on his business is impressively small for a business, considering that all of it has to do with himself just filming himself in front of his camera or green screen or whatever, because it's like an online type of thing. So we don't really need to invest too much money in it. Outside of like an initial investment, for example, to buy like a, a computer that you can stream off of reliably, buy a capture card, buy a microphone that is decent, or maybe buy a stream deck or something like that on the side. Right, that is a good investment. That is a good way to spend your money on your business. But he doesn't need that because he all, all he needs to do is just spend that money once and then not worry about it for like the next five years at least playing it a lot i'm playing every once in a while you know i spend a few bucks spend a dollar and get a bunch of stuff you know so i spend a couple dollars here or there and of course i will get destroyed for saying that that i spent 15 dollars on it you know i will i'm gonna get destroyed for it so but let me let me let me kind of move this along we've been going for a long time and thank you again phil for your time mm -hmm. appreciate it we're going we're approaching four hours i got i got a few things that i that i want to make sure we hit on before we go sure. um uh, before we you know can move forward so um number one um Keem is here, and uh -oh. Keem has said that he will be respectful, and and uh, he would love to talk. I think this is a tremendous opportunity to bury whatever hatchet or whatever it is you guys have and, and mend a fence. I think this is a <clears throat> tremendous opportunity. Are you open to that? If you want him on the show to talk, I'm not doing business with this man under any circumstances. Yeah, you establish that. That's fine. That's not yeah. what he's saying. Yeah, I'm not trying to broker a business deal or anything like that, but but... If, are you open to talking with him? Now? Oh man! I'm curious what he even wants to talk about. I am not being on his stuff. I'm, I refuse. Okay. So. Well, let's. Okay, I'm gonna so, bring him so, on. Right? Wait, wait. So you're okay with him coming on to talk? As long as he's not gonna sit here and insult me, or do, you know, you guys have already asked me so many questions. I don't want him right. interrogating me too. It's your no. Show, that's not his. this. That's not. Right. I mean, Kim. Uh, you know, I, I, he's watching obviously, so it's like that's not the case. We're we're the interviewers. He. He, he, and he just said it. He agrees. Yeah, he agrees. So, so look, we're going to bring him on. And, and like I said, I think this, this is not a tremendous opportunity for friction. This is an opportunity to build a bridge. So let's do this real quick. Keemstar, welcome okay. back to the show. I, I have to give credit really to everybody here. I've been hearing it since I clock in at work. Also, Hell yeah, I brother. To watch it live because it's funny to hear you rage at his boringness game at Talk Me. Oh, yeah, the fucking... <laughs> No, please don't make this the, the new gimmick of me being fucking bored and angry at how shitty his podcast is. Please, I just can't, I, I, I can't bear with it. At some point, I'll just stop watching them. So please don't make this a new gimmick. Uh, but thank you, two second guy. Big ups for the five, man. And I, I enjoy doing these long streams because I get to do a lot of stuff and talk about a lot of stuff. I just don't have the time to do them. I don't have time to do it, dude. But here, uh, as I was going to say, I want to give credit to everybody. For Craig and Adam for being so civil with DSP and asking him politely if he wants to have Keemstar on, which I believe is a very professional thing to do. Um, for credit to DSP for allowing his nemesis, Keemstar, somebody who he obviously despises, to be on, on, the, on the podcast, on the show as well. Uh, I gotta give him credit for that. And credit to Keemstar for acting in a very civil and mature manner, even though I know he can go off the rails sometimes. He chose not to do this, and that was the right choice because otherwise he would have made himself look like an asshole and he would have validated everything that DSP says about him. So credit to everybody involved. How are you? Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate it. And Phil, thank you uh, for letting me on to talk to you directly. Um, I do mean what, I'm, what I said here in the chat, that I will be respectful. Uh, I'm not here to interrogate you, but... I, I desperately want to represent my point of view in this situation between me and you. Um, because what I've heard listening to this podcast or this interview or whatever you want to call it is you describing problems that you have in your life, um, paying bills, 
being harassed by, you know, your detractors or whatever. And I actively went out of my way to solve major problems in your life. And me and you are not friends. In fact, before I put together this business opportunity for you, <clears throat> me and you were fighting back and forth. It started mm -hmm. with you on your podcast out of nowhere um, reacting to me retiring when I turned 40 and you said, well, that guy's evil and you know, all these horrible stuff and blood money, whatever you said about me, because you don't, you don't like my show drama. And many of your detractors uh, picked up on right away that the reason why you don't like my show and you don't support me is because we covered the, the fapping uh, situation in 2016. Well, that, that's that completely the really untrue. I, uh, uh, dude, you covered first, it fairly. Go ahead, respond, Joe. You covered it fairly. You didn't even really harp on it. One of your guys contacted me behind the scenes and said, do you have anything else to add? Do you want to be on the show? I was like, no, you covered it fairly. I don't think you were unfair like, at all. What, not... what else do you have to add? You just jerked off on a live stream online. You just take the L, dude. What else are you going to do? You're going to start explaining yourself? You're going to start adding context to it? No, it's as simple as it gets. You jerked off. The camera happened to be on. Big misfortune. And we got to roll with it. Uh, big ups to control salt delete for the membership dude case thank you because i don't think i was unfair either you know no, not at all who told you that that's bullshit that's you want that's the detractors that's making what, shit up uh -huh. I didn't everybody shit. everybody jumped to that conclusion why you had such a hateful uh you know response to me retiring was because of that because no. we have no previous history phil correct I, i've i've never talked to you the only interactions i've ever had with you is just covering this one story about you. Mm -hmm. And just so you know, but, this but but Keem, here's the thing you're missing out on. Phil doesn't like you because you're successful at what you do, and you're kind of contemporaries. Like Keemstar and Phil, they started out around uh, around the same time, and Keemstar became way more successful because he's completely shameless. He doesn't care about anybody and he's willing to do whatever it takes to make some entertainment and get a bunch of views out of it which i respect on the on the landscape that is internet entertainment i respect keemstar even though i shit on him quite a bit uh i'm not a fan of him i i definitely don't i'm not a big fan of him as a person but as an entertainer the guy knows how youtube works and he's willing to do whatever the fuck it takes to make some drama so he has content and that's something that I can respect because I have enjoyed quite a bit of his content. This is a great example of why I wanted to bring you on because and he really has he has no problem with being the asshole. He has no problem with being controversial. He has no problem with shitting on people and being shat on. He has no problem with dissing anybody, which is something that I can respect. A, a miscommunication somewhere along the lines, right? Clearly, so you know, uh, Phil thought Keem started this. Keem started thought Phil did this. All right, so are we? We're in a better. We're in a better place, which is great. So to move on. Oh yeah, that that, that whole yeah, thing we, with the with the guy on Roos, on RuneScape that he called a pedophile. He accused him of being a pedophile. Like he fucking ruined his life for a bit. That was terrible. That was terrible. That was some of the most despicable shit ever. Um, I see a clip. I'd like to make that clear. Phil's stream. He's reacting to my retirement and he's saying I'm this horrible, evil person, da 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 da, and he doesn't support me. And I responded. Hold on, hold on. Came, came. Is that, is that true, Phil? I don't like, know. I'm sure I've criticized him. I don't know specifically wow. what he's talking about. You were okay. streaming for nine hours. I'm glad that you can be on and we are like friends. <laughs> Only I'm not your friend. Okay? I'm a streamer. You give me money and that's it. <laughs> sure. Pastor Miller says, kiss, kiss, boo-boo. Oh, well, well, he got a message for you, too. Let me tell you something, brother. When I hold a man's penis, I tell you... Let me tell you... Oh, well, well, well we, we don't get to hear what he said. Well, I guess he's just holding a man's penis now. Well, there we go. He's, he's busy right exactly now. He's occupied. I'm going off of memory, but it was something Which... else. <laughs> My favorite thing about the Eric Miller channel, let's go, uh, let's have a very quick derailment. Uh, Pastor... Pastor Eric Miller, uh, and his his last video, his last video is literally called "Bro, I still hate my wife." Why are Christian, uh, why are Christians habitual line steppers? 
and that was his last video in two months. I don't even know if this guy is like, what, where, where did he go? His last community post says, What's up, gangsters? I know I've been super quiet and my uploads have been sparse. Uh, for that, I'm very sorry, bro. He actually says, bro. If you watch my latest videos, thank you for doing so. ML? What is ML, guys? Uh, you know, I am writing a book. Oh, he must be writing a book right now. Because I don't know what he's doing. I don't know what his links are. So he got a Spreaker podcast and he got a Twitter. Uh, but I don't think anything really is happening over there. Oh, yeah, that Twitter is, is uh, yeah, it's gone. Uh, and then we got, well, yep, we got. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, ML is much love. Thank you, uh, Sorrowful in chat. Uh, so we got Eric Miller presents you in HD. And the latest episode is hip. <laughs> Broken like this interview rolling on the floor laughing. Wait, who, who did I break? What did I do? I did nothing to Eric Miller. I actually did nothing to him. He doesn't even know I exist. That's why he, he didn't even acknowledge that I exist. Meerkat Mob. Who? It's literally in the context of he doesn't even know who I am. So clearly I did nothing to the guy. Uh, except challenge him to a rap battle that he did not accept. Which means he is my bitch. Because I win by default. Because he did not accept. Anyways, the last episode he did was called episode 396. Think, I, I think I hate my wife, exclamation. No, really. He, he doubling down. He really hates his, li his wife. I agree with that. Sure. I, I hate his wife too, I guess. I don't even know. Along those lines, the clip gets sent to me by multiple people. Um, so I respond to Phil because the only thing I know about Phil is him being a wall cow, right? Him on stream begging for money to oh, pay the rent. songs yeah well i did the songs but i don't think i don't think he acknowledged the songs and he also was on a podcast that i'm a part of but i just wasn't there that day uh it was my idea to have him on tbs if anybody is asking it was my idea my explanation behind that was that i thought he was just a funny guy and he had a different perspective on dsp since he was you know the bible guy he was using bible verses against dsp I thought that was very interesting, but I just happened to not be able to be there on that day on TPS. So he doesn't know who I am quite literally, even though he was on my show and stuff like that. That's all I know about him. So I responded to him on Twitter, which I thought really was funny. pretty clever um, in gaming terms, terms. And I explained to him that like, we are roughly the same age. We've been doing YouTube for like 15 years each. We started at the same time and I'm retiring now and I don't ever have to work again. So I have completed this video game of YouTube. And I said to Phil, you're still on level one. All right. You're still on level one and you're restarting, you know, level one over and over again, like a video game and you're getting nowhere. You're still oh, man. At look at DSP's face point where you're bagging people on. <laughs> look at this face. Oh my God. This is hitting him right into the soul or whatever is left from it. It's it's like, it's such a, oh my God, a knife in the heart. Dream to, to pay your bills and whatnot. And I thought that was a good response, right? Even though I am talking trash and you know, we, we got a little drama going on for Twitter and whatnot. You know, I thought that I was actually giving you good advice. And you know- well, did, did, Yeah, I was gonna say that-, that um, Is that advice or is that more like- cause I, in, That, in that tech felt form, like a-, a a backhanded smack uh, right. with, you know, internet Twitter battles, you know, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. But it's also advice, right? My point in those Twitter yeah. videos was that Phil needs to do something different. <sighs> and look here, Craig and Adam argued in DSP's favor. They basically said, hey, Keemstar, yeah, you gave him a bunch of advice, but it was kind of backhanded. You know, you insulted the guy a lot. You know, imagine you're playing a video game, you're on level one, and you try the same technique over and over again, all right? And you're dying, and you have to restart the level over. Like, you're never going to beat level one, and that's the situation that Phil has been in. Right. And, uh, uh, Phil, what are your thoughts on that? Do you, do you feel like there's any truth to that, or do you feel like that Keemstar is out of his, you know, out of his way to uh, kind of make you look a fool? Uh, well, first of all, you know, the best way to give life advice is to, you know, 
Say it in an insulting way, for sure. I mean, that's very makes everyone very receptive to it, correct? You know, right. sure well, do a fair nice point, but slab, slap it. Let him let him finish, game on Twitter. But that that was a response to DSP's initial diss that was not warranted, because all that happened was, and let let's give it some more context. I'm actually willing to let the the whole thing play. So we got DSP Keemstar uh, retirement. Can we can we get that? Yes. Perfect. We got a aqua teal clip that is exactly three minutes long. So now you're gonna get the full context behind how DSP found out that Keemstar is retiring and his diss towards him. The dirty troll has started tonight with a, a super chat saying your homie Keemstar. <laughs> He's not my homie. Announced his retirement today. Do you see YouTube offering retirement plans down the line? Absolutely not. And by the way, he announced his retirement yesterday. And the vast majority of the internet actually celebrated. <laughs> it was hilarious. How that guy, you know, was making a living so long when it seemed like the consensus what everyone hated him on. I don't really get it, but I guess that's how, how life works. Kevin has now done a super chat and says, what do I think about Keemstar's retirement? I don't. I never watched a single piece of Keemstar's content during the time period that he made it. I don't care about him. All I know is that he is one of the original people who basically was a rumor monger, drama monger, and or person who caused a lot of personal pain for people so that he could get a buck. You know? Let's let's air everyone's dirty laundry, sometimes not even confirmed just rumors, on YouTube for my own personal benefit. Yeah, but wow. that's that's literally what TMZ is doing. That's literally what paparazzi are doing. This is literally what tabloids are doing. Why not have this equivalent for the internet? Because that's what Keemstar is doing. He's taking everybody's drama and making a show about it and telling everybody about everybody's drama that is publicly live on the internet. I think it's well, fair game. Not, right? So, you know, there, there's some sometimes you hear that a YouTuber is hanging it up and you're like, man, that's sad because this is someone who has a great legacy, but, you know, I hope them the best in their personal life. And, uh, and then there's sometimes when you say, oh, someone's retiring. Oh, nothing of value is lost. Oh, Kevin... Has to be a dollar fifty. So do you think it, it? Do you think Keem's detractors are painting him in a bad light because he's producing honest work in journalism that exposes the dark side of YouTube? Let me put it this way: I'm sure that's part of it because personally, being an, a recipient of that kind of bad spin on everything that I do, absolutely, I could say I guarantee you some of it is that. But I mean, it's been well documented firsthand that the guy has literally, time after time said things and done things that concretely hurt people that were not true speculation or things that he claimed he vetted as a story and the story's not true and then instead of yeah in this case if you're going to be bringing up stuff like that you better have a couple examples at least one at least one because otherwise you just sound like you're just spreading a bunch of hearsay and that's just not how it works. If, especially if you're going to try and fight somebody who is apparently themselves spreading hearsay. Apologizing, he instead has to go into like defense mode. Oh no, that was a credible source and blah, 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 blah. He doesn't care. Essentially, the reason he does the shit is to get ahead for himself. He does not care about the well-being of anyone involved with the stuff that he does. He's a pretty messed up individual for the fact that he gets ahead by ever other people's misery. So... I, I'm not going to feel bad for that fucking guy. Kevin Bernstein tipped me, uh, did a $2 super chat. He said, sad to see Keem leave. He was here since 2009, old man. Yeah, well, I've been here since 2007, so. <laughs> so fuck him. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just, you're never going to get me to say I'm sad to see that guy leave. Someone who literally his entire career was stirring up drama and hurting others to make a buck. You will never hear me say sorry. I'm just, I cannot not be honest about it, you know? And if, if the one thing that he ever said about me negative was the stupid, you know, the incident, and it wasn't a big deal. He didn't make a big deal about it, and that's fine, I guess. I'm just glad that I basically never got in his crosshairs. I was never big enough or important enough to get into the guy's crosshairs. Then again, I never really did anything horrible that he would try to, like, you know, say shit about me, I guess. I never, there was never enough drama for me to be a part of drama alert. You know what I'm saying? Um, and that's a good thing. Well, there we go. There we go. I'm going to try and find Keemstar's response. So meanwhile, let's just uh, keep watching this. Um, is there some truth to it? Yes. Okay. But here's the thing. If you have a criticism of me, then criticize me fairly in a way where, you know, maybe I have a chance to have a conversation. Instead, you just go to your platform and you say something nasty about me on there. I'm a tiny little guy. Okay. Oh my when God. When I say something on my stream, who hears it? A couple hundred people. Yes, my detractors then echo it. They 
extrapolated all over the internet. Boom, it's amplified, correct? But I'm the little guy. You are a big guy, Keem. You're huge. You have a giant reach on the internet. Do you not understand that the stuff that you say and do has repercussions for everyone around you? You're, you you seem to be someone that in here you you're not so oh my god here again we talk in generalities we give the guy like a ted talk we give him a pep talk we give him the the dad talk but again nothing concrete we're just like oh keemstar you realize that you're doing like bad things to people i guess self-aware you don't understand that when you say something like that now i have to live with that shit for months on end, I get, ah, ha, ha, you're on level one. Ha, 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 Phil, level one. Yo, you've been for 15 years, you're just on level one. Do you think I need that? I already have enough shit in my life going on. So much stuff. I don't need Mr. Big Time punching down on me, which is what you do. That's why people don't like you, man. I didn't like, see you not understand that? I, I didn't see it that way. I saw a clip of you talking all kinds of shit on me. Yeah. Like, unprovoked and i just responded talking shit back but all speaking of which i found the response shout out to uh, the decepticron my dude my boy who actually has a whole video about their beef so you can go check out the whole beef video about um dsp and keemstar it's very one-sided because dsp gets bodied every time but it's interesting so here we get um dsp's response and then we got keemstar's response almost immediately after because keemstar is the type of guy to just bust his phone out in the middle of his kitchen and just record a video about it to keemstar and he would make his own response video me and you have to have a little chat it's recently come to my attention that you were talking shit about me on your stream that's right somebody donated money and asked you your thoughts and opinions on Keemstar's retirement. And you said, you know what? I've never watched the guy. I don't watch Keemstar. I never seen a single Keemstar video. Then you went on to say, all Keemstar does is lie about different creators. Just slanders them, puts out nothing but fake news. Something along those lines. Thought that was strange because I thought you never watched any of my videos. Also, I can remember a time where you were actually begging to come on my show. Bagging? Yeah, I do remember that. You were begging to come on Drama Alert. Was he really? Did he really want to go on Drama Alert? Don't you remember that one time that you sat down at your streaming computer and, you know, you were looking at a little hub and you were fucking, you were going to town <laughs> smacking that sausage, right? Come on, Bro. Keemstar, you're making this sound much more sexier than it actually was. Come on, and dude. everything else and, you know, grabbed a little tissue, cleaned up the mess that you made, and then you know- No, nah, he didn't grab any tissue. None of that happened, apparently, allegedly. Notice that you were streaming live. <laughs> oh, I forgot. We we're gonna say allegedly about anything. Oh my god, I slandered him so much during the stream, man. I was supposed to say allegedly every time, and now I didn't. I opened myself to a massive lawsuit that's gonna ruin my life. God damn it. How could I do that? <laughs> yeah, we ran that story on fucking Drobler. That was fucking hilarious. So allegedly he masturbated, okay? You fucking beat off right in front of your fans. No, that's allegedly. So yeah, I get it. I get why you hate me because we covered that story. But there's a deeper reason and, and why you hate me. Me and you have been doing YouTube for about the same amount of time or gaming entertainment, whatever you want to say, uh, for the same amount of time. And I'm retiring, all right? I'm retiring with fuck you money. Never have to fucking work again. And you... Having the same career, you know, doing the same thing, you know, online entertainment stuff. You're still begging for $10 donations and $20 donations to pay your electric bill, to pay your fucking rent. All right. I get it. I'd hate me too. <laughs> yes, would oh, what a hater, man. What a hater. Purebred hater. I, a real recognizes real. But then we got another one, apparently, because it just, this shit keeps going. I get it. ...with him. Keemstar would make a response video criticizing Phil, saying that he was forever on... So, okay, wait, 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 wait. So, uh, DSP's response, this is October 27, 2021. The fact that you responded to punch down, to punch down, you see, immediately were the victim. Immediately. He is big baller until somebody questions him, and then he's a little bitch. Uh, the fact that you responded to punch down at an internet nobody, 
proves what I said about you rings true and struck a nerve. Or you would have ignored it. Your wealth, quote unquote, has had no impact on your well-founded insecurities. Do humanity a favor and stay gone. Oh, you see this this little guy is fighting back. Crazy. Punching down at it. And he actually got 178 likes on this. Man, hating on Keemstar gets you a lot of engagement. I should call him a bald retard immediately. You know what I'm going to do it right now? Twitter.com. Let's see if I'm going to get suspended again. I'm not even going to do this on the on the burner account. I'm going to do this on the main one. Um, Let's say Keemstar. Can we do at Keemstar? There we go. Uh, what should I say? Should I just just say bald retard? I guess. Let's let's try looking up the phrase bald retard on Twitter and see what comes up. Uh, the actual phrase. And there we go. It, uh, immediately Keemstar. Immediately. Then we get this guy who is like a Ben Shapiro avatar. And we got drama alert. There we go. Bald retard. Check. Confirmed. Uh, there we get skip a little bit more. Skip a little bit more. Uh, drama alert again. Then we got a, another drama alert. Then we get oh no, here we got uh, we got somebody calling Turkey Tama Ball retard. Okay, that's that's something else. We scroll down. Okay, so we nothing here. No Keem Star here. Well, I guess the meme is dead, you guys. Wow, it's crazy. The meme is dead. Then we get J.K. Rowling is a transphobic Holocaust denier in a bald retard. Oh, yes. We got a J.K. Rowling diss. <laughs> Who else did we get? We get a... What? This is like a Manchester City diss. I interesting. Here we got... What? We're dissing Garfield, the movie? I'm very confused. But anyways, let's, let's just continue. Keem at Keemstar, you're um, with a you are. Uh, bald retard, LOL. That's it. There you go. And I'm gonna get myself banned again, live on air. So th this is the fantastic content you, you tune in for. Internet nobody proving that DSP was right and had struck a nerve with him. Dark side fail, sir. I'm gonna have to call bullshit. You just accused me of two things. One, punching down like you're some type of victim or something. You were literally talking shit first. Yeah, two, it was. You were literally, like, when you start talking shit first, you can't get punched down because you were already throwing punches. So what the other guy is doing is just responding. Basically saying that you struck a nerve with me. No, both are wrong. I'm very simple. If somebody talks shit to me, I talk shit back. Yeah. It's entertaining to myself and it's entertaining to my viewers. And it's not just entertaining. It gets engagement. It gets people tuning in. And even though people might be tagging him and calling him a bald retard, they're tagging him regardless. And the algorithm doesn't care if somebody is calling you a beautiful, long-haired stallion or a bald retard. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's just numbers to the algorithm. And the numbers, the higher they get, the better it is. And Keemstar understands this. So he doesn't give a fuck how many people are hating on him. As long as they're thinking about him. As long as they're tuning into his podcast or whatever the fuck show he's doing. So I figured I would leave by giving you some life advice. See, you're a gamer, all right? I'm also a gamer. Okay, so this is, this is the iconic one. This one got a bunch of quotables from it. And the thing is, is life, everything you fucking do in life is a game. And at this game of life, I've beat the game. I beat the game. I use some money glitches, but I beat the game at life. You, Phil, you're still on mission one. And you can't get anywhere. And you're rage quitting. And you're starting over and restarting and restarting. I mean... A decade ago, you were on stream begging for $20 and $10 donations so you could pay your rent. It's a decade later, you're begging for $10 and $20 to pay your rent. You're restarting mission one. You're trying to use the same tactic over and over again, and you're dying, and you're having to restart the level. If you want to win at this game of life, you're going to have to fucking do something different. Now, I know it's an ongoing thing with people telling you to go get a real job. But you probably need to get a real fucking job. <laughs> this was the final response to DSP for this time. But the 
So okay, so this was the final response. Big ups to the the Decepticon. Go make uh, make sure to check out his video if you want the full story. It's a half an hour long story between uh, Keemstar and DSP, and in the end, of course, it climaxes in the. Oh, is it the interview? It's not. Oh yeah, it, there is the interview, and then there's a bunch more. So make sure to go and and see that for the whole lore, the entire thing. Also giving you advice. That's the way I saw it. Anyhow, after that incident took place, um, months went by, and this bothered me because I saw the solution the entire time that Phil needed to do oh, something but different. But take life seriously and not video games, okay, kids? Yes, definitely do that. Take life uh, at least more serious than video games, and then you're you might be on the right track, or you might not be. Who fucking knows? All right, I. I'm a person that recognizes entertainment. I really this is very really true. It. You got to understand, Phil, you have haters, you have detractors. So do I. But I have more. I have more than uh, Wings of Redemption, <clears throat> DSP, and Boogie combined. I have way more haters, but I'm still successful. And I still have new business opportunities. And I'm still making money. I was supposed to retire a year ago, and I'm still doing new stuff and, and being successful in this platform. Because I understand this business very, very well. And even though you have that hate, you know, they are viewers. They are your customers. The detractors are your yes. customers. The haters are your customers. Yes, yes. How is it that hard to understand? And they're more loyal than the people that give you money, that donate on your stream. The people yeah. that hate that you are going, way that you're more talking loyal. About? This is some of the, the most important advice DSP would ever get, and it's from a f person that he despises, but it's valuable advice. It legitimately could save his career. That's like and I'm talking about, like, because at some point, man, if you're going to be the Internet's whipping boy, at least fucking make some money off of it. At least, like, weaponize that shit so you can benefit yourself, because people are going to be making fun of you regardless. They're going to be dragging you regardless. So it's your choice whether or not you're going to take advantage of that in the way that the internet allows you to nowadays. That it didn't allow people before that. You can't pay for that shit. I mean, look at how many people are here. 2,500 people are here. I, it's just, it, it, it's, you have a legitimate fan base. Those haters. No, we, we even got mundane Matt in chat. Literal mundane Matt. All the all the superstars came out in full force for this stream. By the way, they're all in chat. I can't see the participants because it's a it's a chat replay from like a year ago. But yeah, those people. That even mundane Matt is in chat saying, "quote unquote," Keem is right. Don't like you are your fans, and and mundane Matt. By the way, he had one of the most embarrassing moments in internet. Blood sports history when everybody just cornered him on the kill stream and they were like, Hey, Matt, show us your flagging history. And then he shows it and he flagged everybody that he denied flagging. And of course, it's just like, Matt, no, Matt, no, it's an iconic moment. And somehow he managed to bounce back from this. Let's actually check out his channel. Uh, do we got a mundane Matt segment now, Matt? Uh, mundane Matt. Okay, Matt Jarbo, excuse me. Well, he's get what, what, what? Where's all the videos? Allow me to reintroduce myself. What the fuck are you doing, bro? My thoughts on the recent flagging controversy. What the fuck are you doing, bro? Oh, he's doing streams. Okay. Oh my God, he's doing like, oh my God, these streams are doing really bad. These are like a, a quarter of the DSP numbers. What is happening here? What the fuck happened to Matt Jarbo? What did he do? Again. Oh, yeah, regardless. Anyways. I want it to He's solve He's getting this. like a quarter of DSP's viewers. This issue for not just you, but Wings and Boogie. I looked at all of you guys. You're lol cows, right? Yes. More haters than like supporters, right? But really, they're all fans. They are all fans. They're all obsessed with you and watching your content nonstop. The solution really is to get the three of you to do a podcast. All right. Those haters are going to watch. They're going to absolutely love that these three guys have come together to make content. Now, 
between the three of you, you guys don't have the business sense to like really figure this out and make this thing actually happen. But I do. Well, that's the thing. Keemstar only has the business sense. He can put it together as we can see on the LolCow podcast nowadays. But he's got no idea how to produce that show, how to take advantage and harness that lol cow energy and transform it into pure entertainment. He just doesn't know how to do that. And I guess in this type of format, it's really hard to do because what you need to do if, essentially is you need to manufacture lol cow content, something that usually just happens by itself. It's organic. Lol cow milk flows organic if, or if you want to call it uh gold dust so it doesn't sound like you know you're, you're milking a human or something something you know you're milking a you're milking a human so and in keemstar doesn't know how to do it so he tries to to have a bunch of like contrived episodes where uh i i don't know what to do you guys let's just invite uh, uh ethan ralph on so he can call wings a pedophile for 45 minutes all right and you guys don't even understand how valuable valuable you are as individuals, as entertainers, because you look at the numbers and you're looking at everything and like, oh, well, I've fallen off. And, you know, that's the mindset that you have. Right. But I have a different mindset for each and one of you that you guys are amazing entertainers, but just not in the way. Of course, you if if DSP was in the equation, if he was a part of the format, things would go a lot differently than they're going currently. Because, well, it's DSP. He's the X factor. You want to be, right? You're local. He, he is the guy who legitimately is lacking in self-awareness the most out of those three guys. Legitimately. It's without a doubt. But there's so much value there. By putting the three of you together, and, you know, each one of you would own 25% of this podcast, all right? We never got to have this conversation, so I, I do want to have it now, even though I know you're not going to do it, all right? I would also own 25%. I would do the business aspect of it. I've had many success selling podcasts um, to exclusive deals with Spotify and other companies, multi-million dollar deals. Wait, wait, no, nah, come on. Okay, I think we're getting carried away a little bit. I think we're getting carried away a little bit with multi-million dollar deals for the Lol Cow podcast. Okay, okay, let's let's get back on earth the three of you together for this show i would do the business side of the things and i knew that all three of you would be in a situation where you didn't really trust me or you're like oh i don't know if this is going to work and you'd have a lot of doubts so i was just going to take my own money and and take a hundred and fifty thousand dollars give you each just to start off before we even filmed an episode 50 grand up front to let you know that i was serious and i believe in this concept and this idea now I call Boogie first. I instantly get on the phone with Boogie, all right? He loves the idea. He understands it. He gets it. He reaches out to Wings. Wings is down. And now it's time to talk to DSP. Boogie, the way I understand it, called you, contacted you. No, and man. No, nah, man. The first, the first thing you do is you talk to DSP. Because this dude is not a, a person. Like, you need to talk to him like, like you're talking to the, the Queen of England or something like that. This dude requires so much extra attention that the normal person doesn't, that it's insane. So first, first you gotta lock in DSP, and even if you lock him in, and if he seems like he's 100% locked in, there's still like an 80% chance he's not gonna show up. What's going on, right? He DM'd me on Twitter, and we had a brief conversation back and forth in DMs. And, and he told you that I wanted to do a podcast with the three of you, right? And of course, here right now, we get to see, and you just look at like Keemstar and DSP. You don't look at the, the rest of the guys. Uh, body language wise, Keemstar is walking all over DSP right now. He's absolutely like, like, Phil is just sitting there like he's being bullied, even though the only thing that's happening is just a, a perfectly normal conversation about their, their past discussions and relationship but man keemstar is like mogging this guy if you don't know what mogging is uh mogging is basically like being more physically attractive than somebody else like when you mog somebody you know it, it's a it's a it's a new thing uh yes but man. yes dsp is getting mogged all over the place i had no idea that's what you were trying to contact me about because we never talked 
but he said that there was this idea for a podcast, correct? So you so, did know. <laughs> so, so Boogie told you or didn't tell you? Boogie told me that he and, and Wings had spoken to Keem mm -hmm. and that Keem wanted to do a podcast with all three of us. No money or anything was discussed. He just say, you know, he, he wants to do a podcast with all three of us. I didn't know that's what Keem was trying to reach out to me. I, I said maybe that's what it was. I didn't know because I never spoke with him. Phil, hearing this, hearing this, and, Meerkat and Mog, the, uh, the business yes, opportunity. That, that's the new later. meme, I don't you even guys. Know still there or not, but, uh, what are your thoughts right now, given what Keem has said to you? And I, uh, I, I, I appreciate Craig for this, even though he's. It's clearly obvious that DSP is never going to agree to this. Craig is giving it another push so he can bring back the conversation. Because now the conversation could go differently because Keemstar is on the call. Thoughts? Like, yeah. what do you mean? Yeah, yeah just, you just as, as, he's, as he's laid this out. Like, lay, lay out your feelings based on what Keemstar has, has laid out for you. I have, I have absolutely no problem doing anything with Boogie or Wings. In fact, you know, I had the conversation with, with uh, Boogie back and forth a little bit more later in the year. Would he be interested in maybe doing a podcast with me or me behind his show or whatever? You know, whatever it may be. These guys, you know, I covered. I did a react about Wings last year about his documentary. Um, you know, that me doing a collab with them, just doing a fun podcast is not out of the question for the future. But your issue is with Keemstar and his business principles. Correct. Okay. So understand. So e even if there's an opportunity for you to remove yourself from quote unquote level one and and potentially have an opportunity further down the line to potentially sell the podcast to something and, and put 50 grand in your pocket initially, that's that's a 100% no go for you. Oh man. See this is all he had to say at all. All he had to say is, man, Keem, I don't like you. Even though the money is really good, I don't like you. I don't want to do business with you. So I'm, I just won't. I didn't know that was, you put me on the spot. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's what because we do. That's an interview. A, right? This is a discussion that cannot be just made by me. It has to be made by my wife, you know. Yeah, your wife. Like, let's not pretend that Kat has any say on the issue. Kat only has an opinion when it validates DSP's opinion. Let's be honest about that. I don't think Kat has any authority. I don't think his her opinion matters or it's being expressed enough to the point where DSP is even willing to consider it. She is just being used as a shield and as a validator for whatever DSP wants to feel at any given moment. We have to talk about it because this was the- Cat is not really a part of any discussion that matters. Or whenever whenever a discussion happens, which of course, this is what I'm, I'm speculating. I don't live in the Burnell household after all. Whenever a discussion happens, DSP has settled his mind on something and he brings that up and tries to convince Cat to agree with it so she can validate him so he can still do whatever he's decided to do. In this case, what he's decided to do is not work with Keemstar. I did. You know, sorry Keem, I'm gonna, can I criticize you fairly if I'm, if I'm reasonable and don't, you know, not under the belt, can we, can I be honest about you? Sure, you can say whatever you want about me. Sure. But um, I just want to represent how I feel about the situation. I'm not done, but go ahead. Okay. How much more do we got so, left of this? Oh, we got uh, less than an hour. Okay, oh. that's good. Team, you are someone who... <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is the best. This this is when it turns into a musical. It's just nobody else started singing, so DSP decided to stop it. But man, this is one of my favorite moments. Team, you are someone who... Uh, I know that Shinko did it very well. He, he got the full-on vibrato and everything. But um, I just want to represent how you I are someone who... I'm not done, but go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So, this <laughs> way, team, high school you are musical. Someone who, when you look at your issue, <laughs> again, I just want to represent how I feel about the situation. I'm not done, but go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So, team, you are someone who, when you again, look, I just want to represent <laughs> how I feel about the situation. I'm not done, but go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So, Team, you are someone who... <laughs> when you your history on the internet, it's very interesting. And I'm oh, actually... Man. Damn, I'm impressed. Dude, I, I can't make this into a song. It's going to be like three seconds long. You've done. 
You know, I, I can. I need so many clips, and I'm just too lazy to get the clips. There's people out there who get the clips already and do stuff much better than I do. Just go listen to Darkseid to flow stuff. He gets so many better clips than I can. It's just so much work getting them, man. I'm fucking lazy. I can't do it. I just can't take this shit no more, man. Like, I watched a documentary about you last year. You started off trolling people in Halo. I mean, okay. And you started off trolling people in Street Fighter forums and calling them all kinds of names. And it wasn't even a part of your content. That was just who you were. Anyways, uh, big up some malfunctioning skin suit for the membership. Meerkat, you are someone. Whoa. Ah, that was, that was disappointing, Sundar. Try harder next time. We need to sign him up for some vocal lessons. Uh, big up David H. For, for the attempt. At least you tried, man. And you turned that into an empire of money on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. That's so admirable. And if anything, one of the things you absolutely need to be praised for is your determination. You were shut down time after time. False copyright strikes. Real copyright. You know, real but wait, wait, why are we sucking Keemstar's dick right now? What is happening? I thought he hated this guy. And now he, we're like praising him. As he is not even paying attention. Look at him. He's grabbing his mouse. He's definitely just clicking on something. He's probably just browsing OnlyFans or something. He doesn't even give a fuck. <laughs> all kinds of shit. People wanted you. Yeah, look at him. Keemstar is completely zoned out. He's not even hearing all this praise that I'm sure he would love. Yeah, right? You're still there. You never gave up. Damn, sounds that's a success story. Phil, it sounds familiar, dude. Yeah. I guess. It's, it, it literally sounds like you. I mean, I, 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 yeah, that's that's like you, except he's like actually successful and makes money, and you're not, and you don't. <laughs> I don't it's really true. We it just like we just heard your story, and you, it, it is. Craig's absolutely right. Okay, now at the end of the day, all right, when you look at what Keem has done and what I have done, I'll probably be forgotten. I'll just be a fart in the wind, right? It's going to be a fart in the wind. On the no one's going to remember Dark Side, Phil, besides the guy who had, who jerked off on stream. <laughs> and, you know, probably this <laughs> WWE Champions thing will go away eventually, just like everything else. Who cares? Oh, my God. And now he's just detracting on himself. Why are you doing this, Phil? What the fuck? Because I guess he feels like everybody is against him, even though Craig and Adam are, are definitely objective and it's in their best interest to be objective. Otherwise, they're just ganging up on this one helpless pathetic dude that is sitting there in an undersized gaming t-shirt by the way like look at everybody else's outfit right keemstar is wearing a normal black t-shirt that seems like normal for him and fits him nothing weird craig is wearing a hoodie that says something something and he had a shirt underneath adam is wearing a shirt with a hoodie that's fine and dsp is wearing a shirt that just makes him look fucking weird as hell man i don't I, I can't even tell you why maybe because it's just dsp maybe it's just dsp can wear any piece of clothing and it's just gonna make him weird just because he is a dsp i can't explain it it's very weird anyways um where do we stop is he still singing keemstar's praises but Oh, no, he's talking about how pathetic he is. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm only going to be remembered by the guy, the guy who jerked off in some, like, WWE champion stuff. Keem, you know, has a big body of work. He's known. But when you look at wh how Keem made his money, okay? Again, I'm going off documentaries and things I've seen. I mean, uh -oh. Keem, you have to openly admit that there were a lot of things that you've done that you probably have no issue with whatsoever. You always feel from your perspective, because there's always two perspectives on everything, right? Holy shit, <laughs> Phil. I got to say, this is fucking rich coming from you right now, <laughs> yeah. you're, get, you're getting your information from the detractors that Keem has, and that's where you're basing this on. When this whole episode, you have been talking about how much shit your detractors have mm -hmm. made other people think about you. God bless Adam for this segment, because this gave me material for half of my song, They Were Right. I used, like, half of this voice clip for the whole chorus. Like, do you hear yourself bless right him. now? And also, of course, it's fantastic call-out. Yeah, you're gonna believe all the documentaries that are made about this guy, but all the documentaries about you are inaccurate and slanderous? Hold on, something doesn't make sense. Oh, indeed I do. That's the nature okay. of the beast. That's And now... The way the DSP reacts is like, yeah, that's the nature of the beast. 
Well, I guess that's the nature of the beast for you as well. When people hate on you on the internet and they make documentaries about you spending $100,000 of donation money, as I can, I can literally see it right here, into a mobile game app. So, yeah, I guess that's the nature of the beast, Phil. Every time you start crying about something, we can just say that's the nature of the beast. That's how YouTube works, man. That's, that's how, how YouTube works. That's how all this works. There we go. He debunked himself. That's right. Fuck. Well, that's how YouTube works, man. Man. You're right. So, from what I've he heard and seen about Keem, you know, I, I I call them a misery broker. All right? Keem, on a, on a day when you have a good day, it's because someone else is having a bad day. Someone else has drama going on. Someone else has horrible things happening in their life. It's your good day, man. It's time for you to blow that up. And then you interject like a like a shoe, shoe wedge. Zoop, get into that life. Get into that drama. Right? You got to be a part of it. And now, get them on your show so that you can pull this out to be not just a one-time thing, but now it's going to be pulled on for weeks and weeks. If there's something Phil, do you know the internet profit, at all? Do you know oh, the know. internet at all? Yes, I do. Do, do you see who's, who's successful on the internet? I mean... Yes. Yeah, I, I I would probably be more successful if I talk shit on people, but like I don't, and you know, like I do what I can because hey, that's just where I, I'm at, you know. So it's like you can't you can't be upset when people use the algorithms for their advantage, which he seems to have figured out. You're right. And at one point I was. At one point I was a really stupid, jealous guy. Man, oh, I feel okay. Like I'm out content that's not harmful to anyone. I'm just doing gameplay. I'm dicking around on the internet here with my viewers. And this guy gets over, and he's doing this drama content. People are saying it's hurtful. You know, you're right. And again, people are saying it's hurtful. He can't even have an opinion of his own and say, "Hey, Keem, your content is hurtful. I think it's hurtful." And instead, it's just people are saying it's hurtful. Like we're we're bitching out. The moment he gets to face his nemesis, which in this case is Keemstar, it's not Tevin. But he faces his nemesis, and it's all like all the badassery is just gone. Where did it go? Where what happened with it? At the same time, and now we're just having a shaky voice. We're doing like weird, like what high school musical level singing. Keemstar, you are someone who, and it's like dog. I thought you were tough like that. I thought you were badass, and now we can't even say that we have a a solid opinion on the guy. You, you can't even accuse them of being harmful. Have everyone has what's called a moral compass, correct? And yeah, it doesn't fucking matter. The moral compass goes out the window when it comes to entertainment on the internet. And Keemstar has realized this a long time ago, and that's why he's as successful as he is. You can hate him all you want, and I don't like him at all as a person. As an entertainer, I appreciate him because he's given me a lot of stuff that I enjoy watching and is fucking fun. You know, I've I've been talking. And DSP decides to be the bigger man. He decides to be moral side Phil, and that's why he's on fucking level one. Cause nobody gives a fuck about your bitch ass morality on the internet. Look at fucking Logan Paul. The guy scammed millions of people on a fucking crypto scam, and now he's in the WWE, getting who knows how much money, being on WrestleMania, being the United States champion. Nobody gives a fuck about the bitch ass morality nonsense. Stop jerking yourself over it. About this on my streams recently. Especially when you're not as moral as you claim to be, Mr. Burnell. I was raised a Roman Catholic. Because he's not even like a, a, a real moralist. He's not even like upholding the beliefs that he claims to have. He's just bullshitting. It's just performative nonsense. All right. I'm not religious anymore, by the way. So this is not like... I'm not excuse. religious anymore. I grew up with certain morals, all right, and values. And to me... If the only way that I can get over on the internet and make and get or, or just get over in life is by stepping on other people, I'm not going to step on those people. Well, okay, then stay on level one. Then eat l lunch meat sandwiches, Mister Morality. I'd rather be. The I don't guy think over that's what I don't think periphery. that's what Keem's doing when he's when he's making videos. You know, I, I and I I actually respect Keemstar a lot for keeping quiet during this point because I I know he could have gone off. I know he could have gone off because I, I, I've seen him go off on people and just like cut them off and go right into it. But he realized this was not the right moment. Like I said earlier, do not interrupt your enemy while they're being wrong. And Phil was being wrong right here. So they let him speak. I, I see yeah, D-Day Cobra. Shout out to him. I saw him in chat earlier, you know, and, and tweeted us out. Thank you, buddy. Uh, mm. He he talks shit on anyone. Like he he freaking, you know, he monetized the haters better than anyone I know. 
Right. Well, I've talked to him personally off off air, and he's a fucking great guy, and like has a good moral compass to me. I don't think talking shit about people on the internet somehow changes who you mm -hmm. are, right? As, as your moral compass. I mean, you drop you said moral compass, and it's like, come on, dude. Like, can I ask Phil a question? Making, yeah, go ahead. Absolutely. Uh, Phil, listen, all right. If if me running Dromaler is like a taking advantage of people's misery, right? Because the way I understand it, for how you're explaining it, is like uh, a YouTuber will get canceled and then I cover the story on my platform or, you know, you had the fappening. You know, the, the thing with these moral YouTubers and YouTubers who base their entire public image around being the moral guy is that inevitably they end up being exposed as something other than the fully moral, perfect person that they present themselves to be. And then the downfall is much harder than it would otherwise be if they didn't pretend to be like that. Like that, um, that Nick Green guy or something like that. Because, like, most of his videos are just calling people out for being problematic or whatever the fuck. And in the end, he's being accused of being a liar and a fraud and all these things. And it, it makes the downfall much harder than it has to be if you didn't present yourself like that. If you didn't package yourself as this moral person. Right? And I covered the story. like, in the end of the day, as long as you're producing entertainment that people enjoy, nobody fucking gives a fuck. ...on my platform that I'm making money off of other people's downfalls, right? That's the way you see it? Yes. Well, there's, there's people on YouTube that run documentaries on important things that happen on the internet. They're also in the same situation, correct? What do you mean by that? They're what making kind of money. Nope. They're making money on a newsworthy story. On so the internet. Like factual reporting of things that are happening, like a news network? Like, what do you mean? Of course. And then I inject my opinion on, on these stories as well. But there are YouTubers, right? They're, they're commentators. And then there's mm. commentators that do like documentary style stuff that cover drama on the internet. You're saying that Every single one of them uh, is accepting blood money because they're 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 voicing their opinions on what's going on. Well, simply well, voicing your opinion is one thing, Keem, but let's take a look at your history here. There's been oh no, okay, okay. If you're gonna choose this route, if you're gonna go on the let's look at your history here, and you're talking to Keemstar or you're talking to Dark Side Phil, you need to have everything written down point by point. You need to have all your proof in order. You need to have everything arranged perfectly. Otherwise, you're not gonna win. You're just gonna embarrass yourself. And this guy is going into this discussion and he decided to open this can of worms. Nobody asked him to do it. He's going into this with knowledge that he's vaguely remembered from some YouTube documentary that was made on Keemstar. Most probably uh, June the King or, well, June the King. But it's not going to go well. Because in this situation, you can be confronted. And if you get confronted and you cannot back up what you said, immediately you embarrass yourself. That's, that's it. In cases where you've actually staged stuff and extrapolated drama in situations where it didn't really exist. There's evidence of this. People have admitted Explain to that. Okay, there we go. This is it. All you gotta say is explain that. Okay, explain. Uh, show me the clip. Show me the post. Show me the footage. Show it to me. Show it to everybody watching this stream right now. And once you do this, it's over. If the guy can't show it immediately, it's over. It's just done. Explain yeah, that. Yeah, tell me, tell me more. I don't know. Yeah, now, now everybody wants to know. But the guy who's making the claim does not have the receipts. And now what is he going to say? Well, I saw it in a documentary about you. And he's, he's going to try and say this to take the responsibility away from himself. But you made the claim, Phil. You made the claim. Please. The documentary I watched last year, uh, but June the King made this one. Uh -huh. And I mm -hmm. guess there was a situation with a YouTuber. And I forget if he was a Minecraft YouTuber or another YouTuber. And, you know, originally he appeared. He can't, he can't even remember anything. Supposedly as an upfront, honest guest on Keemstar's show covering this drama. I think it was allegations that he had been with underage girls or something like that, okay? Come to find out the, it, later on, the whole, or at least part of it was orchestrated between the two behind the scenes. Like, I guess he wanted to get back at someone, his ex or or his current uh -huh. girlfriend. Okay. And Keem yeah, yeah, it's all, it not, not even Keemstar is like taking this shit. Like, okay, okay, you obviously cannot remember 
you're obviously just talking about some hearsay bullshit because there is absolutely no specifics. So thank you for your input, Mr. Burnell, but we're going to have to discard this one. Participated in that, that I, setup situation. I, I have no idea what you're talking about. That does there we go. That's all he had to say. All Keemstar had to say is, I have no idea what you're talking about because there's zero specifics in what DSP just said. And now DSP is left looking like a fucking idiot. Doesn't even sound legit whatsoever. I have no okay. idea what you're you talking about. You have the right about. to deny it. That's yeah. fine. You know what? It's out there. Just so you know, that's well, it's out there, man. But okay, yeah. Well, it, it could be out there, but you couldn't recall it. You couldn't bring any specifics to the table. So, sure, as, as far as it comes to this conversation, it means nothing because you couldn't bring anything to the table. Well, thank you, Phil. I just want to say, I just want to say, like, you participated in supporting a YouTuber, all right, that covered a story on my misery, right? If I supposedly did something wrong, you... Oh, dude, and this is professional, because Keemstar has been forged into these fires. Like, this dude has been arguing with people on the internet since that was a thing, and he knows all about it. And now he spins it around. He doesn't even need any kind of concrete information. He just spins it around. And he's like, okay, well, you're believing all this bullshit about me. How come? Watched and supported another YouTuber doing exactly what Dromler does. It's a good point. Well, like, and, and on top of that, mm -hmm. and just to kind of reiterate this, like, once again. And DSP ends up looking cucked as hell. He's cucked completely. Well, you're telling Keemstar that he has the right to deny that because he's saying it didn't happen. Even though you're saying there's a mountain of proof in this documentary, right? Mm -hmm. The same thing is being said to you right now about mm -hmm. your WWE legends and everything like that. And you. Oh, no. Oh, 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 oh. What did you say? WWE legends? I'm sorry, Craig, but this entire five hour interview has been um, dismissed and invalidated because you got the name of the game wrong. So I'm, I'm sorry, buddy. I'm sorry, it's over. You didn't have your facts straight. The right to deny it too, even though there's a mountain of evidence through documentaries online. Correct. But the, the difference came to respond to your point. Sorry, there's a lot of points that just came up. Mm -hmm. uh, the documentary is not just negative stuff about you. Okay, you understand? The documentary is actually covering your entire history. I've learned a lot of things about you that I find very admirable and very positive. Oh my God, and now we're back to licking his balls. What, what the fuck is with that? that it really did cover factually but what why did we why did we immediately pivot onto that like dude you've been talking about not liking this guy since you knew about this guy and now it's like whoa man i found out so much admirable stuff about you sir keemstar can i lick your balls please rise and all the stuff that's happened mm, tasty you know that, no, you factually how do, how do you know it's factual i'm just curious it's on uh oh oh man this get this is so good this section is so good on the internet so it must be because it's like every single point that he would usually make on the pre-stream and nobody would question because they would immediately get banned he makes it and then it immediately gets shot down it's 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 poetic it's cinematic this is cinema to me true I know, I, Phil, real quick, I mean, I see documentaries on DSP, but you on the show said half of the stuff's not even true. So right. I'm confused. Is the internet 100% trustworthy or not? Because when it's about me, it's all facts. Right. When it's about you, it's all lies. I'm, I'm confused. It's not all facts, and it's not all lies. It's, it, it, it's always somewhere in between, right? We all know that. We're not stupid. We're not born yesterday. But wait, wait, wait. If it's somewhere in between, why are you perpetuating um, information that is just half truth? Huh? I thought it's terrible when people do that to you. Why are you doing that to someone else? Is it because you don't like them? Hmm, that's interesting. Watch that documentary. You got to kind of suspend your disbelief. Say, hey, okay, believe it or don't, right? Make your own what? judgments. What? Based so you chose you to believe this believe. one when it came to Akeem? Yeah, because he doesn't like him. And you can go, oh, I'm sure you can go and check out the DSP reacting to the Keemstar documentary. And you can see how different his opinion is back then. I think that, that would be a great idea for a video or a stream. But I just don't have the time, clearly, right now. In, in, in a couple of particular cases, I'm not saying that that one documentary is the only thing I've ever heard about Keem. There's been lots of people who've 
That's what you're referencing a, a lot so far. So that's what I'm going on. Can we come to the conclusion that me and you both have a... Oh, this is the best. Now, this this is so good, and it's so funny, I cannot explain. Please enjoy. Bad reputation. We're controversial figures, but one of us is wildly more successful. Oh, I'm not, I wouldn't even say I'm successful at all. So, okay. like, yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, sorry, continue with what you were saying, okay? <laughs> Can we agree that we're kind of like the same the same type of stuff, but I'm just so much better than you? Can we just agree that? And then the dude, not only does he say yes, he even says, I wouldn't even say I'm that successful. It's not it's not only did he get mogged, he straight up got like he got alpha. I don't even know if that's a thing, but he yeah, um, um, oh my god, he got cucked. I think the way we've established this. Keemstar, continue with what- can, can we agree that I'm just better than you? That was basically it. Sure, if he had said this and DSP had agreed, that would have been the cherry on top. That would be perfect. Talking about leading up to this, you reached out to, to Boogie Wings and DSP. Uh, 50 grand on the table to start the podcast. Continue. So knowing how to help all three of them, all right? And then also creating a business opportunity for myself, right? You know, it, it is all these things combined. Um, and not only just helping TSP, Wings, and Boogie, and myself, because this is a brilliant idea, but it's also helping every single person that's in this chat right now. Yeah. It's also helping every single one of your haters, every single one of your guys' actual supporters. Everybody wants Love this you. content. This is a win. Yes. This is a golden opportunity. Because the thing that, that DSP fails to understand is that engagement is both ways and it doesn't matter it can be positive it can be negative it doesn't matter it's still engagement whether somebody's gonna uh, quote tweet you on twitter and make fun of you or they're gonna praise you it does not matter the algorithm sees it as a plus one and the more of those you can get the more engagement you're gonna get so and and hate is some of the best engagement you can get because it's super consistent and it's super reliable because people are not always gonna like you but if you give them a reason to hate you, they're always going to hate you. Much like what is happening to Phil. Knowing this and, and wanting to reach out to help you, I found you to be so incredibly difficult to work with. Boogie already contacted you and told you that this was about a podcast. I publicly tweeted, reach out to me, $50,000, and you ignored me. Then we finally start talking in DMs, and your response is, will email me because I want to set up a call. We're already talking in D DMs. On yeah. Twitter. Why can't we just jump on a call and talk right away? We're already communicating. Yeah, literally. You tell me to go email you. That's, mm -hmm. I, I, that is so weird from my perspective. If I reach out to the biggest YouTuber on the platform, um, uh, Mr. Beast, and I text him, hey. Okay, I, I disagree on this, Remy. So Remy in chat says a podcast with a cuck submissive Phil would not be as funny because he would agree with the felting and he would agree with being razzed and he would agree with be people making fun of him. But then you would see the contrast between him on his own stream where he is the alpha male, he destroys everybody, he got all the facts and logic and everything else. And you would see him on the lolcow podcast where he's just a bottom bitch for everybody and everybody steps on him and everybody makes fun of him and everybody gets over on his back so you would get that contrast that i think is priceless and i i hope uh well i don't hope i wish that happened but it did not happen sadly we got to get on the phone i got to talk to you about something i'm going to talk to him within 12 hours and this is a wildly more busy guy than you phil all right. And that's the biggest YouTuber on the platform. This is how content creators communicate with each other. We don't, oh, email each other. Like we have managers to do that stuff. We have lawyers to do that stuff. I have a team of people that will get in an email. I don't get in an email ever. I'm never in a Gmail ever. You know, <laughs> this is what are you talking about? It was so disrespectful to me. When I'm just communicating you in Twitter DMs, we're talking back and forth, and you're telling me I have to email you in order to get on a call. I was so confused by that. But I play along, all right? I think I, one of my people may have emailed you or something. I got a phone number. 
we set we set up a scheduled time when we're gonna call and we're gonna talk about this. And what is what is DSP even looking at right now? Because the whole time he's been looking straight into the camera. Well, I guess yeah, he's looking at his laptop where everybody's uh, everybody else's cameras are. So okay, I get it. And I call you during the scheduled time, and you don't answer the phone. And then I get a message back saying, "Oh, I'm sorry. You know, I was streaming. I told you I work at this time." Well, even if that is true and you were streaming, mm -hmm. that stream is not more important than my phone call and my opportunity. It's not. Phil, what do you think about that? Do you think that's accurate? You have a, you have an opportunity to put five figures in your pocket, and and you. <clears throat> Kind of give us your mindset there, because I... Dude, I've never seen this situation happen before than on this podcast, where you would have three dudes. Okay, let's take away Adam from this equation, because he's obviously done. He just wants to go and have some lunch or whatever. And he's, he's just finished. He's so over this. But we got Craig and Keemstar both trying to give this man $50,000. And he's just sitting there and refusing even though he needs it more than anybody else on that show I well, it's, don't it's all semantics agree. because who cares how you're talking or whatever first of all craig knows how to contact me he con hold on who cares how you're talking or whatever well phil does because he has a very specific way of contacting him and if you don't do it properly then you effectively did not send him a valid request for a business transaction or a business relationship so he will instantly turn you down so yes, Dark Side Phil definitely cares about that because to him the prestige matters. For him, treating him like a celebrity matters. It's important that you treat him with the respect that he believes he deserves, even though he doesn't deserve really, because he hasn't earned it. Contacted me to be on this show. It was pretty straightforward, wouldn't you say, Craig? It was pretty easy to reach out to me. It wasn't yeah. hard to reach me, was it? No, I emailed you. Yeah, it was easy. And when we we were able to talk back and forth pretty reasonably with no issue, correct? I don't think we ever had an issue, right? No. I think what we're hearing well, here is... Hold on. You you think Craig is is a, a big YouTuber, though? Come on. Look at this guy. Oh, no, no. I'm not even saying... Hey, it has nothing once to do upon with a size. time, buddy. Once upon a time. <laughs> it has nothing to do with size. This has to do with just being reasonable. If someone has a business contact line, said, this is the best way to contact me. Please do it. But instead, you go to your giant audience on Twitter and you just scream... I want DSP to contact me immediately. Fifty thousand dollars on the line. It's oh awesome. man, look at everybody's face during this. It's disrespectful. It's unprofessional. It's hostile. How is it hostile? How is it disrespectful? How is it unprofessional? Everybody does business like this. You. <coughs> oh fuck. Even us on our podcast, we just reach out to somebody on whatever is the easiest to reach them on. It's like, hey, we, we hit somebody on Twitter. Hey, you want to be on that being said on Sunday? Sometimes we would just reach out to them like two hours before if we don't have a guest for the day. It's just how it works with everybody. People make hundreds of thousands of dollars over like Twitter DMs. And Keemstar knows this because he's been a part of those relationships. And probably the other guys on the panel know this too. DSP is the only one who thinks he deserves to be treated with all this prestige and all this special treatment that he's never earned because he's nobody compared to all of these dudes so you you got you got triggered and were on the defensive immediately when you saw that from yes the exactly. team. you, you did he, not see that he was actually reaching out to help you know no, it, it, even not though at all i didn't even know people had to tell hold, me hold, my hold, chat hold. So, was happening so according to like what i've just heard you were talking shit about him retiring and he jokingly responded and, and kind of slapped you, a light a lighthearted slap with a glove, but said, you know what, I'm going to hook you up anyway. That's the vibe I'm getting. And you were stuck on that. What year was this, by the way? Just because I kind of have a... So this was recent. Last yeah, year. roughly a year ago. Wow. Okay. Well, I, I wasn't expecting that. I was mm -hmm. expecting a little, little further back. I mean, it, it feels like, Phil, you're you're in this, this time of, like, you're trying to find that way past this spot that you're in and i don't mean i don't mean to like s call anything out but it does feel like that's being stuck on level one right? <laughs> and, and it feels like i mean shout out to kim for like actually reaching out after you were talking shit like that's not that's that's not something that happens and if he was right. truly trying to help you out like that's that's kind of surprising I, I would well, if it, someone was talking shit about me and I had a, and I was as successful as Keem, I'd been like fuck this person. I wouldn't even acknowledge them. It's oh man, oh man, 
Um, now I understand because this is the first time I've I've watched this so thoroughly since originally watching it live. And you know, watching something like this live for five hours, you can never actually soak in all the information. Now I understand why. DSP's complete mindset was destroyed to this extent that it was during this podcast. Because, man, you're getting, like, three other dudes telling you that you're on level one and explaining to you. They're not just, like, insulting him or calling him names. They're explaining to him exactly why he's a failure. Meanwhile, they had, like, 2,000 people watching this. And the whole chat was saying, like, level one, failure, perpetual victim, all this shit. This this causes big big damage, big style damage. Especially as you especially to somebody like Phil who is not used to being out of his comfort zone at all. And this is like the opposite of his comfort zone. He is faced with his nemesis, a guy who he genuinely despises, and a bunch of guys that are not buying his shit. And for the last 4 hours and 18 minutes they have not bought a single thing he tried to sell them. And now he's like sitting here being like, damn, I'm fucked. And it, like somehow his brain, because he's wired the way he is, he's he's a huge narcissist. His brain tries to rationalize it. It tries to make sense of it in a way that protects him. It protects his ego. It protects his feelings. But it just doesn't work because there's no way you can do that. There's no way you can do that outside of the narrative that he chose to construct himself, which was, it was all a setup, it was all a scam, it was all a trap, so Adam and Craig could get themselves over on everybody, make a bunch of money, get a bunch of views, and they took advantage of me. That's the only way he could justify what was happening to him, because he was so hurt. He was so damaged by this. And I understand it. Hey, it was just some small time i don't remember because again they're not they're not just insulting him it's not like he was on the call with a bunch of detractors that would just say gout 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 and ww champions these guys are picking apart and telling him exactly why he's a failure and exactly what made him be in in the state that he is nowadays you chose that you weren't even successful in your own mind mm -hmm. but him talking shit to me isn't a personal thing right it's an opportunity for me to make a Twitter video and make some entertainment for my audience. Like, yes, exactly. Exactly. This guy fucking gets it. He gets the opportunity to get in a beef with somebody and make some entertainment. That's going to get people talking. It's going to get people retweeting and liking and showing up to streams and looking for a follow up. This guy fucking gets how entertainment is made. When, when I that's, go on the internet, that's how you internet right there. When I that's go on the internet, I am not thinking about, Will people like me? Will people hate me? I'm thinking, let me make a piece of content that people will enjoy watching, whether they like me or hate me or whatever. Let me make some piece of content that people are interested in. That's all I ever think about when I come to the internet is serving viewers. All right? Um, Phil, well, hold on. Hold on real slow. Phil, are you, are you okay with this? You know, I, I don't want... Yeah, no, oh my God. This is the an actual wellness check in the middle of a stream. It's like, okay, Phil, is, is is your butthole sore? Do you want to stop or can we keep going? Just with this conversation, you know, I mean, you came on to do an interview with me and Craig. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was a tough interview. You know, we've we dove deep into through throughout, you know, what was going on. And you weren't prepared for I didn't know that this is, by the way, very gentlemanly from from Adam. To just uh, to just ask him, you know, hey, are you, are you okay with this? Because we've been going for like four hours, 20 minutes, man. Keemstar would be on the show today. I didn't know Plus he was. Plus respect. Yeah, this, is, yeah. this is all just, just kind of happened naturally. This is the and internet. I, as, as the guest on my show, I just wanted to ask you if you're cool. Like, I, I would love for this to continue. I just want to make sure you're cool with it. I, I'm okay with this, but I mean, obviously, right, cool. we want to get back to the other topics too, right? I mean, we kind of yeah, <laughs> yeah. He got a he kind of got butt hurt because because uh, Keemstar stole his spotlight or something. Even though Keemstar made this a lot better than it probably would have been. Did his psychic damage after people he trusted broke it down for him? For yeah, a... I really do think he doesn't register their feelings properly. Oh, I I don't think uh, I don't think he does at all. I don't think he does at all, to be honest. He just does it 
differently, and that's what makes him who he is. That's what makes him special. Because if he was, then he wouldn't be that interesting. But you're right about saying that it was uh, people that he trusted. They broke it down for him. So he felt this sense of security, you know, because he kind of trusted Craig. He didn't know Adam, but he had some trust in him. And then they just broke it down piece by piece. And they told him, okay, Phil, so this is where you get what you got wrong. And he agrees with them. Every step of the way, he agrees with them. Whenever he disagrees, they give him a counterpoint that makes him agree because they are right. So, yeah, big ups, uh, Brazy Mamo Liquor. Hmm, I wonder what that is about. We, we I will, mean, we'll, sure, but I, I think that I think something good is happening here, right? We're, we're working agreed. through things. We're understanding what, what each perspective is. I understand your perspective, Phil. I understand Keemstar's perspective. Um, so I, I got a question for you, Keem. Is this, you don't mind if I call you Keem, do you? No, that's... Where's the album cover of DSP with that mad face rolling on the floor laughing? Uh, the mad face? Which one? I don't know. I don't, I don't even know if you're talking about an album co cover that already exists. I don't know. But uh, you can pick a face and all of it can be an album cover. As long as you put the, the parental guidance sticker in the bottom, everything is an album cover. It's fine. Okay, everyone calls me All right. All right. <laughs> all right. Is the offer still there for this to happen? I mean, if it feels open to it, I would say potentially, but not really. Right. You know, I, I took wings of redemption and mm -hmm. boogie two, nine, eight, eight, who were willing to work with me and understood this business opportunity. And I'm setting up a boxing match between the two of them. And I'm going to break the internet with this. All right. This is a, yeah, this is getting skipped. Cause this is just a promo for Keemstar's boxing match, but DSP has something very interesting to say about awesome it. Awesome opportunity for wings and awesome opportunity for Buggy. Um, this is going to be broadcast on May 13th and I'm going to be exclusive. It's going to be free to watch. Oh, shit. It's going to be free watch. So now we got the benefit of hindsight behind the, the whole, the whole boxing match. Uh, they did have it. Wings won very convincingly and both of them got, you know, a, a little bit of relevance out of it and they got to earn back some of people's respect for two fat slobs that nobody respected beforehand. They got a little bit of respect back. And, well, they started doing the Lol Cow podcast. I guess it, it's not as bad as it used to be uh, with their life situation, but still, the whole podcast is about their life situation not being very good, so it's kind of the whole concept of the show is around them not being happy and not being successful. So if they become happy and successful, then the podcast loses its meaning. And can I, can I ask a question? Yeah, of course. So is it, yeah. I am the guest, right? Of course. <laughs> I can't oh, and, and now he gets to ask like the stupidest dumb fuck question ever. If it's the thing I'm thinking about. Yeah. Keem. I'm, uh... And this is like a, it's like a, I don't know if a platitude is the proper thing to say, but it's a very vague abstract thing that sounds good in a movie, but it doesn't sound good in a real life situation because you need to back it up by some stuff. Uh, you know, again, I understand your reasoning here. You're saying I'm just making content people want to see, right? Um, is there any line that you won't cross when it comes to content that you think people want to see that you can make profit on? Do you have any kind of restraint? Do you ever feel that morally something is too far? Because I personally and many others hear this about this boxing match coming up. Okay, now let me give you my perspective. Okay. And again, yeah. he's going to like, this is the fucking most obnoxious thing about Dark Side Phil. Let's, let's be honest. He doesn't give a fuck about those fat idiots, Boogie and Wings. He doesn't care about them. He thinks that they're beneath him, and he looks at them as basically subhumans. He doesn't give a fuck about them. But now, for the sake of pretending to be more moral than Phil, uh, than, than Keemstar, he's going to pretend like he cares so much about their well-being and their health and all this nonsense that it's like, bro, nobody is fucking believing that. Nobody is buying that you're caring about it. Wings of Redemption, Boogie, two desperate guys. Like, you obviously don't care about these guys. We all know they're down on their... Because he, he took advantage of Wings having documentaries made about him so he can react to them and, and take advantage of the guy's misery. So obviously Phil is not a very moral person if we're going to go down to that. Fuck, they could definitely use some money. Right? We all know this. Yes. They publicly project that to the internet. They're both, technically, from what we can see and understand, they're kind of unhealthy. Maybe not. Who knows? But you only Agree. know what they project, correct? Do you not feel 
to having two people like this, overweight, possibly unhealthy, doing a boxing match against each other so that everyone on the internet can laugh at them could possibly, just possibly, be either putting them in harm's way or maybe be considered morally reprehensible because of the repercussions no. that could happen during this match. No. Do you not think they're adults that they can make their own decisions, though, Phil? Yeah, literally. Those guys agreed to this because, number one, they're going to get paid. Number two, they're going to get clout. Number three, they're going to get a, a vacation to the UK. And number four, they are going to try and at least get a little bit healthier for this. And, you know, work out some basic stuff that otherwise they wouldn't have done. So in any kind of way, they're, they're kind of they're, they're kind of moving in a positive direction with that. That's I'm fine. I mean, anyone can make their own decisions. That's I'm fine. sorry, Kim. Uh, please answer them. Let me respond. All right. Every single influencer boxer, whether they're healthy or not, is putting themselves in harm's way for entertainment. Yeah, and, and also on top of all of this, uh, I agree with you, Nino. They got winded. They got more winded walking to the ring than actually fighting. The actual fight was, I think, around a minute and 40 seconds long. Because I remember I watched it. And it was like, wait, this is it? That, that was, this was the fight? And I got to give credit to Wings. The guy was swinging, man. The guy actually put in some effort and he won. They're, they're sure. all warriors and they all deserve respect. Wings of Redemption and Boogie haven't gotten any respect. In fact, it's disrespect. Very similar to you. All right. And by doing this, they will get respect. Whether people laugh or not, they are going to get respect for jumping in that ring. Yes. But you mentioned that they're unhealthy. Of course they're unhealthy. But I can tell you right now, behind the scenes, and nobody knows this, both of them have actively already lost weight training for this fight. This is a nice. positive thing in both of their lives. And I don't think either one of them have the ability to seriously hurt the other. Do you? Do, do you think they're in real danger by fighting each other? I think these are equal opponents. This is not a serious boxing match, Keem. They're not boxers. They don't okay. know anything about boxing. That doesn't mean they can't box? These are two overweight guys that are going to go at it, swinging. You know, are you going to watch? No. Yes, you are. No, yes, I'm not. Are. It's like none of DSP's logic makes any fucking sense. None of it makes sense. Because he's trying to dick ride those guys and pretend like he gives a fuck about his health. And Keemstar is telling him, yeah, they all agreed to this. They're doing a little bit healthier now than they were before that. So everything's kind of cool. I, I don't, don't watch that you. crap. I don't watch Wait, your crap. Phil, you your Phil, you know, you know who is, you know is going to watch it, Phil? Everyone else. Everyone, great really, answer. Right. That's exactly what I would have said. I just Phil, don't believe you. It really comes down to what I just I'm said a little while it. ago. When, when, when I look at like making content for the internet and doing stuff like this, my question is, will this serve viewers? And I know it will. I know so many people are going to tune in. I know so many people want to see this. And I don't believe you when you say you're not going to watch this. I think you are going to watch this fight. You're so Phil, mistaken. You have Phil, nothing about me then, dude. <laughs> well, let's, let's ask this, Phil. Just, and, and this is just my morbid curiosity. Yeah, he would only watch it if somebody paid for it. If somebody submitted it to the, the DSP Reacts. And I think he actually, wait, didn't he end up watching it? Wait, 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 wait. DSP boxing. I don't know. This is probably not going to show anything. Oh, now we see a bunch of Indian dudes boxing. Well, very nice. Uh, but I'm, I'm pretty sure at some point he might have watched it on the DSP reacts thing. Cause somebody submitted it. Uh, uh, I don't know. I can't find it. I don't know. And what is this video? It's DSP versus Review Tech USA boxing match. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that happened, to be honest. Dusty, if there was an opportunity for you, Phil, to do something physical, box, whatever, I don't know, you know, whatever it may be, that was a kind of a YouTuber versus YouTuber opportunity. Would you, would you be open to that? Open no. to uh, no anything like that? Wouldn't do it. No, that's that's not what I'm about. Because because at the end of the day, Dark Side Phil does not give a shit about the content. He doesn't give a shit about pleasing his fans. He doesn't give a shit about putting out something that is entertaining and actually meaningful for people. He gives a fuck about him and what makes him feel better and what makes him feel more secure and more confident, whatever. All he cares about is himself. I'm on the Internet 
to share my passion for games, to have a cool social interaction with this, you know, my, my viewers, my fans, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I'm not here to, to make a, a mockery of myself or... Well, you, you already know, did, man. Stunt. I don't do that kind of stuff. You know? I'm not here to make a mockery of yourself. That's all you're known for, being a mockery of a streamer. Being a, a parody of a content creator. That's what he is. He's a parody. People will say I do. Whatever. It's He's a caricature of a streamer. I just want to be in my lane with my viewers, doing a good, fun stuff. I have no aspirations of grandeur or anything like that. Grandeur. I don't want to blow up because I did a stupid internet boxing match with someone. You know, it's so stupid and to me. Th Immature, th that's honestly. fine, Phil. If I could um, finish. Hey, big ups for the five gifts. Uh, Ursa Major, dude. Thank you very much. Enjoy whoever well, got him. And, and explaining myself. Continue. Because, like, look, this all started. DSP's motto is literally, I have fun and therefore you give me money, LMAO. Well, kind of. His whole, like, his whole idea of content is, I'm going to sit here and have fun. And if, um, if you like it, you support it or something, which in concept is good, but he does not apply it in practice. That's not how it works in practice. And practice is more like, regardless if I have fun or not, you should pay me so I can keep doing this as a business. With me retiring and you having, you know, a bad opinion on me and then us having that metaphor of, you know, you being on level one. Like, I, I really big did ups, uh, Big stinky 669. Ludwig, Ludwig video? Which one? Tire. Now I'm doing DLC, but I'm not paying for the DLC. The DLC is paying me. You know, and I'm doing more and more and more and more stuff in this space because I just love it so much. Which one? Hell. It comes from a place of you absolutely loving what you do and loving these mm -hmm. video games. I don't, you know who else likes video games? Wings and Boogie. You don't think the three of you on a podcast would, would be a good thing, you guys talking about games, giving your opinions, talking about current events and whatnot. You don't, you don't think that's a positive thing. Team, I just said right here on the show, I would love to do a show with those okay. guys. I, I, I'm friendly with them. Behind so, the scenes, I have conversations. So when I couldn't get a hold of you, and I called you multiple times, it wasn't once and you ignored. It was multiple, multiple times. I kept calling, I kept calling, I kept DMing you, and you said, oh, I'm streaming now, and da 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 A couple weeks went by. By the way, and... that's false what he's saying, but I'll let him keep going. It's fine. Whatever. Believe it as fact, you know. No, no, no. Uh, we want oh, and now, now we get a, a, a did he, did really fucking... A really fucking pathetic DSP passive aggressive segment. Oh yeah, yeah, that's false, but you can believe what he's saying as fact. Okay. I, By the way, and, that's false what he's saying, but I'll let him keep going. It's fine. Whatever. Believe it as fact, you know. No, no. Because he already because people don't suck on his fucking balls and agree with everything he says, he's already convinced that they're all against him because his mind is either a zero or a one. And then in this case is a zero. No, 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 we want to hear your perspective. So it's like we need to, to kick into passive-aggressive, literal 40-year-old being passive-aggressive like we're in high school. That's what we're yeah. doing here. Did he Did he not call you multiple times? He called me at least once, maybe twice, but I think it was just once. It could have been twice. Okay, so if it's twice, it qualifies as multiple times. So shut your bitch ass up. The amount of times that you've said during this interview that you... If we're going to play semantics, everybody gets to play semantics, not just Burnell. Don't really remember is shocking because i don't document this stuff why do i care? But, the, but but how can you say with such certainty that it wasn't you or that he didn't call or that all these things if if constantly i i'm just i'm just calling it out or you know i'm not trying to come at you but that, mm -hmm. i've just noticed that a lot so now That's you fine. say actually he called maybe twice could it have been three times could it okay, have been four times it definitely you didn't even notice four. it was one or two how do I know? Wasn't three or four i'm just you know well, i specifically rem remember when he called me during a stream and i'm like Who's calling me? And then when I went on a break, I opened my phone. I'm like, I don't, I, I, this must be him because I don't have his phone number. I'm assuming this must be him because, of the, you know, you get locations tied to phone numbers or whatever. And I'm like, why is he calling me when I gave him the specific times to call me? He's calling me when I said I was busy. But why even then, Phil, it? Phil, <sighs> you may be busy, but there's a call worth potentially 50 grand plus more on the backside of this that could take 10 minutes I mean, and, and once again, your your true fans will understand. Look, I had to get on a phone call. I like. Uh, uh, otherwise, I would be. I, I would have a problem with them them dwelling on this whole 50k thing. But I like them keeping on and on repeating how important it is, and that we're talking about fifty thousand dollars that could change this dude's life. And he didn't take him just because he didn't like working with this one guy. Important business call. I appreciate you guys, and you know what? 
they're gonna Which stay is like this would have changed their life legitimately he could have gone on a honeymoon with his wife he could have paid off a bunch of his taxes he could have saved up some of it for a rainy day or a sunny day or a cloudy day or maybe even a snowy day there with you they're gonna stay there watching because they want to know what's happening or he could have just spent it all on pulls the fuck should i care happening they want to know more about this like the idea of not taking a call just because you're streaming like your fans will understand that man yeah no and again i didn't even know that was him i didn't have his number you know i'm checking after the fact during a break or whatever um but the fact that this guy can't call me when i'm giving him the times to call was baffling to me oh so my first, god you know, the true interaction here i had to dm him he wouldn't contact me i had to dm him he would not talk further in the dm about what this was until i demanded it i'm like dude just tell me what you're talking about to see if i'm interested i don't want to get on a call with you unless you just say what if he had said something i'm totally not interested in at all i could say no we're not even bothering with it he wouldn't i had to like pull strings to get him to even say okay i want you to be like a host on a show and then he wouldn't even talk any further he demanded a phone call i give him my number i give him the specific times to call he calls the wrong times well, right? I guys, mean, according, guys, according to I what just, I hear from Kim, hold on, I just want to say this real quick. According to what I'm hearing from Keem, he had he was going to put up $150,000 to do a show with with, you know, three guys like that's a risk. That's him investing a lot of, of, of his income to try to help these guys for including yourself. And I think a phone call uh, wanting to do it over a phone call is like uh, uh, just that's nothing in comparison to what yes. he's trying to do. All right, I just need to say that. And, sure. and Phil, listen. Do you want to know why I don't like the phone call idea? Why I wanted it in writing? Would you like to know? In just why? a second. Keep starting. Go ahead. Phil, now that we're talking about this and we're communicating for the first time back and forth, all right, I can tell just by how you're reacting and what you're saying back to me that you actually understand that this was a great opportunity. <laughs> that's uh, oh, that's a, that's a really good way to say it. We need it to be on the phone is so we can actually communicate. We could hear each other's voice. We could talk this thing out. You can ask me questions. The 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 text conversation, the the emails back and forth. All right. That's not like really how business gets done. That's how contracts yep. get done. That's how managers communicate back and forth and do deals. But like when we're at the very beginning of an idea and we're trying to figure out what we're going to do with this business it has to be like real communication back and forth in a phone call like it is right now mm -hmm. so okay. that's why what that's why it was so important for me to get on the phone with you okay do you under, well, do you do you agree or sense? disagree does it make sense to you phil what 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 i was going to say was sure. the reason i wanted it in writing was very simple all right again you have to understand keen you have a lot of stuff that's said about you on the internet you know that you we've agreed to that but right? so do you. Yeah, I'm Correct. so sick of hearing it's that from you, It's so but frustrating if I'm going to deal that. with this guy. Oh, man. I'm so sick of hearing that from you, Phil. That's a great Adam quote. I'm going to deal with him. this guy. If I'm going to deal with this guy, I want our conversation in writing. Because but okay, who fucking cares? Before you sign up to the project, you're going to sign some kind of a contract. You're not going to get $50,000 uh, based on like a text conversation on Twitter. Of course of course but of course this has everything to do with dsp just don't, not wanting to have business with this guy and instead of telling him i don't want to have business with you because i personally dislike you and being around you pisses me off so i don't want to have business with you but instead of that he needs to have this whole clown show of oh you didn't tell me the way i wanted to be told you didn't call me at the right times you didn't email me on the right email and all this other bullshit is what's to stop me from getting on the phone with Keem, having a conversation, and the next thing I know, he completely lies about what we just talked about to get drama on his content. Phil, that's and like me being, that's like me going to Craig. Like, hell no. I hear all this shit about Phil. I don't want him to come up here and start fucking wanking it on the show live. You know what I mean? It's, that's like me believing what the, is on the internet when I think this was actually pretty, it was a tough, but it was a good show. You know, and it was a chance for you to come clean and like really try to tackle some of the shit that's out there. But it's like you're you're using the same. You know what? I I don't get it. Uh, this is a a derailment. I don't get it when people directly look into the camera. I just don't understand. I it it makes me feel weird. Like when when Craig spent like half of the stream just directly looking at me through the camera, and Phil sometimes just looks directly at the camera. It's like yeah, we 
Can we just like look somewhere around the camera, but not right into it? Kind of shit that people have been using against you, but you're using against Keemstar. It doesn't make any sense. Cause like Craig is right now just staring at me, and he's not even saying anything. He's just looking at me. I don't listen. I don't yeah. trust you, you do hear it. You do see I don't it, right? Trust him. I do but, not but, trust Kane. But once again, you don't we know us. me. We've never right. even talked. How, how do you? Yeah. How do you not trust the man when oh, you're getting your information from the internet? The internet is not a real place. Like, I can I, tell I, you this. I do business with the biggest content creators on this entire planet. All right. I don't just run a show called Dromler. I develop video games. I represent YouTubers. I get them brand deals. I, you know, one, one of my companies represents the, the biggest streamer on the planet. I have a long business history with FaZe, Mr. Beast. Like, where, like, you don't know anything about me. You, you <laughs> right. But if we had a conversation and you got to learn about me and what I've done, and the business opportunities that I've created for this industry for the last 15 years, your opinion of me would be wildly different than you watching a drama documentary about me, something that you'd be, you're, you're against. Like, you know, this is blood money. It was but that's where you got your information from. It was, about it was me. a. It talked a lot positively about you. Why so we you got a that? we got an update on the DSP stream. Remember that thing was happening? He was playing Elden Ring. Well, he ended up at fifty-two dollars, with twenty-seven being from one guy, and then he got like a twenty from one minute man. So forty-seven out of fifty-two is from two people. <laughs> oh my god, this is uh, exceptional. You're milking a human. Drama video about you. That's not what I watch. So, oh my god, let's finish this so I can go smoke weed and go to bed. It talked positively about me, but by watching... You got a half an hour left, unless I skip a bunch of stuff. And I'm not going to do the, the post-show on this stream. I'm going to do the post-show, the super chat thing, and the DSP react on the other one. Yeah, you had a negative view of me. Uh, that doesn't... It's no, not I told you, I actually... I respect you immensely, but... I don't know after all the, it's not just that there's other things too other people that have said things about you and their dealings with you i have to kind of be protective of myself and my business and my family was there I, ever I, bro what, was, the, what the fuck is this dude thinking that keemstar is gonna do to him kidnap his wife is he gonna sell jasper to the slave trade like what the fuck does he think that keemstar is gonna do to him and and then not like get exposed for it or something there's there ever risk a story? of being involved with you. I do. I feel there's a risk that I could be, you know, hang, hung out to dry somehow. I know, that, I know that there's multiple multiple things that I've done wrong in my career. Like a, a, a thousand percent. I have said outlandish things um, in the attempt of making entertainment and entertaining people. Um, you know, in 2015, one of the biggest things... Uh, my team got a story wrong and I went on air with the story wrong and falsely accused someone mm -hmm. of, of, of being a pedo. It was wrong. Yeah. It wasn't even the same guy. All right. Yeah. That was I, massively you know, you fucked up. If look at that story and actually look into it, the person that exposed Keemstar for that and brought that to the internet was Keemstar. Whoa. I exposed myself for getting it wrong. Massive plot twist. Keemstar was actually the hero and the villain of his own story. That's what I'm talking about. This is next level protagonist. I right away tried to make, you know. It's like an anime plot line here and they all get intertwined and the, like a bunch of people get accused of being pedophiles. It's crazy. It's it insane. That guy. Tune into the next season. I offer him 20 grand. This is like back in 2015. If you actually look into any of this stuff about me, you're going to see Keemstar saying wild effed up stuff and he's definitely wrong. But you're going to see Keemstar making mistakes and trying to make amends for it if you actually take the time to look into it. Now, you're on this show asking these audience, these de detractors, uh, these gentlemen running this podcast to treat your story and what's said about you fair. I should have gotten the same respect from you or at least a respect to get a phone call just so we could better know each other. Phil, but do that you... Didn't, but that ahead, didn't Phil. happen. And... If I could finish, because I'm almost sure. done yes, with representing, you know, my point in all this. I called him multiple times. I couldn't get a hold of him. It, it rubbed me the wrong way right from the beginning when he was trying to send me to an email, which made no sense to me. Um, 
And I think two weeks roughly went by and I went on YouTube and because I was looking up DSP stuff, um, you know, doing research for the podcast, um, the algorithm like sent his live stream in my feed. So I tune into it mm. and I'm telling you the minute I tuned in, I saw Phil begging for money to pay rent and utilities. And I just lost it in his chat. Like, <laughs> I cannot believe that like you're doing this right now. Two weeks ago, I was trying to get a hold of you, offering you the, the, the greatest opportunity you've ever been offered in your entire career. Phil, if this podcast was a success, all right, everyone in the chat and, and, and you are looking at $50,000, it wouldn't be $50,000. This podcast would make millions. It would be a wild success. It would be a brand. This is something that would be clipped on TikTok, uh, YouTube Shorts, Instagram. People would talk about this, just like you're being clipped on your little live stream now, except for we would have an opportunity to monetize it. Phil, do you uh, do you understand kind of the, uh, you know, obviously, I think what Keem is saying, he has he has this business business experience, right? He offered he's offering you an opportunity. You, you turn the other way. But there's a lot of things that that you're saying today. You're talking about, um, you know, Keem. Uh, making mistakes, uh, saying things, uh, doing business the wrong way, that can also be said about yourself. And, mm -hmm. and the things that you're saying are, are very, uh, I mean, it, it's, it's like holding a mirror up to yourself because I feel oh, like yeah. there's actually a lot of similarities between Keemstar making mistakes, you've made mistakes, things that we touched on during this podcast, right? Mm -hmm. um, you, you do understand the similarities between between what your argument is for not wanting to work with him and the reason why you have so many detractors. Sure. What I, what I would say is the difference between me and Keen, outside of wild amount of popularity difference, is that if you take a look at the body of work that I've done in the 15 years I've done it, all right, you would say, has Phil ever really outright with anything he's done actually concretely hurt someone to the point oh. like, you know, wow. What a heinous person. Well, I mean, no, but that's like a, that's a really weird standard to set for somebody. Have I ever concretely hurt someone with the stuff I do? No. People will yeah. say that about Keen. They will say that about Keen, okay? And at I the end of the day, when I have to make business decisions about who I'm going to associate with and who I'm not going to, I, that's a factor. And it's a, it's a moral factor for me. Big ups for the long stream, man. These are great. Hey, I'm glad you enjoy it. Well, it's almost over. So, yeah. But uh, it's crazy. It's been 11 hours and 4 minutes. Damn. I can't wait to get out of here. <laughs> um, It has nothing to do with Keem's business. It's thing. like, Phil, I hate to break this to you, dog, but none of this fucking matter. Like, none of this. Nobody is giving you a pat on the back because you're a more moral person than fucking Keemstar. Nobody is going to give you an ounce of respect for being a more moral person than fucking Keemstar. It doesn't matter. Keem, you are a great businessman. Everyone knows that. I think you would actually run the podcast very, very well. I do. Uh, I would look- And now he's getting glazed. Phil, you haven't even listened to the podcast. Like, you don't even know how he's gonna run it. And by the way, he's running it terribly. He's bad. He's like really bad at it. And I guess he appointed Tommy C as like the supervisor of the editor or something. And Tommy C is doing a terrible job because they can't find one single editor that's not going to do a terrible job editing this piece of shit podcast. I just, I cannot believe it. And they're paying $2,000 a month for somebody to butcher this whole dog shit podcast and not get anything that's worth anything out of it. Do this podcast. Like, God damn, what the fuck? How is it that hard? Keemstar shows up, tells everybody they have no content. And then they start calling random people to join the call so they can cause some drama. And most of the time, it doesn't happen. I don't even know. Problem with you morally, dude, with the content you put out. I do. And I'm going to let, let, let him respond. Let him it. respond to that. Listen, you just said that you've never hurt anyone, right? And you talking trash doesn't hurt me. That's just an opportunity, right? But when you treated me the way you did behind the scenes, <laughs> this sounds like bullshit coming from me, but you hurt me. I was offended. Oh no, oh no. Who would have thunk it? Keemstar is now the victim to Phil. Oh man.
Oh man, how the tables have turned. You couldn't see this coming, and I bet Phil is not happy that Keemstar has now assumed the role of the victim. It should not happen. This is the other way around. Keemstar is the big guy who is stepping on the small guy, which is Phil. Come on. You guys are forgetting your lines. I was hurt. Like He pulled the Uno reverse card. Why? Why are you treating me like this? Oh my god, and he's pulling up the, the signature victimhood phrase. Why are you treating me like this? Oh man. Why wh why can't you treat me like a man and we why can't we have a conversation? If you legitimately that's a good question though. Why can't we just have a conversation about it? Why can't you just call me on the phone and we can figure stuff out about it? Why do we have to do this bitch internet drama shit for no reason and waste everybody's time? came to the conclusion that when clearly DSP is not interested in doing this, he's just begging for anybody's attention. No, I don't want to do this. This isn't right for me. That's fine. But you really showed me no respect at all. It was so disrespectful how you were treating me, making me email. I have to call at a certain time. Uh, I'm calling and you're not answering the phone. And then when people were asking, your, your fans asking online, why didn't you do this podcast with Keem? During this whole time, I, I forgot to mention this, he was still talking bad about me publicly. <laughs> Keem, you just said it. Like, just what you just described is probably the main reason I have a problem with you. You are someone who has no self-awareness and you think Whoa. that you're the most important thing. You Whoa. tweeted on your Twitter that I should contact you about a business opportunity. No one does that. They contact not? the person about the business opportunity directly. We all do it. Everyone. We all do it. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's the I, internet. Because uh, here's the thing. When you tweet publicly about it, you're also creating some kind of hype about the thing that you're going to do. You're also creating some kind of interest in people. They start being interested in it like, oh, wow, Keemstar tweeted at DSP, dude. They want to work together. They want to do a project together. I'm engaged now. I'm interested. Because otherwise it would happen behind the scenes, quote unquote, and nobody would know what's happening and there would be no hype created. And Keemstar knows that hype is good. Even if it's hype for something bad that's going to happen, it's still good because it's fucking hype. It drives engagement. It drives ratings, et cetera, et cetera. Bill, Phil, it's like, the internet, man. Well, yeah. You said you've been doing this for 15 years, but like, do, do you not understand the way algorithms work, the way oh, anger man. is addictive and how people are hooked on crazy shit? Every, like, all of them, they just take turns telling this guy how inept he is, how stupid he is, how he doesn't, how he's never learned anything. I'm not surprised, I'm saying this again, I'm not surprised that this had a huge toll on his mental state because, man, this is like a public humiliation if I've ever seen one. And he doesn't realize it yet, but he will. Right. I want no part of that drama. I don't Phil, want to be Phil, on Phil, a podcast you, that is going to be about that. I don't want to be involved with someone that's not, who... That's not what he, he was... I don't even know what the podcast was going to be saying. about. He's being egomaniacal. I have to... Just listen Phil, to what you I'm said. not. Keem, Phil. you just said my whole life should have stopped because you wanted to contact me. Really? I did not say that. Life. You no, just he didn't said, say that. Answer the call at any that. time. Even though Phil. I gave you the times to call me. Answer the call. Oh my God. And he's having like... He's having a fucking meltdown. Legit. This is a super underrated segment because he's losing his shit right now. He's legitimately just ranting about it like he would on a podcast. But at the same time, people are just calling him out for disagreeing with him. King, Phil. you just said my whole life should have stopped because you wanted to contact me. Really? I did my not say that. Life. You no, just he said, didn't say that. Answer the call at any that. time, even though Phil. I gave you the time. And he keeps going and they just disagree with him. And they're like, yeah, that, that's not what he said. Call me. Can Answer I give you some any context? Can I give you some context? From the time I wake up to the time I go to bed, every single day, I talk to at least 20 different content creators. And I, this, this is true. This is not an exaggeration. You know, I, I run an influencer boxing, uh, you know, happy punch. We represent fighters that, that do boxing. Uh, I have all my staff. Um, I have uh, YouTubers and content creators that we represent business-wise with brand deals and stuff like that. And then I run Tromler, right? So I have to get on the phone with different content creators to validate stories or get people's takes so I can you know, inject that into the story to make sure that like what I'm reporting and what I'm talking about is accurate and have a, a full perspective, right? How all this business operates, right? Between content creator and content creator, 
is like Twitter DMs. It's like yeah. it's like it's like a tweet, yo, DM me. Yo, let's hop on a, a phone call. When we're talking about contracts and stuff, then you have lawyers, you have managers, they're in emails, emailing each other back and forth. But the content creators, which we are both content creators, we are on the same level. I'm not higher than you. You're not higher than me. We have a mutual respect. DSP, by the way, what I think he's doing right now is he's blatantly displaying that he's not paying attention and he's not interested in what Keemstar has to say. Because he's been fucking around, fiddling around with some cables and shit, and just, like, basically waiting until Keemstar shuts up and is not listening to anything the guy has to say. Which is very disrespectful. As content creators, we should be able to be in Twitter DMs and then get on a phone call. And you didn't treat me like that. You treated me like dirt. This is not about me thinking I'm God. This is about how you treated me in those Twitter DMs. Oh, and this is, oh my God. Cause this is like a narcissist versus narcissist scenario. And Keemstar is, is defeating DSP cause he managed to get the last word on him. And he managed to be the bigger victim. Cause he just said, well, this is not about how I'm treating you. It's about how you're treating me. So I am the victim now. And DSP does not like that one bit. And nobody cares if he likes it or not because nobody agrees with him anyways because he's in the wrong. Keem, you, you, I gave you the times to call. You called. At this point in his life, Phil is so cocooned in his bubble. He's scared to change anything in his life. Yep. He's paralyzed with fear of the unknown. Yeah, and, and it's, it's a really bad position to be in when you're just living in your comfort zone and you're so deep into it that every little disturbance is causing... It's almost like a cataclysm to your life. It's, it's a terrible position to be in. And the only way he can get out of it is to have people help him gradually get out of his comfort zone and start doing things that are not comfortable for him. Otherwise, it's going to be the death of him. It's going to be over for him. But it, I, I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think things are going to get better. And I hope things don't get better because then I'm going to get more entertainment out of this guy. And I genuinely don't believe that he's capable of improving anything because... He doesn't believe that there is anything worth improving. He believes that the world should improve, not him. So I'm fine with that. The different times, and we never had another. Big ups, uh, Andrea, for the I five. Respectful to you. So, when when they ask me, is this opportunity, um, you know, still available? When I say I say maybe because like I don't I don't know how I could work with you. You are very very difficult to work with to even communicate with, uh, firsthand. Um, because I didn't drop everything to talk to you, I'm difficult to communicate with. Even though I have what are you dropping? publicly listed ways to contact what, me. Please explain to me what you're dropping. Like, wh what is go so important that's happening that you can't get on a phone call with me? My work, my job. Oh, here six days a week, full time streaming. streaming you've ever done? I hate my uh, life. No, no. I've done more than twelve hours before. I've done Christmas. I've done the DSP birthday. More than twelve hours. This is not the longest. You guys just forgot I used to do long streams, and I don't do them anymore. But I might. Or I might not, brother. <laughs> but this we'll find job out. that I'm about to offer you would pay wildly more and solve all these problems that you have going on. First of all, you don't know what it's going to solve. That's a huge assumption. Second of all, I didn't know. Yeah, well, I, I think it's safe to say that it's going to solve a lot. Since this guy is begging for pennies on a daily basis, I think $50,000 are going to solve a lot. That's because you never told me. You didn't call at the time you were supposed to. Didn't, didn't we're going give you. Yeah. We are. In this, this conversation at this point, we're just, we're just like spinning the wheels. Nothing is happening. It, going in a loop. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it, it's happened a lot on this episode so far. Uh, right. So look, I, I think let's, let's leave it here. Right. Um, a bridge yeah. has been gapped. You know, we, we, we've we brought a bridge together, right? I don't know if, if something's going to come from this with, with Keem and Phil, and there's obviously still friction there, and that's fine. Uh, but I'm, I'm glad you guys had an opportunity to talk. And uh, and I think more than anything, Phil, you, you know, you're learning more about, you know, business in 2022, 2023, and how, how interactions, you know, and the importance of being quick and nimble and, uh, and things like that along here. Because that's, in reality, that's how business works now, so...
Let me put it this way: if it if it weren't if it weren't Keem, because again, I already had a negative association in my head of who Keem is. I had really very little interest in doing any work with him. If it was someone else, hey, Mister Medicare, send him a super chat. I am legit stunned by how much damage DSP inflicts on himself by being stubborn and not understanding opportunity cost. Great interview, by the way. Na nice work, Craig and Adam. Would have, but you know, well, shout out to Metoker. That's the association I had. I had a moral Timothy issue Metoker. Guy, so it wasn't a big deal to me that he was reaching out to me. Before I leave, because I'm pretty much done, I, I've expressed everything that I want. I appreciate it, Kim. Can I give you some criticism? <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, because I came in saying that I'd be respectful and I wouldn't dunk on you or any of that stuff, but I do have some criticism that I desperately want to express to you. It's as up long to as it's as long as it's respectful and it's not, okay. you know. I'm gonna do this in the most respectful way, and and then I'll go. And of course, and uh, good good choice by Keem to stay respectful because the one thing that you can do to a person like Phil that actually is gonna help his case is if you just go all out. I know it's super tempting to just go all out and call him a bunch of names and just clown on him, but that's gonna make him the victim. You wanna be as civil as humanly possible and use facts and logic like Keemstar did, like the rest of the guys did. And let the guy bury himself. And he will not pass up an opportunity to bury himself. Of course you can respond, but um, I don't condone people harassing you, people doxing you, people going into <clears throat> your your private you know, life and, and doing all this horrible stuff that they've done. But I believe the reason why this has happened is because people don't trust you. You're, you don't come across as trustworthy. So when you're on stream and you're asking to pay utilities and rent and all that stuff, the audience is getting frustrated and they look at you like you're a scammer and they want to know where this money is going. Well, how is he always in this situation? What is he spending his money on? <clears throat> and, and that is the motivation to dive into your personal life. You had an opportunity on this show and I watched it to just... Pull up the screenshot and show the WWE account oh, fuck. and you didn't do it. Your internet cut off at that point when your internet cut off and you were DDoSed and you were gone off stream, the opportunity is now gone. It's gone because while your internet was out, you could have made a fake screenshot. All right. You're never ever going to be able to prove what your WWE account was or is ever again because yep. people will say he just photoshopped it he just made it up you're never going to be able to say that, that. anyway you had deal. one opportunity to do it right away with these guys and that was it and you didn't take advantage of it because i personally watching it and so did the audience thought that you were lying and if mm -hmm. and if you are lying if it is true and, and you're not being honest i if i were you this is the best advice i could give you right is just be like look this was my account this is that I would ask for a clean slate and I would do things different because this restarting level one over and over and over again is the root of all your problems. If that makes any sense. I appreciate the input. It's not true. So I, I'm not <laughs> but I appreciate Go fuck yourself. DSP. You deserve no fucking criticism. You just deserve people calling you names until you fucking die. You piece of shit. But if it were true, I would fess up to it. Yeah, Thank go you fuck Thank yourself. You so much go fuck off. Me. You don't even deserve that. You don't even deserve that. So thanks. Appreciate it, man. I'll, yeah. I'll uh, appreciate you hopping on. Really appreciate it. What a it. bitch. Definitely. All right. Um, hey, Phil, I, I, you've been throwing curveballs today, which I did not see coming. All right. I did not see them coming at all. But Story I, of my I, life, Craig. Story of my life. Hey, yeah. I, I appreciate Prop you. Thanks for still being here. Do you so, want to keep uh, going? I, I've got till around 4 p.m. We could keep going. Can questions. I'm down for it. How much so more? Well, no, I can't. Uh, I can't do this. Let me say this. I, I, what do we actually have left? They they got like 15 minutes, but it's it's all kind of like fizzling out. How do you beat? Oh, no, we got a we got it's a Gundam. I it's almost out. 10 p.m. for me and I haven't had dinner. And so I, I can't yeah. go much longer. It's almost 3 a.m. for me, and I, I haven't had dinner minutes. either. Okay. Good. And if you guys are new, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button. Once again, we uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Submit those. We'll bring uh, Blabs, and mm -hmm. let's kind of go from there, okay? Does that sound good? Sounds sure. good to me. Are, are, I mean, are you okay with that? I don't know who they are. I don't know what they're saying, obviously. Oh, yeah, this is the, it's a Gundam. A question from him. Hey there, Philly cheesesteak. 
guess who it is? Your favorite YouTuber. We're best friends. Remember that time you thought it'd be funny to put a restraining order on me, Philbert? Well, Philly. Hey, speaking my of which, is, what the hell did you spend five hundred thousand dollars on? You didn't pay off your house. You didn't pay off the condo. You didn't pay off any car you own. You're in debt. What did? Where did the money go? Why did you take business loans? What did you use the business loan money for? You never improved your content. You've been using the same camera for nigh on five thousand years. If it wasn't for like. The Dutch Brothers sending you a new web camera or, like, LEDs in the background, you'd have no ideas. Where'd the money go? You're like a politician in San Francisco. If I went to the man, I said, Mayor of San Francisco, where did all that money go, that $120 million? Oh, my God. All the faces that he makes during this are golden. And I know people are going to say, this is corny, this is cringe, whatever. But this interview was over. This is, like, just the cherry on top. And it's it's just... Um, I guess spicing up the format, having something different in it, having somebody just call in and legitimately just shit on DSP, not even like constructive criticism, it's just clowning on him like the fucking clown show he is, is great. It's just great. I, I don't mind it happening at all because at this point it was over. It was just finished. They were on the way out. To fund the police with and put it to black communities. Where did it go? You know, Phil, you screwed up. You never should have been a YouTuber. You should have been a politician in San Francisco. You would have gotten away with it, baby. <laughs> if it wasn't for those uh, meddling detractors. Is it going to end at some point? No, it's, it's over now. Oh, and look how fucking salty he gets, man. Oh, I love this. I love this. I wish I could bottle up this energy. It's actually right, not too late. Him. I wish I could, like, actually milk him. Milk this energy out of him. You're milking a human. Yeah, shut up. I am. Shut up. I mean, politicians tend to be older. Mm -hmm. Look, that was, that, was a, that was a long question. I think my, my first question after that is... I, what I is think he, we what, handled that, though, already. And we talked about that shit. Well, well, but but the the, the five hundred thousand—that's the first I've heard of that figure. Where where is that? No, I from? I mentioned it earlier. We talked about it. And could it, be the bankruptcy. And, I'm not sure. And I asked yeah. him, and if it was a if it was the bankruptcy, and I think he doesn't know it. anything. It's not even his bankruptcy. Okay. He's not even bankrupt. Matter of fact, he's a very successful businessman. Uh, have you taken out any business loans? And if so, what were they used for? Business loans. No, but bro. Why are we like? Why is he having this kind of a thoughtful segment? You should know off the top of your head. Have you taken out any business loans? It's a yes or it's a no. Or if you gotta think about it so long, then you might have taken many, many different loans. That some of them are might be business loans, and some of them might be personal loans. Everything, you know, all that debt that got. Huh? What is a loan? Off with credit cards and stuff. Oh, and look at this, like, oh, the gotta... more, like, he thinks, I've never seen anybody think like this, quote-unquote think, because he's thinking, like, people, like, character, oh, this is a great pause, oh my god, this is so juicy, what the fuck is this face? <laughs> so, yes, he thinks like a cartoon character, as in, when you see them look around all over the place, that means they're thinking. And that's how he does it too. It's un like an actual child would. Oh, what were they used for? Yeah, look at this. Look at this. I'm going to pause this so you don't get distracted. Just look at his face. And it's just like, we're looking at the ceiling right now. What are we looking at there? I've never taken out any kind of loan officially in the name of the business or anything. He's like never that. taken out any official business loans. Just informal business loans. Like that. No. Okay. Is there anything else like... You know, I don't know. It's very rarely do you have an opportunity to kind of interact with. Did he? Uh, have, did he used to be on the Howard Stern show? His voice is so familiar to me. He used to be that. Was he that clown guy? I Seriously, don't know. he, he I sounds don't know. just like him. He sounds just like him. Now I don't know. He's one of the many detractors who make videos about me. I've literally never watched a video of his, so I really okay. don't have anything to say. Sure, fair enough. Do you enough. think that uh, by not watching his videos, you're like? Do you think that if you were to spend time watching their videos, you'd be able to? Uh, react and uh, you know you have you have a reaction channel. Don't you think there's an entire niche market of, of you reacting to uh, negative content about yourself? Perhaps. Oh, I thought he would ask him like, uh, for example, if you spend the time to watch one of those videos, do you think that you can take away some kind of valid criticism and improve as a person and a content creator? That's what I thought he would ask him, which I think is a pretty good question. Phil, if you watched a a, a I don't know. 
let's say it's a Gundam video because they are uh, better edited than like my yeah, stuff, for on. example. I hear you should take breaks. Uh, I haven't taken any breaks. I went to the bathroom a couple of times, but then I finished my beer, so I had no reason to go to the bathroom anymore. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, it, we're about to get it over with in less than ten minutes, I guess. Oh yeah, it's it's about done. I can't believe I watched all of this in one sitting. It's actually crazy. And then we watched a fucking pre-stream in the middle of it. That was a a terrible pre-stream, by the way. One of the worst I've watched, based on the the complete lack of any kind of content and anything in the future yes now that i'm so yes i was gonna ask like hey if you watch a gundam video don't you think you're gonna improve at something don't you think there you're gonna have some kind of a positive takeaway from it for a month it's something that i would consider dabbling in in the future the thing is as i as i there is something with these these attractors the more attention you give them just the worse it gets it, it eggs them on to do more really so my opinion ooh, is people ooh, are not new. coming to my channel to see this they don't care about that they want to see gameplay they want to see whatever i don't want to inundate them with that stuff so i don't address it you know, okay. But maybe, I was maybe gonna say a new a show project. idea: the detractor reactor. Yeah, maybe, maybe that should be something we do. A whole good. show where I react. To I got. The I get, I've given you two good show names so far. I did this react to the original. This is how you don't play last year. So just we want to talk about talking two sides of the fence of how it's completely unfair how I'm treated. The guy tried to take it off the internet, so I couldn't react to it. Yes, because he wanted to be petty and he wanted to get a reaction out of this, and he did. He literally did. You made a big clown show about it. Everyone else had done it. But when I went to do it myself, oh, uh, no, you can't do that, Phil. Like, what are you talking about? It's fair use. Yeah, he was literally trolling you. He's an internet troll. He's one of your biggest trolls, and he trolled you, and you fell for it, and you got trolled. Do I need to explain more? You can't gotta download that. it. Gotta download it next time. Well, so, someone gave it to me, so. Can we talk about that, though, real quick? Have you ever, have you ever uh, tried to remove... Uh, reactive content. Have you from ever feel like a plastic bag? That people have reacted from reactive FDS. content. So you're saying someone actually watching my content and reacting to it, or or posted or just posted clips of it. The only time that I have tried to ever take anyone down was straight up ripping the raw content. That is just a lie. That's a lie straight away. He struck down super crazy so he can learn his lesson, and then he removed the strike because he thought he learned his lesson. And illegally reposting it with absolutely so that's literally just a lie we got a straight up lie and then he got he got caught admitting to it and he himself showed the record of himself taking down channels uh taking down videos no transformative work whatsoever added to it the moment that someone's there and they're talking about it that's transformative i know because i you know everyone does it the, okay a, well then i guess i'm safe the then only way that really i can talk some more shit to, to phil is if they just right right now if they rip this raw podcast from you know side scrolls and put it on their channel no context no commentary that's illegal everything else is fine so no i've never tried to do that um at all to anything that's reactive content or reacting content like that no so i i understand that right and technically legally you are correct right but this goes back to like this is the internet and the internet i know yeah. that that people are going to take take this episode and like if i'm sure gundam and keem and and all sorts of people are going to go and they're going to make they're going to make content based off of this content. Right. But ultimately... And, and ultimately, it's going to be to your own benefit because it's going to drive traffic to the original video. And we could get upset about that because legally, yeah, right? But ultimately, that's going to help the show. Hey, that there we go. Side scrollers, uh, because more people know about side scrollers, right? So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I just feel like... I, I feel like I've, I've kind of zeroed in on, on what's what's happening. Like... Phil, the, the internet has has changed, and you haven't necessarily changed with the internet, or you know whether it's the things that we've talked about today. And so there's big opportunity for you to adapt and change with the internet. You, you've changed some formats, you've changed some you know changed your, your your content and such, but the internet still is adapting, and it's adapting literally exponentially fast. And it's something that. Um, you know, it needs to be done if you're going to be, you know, uh, a, a relevant, relevant content producer uh, online. And I don't know. I, I mean, I would just love to hear your thoughts on that. That's just a, a reoccurring theme that I've he that I've heard today. Well, I of course, what I'm going to say is, well, today I've changed and I'm much different. And like, well, he said that a million times already on the show. Right. I mean, yeah, you, I really yeah, am you trying did. to be different and more receptive yeah, you to did. criticism and being open, like the react stuff I'm doing right now that I just started doing last month. That's something I was so against for so many years. And that's 
a running pattern with me. I'm stupid. I'm ignorant. I say dumb stuff. Then someone finally says, hey, Phil, wake up, stupid head. Check this out. And I wait, wait, wait. If you're if you admit yourself that you're stupid and you're ignorant, why are you surprised that there's so many people trolling you and making fun of you on the Internet? You yourself are admitting that this is how you are. Actually, there is some meaning to doing that. You can add context. You can add, you know, your own perspective. You can make oh, a that's very that's interesting being dumb stuff, but instead intelligent content. And now I know that I need to keep doing that. I, I feel like I'm getting better at it. Uh, I, it's a work in progress, just like everything in life. And with, with any person who's trying to grow or evolve, it's a work in progress for me to become more open minded. Well, bro, I, when is the work in progress going to end? You're 42 years old. When people talk about work in progress, they're in their 20s. They're still figuring stuff out. What the fuck? What the fuck? How long? Is he going to be like 65 talking about being a fallible human and still calling people mouth droolers and still not learning his lesson? How long do we need to wait? I'm a, I feel How long? I'm a lot better at walking in other people's shoes now. I'm a lot better at listening to other perspectives. Oh, uh, yes. For improvement. You're right. I need to adapt and be open-minded to change in the future. Correct. Yeah, even though he started off this stream by talking about being open-minded and listening to feedback for the first, like, 20 minutes. He talked about it. Phil, I, I gotta say... But now we end it off five hours later by saying, yeah, I should, I should be this thing that I claim I am, but more of it. Hey, um... It took a lot of balls to come, come on the show. That is and, true. And handle the questions. If anything, uh, so, that's the one... What time is it? It's uh, 3 a.m. I'm about to go to bed. Actual positive thing I hear is that Phil never gives up. Phil is the unbreakable rock that the waves no, crash that's, against. And no. he's still going to be here at the end. <laughs> no, it's not about Phil doesn't give up because he has an unbreakable spirit. It's Phil doesn't give up because he doesn't really have anything else to do. Phil doesn't give up because he's stubborn. Because he can't really, like, do anything else. What, is he gonna give up doing the easiest shit you can ever do and make a hundred grand a year doing it? And what, go stock shelves at Walmart? Go work the checkout at Target? Like, really? That's not a compliment, Phil. It's not a compliment. When are you gonna understand that? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, I put up with all of it. It's not, it's, like, surviving is not a flex. I'm not going anywhere, man. I'm going to keep making content. Existing not is not a flex. It. I love it. You know, it's my passion. It really is my passion. Best job I've ever had. And I'm I'm happy to be here with you guys. Well, good for you. As much as I could. Um, you know, thank you. You guys were great hosts. I know it sounds like we're ending now. It was a great, you know, great opportunity at least to get my perspective out there. Thank you. Well, let, and, and we appreciate you coming on. We still got a few more. Yeah, the, the whole chat goes pig roach, cockroach, pig roach, pig roach, pig roach. Because I, I want to have alien food. But I, I, the, is there anything that you feel that you need to touch on before we leave? Before we I, Incredibly important moment. Is there anything you feel like you want to touch on before we leave? Anything. You could have said, hey, you guys, come check out my channel if you want to have some fun gameplay and do React stuff. You could have said, um, shout out to you guys for sticking up with me for five hours. This was a long stream, but it was a lot of fun. Blah, blah, blah. Could have said anything. And what he says is this. Man. Parts today. Is there there's any... So, there's so much. I mean, we could go on for hours and hours. The things people have said about me grooming my ex-girlfriend. Is, is, is so that ridiculous. what you want to focus on, though? Talk about he he asked you specifically, is there well, anything that you want to bring up? Okay, well, let's, let's do this. Phil, would you be open to coming back on again? Sure, absolutely. No. Okay. No. Well, okay. We, 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 we can do like a part two and uh, and just kind of hit on more of those things, right? Because I want to yeah. be conscious of everybody's time. All right, well, let's do this. Let's, we'll schedule a part two for some time down the line, right? And, and, uh, and you know, get you on for part two. But uh, in the time, what, what is the one thing that you wish you could address right now that we haven't addressed today? Oh, my. Talk about my wife. Oh my gosh. You know, well, the first thing uh, you just said was that grooming shit. Like, is that what's up with that? Because I, I don't of course, like it. It's, it's blatantly false. It's my ex I met. She contacted me. I never contacted her. She contacted me via YouTube DMs when they were a thing. That's how long ago this was over a decade okay. ago. She was how old an adult, was she? a legal adult. We spoke for months before we ever started dating. Um, you, uh, a legal adult? That means 18, right? That means 18. We're not using some kind of semantics to, to weasel our way out of this. Are we? I believe she was 18.
thing. Right. People say I met her when That's what I a legal was adult 16 means. and I groomed her for years. I never even spoke to her until she was after she was 18. Okay. Okay. Finally, dude, it's like you got to pull the words out of this dude's mouth. Just say she was 18. That's all you got to say. That's what people are fucking asking for, you dipshit. It's a complete and bold-faced lie. What a moron. Okay. Another thing. I'm sorry that I have to bring this up, but I talked with my wife about it. I want to get this out in the open. People say that I'm some kind of a horrible woman abuser, and basically I- You are not a good husband, Phil. You are not a good partner. You are not a good boyfriend. You are not a horrible woman abuser because those people, well, those people are terrible. Um, you're not them, but you don't have to be that bad to be abusive. I groom these women and I bring them into my, you know, to my personal life. My wife and I met online, casually talking for a few months before we ever started dating or anything like that, okay? Um, basically, she was in a really bad place in her life, an abusive relationship. She got out of that relationship, and once she did, then we started talking a little bit more romantically, and then things pursued. People made stuff up and said that I basically stole her from her ex and that he- But what about the Subaru guy saying that he caught her and Phil texting? He's a victim. That That is a big point in his whole story. So somebody here is lying. It might be Kat, it might be Phil, or it might be Mr. Subaru. It's funny because when you look on the internet, they will find all this public information about me and my personal life. They'll find my bankruptcy. They'll find all these statements. Did you ever find the restraining order that she had against her ex because he was hitting her? And then he does this emote. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh my God, what a, what a fucking moment. And then like the rest of the dudes are like, what, what, what is this guy talking about, bro? What is happening? And he does like a big shrug. It's like, hey, you see, I'm actually kind of a cool guy because I'm not super abusive, okay? I'm just a little bit abusive sometimes. And I don't even consider that to be abuse. Okay, sound good. Right? But, you know, make him look like a good guy on the internet, right? Yes. Well, you're... Are you making yourself out to be a good guy on the internet by bringing the fact that your wife was abused so you can get over on a bunch of random fucking people that are never going to like you to begin with? Or is this what we're doing? It, which is what they've done. My detractors have actually done this. They've gone into her personal life with her family. She has nothing to do with me or my content. Well, what? My... Uh... What, wait, uh, my wife has nothing to do with me or my content. Well, that's now over because now she has something directly to do with the content. But she's your fucking wife. What do you mean she got nothing to do with you? Stop. If you're going to mess with me, that's one thing. Leave my family, leave my, my everyone out of it. Make fun of me. Put the brunt on me. It's one of my biggest regrets as a content creator. I never meant for anyone to get hurt doing this. Never. I feel Oh my god, and he tried to cry again. He tried to fucking cry and it didn't work. And that was like the Hail Mary cry. That was the swan song of crying. Because he wanted to leave on a bang. He wanted to to leave to, to leave it with, uh, with fireworks. And he couldn't. He just couldn't get himself to cry. This fucking sociopath thing. piece of shit. Leave my family. Leave my, my everyone out of it. Make fun of me. Put the brunt on me. And here, and you can see his face contort in the way that people's faces contort when they start crying. But just the tears, that they just don't want to come out because it's not genuine. He's fucking faking. It's one of my biggest regrets as a content creator. I never meant for anyone to get hurt doing this. Never. I feel awful that my never, wife every day never. is feeling awful about things going on. Like, why are they saying these things about her? She has nothing to do with any of this. Leave her out of it, all right? Just all this stuff. I mean, I'm sure there's a million other things. There'll be a part two. We'll get to it then. But those are two things that have always been hor pretty sound horrible to women. If anything, you will never... He is definitely pretty, pretty bad to women. I mean, he's not a, a wife beater, but he does... He's definitely emotionally abusive, to say... Like, at least. Forever, one million percent, you will never find someone on the internet saying that Phil was in a sex scandal. Okay, that's not a really high bar. You're never going to find somebody saying that I was in a sex scandal either. Or 90% of people out there not in a sex scandal because people just don't usually do that. Phil was abusive to women in the past. I have never done that in my life. I'm pretty sure he's been abusive to Leanna on camera. When, when he woke her up to make him dinner when she was sick. That's, that's abusive. 
one million percent. I, you know, and it, but they want to say it, and it really irks me the wrong way. So, yeah, and the fact that he doesn't even know that he was abusive, and that in the hospital story and a bunch of other stuff, the fact that he doesn't even know that that constitutes as abuse just just speaks for itself. I understand. All right. All right. Well, look, I, I think that and the guys were like completely speechless. It's like we, we let this guy say one last thing and he went on about his fucking like wife and the whole purpose. That's that's the, the, the thing that I think is is the worst about this outro. This whole segment is that the point was not like that cat was abused and that people are being mean to her is that people are accusing Phil of being abusive to women when he wasn't and he had to bring up his wife's um, restraining order that nobody ever knew about just to make himself look good. And that's, like, really fucking low. That's really pathetic. It's really despicable. This is a great place to stop. Uh, like I said, let's, let's definitely... I'll email you. Not okay, Craig, thank you. This is definitely a great place to stop. And I'm going to finally screenshot this one DSP face because this is fantastic. This is a fantastic face. I might even just tweet it out right now. Uh, twit Twitter. Twitter.com. There we go. And I guess that's going to be it for the stream. This is kind of how I feel right now. This is how I feel. This is my face right now. Or maybe this other one. Hold on. What was the one that I last screenshot? Uh, that, that one was pretty good too. Where can I find it? Uh, is it this one? Uh, yeah, that's, I feel like that too, kind of a little bit. And this one too. I feel like all of these at the same time. <laughs> all right. Uh, thank you everybody. Uh, thank for engagement in watching and contributing and participating and enjoying and having fun. Uh, this was part one of the 6,000 sub special. Uh, next time, we're going to cover everything else that is left, which means the side scrollers post show. That was the Patreon only thing when he put the Nazi hat on. And we're going to do the entire decompression segment from both perspectives. Well, I'm probably going to do just DSP's perspective because otherwise the other guys, I got to watch them twice. So it's uh, it's just too much for me. Um, thank you, everybody. I will see you next time on the next Angry Joe show. And until then... Peace out and yong out.